Hey, I'm Kerrigan and welcome to Kerrigan's Tier List. So we are doing a tier list about maps. Damn, Nuke, S Tire. Yeah, like I think it's uh, up and down sounds, a lot about communication and, and rotation. So I think it's very challenging on both sides. Vertigo, I still think it's like a C Tire map. Pretty fun to play on CT side, short rotations, you always stand time. Um, but in T side, I feel like can't do so many cool things. Uh, a lot of spray through smokes, that's great. Then uh, we have Anubis A time map. This is the first map where Valve really hit the nail um, in the beginning. You haven't seen big updates. Inferno has always been an S time map for me, but with the new update in CS2, I still need to have the feeling of the map. It's still um, very strange and it's gonna be bound up to ST if the small updates uh, are coming. I think Mirage B tire. I'll put it as an S tire. I love the map as a player, but um, as a caller and a leader, I think it's a harder map to play. Then Ancient. For me, that's the A time app as well. For it to be S tire, I think they should remove those shadows on A. I think it destroys a lot of tactics. Or pass, I'll put that on a B. It's very hard on T side and or pass, so yeah. For sure, Counter Strike 1.6, S tire, banging game, the game I grew up with. Source, that's a D tire, trying to make the game better. Uh, Come play Source, no chance. Condition Zero. You know, I'll bomb a C tide just because it's better than Source. Everything else is better than Source. We have a Counter Strike 2. I'll put that on a B tire. And then I'll put CSGO on an A tire. CSGO was a D tire when it started out. It got really good with updates, uh, went to an A tire. And I know CS2 is going to be an A tire at some point. If we're going to touch Counter Strike, no chance. This is the tire maker for the Team C at Blast. Face Clan, S tire. 15 win streak. I think for sure we are making a statement the last few tournaments. Oh, this is hard. A lot of new teams here. I think complexity deserves an A tire for the result in Sydney. They haven't been good online, but team that surprised me a, a lot uh, in uh, one of the online tournaments was Cloud9. So I'll put them on a B tire. Then we have Vitality. They have a new player, but I still think they have so much quality in the lineup. Let's put them on an A tire together with uh, complexity. Then we have um, a lot of question marks. I uh, think I'll put uh, Navi on a B tire together with Cloud9. They can fight each other. Whoever wins uh, that game will stay B and the rest of uh, the guy losing going to C. Astralis, uh, I'll put them on a C tire. I think they will come back at some point. Uh, Heroic here with a stand in as well. And then NIP with a new IGL. I would put them on a C tire as well. So we have this um, Face Clan. Let's keep that. Remember that we have to uh, step up here. Complexity, uh, Vitality A tire. Cloud9, Navi, B tire, and uh, the rest of the guys at the C tire. Hope you enjoyed this, because I did. Hello everyone, this is uh, Dad Mazesclair, alias Apex, in game leader for Team Vitality. And today I'm playing uh, Counter Sketch. I'm really bad at drawing, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not an artist at all. I, I swear I'm really, really bad. Huh? When, when you don't know how to draw, you can have like uh, 10 minutes and it wouldn't change a thing, okay? Oh my God. Go into the camera. <laughs> Nuke. Don't know what else I will do. Of course, it's still not beautiful, but uh, let's see. I'm, I'm done. The silo, hat, door, T-Vent, t -vent, the box. Hopefully, it's gonna... Good job, nice. It's gonna get it. Okay, so... It's going to be rough to, to do it again. <laughs> New against four, picking doors. I said dot four, four times MVP. Hopefully he's going to remember. I, at least it's CS related, so yeah, if he has a memory, maybe. We're done? We're done. Thank you very Let's much. Let's go. The one we're going to do now is we're going to play Counter Sketch. Counter Sketch, yeah. okay. First one. Yeah. Yep. Like this. It's definitely a gun, that's for sure. I'm guessing it's uh, like an AK or something. It's probably the worst drawing of a gun I think I've ever seen. Okay, this is actually, I think this is a good drawing. I think this, it looks like a nuke, a bomb site, I would say, like in, inside. Got the, the silos here. Hut, Tetris, the vents, door. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty good drawing. <laughs> uh, 
Okay then, this drawing. This is not going to be three out of three. This is, I don't have a clue what this is. It could be anything. This looks like an orb, maybe? Do they have a timer to draw these? They have 60 seconds. Okay, that's why it's so bad. My first thought would be like a cold zero, uh, no scope on Mirage, but that's what I first thought, but then I saw this and I didn't have a clue what this meant, so um, it kind of threw me off. Uh, but that's that's what I'd guess is Cold Zero's like uh, clip on Mirage. I would say Flames. I, I don't think he would necessarily care that he's drawing for me. I think he just thinks I've got to draw and he would draw as fast as he can, could. The only other guy that's kind of similar to Flames would be Apex. I was really sh** because I don't know how to draw. My, it's not my skills at all and uh, I don't really like that. He just started off bad, brought my expectations way up and then back down again with the third, yeah, the third one wasn't great, but not too bad. I'll give it five out of 10 overall, in middle of the pack. Hi guys, this is Twist from FaZe Clan and I'm playing Counter Sketch. I never draw anything. So yeah, probably no one knows how this is gonna look like. I need to expand the knife. That's terrible. I just made it too too thick. T, t knife is skinny as f like this is not good. People don't even know what the T knife like looks like anymore, because people have so like everyone in person has knife. So You're yeah, I'm done. I actually think he'll say uh, initial diffuse. <laughs> okay, okay. That's all I'm doing. If he has CS on his mind when doing the interview, then then yeah, I would say he's gonna guess that. I feel like I got the ones that were difficult, and I got the easy one. Well, in here we're gonna do it a bit exciting, I think. Okay. This is from Counter Strike. This is from Counter Strike. Yes. I have no idea what this is. Um, a knife. A knife out of coming out of the pocket. It looks like a default knife. It's just like, but I know this guy is, has no imagination to drew this. You get it back? I think around the players the boom blast. Either planning the bomb or just diffusing the bomb. The timer went out and the bomb exploded. Um, Unfortunately, it's a not. It's a ninja diffuse. But the problem for me, if this is a ninja diffuse. Why is it made like a bomb radius and a rip? Okay, yeah, okay, I see, I see now. Okay, there's apparently a smoke up there. <laughs> this makes sense somehow that is a uh, like eco round, uh, take nine by, and you're like maybe a reset round or eco round. And um, the arrows, I don't know, it's like 360 no scope, I don't know. Or <laughs> oh, you are switching sides. My guess is that it's the uh, second pistol round of the game. Uh, spin bar. Okay, of course, of course. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like a cheater, that's my problem. I think this doesn't reflect our communication in phase. I hope not, because I don't know how we won tournaments then. For sure not Brokey, for sure not Rain. So there's two options, either Trist or Robin. I would go with... Trist. Now that's impressive. I know which teammate could uh, actually do this. This means I know the persons in my team, so maybe the communication is good.
this place has been home to moments of elation, passion, and heartbreak. From Dupree's moments of wonder, silenced by the librarian, to the rock star entrances in front of a sold out crowd. Tens of thousands have gathered through the years to witness the show. History can be seen and heard wherever you look. This stage has been graced by legends of Counter-Strike history, but only a handful have been crowned champions of the Royal Arena. For six years, our full pilgrimage has led us back to the Royal Arena, a kingdom where Counter-Strike is a local delicacy. And by the end of this weekend, one of our four remaining teams will be feasting upon that trophy. We welcome you back to the Blast Premier Fall Finals 2023. We've got myself, Rose Beers, Matthew and Jacob. Gentlemen, I'm so excited that we get to start off in the lobby amongst all the fans coming in to enjoy this spectacle of a weekend. Yeah, it's really great to be here. It's always a pleasure to be at the Royal Arena, have the fans coming around around there, surrounding us already. They're getting into the arena and we were talking right before we went live. This is year number five for some of us, six in total for Blast in the Royal Arena. Starting to be a little bit of a history. It's starting to be a pedigree for Counter-Strike and a place in the calendar that we cherish. It's a great place for Danish Counter-Strike teams to, to celebrate Counter-Strike, to experience Counter-Strike for the first time as well. One thing I always notice when I go to the Royal Arena is the age distribution. There's kids down to five, six, seven years of age, and there's some in the older generation as well who loves Counter-Strike for all the right reasons. I love the diversity we get to see in here, and I love the Vibe we got. It's a proper family affair here as well, and loving yeah. the pictures that we're getting to see as well. Jacob, uh, we were just chatting about it before we went live. You've been here every single damn year in some capacity. How is it reflecting and thinking back to 2017, now in 2023, and how Counter Strike's kind of grown? Obviously, we're in CS2 now, baby. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I remember in 2017, I was thinking to myself, we're so lucky that we can fill up a re an arena and a stadium of, of this capacity. I thought to myself, maybe we can do that once, maybe twice. But the fact of the matter is, we've done it six times now, and it seems to be growing and growing and growing growing. It's becoming a stable in the Counter-Strike calendar as well, and one of those things I always look forward to every single year. we got some uh, very popular gentlemen yeah, I do like it. Look past at this. us as well. Right, guys next yeah. to us. I'm loving how everybody's just vibing together, know, right? Yeah. Like, this is so, so cool. And I'm so excited, Matthew, to actually be getting into that arena as well, because uh, we've got some very spicy Counter-Strike on our hands this weekend, right? Yeah, it's really difficult to complain. Uh, if you're looking at the teams that have made it into the role arena, if you know all of the storylines that are unfolding in front of our eyes, would it be the phase streak, Vitality with the new lineup, Boomage coming? and into Cloud9. I mean, there are multiples of reasons to be excited here in Copenhagen. Well, just in case you guys have missed out on the, any of the action in the past three days, we're going to give you a little bit recap just to see exactly how we made it to this stage. The Blast Premier Full Finals 2023. Eight teams fought for a place on the stage. Phase's streak continued to secure the first semi-final spot. No luck for the ninjas as they were the first to fall. Two Danish powerhouses fought for survival. Heroic overcame their nemesis as Astralis was sent packing. Vitality stepped up to claim their place in the semis, sending complexity to fight for another day. Boomich and his team concluded the last dance, taking the penultimate arena spot. The final battle for a place on the stage went long into the night. Complexity came out on top. Your semi-finalists have been decided for the Blast Premier Fall Finals. Yeah, the teams have been sliced and diced in half over the past three days. We bid farewell to four teams, uh, which if you're a Danish fan, Jacob, ain't looking so good because not only Heroic not making it here, neither Astralis eliminated in that group stage. I'm not gonna lie. It's a bit disappointing that we don't get to see a full Danish roster inside the arena, especially when you consider what happened last year where Heroic finally got that Danish success, lifting the trophy in a banger of a final against FaZe Clan. Of course, coming into the tournament, we knew Astralis were in a bit of a turmoil period. We knew Heroic 
Rourke was showing up with a, a mixed team all of a sudden. So it wasn't really that we expected him to be here, but it's still slightly disappointing. No, but I think you you would be all right to have hopes for Astralis. Of course. And at this point, I mean, should we even talk about a curse maybe for, the, for this name, for this roster, for this jersey, this mm. organization here in Royal Arena? How many years did we feel like, okay, this is coming together. This is going to be the moment. They're going to be in the arena with the fans. We see around there's seas of Astralis jerseys around us. I mean, the love yeah. from the crowd to that mm. team is unwavering, but it just doesn't work out. From Vitality kicking them out here in Royal Arena to now just missing, even missing the attendance, that is going to hurt. It's and a massive disappointment. Straight Savage as well, because you know what Astralis did soon after their loss? <laughs> oh, right, we're going to move the roster right around. Exactly what we knew was coming, but Stare actually staying when they're bringing in, obviously, uh, Stan and Yabby on the side of Heroic. And allow me to be completely honest right here, it's mega disappointing that they couldn't facilitate that deal leading into this tournament. As Matt you said, it's another wasted opportunity for Astralis to make a result inside this arena. The first couple of times they were doing fine, got into the final, we all remember falling, silencing Royal Arena. They got very, very close, but the last couple of years it's been disappointment after disappointment for Astralis. So yeah, sure thing for the future, it's cool to have Stown and, and Yabi joining the lineup, but I would like to see them play right here, right now, inside yeah. the arena. Next year, next year, yeah. maybe next year. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, we've been a bit biased towards the Danes being eliminated. Obviously, NIP and Na'Vi were also on the docket as well. I'd say expected from NIP. Na'Vi did give Complexity a run for their money uh, in that elimination series yesterday. Though, yeah, right? I was going to say two different stories, right? I think on one hand, the NIP elimination somewhat, somewhat logical, and mm. I'll be careful with that word. But when it comes to Na'Vi, look at these images, and they will tell you the story of what happened yesterday. We all witnessed it. Almost a miracle in the making. Navi pushing complexity to the limit. Complexity, one of the best teams we have in CS2. Yeah. Grand final in Sydney. And they had the chance. There is no other way to put it. There was a chance for Navi to qualify for Royal Arena. And if it weren't for some crazy ass rounds, they'd be here. The black and yellow would be here. You say crazy ass rounds. These were crazy rounds. The score is 9 9. Navi is in a 5v2 versus complexity. Whoever loses that round goes straight yeah. into an eco. That's when they lost it. Navi couldn't convert on that situation. Complexity Complexity fought their way back. So when you're saying they got dangerously close, you're not wrong. They had it. Third deciding match, they had it. They had already won the game at that point, but they just couldn't finish it. Should we look at some of those crazy ass moments in our CS Money Ooh. play of the day? Because you guys have been voting over on the Blast Premier Instagram. We're going to be crowning your top three plays from day number three of action. So, uh, Matthew, what's the third best play as crowned by the fans? Well, we have a little bit of Xyphon action. He's actually featured twice in the CS Money play of the day with that work on the B side of Nuke as well with the silencer. Great angle management, great spray as well. Very high up on the across there. We've seen a great resurgence coming in from Floppy. He's been clutching it left, right and center. And we're going to see a 1v3 on overpass from the water position right here. Isolating every single duel, pulling off another 1v3. He did it on Anubis prior to this one as well. And finally, we have Zyphon holding his rank on that ramp position. He honestly had a great series. Unfortunate, of course, Heroic's Road have to stop here, but he had 25 plus kills on this map. He really put his best effort forward. Great ace from Zyphon. Yeah, unfortunate for Zyphon and co not being able to make it through to the Royal Arena, but for Floppy, man, we will be seeing more of complexity moving forward. As of course, we've got two semifinals coming up today as we can take a look at the bracket. See our four remaining teams as well. Of course, we've got the likes of FaZe, which uh, I don't think is any surprise because because I would say that the current kings of Counter-Strike 2, because every damn tournament, Jacob, they've made it in and taken home a trophy as well. Yeah, they just can't help but, but winning at the moment. Despite of, of how many they might struggle in a game, you know, how much they may be down, they always find a way back. And we saw it in the group stage once more. Uh, Rain said it pretty well. Welcome to the face, Emma Ifas. <laughs> he, uh, he and, and Face Clan Hell right yeah. now are, are building another history, are building another, you know, stint to their career and another showcase of their DNA, which is to never count them out. I mean, we're still at the very first few steps of CS2, but yeah. we're witnessing history, right? The fact that we have a grand final of Sydney being now a rematch in the semi-final Maybe, complexity yeah, phase. Yeah. I mean, that in itself, that's no coincidence. These are the teams that have put the best foot forward in Counter-Strike 2 phase on number 17, fourth highest win streak. And we're only looking at land results here and they could put Astralis in the rearview mirror with a victory today. The streak ain't dead yet, but maybe complexity might be the ones to do it. Of course, we're talking about such a hype grand final uh, back in Sydney as well. And the fact that we get to see them, you know, becoming a bit more consistent, I think that's something that we've always wanted to see from Complexity. And turns out, Elige, he was the key to unlocking that form. Yeah, I think they've proven it once more at, at this tournament. The way they're playing Counter-Strike right now, the way they work as a unit, and then you said it, Elise, the star player of this lineup, feels like ever since he came in, the trajectory of Complexity has just been going up and up and up. And they're putting on another level. One thing is to get in the occasional final. One thing is doing what they do in Sydney, but to replicate that going into the semi-final at a big tournament like the Blast 4, 
World Finals, it's a testament mm. to where complexity is right now as a team. They have established themselves as a Gatia team. They're up there, I agree with you. They have quality in, in the Counter-Strike, but I'm gonna rain on the parade just a little bit. Ooh. Complacency is around the corner, and we've witnessed them a couple of times in yeah. Copenhagen where they were not playing their best CS. The communications were a little bit low. We had a few moments, we heard from Elish trying to pick up the slack from the mm. teammates. And when that happens, it opens up the door for anybody to come at them. So sure, Complexity have made great progress, great strides. Some individuals have given us way more than we used to, but don't make the mistake of thinking you are deserving of where you are, because you're not. In Counter-Strike, you have to take everything. Nothing is given to you. I'm so excited to see that semi-final going down later on today. But we've got plenty more content for you guys coming up, including another dive into the Snake Pit, because uh, Maui is over at the player hotel with some very special guests indeed. He's got Casper, the sports director from Australis, and Ursula, the Navi performance manager. Uh, oh, wait, we're going to have to hold up a little bit. You know what? Mario's taking a break. Maybe he's gone to get a coffee or something. Ooh, okay. You should never go live if you're not ready. Always yeah. have a coffee. Gotta have a coffee. Water as well. Maybe a croissant here. I don't know what a Danish breakfast is. We don't do but that. But I no. think Maui might have got that coffee ready. So uh, Maui, what are you going to be chatting over there at the player hotel? Thanks so much, Freya. I am actually here with Casper Straub, the sports director from... Okay, well, thanks so much, Freya. I am here with Casper Straub, the sports director from Astralis. And I'm also here with Ursula Klimsak, the performance coach for Navi. Two, player, two people, not players, of course, that don't get the credit that they definitely deserve in terms of contributing to the winning efforts of both of their teams. So I wanted to get to know more about both of your roles here as we get this tournament underway, we get into the arena portion of the event. Unfortunately, obviously your teams didn't make it this far, but I do really want to know what goes into making a team as efficient as you have before, Ursula. You, you were on the winning effort for Ents, of course, when they won IEM Dallas. And I want to know, first of all, what was it like pivoting from Ents to Navi? Uh, like pretty smooth and uh, well there is this moment in every work that um, you know you have a vision you see what you want to achieve and at some point we are hungry for like you know um, maximizing our abilities and maximizing our job and I at some point um, I saw that um, there is an interest and there is like some uh, hunger in in me inside that I want to do something more and um, I was really happy to, to, to have that ability to be able to transition to Navi um, with ENS. Like, and ENS and Navi, they're both different projects. Um, uh, ENS was uh, a team that was already established, that was a team that was already settled, whereas at the same time, uh, Navi is the org that decided just to transition to like international team. So like there are different struggles, different um, goals, different visions. So for me, the, the project was super attractive. And uh, the moment uh, I decided to kind of pick up um, and we started working with also Igor, the new player, uh, it was amazing to see uh, how both teams are different and how both teams can operate under the, the pressure. Also, if it comes to the players, you know, when you have players you've been working for some time, uh, you know what to expect. They're already trained, they're already prepared. They know what to do. They know what are their routines. Whereas this is a project where I'm just starting from the scratch and building everything and teaching them everything. So like, you know, two teams at the same time, but um, amazing abilities and amazing uh, field for me to show, um, to show the players what they're capable of. Cool. Very, very cool. So, Casper, I have a similar question for you because you were working with Heroic, obviously, before. And so what was it like working for, you know, one Danish team to another? I think some people from the outside might think probably similar organizational structure, but I don't think that's quite the case. No, I think that there is a big difference between Heroic and, and Astralis as organizations. Um, obviously, uh, when I joined Heroic, it was a very small organization and... Uh, Heroic as, a, as an organization took some big steps and, and the whole team and me were a part of that and um, and comparing that to Astralis is, is just something different because it's it's way bigger you have so many uh, different people working there and you obviously have a um, a name that is uh, known everywhere so so in that sense it's it's something completely different yeah Okay, yeah. I mean, I think that goes without saying, given the fact that people were marching outside the Royal Arena today, holding Astralis banners, and so there is a huge fan base for that team here. Ursula, I really wanted to get to know, though, with 
with what you're doing for the teams you work for, I know you've, you've put it into phrases before, like you're trying to make sure that everybody is set towards the same goal, looking in the same direction. What does that actually look like when you're trying to take actionable steps to make that a possibility and a reality? Mm -hmm. So first, uh, it's, it's difficult to set a goal from the first day I work with an organization. First, it's, uh, it's the process of getting to know to the players and also what is their roof, like how far uh, we can push them into setting those goals. And what is critical is that the goals need to be super achievable and uh, they need to be also set within a specific time so, the, so they're motivating for the players to move forward. If we set something that is very unrealistic for the players, uh, with time they will get simply demotivated and they will basically they'll, their hunger to win and to succeed will collapse all of a sudden. So for now we're just Myself, I'm just getting to know to, to the players and it's funny that you asked about it because yesterday with, uh, with Andre we spoke about this that, you know, the beginning of the year would be the time where we'll be setting up the goals, where we'll be looking for motivational tools for the players just to show them, you know, how far they can go and how far we can push them to, uh, to make them the best versions of themselves, basically. Mm, okay, well, thank you. Casper, last question of this. Obviously, there is a lot of talk around Astralis lately and the roster moves. And given that you are the sports director and you worked with Heroic, you worked with Stown and Yabby in particular before, and now they've been brought over to Astralis, what hand did you play in maybe actually facilitating that transaction? Um, I mean, obviously, I know the players very really well, and I know not only their qualities on the server, I also know them uh, personally-wise. I know how would they fit into a certain uh, team, how, how, how can we work with them to get the, the maximum uh, capacity out of the players. So um, my role was basically to kind of present the project that, that we had, that we wanted in Astralis, and... I don't want to be uh, a part of uh, contractual negotiations with other teams, with my own players, because I want a very clean relationship with my players. So therefore, it's not it's something that I have said from the beginning that I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to work with the players, work with the team and make them the best version of themselves. So that's been uh, that, the, that from day one. And it's also something that I'm used to from, from my previous work. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys. Thank you both. Thank Good luck you. in the future. Thank you. And I appreciate both of your time. And I think we'll be sending it back on over to the desk. Thank you so much for that insight, Maui. So much I want to be unpacking there. Not least because uh, both of the guests you had there used to work for other teams right. before this, Jacob. So there's, uh, you know, some things they can probably take away from their learnings in previous rosters. I mean, well, you would right? like to make the comparison between Barcelona and Real Madrid when you make the move from one team to another. It's the same thing here for Heroic going to Astralis. It's it's not well received by by many circles in, in Danish Counter-Strike. Let's be completely honest, but I love it, man. I love the I love the vista. I love the intrigue. I mean, I love everything that, that has a little bit of a drama attached to it and I think Casper in reality is very good at his job I think big part of the success that they had in Heroic was mm. thanks to him as well so what he's doing in Astralis it's going to be very interesting to follow for the future and, and that activity that role to be fair is kind of a black box from the outside we don't really yeah. know so good for them to giving us a little bit of insight let us understand what is it what are the parameters under which they are working and to give us a bit of insight here yeah thank you very much Maui for grilling their brains a little bit I know you're going to have a, a lot of other guests joining you down on Maui's Island I guess we're calling it right now but we do need to be heading things to a quick break when we're back play any more CS2 discussions and getting ever closer to that semi final. This message is brought to you by Blast. London, the jewel of England. At Blast, we're bringing a distinctly London feel to Counter Strike. The sights, the sounds, bingo, bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. and the pageantry.
We are back, and I am here with Trace, 1.6 legend, third ranked on HLTV's top 20 in 2010, fourth ranked in 2011. Trace, it is a honor to have you here, and I need to pick your brains about a pre very pressing manner. Yeah. But first things first, let's give people a little bit of context, okay? So the reason I bring you here is because you were such a storied 1.6 player, in the beginning of CSGO, you gave it a crack and you didn't love the game. Is that correct? Is that yeah, fair to say? Yeah, that's a fair to say. And you took a break for about a year and a half, two years roughly, and you tried making it happen again in 2015 with MTW. So we see one player's career right now who is similarly following an arc that resembles yours in Simple. And he has willingly taken a break from CS2 because he doesn't like the game, just like you didn't like CSGO, correct? Yeah, that's correct. What do you think it's going to be like when Simple does decide to compete again? Well, from my perspective, you know, I see I see the similarities be, be between us because I quit the game in the transition from 1.6 to CSGO and he's now taking a little break. But I think there's, there's still similarities, uh, so differences between between the games because now, you know, it's such a huge game. There's so much money in it, um, and he's been playing for so long. And I would say firstly, the transition from 1.6 to CSGO was terrible. The game was really bad, if you don't know this. Mm -hmm. So CS2 is like a very nice game right now compared to CSGO in the beginning. So CS2 de is decent now. So you can't really use that as an excuse, in my opinion. Um, but of course, there are so many other factors in play. Like he's played for so long. He's been one of maybe the best player to touch the game for so many years. So I think it's also a bit, you know, about motivation. You know, if is he going to con continue playing? Is it worth it? You know, he, you have to make so many sacrifices when you when you're a professional player like him. Right. And I remember that when you took your break, part of it was because of just purely finances. Because when you were playing, you weren't really getting much of a salary at that point, if a salary at all. You were playing on a laptop for CS:GO at the very beginning too, and so that's not going to make things easy. But simple. If he decides to return, he's going to have all the resources in the world. You think that would probably ease the transition, whereas it was much more difficult for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he will. He will do just fine because he's played it so long, and I don't think the games are that much. They're not that different. Mm -hmm. There are a few new new mechanics to learn, like with the AGs to the smokes and stuff like this. But that's that's pretty easy. Like the transition in 1.6 years ago was way worse, and it was quite a different game. So, in that sense, that the game is so kind of similar, these two games, from CSGO to the CS2, I think he will do just fine. And especially with, with his ceiling in the game uh, and his, his knowledge, I'm sure he will, he will do just fine. He, he, of course, he will be you know, on the back foot a little bit he, because he's not playing that much. Maybe he's not getting that team, you know, the practice where you learn stuff and not. And I don't, don't know how much he's grinding. So he's going to be on the back foot for a little bit, I'm sure. But eventually he will catch up. Uh, there's no doubt about it, I think. How long does Simple have to be away from the game for people to start to have to worry. Like if he came back tomorrow, I think most people are gonna be like, it's fine, he's gonna, he's gonna get yeah. it. But if he's gone for how long, is it too much, you think? I'm not sure if it's too much. Like I think his individual level, it will not really be too much, I don't know. I, I think he can easily go a year. Like a year? Individually, I think so, honestly. Dang. But it will take him a lot of time, of course, when he okay. comes, comes back, but eventually he will come back. He will not be the player he was, but I think he can come back nonetheless, but individually. But let's say, you know, his motivation and yeah. his, you know, all the outer factors at play, you know, family, he's from Ukraine, a lot of stuff's going on. So does he have the focus to do it? I think that that's the question, because I don't think there's a doubt, like if he returned, he could, he could do it. He's shown it for so many years. Um, I guess that actually brings me to the, sort of the age question. When do you, do you, well, first of all, do you think age itself hurts people as they try to play this game? If they get older, do they just get worse? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe a little bit, you know, tiny things, but I think mostly it is because there are so many other things. Like when you're a kid, when you're 15 years old, you just want to get home, you want to play, you don't have any worries in the world, just go home and get good. But nowadays, you know, when you grow up, you have family, relationships, friends, you want to go to parties, you want to go to weddings, birthdays, you know, all this stuff. And that will take your focus away from the game. And nowadays, if you want to be a professional, you have to play eight hours of practice, you also have to play outside of that to improve. So you get up like 10, 12 hours a day. And if you're not motivated to do that, eventually you will fall off for sure. Okay. Do you think if Simple does take a break for a year, 
that he can actually ever recover to become the best player in the world again? That's a tough question. Uh, I'm gonna, if I have to give an answer, I'm going to say no. Mm. One year is a long time. But, and he's, he's also getting up there in the age. But he would still be a very good player, uh, I'm sure. But not one of the best because then he would be too far away. And then with all the things going on, he might not be as motivated. And I think that's the most important factor. But of course, the longer you're away. I know it's also a stretch saying he can come back after a year gone. But I'm sure he will, he will touch the, the game anyways a little bit. So, Okay, one last question. You said when you were switching from 1.6 to CSGO that it would take probably 3,000 hours to be good enough to know every angle and how to take every engagement. Given that CSGO to CS2 seems like a slightly smoother transition, how many hours do you think it's going to take for everybody to be comfortable with all the angles? Oh, that's also a good question. I mean, it, we'll have to see because right now, you know, FaZe is doing great, but I think it will take, let's say, at least a thousand because mm, okay. you have to understand every angle. It's new angles anyways, the new smoke, you know, we have, they have to figure out what is the best play all the time. And that takes a lot of time. Maybe even more like 2,000, I don't know. It might be a long time because practice, you don't always get all the rounds you want to practice. So it's not always that efficient. So it can take a lot of hours, but you know, solo practice does a lot for you here. You know, you know when to peak, know when to not, what angles are good. All, this, all these scenarios, there are so many scenarios in the game, right? So it will take a lot of time. I have no clue how long, we'll see. Okay, well, I think FaZe uh, hopes that it's probably just as many hours as they put in yeah, because yeah. they've been looking really sharp. But thank you so much for your thank time, you. Trace. It's been a, such a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I think we're going to be sending it back over to the desk. Thank you very much, Mal. Yeah, super interesting insight from Trace. Um, Simple could take away a year and still come back and be dominant. Are we agreeing with that sentiment? I mean, Device, Device did it, sort of did it, be it in the same game, but... Still was a high level when he came back. Sure. I just wanted to quickly echo a sentiment from Trey. I think we're not in a position to judge whether Simple should or shouldn't have taken a break. That is a personal decision mm. to which you are entitled. But the conditions and the context are different now. We are not going from 1.6 to CSGO. We have professional circuit, we have contracts, we have sponsors. The magnitude is mostly, mostly greater than before. So don't make the comparison. This is a whole new world. You better do that damn transition really quickly. The quality of Counter-Strike the players play today is also on a of different course. level. Sure thing, Simple five years ago could have taken a, a year of comeback into CSGO and still dominate. Mm -hmm. Today though, I would argue Saivu has been the better player the past year and a half anyway. So no, Simple is not going to take a year off, come back and compete with Saivu. He's going to come back relatively soon, otherwise that train is going to leave. Well, we do find ourselves right now in CS2 and we do find ourselves on the precipice of a break, but you're going to make sure you're joining us afterwards because we have one very special Ooh. guest indeed. Mr. Kadian is going to be Join us for a little bit of a catch up, but after this break, don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Messi, and I'm doing a tier list. Okay, so we've got maps up first. Nuke is S tier. So many different variations, so many different ideas on the maps, and it's pretty balanced. And I'll go the opposite side, but you go D tier. I think it's so bad. I quite like Ancient. I think it's got a lot of creativity. So I think A, uh, a tier for Ancient. Overpass as well. Always liked Overpass and think it's a, a strong map for me. So I'd have to put it up there. Anubis, I'm going to have to put in C. Pretty like one sided with the T side. For me, I would put Inferno and Mirage in B tier. Nothing too exciting in both the maps. I think they're kind of the middle of the pack. And yeah, I would uh, keep those there. Okay, so now we're moving on to the CS games. Source, couldn't put it S tier, so my dad used to play CS Source, so that's when I was a kid watching him play, kind of got into it as well, and it was so fun. I think even in like previous teams, I tried to play it in CSGO, like the zombie mode, I think just in Source, just the memories and having fun like on the community server was just like a whole nother level to what we have in CS like now. Um, CSGO, I've got to put A tier as well. If I put it any lower, then I'd have to question what I've been, why I've been playing it for so long. I guess that's 1.6. I really didn't like 1.6, to be honest. I guess when you're trying it years, years after, it kind of doesn't have the same feeling. But I'll put um, 1.6 in the C tier. I can't put it too low, otherwise I'll uh, probably get a bit of hate from everyone, so uh, I'll keep it there. Condition zero, D tier. There's no words for condition zero, but then CS2, I can't put it, I'm going to put it in A tier for now got a lot of stuff to fix but i think the potential on cs2 is like a lot bigger than what csgo was in terms of like the mechanics and how the game's updated and yeah i think it's going to be by far the the best game they've, they've brought out finally we'll turn we'll go to the the team tier list of course first one vitality s tier nothing else to say phase i'm putting them a got to uh, keep our confidence for the for the tournament and FaZe have got to lose at some point. The streak can't continue. And 
heroic. D tier, because we're playing them first, so we're going to have to have to beat them. Maybe the Danish fans won't be too happy about it, but gotta do what we gotta do. Complexity, A tier as well. I think they've always been a team in, like even CSGO, that were qu quite like creative and strategic. Na'Vi, I'll put C. They have individuals that can really do well, but at the moment for me, they're just like uh, still growing as a team. Astralis, B tier. I think they've got Device who's GOAT contender for CS, so it's hard to know where to put them. And I think same with this, the next team, which is Cloud9, I would have to put the same. Yeah, it's hard to say how they're going to perform without the AWPA, and they've also got like really strong individuals, and it's hard to say for them. And then NIP, put them as C. I think they've made so many changes, um, still trying to find their identity. That's it for my tier list. Well, don't we have a special treat in store for you guys? We've got Cadian joining us for a little bit of a chat ahead of the games today at the Blast Premier Four Finals. Now, obviously, goes without saying, you obviously hope to be uh, in the arena playing yourself, but uh, can you give us a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, the emotions for you, obviously, coming back here? You guys lifted the trophy this time last year. Is it kind of bittersweet coming back to, to the Royal Arena? I mean, it's it's a bit bitter, uh, bittersweet, but I'll also say that, obviously, the expectations were at a different level. Yes. If we were coming with the, the full lineup and we were kind of trying to defend the title, defend the crown, it would have been different, you know, because um, if we would have not went into the playoffs, I would have standed here crying probably on, on this broadcast <laughs> right now. But w with the situation, uh, I think we, we made the most of it. Um, beating Astralis, not too bad. Losing to Cloud9, so Astralis doesn't make the world final, not too bad. We take, we take <laughs> oh. the double dubs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, rough times for sure. A lot of the things happening, but um, it, it was fun trying at least. Well, we, we know a lot of things is happening, right? And, and your future will, will hopefully come out soon enough. But what was your motivation to, to go for one last tournament with your work? Like, was it hard for them to convince you to come up here and, and play one final tournament? Um, I mean, I, th I think there was many reasons actually, like uh, I wanted to help Shus and Tessas, yeah. who I've been with for very long, um, the organization, I wanted to help them make, make sure that what they think is the best way of achieving what they want for the next year, I'll help them provide that. And obviously me just having that little childhood dream of playing one more time and maybe you make something happen, you know, uh, so I think there was actually a bit of Three, three, three different ways of looking at it, and all of them made sense for me. And from the emotional angle as well, you know, we looked at Heroic as such a brotherhood. You guys achieved so much together. Um, I know you're obviously onwards to, you know, uh, different pastures, which I'll be picking your brains about in a minute. But for you, kind of just emotionally, kind of putting an end to this heroic book, how, how is that feeling for you? Uh, I'm not sure it's fully settled in. Uh, I can say this, this much that um, I did record a video already, an, an announcement video of the new team I'm joining. Ooh. And uh, when I pulled over that shirt for the first time, it did feel really weird. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to say that it just felt natural and normal mm -hmm. because when you pull over the same shirt for more than four years and you represent them and the values and you try to fight for, for that organization, it is, it is different. Also, like four years in esports is maybe 10 in football or whatever, sure. you know? So, <laughs> yeah. um, so it, it did feel a little bit weird, but um, I don't think I fully realized yet that I'm not going to be a heroic player anymore. Okay, going back to the Counter-Strike angle, sorry for a moment. Um, we got to see your first ever CS2 official here as well. So we were just, you know, chatting to Trace about transitioning into a new game. How has it been for you, you know, coming from CSGO into CS2? Because we had, a, you know, a couple of months where we weren't seeing you play, right? Yeah, I think uh, maybe for this tournament, a little bit hit and miss. I had like uh, two bad maps and then I had like uh, one really good one and one decent one. Uh, I can definitely feel I'm a little bit behind still in mm. amount of hours played and uh, kind of realizing the situations and stuff like this. And then they made a change where the blowing up of the grenades through walls you were not able to do in the newest patch. And we realized that after the first game because they're still playing <laughs> on the old patch. So there's a lot of like, can you still do this? Can you not do this? And trying to realize stuff like this. But um, I'm actually not complaining too much about the game. I'm just trying to learn and master it the way it is. So yeah. You, you're always honest, right? And I want to ask you a question because we heard a lot about uh, the AWP being less significant yes. in, in CS2. <laughs> is that something you feel or is it just a great excuse for the Orbos right now to, to chill a little bit? I definitely feel like because it's so strong to swing, mm. um, the kind of tiny gaps you would hold in, in some angles before are not viable in the same way anymore. Okay. Like you have to really expect the wide strafe. Maybe people would like do a hard peek into an angle before, but now they're just kind of strafing. So I think it, it makes it a little more difficult for, for the orb. But I still think that there is situations and maps where you can be very viable. Also, you saw Device and Overpass against us. Yeah. He was really good at playing passive and taking the long angles. The orb will still be strong there. Brokey with his shotgun offing also making things uh, work. But, but definitely, it is harder as of right now. 
And speaking of, you know, Danish representation here, um, we're getting, what, one out of 13 potential Danes in yeah. the arena, obviously Carrigan, um, which I've got to pick your brains about, right? We've seen FaZe being really, really dominant uh, in terms of CS2. So why do you kind of think that is? I presume, you know, if you're watching a couple of their demos, is it just all the rock show at the moment? I think there's uh, there's some different factors. I think uh, first and foremost they have been struggling for a long while in the end of CS:GO. Uh, I think they have a player like Robs who is uh, really good at like cooking up stuff, being ahead of the me uh, meta. You saw already in the in the beta that he was playing a lot, cooking grenade liners and stuff. So they were by far the most innovative team that I saw in the beginning. And uh, I also think that. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's easy to win right now. I'm just going to say there's a lot of turmoil on other teams, which mm. for me at least makes others' integration into yeah, CS2 yeah. not as easy as, as maybe FaZe were having it. I'm not taking anything away because if they were just winning narrowly, I would maybe have a different feeling, but they have been on a sick win streak, like 17 games in a row. So it's uh, fully deserved and I hope the Danes will, will cheer for Kerrigan, but they are just a good team with a lot of good players uh, for sure. Yes, but there's no doubt that you would have liked to, to play inside this arena this time around. But gladly for you and for me, and I guess the Counter-Strike will, we get another opportunity relatively soon at the Major. How important is it for you, with your new roster, with your new team, to qualify for this arena and qualify for the next Major? Yeah, it's, it's everything. Mm. Um, I, I was looking into not playing this event uh, because of all the things that happened. And mm. what would my situation be? What team could I transfer to? Would I be able to qualify for the next one? I feel pretty good about qualifying okay, for the yeah. next one, I'll say that. But, <laughs> okay. but I was potentially missing out on the two tournaments on home turf and uh, that would have destroyed my mood. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. So it, it's going to be good, but um, there's still a long way ahead to, to go there. Uh, but I think obviously one of the highlights of my career was lifting that trophy last year mm -hmm. in here. So uh, yeah, I would love to do that again. I mean, it has to be, you know, so many fans cheering for you there. And you got to meet some of them in the signing session, right? That must have been, you know, nice to get to see the fans at least. Yeah, I mean, they, they are, they're super nice. And, and I think there's even a lot of Astralis fans who comes with a lot of respect and uh, still wants the Astralis uh, shirt signed by Katie. And I'm not sure all the Astralis fans approve this, but, but it, it's happening out there. And I think, you know, um, to be honest, it's also a shame that the Danish scene is in the level it is right yeah. now because they deserve to have a Danish team to cheer for in the arena. That's whether it's Astralis or Rogue, you, you can argue whichever direction you want, but uh, they should have someone to cheer for, and I'm a bit sad about that. And that's exactly where we're heading right now. This is exactly the walk that the fans will be doing, Jacob, and so many emotions that I'm feeling. I'm getting goosebumps looking at this, man. Yeah, me too, man. I never had the opportunity to, to play in that arena. I had a couple of moments where I could have done it, but apparently I was too bad to be used as a stand-in for Astralis back then. Casper, you've been there before. Everyone who plays Counter-Strike in Denmark, they want to play inside this arena. This is what it comes down to. Casper is a living example of it. We saw the passion in the group stage. We saw the passion whenever you play. You play Counter-Strike, you practice 10 hours a day in order to fulfill these moments where you're inside the arena for you. There's nothing you rather want to do as a Danish Counter-Strike. So many legacies forged year upon year. And now in the year of 2023, it's time for the first ever Tier 1 CS2 event to be gracing the Danish capital. And I think it's truly ready to get this show started. We are back once again. Six years here and it feels like home in Copenhagen. Six years of Counter-Strike history 
where we've watched Heroic win last year. Na'Vi have claimed the title twice here in the six. FaZe and SK as well. There are legendary names here winning inside this arena. And this is the first time we get to do it for Counter-Strike 2. Are you ready? Now this crowd has always been great for me. It has always given good energy and I expect exactly the same here once again. Now you may not have a Danish team, but Carrigan, in his phase, he has not lifted the trophy here. He has come close, but it has not been possible. It has not happened. Are you guys wanting to see FaZe win here? I thought that might be the case. Well, guys, there's one thing for me to say one more time. Welcome to the legendary Royal Arena. Welcome to the Blast Premier Full Finals. <laughs> Oh yes, we are truly inside the belly of the beast and I feel honored to be standing in the same position where five different Rosses before us hoisted that very trophy. We're talking about four legendary organizations and I cannot believe that we are standing here. Matthew and Jacob, what a way to begin off the proceedings here for the semi-finals of the Blast Premier Four Finals. So this is how it feels to be center stage. This is how it feels to be with you guys. How are you doing? <laughs> Like yes, to hear. I like to hear that. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course, we have some great Counter-Strike coming our way and we are very humbled to be part of this entire show. It's a dream. It's a dream to come through for every day to be inside the arena, to be standing up here. Obviously, as a player, we discussed it already. Fred, this is what they play for. This is what they fight for. But for us as well to experience this, it's great. I'm getting goosebumps just standing here. But of course, we have to talk about the teams that have fought tooth and nail to make it to this very stage. On one side of the room, we have Vitality, the other Cloud9. I want to begin by talking a little bit about Vitality because, uh, Jacob, there's been some changes in the roster, of course, which means uh, yeah. the Danes here might be a little less fond of uh, the yellow and black squad. I mean, it used to be half a Danish team and it used to be a team that we could root for here in Denmark, but that's really not the case anymore. No Matisk, no Dupuy, no Sonic anymore, but yet the quality of Vitality is still up there. So surely, if you're a Danish Counter-Strike fan, maybe you're not as excited for Vitality as you used to be. But in terms of how well they're playing right now, with Messi being integrated, right. with Flames coming into the lineup, there's not a lot of quality. I mean, some of these positions were risky. The fact that you removed Dupree after winning a major, not everybody was agreeing no. with that. The fact that you lose Majesk and everyone is very open about it, you're not replacing it. You're trying to make do without him. Of course, you lose Sonic as well, x is coming back. But I think we can agree the results are here. The level is here already, and now they're ready in the semi-final. So exactly how have you seen, you know, the British legend Mezzi integrating into this squad? Of course, uh, we've only got a very small sample size going forward, but are uh, you happy with it so far, Matthew? I think the test has been relatively passed, but this is where the true stuff begins, right? Mm. This is where you step into the arena and you have to consider the experience that he's got playing with Fnatic as well, his time in Cloud9. He hasn't graced stages like this quite a lot. This is where the difference, the details, the lack of experience. Can Are you able to keep up with the communication? We're going to have to see because Majisk was doing such an incredible job in high pressure situations. You're going to tell me Messi is able to do that? Is Messi able to lift up his level here in Copenhagen? Uh, I guess we're about to see, Matthew, but you're right. It's, it's very, very tough to replace a guy like Magic. He has so much experience, especially inside this arena. It was a guy you could always count on. Now, can we count on Messi for the future in Vitality? I guess this will be the first answer to our question. He needs the chance to at least prove it before we rule him out. I mean, a known certainty in Vitality, we have to give it up for Spinks, because we're talking about one of the top three rated players over the entire tournament. And from day number one, Matthew, uh, he was dominating inside the server, to put it lightly. Yeah, his first series was magistral. We're talking about 1.7 rating, something Ooh. completely out of this world. And I had a private talk with some of the members of Vitality. Ooh, they told me he was very on fire onwards to Copenhagen. But you know how it is, like practice results, we don't really care about it. But he showcased just that at day one. And I think this is one of the conditions losing Majisk is that everybody else is going to do a little more. Everybody else is going to play a little bit better. You have to pick up the slack, and he's been doing just that. You're looking to have a rifle to establish himself as a top 10 player moving on to 2024. This is where I want to see him. Yeah, this is what we all want to see. I guess a lot of people in the audience as well are playing face it, right? But one player that is also playing a lot of FPL, that is also putting in the works right now, is Saivu. Yes. He came off to a bit of a cold start in Vitality. And when I say cold start, I mean he was not necessarily the nah. best of the best. But Matthew, it took him seven maps to once again 
been established that of course he is one of the greatest players we have to offer in this game. I expect no ness from Sai Wu coming into this stage game. He thrives right here, he's playing well, and he's gonna be the difference maker. And this is the world we live in. This is the world Six we maps. live in. When you play five <laughs> maps of a game and people call you washed, you miss five maps of the game and people say you're done? This is what Zywoo has to deal with right now. And I'm glad he's had an opportunity to put everyone in place because he's back now, he's ready to play. I wonder if I think Machu would you know, be this passionate if it was any other player, but I'm oh, fully mm. behind you there, Machu. We've seen Zywoo really, really pumping up into formers, but coming into you know a bit more of CS2. And that's where the comparison over on the side of Cloud9, um, it gets a little bit shaky, right? Because the all thing situation over there, it's a bit complicated, Jacob. Well, it's complicated in the sense they don't have an AWP, right? Yeah. So going up against Zywoo, going up against Vitality, that's gonna be incredible, incredible tough. Boomage on paper is the main opera, but what we've seen so far in this tournament in the group stage is that everyone is picking up that gun once in a while. We've seen it on Exile, we've seen it on Hobbit, we've seen it on Boomage as well. So if I'm Sai Wu right now, I'm looking forward to feast on these guys. And Sai Wu is a very aggressive rifle and he's gonna be up front and I don't think Boomage can stop him, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for Cloud9. We're not here to judge the individual performance only from Boomage. We're talking about a puzzle, mm. trying to finish a puzzle and having this piece that you need that unlocks the rest of the image. And this is what he's been doing. You see the vibe you feel when they're playing together. You're talking about a core of Electronic, Boomage and Perfecto who've been winning. They won majors, they won here in Copenhagen. They know how it is to win together and they share that bound. And I think this has an invaluable asset for Cloud9. And guess who they forebode from this? I don't need to talk oh, about right, it. Yeah, it was Vitality, wasn't hmm. it, on this very stage. And I, I do want to dive into Electronic a little bit more because obviously a complicated situation for him, you know, basically the past couple of years. Now I feel like we're seeing Electronic back in the form we know and want to be seeing from him, Jacob. Without a doubt. To those of you who haven't been following the group states as intense as we have, he's an MVP candidate as of right now. The impact he's having on the server is unheard of. Almost like he's back to 2019, 2020 Electronic, where he was dominating the game. As I said, if you can dictate a game with a rifle, which Electronic can with his entry fracking, you are doing very well for yourself. And he's been able to do that at this tournament. And that's one of the key figures that Vitality will have to stop if they want to beat Cloud9 on the stage. He's the strongest asset for Cloud9, as simple as it is. And I didn't know if it was a dream, if it was just fabulating that he would immediately go back to his level once lifted from the leadership role. I didn't agree with that. I didn't want to see Electronic as a leader. I wanted him to be as a fragger. I want him to be as a machine out there. Turns out Boomich puts on the jersey, Electronic is immediately a beast. And our Vitality have to deal with that. So if you're going to give confidence levels for this look of Cloud9 right about now, where are you placing them? How satisfied are you with their results at the moment, Jacob? I think they're trending upwards, you know, but being able to beat Vitality on a stage like this with such a new roster being put together, that's it's gonna be incredible, incredible. Oh Wait my god, that What's noise means now? one thing and one thing only. We have the picks and bands rolling on in. Any expectations here, gentlemen? Anything you wanna see coming uh, out? Ah, you're gonna remove Ancient here. I don't yeah. think Vitality's messing your mouth with this. In terms of picks, Cloud9 don't necessarily have a, a, an obvious choice. I mean, they've played Anubis quite a few times. They go for Mirage. Ooh. This used to be a weakness for Vitality. And that's why they go for it. Vitality put a whole lot of efforts into this. And the new peak of Vitality. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love the 50-50 split in this arena between loving and hating Mirage, by the way. Like, booze oh. on this side, cheers on that side. Uh, Decider, of course, of gonna be coming course. down yeah. to the Inferno. Woo. We Couldn't gotta be love any that. Different. Couldn't we be any it. different. Jacob, for mm. you, uh, we're beginning on Mirage. How are you feeling about this one for Cloud9? I feel good. I feel good for Cloud9. I think there's a reason why they picked it, obviously, coming into this game. Vitality have been a little bit shaking on the map. We've seen good periods, we've been bad periods. However, I see Sphinx playing incredible good Counter-Strike right now, especially on a map like Mirage. You spoke about his trending up what's coming into the tournament. I'll tell you a little fun fact right here. He won 25 out of 28 face it matches. I think 24 of those on Mirage. So he's been power cracking that map over and over again. So look out for Sphinx. Well, we can see the players getting ready to grace this very stage. Our first semi-final here in the Royal Arena between Vitality and Cloud9. So guys, I think it is time to give them a truly royal welcome. <laughs> Vitality starting off strong and stable here in Copenhagen. I'm really excited uh, to be back playing in front of the arena, in front of crowd because of the emotions. I think it's where I belong. This is a very hot-handed vitality. I feel like Cloud9 is quickly getting better and better and better. We 
I really wanted to, to go here, to play here. In front of such a noisy and legendary crowd. returning since 2021. Saiwu with the trade. Clutch is on. Saiwu. Oh my god. Perfect positioning. There's no way. It is the big stage for Vitality. Boom, he trod his own. He's got a good shot there. And suddenly it's a one versus one. Oh, and he has a headshot. One more round from Boomage. to take us back to 2021 with a slightly different look. The black and yellow is now blue and white, but the same identity can be seen within their game. While some of this team know what it's like to play inside the Royal Arena, this is the debut for the Cloud9, that this Cloud9 now has a chance to show the world that the hype is real by digging deep and going all the way in such a prestigious event. Perfecto! High IQ and big brain plays striving for perfection. Hobbit! The veteran who reinvented himself and grinded back to the top. Boomich, back in action and ready to lead the charge. Electronic, anything but robotic, he's back to doing what he does best. Axile, no longer a youngster, here he can be the difference maker. and rediscovering themselves with Britain's best Mezzi. He's finally joined their campaign and they know what it takes to achieve glory. They understand how to handle the pressures of the stage. This is the first time the international squad of Vitality has made it inside the Royal Arena. They are focused on that glorious crown and it will take more than Spinks and Zywu to grab it. This will need to be the full force of the bees coming together at just the right time. Sphinx! Pouncing on his enemies and looking razor sharp. Zai Wu! The chosen one. He will always answer the call. Apex! A true leader with energy and passion that never goes down. Flames! Fired up, focused and full of confidence. Mezzi! The British beast ready for a new challenge. This is Vitality! Vitality.
Ladies here in one corner of the arena, we have a trio that knows the glory of lifting this very trophy. On the other, unfortunately, it was this trio that forbid Vitality in doing so in 2021. Gentlemen, we certainly have a game on our hands, and we're talking about two teams that are simply powering up coming into CS2, Matthew. Uh, it's just beautiful to see them behave as well. You're talking about it. We are talking about a team that are trying to figure out what the future holds. I think on both accounts, if you're a Cloud9, the future with Boomich, he as a leader once again, can they reclaim that glory that you were talking about and just put a nostalgia as well? We haven't even mentioned it. Extas, the coach of Vitality, here with the boys once again. We talk about 2021, that heartbreak loss in Grand Final. That's Extas with the French team at the time. It's Apex and Zaibu, the French core, losing to Navi. Then there's so much history between this matchup. Yeah, it's true. Real building projects, right? You're looking at a Cloud9 that is looking to get back on the top, as you described so well right here. You're also looking at a Vitality that just a couple of months ago won the Major in Paris. They used to be the best team in the world. They used to dominate CSGO at the beginning of it, or at the end of it. Now coming into CS2 as well, we want to see more from Sai Wu, we want to see more from Spinks, we want to see if Messi can elevate this lineup to once again become the best in Counter-Strike 2. I think a win right here on the States against each other would determine a lot of what we're going to see leading into the Major in Copenhagen for the next year as well. This is a mega, mega important game for both of us. Messi said, coming into this tournament, you know what, I don't see any reason why we cannot be lifting this trophy, but Cloud9 laying in front of them, this isn't going to be an easy task. We've seen so much dominance coming out of some real core members of this Cloud9 squad. You're absolutely right. And what these two teams have in common is that they're not ready. Neither of these teams mm. is ready by the proper definition. We're talking about having a deep boot camp, a six map pool, experience together. None of these teams have it. So they're going to rely on hard. They're going to rely on determination, on being able to have the resilience when shit hit the fans and you're having these hard moments. Cloud9 are warriors. You can see, you know, you play with Electronic, you know he's not giving up. Apex has that same vibe. But what about the rest of the cast? Is Messi ready for a fight? Well, that's the thing, right? You're asking and you're questioning whether or not Vitality is ready for that fight. I think having Apex on that stage, it's a huge plus. He thrives in those moments. He loves to be sitting on that stage, yelling, screaming, acting out like he always does. Cloud9, on the other hand, sure, they got a new trio coming in, the core of Navi all of a sudden being integrated into Hobbit and Exile. But we remember what happens when Cloud9 is on a stage. They've had a habit of mentally shutting down at times. Exile, one of the players that we have to question a little bit in terms of productivity on the server, can he stand for that pressure? Is he still, you know, hindered by that old DNA inside Cloud9? Or is he over that? Is he now looking towards Electronic thinking, nah, he got it for me. I'm going to play free. I'm going to be freed up now. That's what I want answered in this game. And this is one of the stories that we have to follow as well for Cloud9. Remember, we talk about a AWP-less roster currently. I know Boomin mm -hmm. is going to grab it here and there. Hobbit is going to have it on a couple of positions. But few people think that this is the actual long-term future of this roster. Changes might happen. Sure. If you're a Hobbit, if you're Axile, this is your audition you are marking for your career at the moment and they have to step up well we've got our maps we've got our teams and we certainly have the crowds but it's time to get our first semi-final underway royal arena i know this is what you've been waiting for but let me find out how you're feeling have we got some vitality fans in the house what about cloud nine The boos have already started in here. Okay, I like it. But you ready for some Counter-Strike? Yeah! Well, Royal Arena, Counter-Strike fans around the world, it's time to bring the Semi-finals, ladies and gentlemen, we're kicking things off on Mirage. Cloud9 versus Vitality here at the full finals 2023. It's Vitality defending on the CT forces here and uh, Zywo to be tested first. Oh, he is ready. First kill of the semi-final and it's Zywo. It couldn't be any better. Taking down Electronic. And we're on Mirage to begin with Henry. No delay on this one as he finds the second kill and taking down Boom, which as well. We are off with a hot start here. Vitality fighting left and right. Perfecto's down and out. It's just Axile and Hobbit left and they're not even getting a chance in this round. They can't even really step into it, Henry. They have already been swept away. Vitality, they look ready to begin this semi-final with a cracking start. Oh, we're not done just yet though here, Anders. Axile's putting up a bit of resistance. This five versus one, all of us 
sudden has been cut down to size. He's got a fighting chance here. He can actually pull this one off. Just flames to be as he fires in towards short. Surely not. What a way to kick things off in the semi-final. One more kill will do it. Biding his time, the bomb is down, but he's still got plenty to work with here. He's looking for it, he's edging it out. This should have never been. A huge blunder on the side of Vitality has brought them into a- no! Must be kidding! It's Axel with the ace clutch in the pistol to start the semi-final with. I can't believe it. It was looking like the job was done. We are waiting for the, the round to be over. A chance for... Cloud9 to bounce back, work out their force five for the second, but no, it's Axel in a one versus five. Absolutely remarkable. Have you ever seen anything like it? What a way to kick things off here. Vitality with a force five in response. An absolute calamity in the first round. Never in all my years, Henry. I've never seen that happen like that. A one versus five, a Glock, they know where he is. All they have to do is relax. They have the experience. They should be the better team coming into this one. They're certainly the favorites. And they make a mistake. They keep fighting him one at a time. They, none of them could stop themselves. Oh dear, well, that makes for a spicy beginning. Second half is coming up here, and they have bought into this one. MP9, Scout, three Deagles in play. We'll see if Vitality have what it takes to shut this down. The first shot not ringing true, and that's the only defense happening on this bomb site. so it, I mean, it might be worth saving, as boring as it might sound. Yeah, I think that's the only choice at this stage. Oh my days, it will be Cloud9 finding 2-0 here. One frag is all that's required in round number two. Apex goes down towards the B bomb site, they flood through, and that's it, job done. Still catching our breath, a one versus five and as Vitality had that in the palm of their hand. Every kill looks so clean and concise up until that moment. And you were just wrapping the round up and you just started finding a couple more kills. The action, the, the drama started to rise and all of a sudden three were found and now Cloud9 are up two and zero. What a performance from Axa, a player that's arguably been missing the entirety of 2023. He has. It was the big talking point because we were so excited about Electronic playing well. But the question was, where is Axile? Now in the quarterfinals, he showed it. He showed that he's still here, that he's still got what it takes. But obviously, you don't know if that's going to last. That was, you know, a one game performance. You want to see it continue. Well, certainly did a great amount of work coming into this one. Wow, what a way to begin. I mean, we were, you know, trying to step in lightly, sort of get warmed up into it. And then boom, this is how we begin. Well, this will be a real test, a mental fortitude now for Vitality. That's such a rough round to recover from. They did save some of those Deagles. The MP9s, most notably the Scout, I suppose. I'll be sent over towards the B side of the map here. That's where Cloud9 are going to try their luck once again. Hobbit leaving the charge with the Scout. Calls out the, calls out the Scouts on this side of things here, but that Mac 10 it might be enough. Flashbang goes through and the commitment here from Vitality. Oh, grenade down, but Sphinx with a good kill. Not a lot of damage on anyone else. The Molotov back there somehow doing a fair bit more damage than I was expecting. The Scout, it should have been dead already. I can't believe Sphinx actually lands the second shot there on Zaboomic. That's maybe a bit too much. But um, this is smart. Smoke off. Just make sure you deny anything. Wild spray coming out here, but the bomb has been planted. So all in all, they should be in a good spot. Yeah, it looks like it's under control here. Got a little bit dicey, I suppose, with the Sphinx scouts. Started to hit absolutely everything there on the defense, but wasn't enough. Overwhelmed, taken down eventually. Zywa has been spotted as well. He won't be saving anything going forward. That is round confirmed at this stage. Just Flames remains with the MP9. And that will be the 3-0 start here. For Cloud9, it's their map pick of Mirage. Nuke up next, and what a way to kick things off here. Flames are going to farm some extra cash, and he'll do just that. Another $600 in the bag. Double kill found, so every little helps here. They're going to need a strong start to recover from this one. It means he can almost certainly drop the AWP over if required, but there we have it. Couldn't ask for much more from Cloud9 here. Sphinx did absolutely everything he killed with that scalp. It's not a weapon that's as popular in CS2, but it was never in danger of the round slipping away. As uh, there we have it. Fist bumps come through. Vitality now need to bounce back. Will we see the Zywe Warp to kick things off? It's on Mirage, so it, it, it is a bit less popular on this particular map, but we will see it right away. It's, it is a fan favorite. Um, obviously, orps in general in CS2 have been just a little bit less successful, but 
you know, it's been changed. We had some updates, we had some patches, and it does feel like Sai so would be one of the people who would, you know, want to pick it up as early as he possibly can. Obviously, there's a massive impact with that particular weapon. Round number four. They have some decent utility on that side as well, but I'm not seeing a single defuse kit, so there's something, you know, right down to the back of your mind. If it comes to a bomb plant, that could be a real issue for that CT side. Well, it's all quite calm and quiet for now, but it will be that A execution from Vitality here. They will have to defend in Cloud9. Smoke's available. We'll see whether this is going to be enough, and as you imagine, it's a smokes towards CT spawn, bricks, jungle. Hard choice for Apex to make, right? Is he going to play in behind the smokes or in front of them? If he's in front, he's alone. So really seeing a little bit of a Molotov coming in. Good counter smoke, actually. Flashbang on top, actually, an HG to really slow them down. They're still running through. They don't want to be slowed down, so they're committing to it. Good spray from Apex. Good follow-up as well. He gets the headshot, taking down Hobbit. And in the middle of all of it, through the smoke, it's Saibu to get another kill. Apex, the captain of the team, and three kills. Looking wow. for the clock. He shuts it down. That is so well played. Yeah, that's a real captain's performance there. Rock steady from Apex. Holding on the bomb side, he's got the M4A4 in hand, that stopping power, the extra 10 bullets makes a world of difference in those sort of scenarios. And uh, yeah, a little bit underwhelming there for Cloud9 for their, their first real gun round there, Anders, considering they had everything going in their favor, plenty of time on the clock, execution. You could see the Apex wasn't really blind at all, wasn't pressured, and hits every single shot required there. It's gonna be the first round for Vitality on their CT campaign. We go 3-1. Money, actually pretty questionable for Cloud9. They're gonna take that early buffer of rounds and just take the, the eco hero we see. Yeah, that one round where they lost everything to flames, yeah, that, that add up, that, that makes a difference in the end. And you know, this is, I just, I love watching Apex play for a bunch of different reasons. Like it's the emotion, it's just the, the you know, his individual investment in the game. It's also the fact that you never really know what level of Apex you're going to get. Because there are, there are games from Vitality where Apex is top fragging and those games are so wild and they become such a different team. The fact that he completed that quad kill in that round makes me think, you know, maybe this could be one of those games where he's just feeling really hot. Bear in mind, Vitality certainly are the, the favorites here in this matchup. Yes. An absolute nightmare of a start, losing a five versus one, but Apex is dragging them back into it here. Opening frag has been found, and he gets the second as well. You might be onto something, Andy. He's got the hot hand as Spinks will chime in as well. It looks to be a much cleaner round here, Vitality. Up against just the pistols, but uh, making light work of them. Perfecto remains towards the same ramp. Desert Eagle in hand, just gonna wait it out, see if anyone oversteps the mark, offers himself up for free. But uh, there won't be much he can do with this one. The bomb is down towards middle, but Vitality bouncing back, Anders. You're right, though, those kills that Flames got uh, certainly made things expensive. You expect them to have at least armor and some yeah. eagles in this sort of round, but that's a bit of a gimme. Vitality on the comeback trail here as they post two rounds in a row. Have a better mind, that was a full eco pretty much from the likes of Cloud9 here. So we're going to expect AKs across the board. And also denying the bomb plants here. I mean, that all adds up at the end. So you know, a couple of, couple of good things being accomplished by the CT side at the beginning of, of the game. Yeah, the fact that Apex looks so fired up as well. Yeah, uh, I like that. That's uh, it's quite foreboding. We'll see whether he can maintain this level he's displayed so far. New boy Mezzi showing some aggression here towards the underpass. Flashbang successful. No one there, though. Got to retreat back in towards middle. He's got Zywe patrolling towards the window, but we'll hold towards the underpass for now. Good flash. There's the setup for it. Takes a while, but he does get the kill. Maybe could have fallen back. Hobbit. That's a really good return. Boom, which with the headshot. That's the Galil to take down Apex. Did he not have any head armor? I feel like he died a little bit too quick then. Either way, Saimu, you're not going to get caught off guard. You're going to have to be a lot quicker than that if you want to catch the Wu. It's now a two versus three, and the bomb has been planted. And Hobbit's control in the middle, so they know there's not going to be any rotation coming through that way. It's a very powerful position for Cloud9 to be in. It absolutely is. They've got their man advantage. The bomb is ticking at some pace. There's a smoke available. A couple of them, in fact, as Flames will make his way through towards the bomb type. First kill, incredibly important. Absolutely nails Axel here. Smoke will go down. Now they've got a fighting chance. And they have the kits as well. They find Hobbit through the smoke bomb. And there's the lineup. That's everything. Oh my god! How did he do that? Uh, so we're finding one more <laughs> kill. Did he get four in that round with the AWP? <laughs> through the smoke. Stopping anything from happening and getting the defuse. That's unbelievable. All right, you got Zywu pissed after that pistol. 
He yeah. is looking fired <laughs> up. He wants to make sure that all of these rounds go in their favor. This is a four versus two Anders on this retake, hitting what? everyone through the smoke here. Oh, God, that final kill. That is pure filth from Zaiwu. As Vitality now looking like the more dominant team. What Three a disgusting a way to find him. If Boomich gets around the corner, it is such a different round. Orp versus M4, AK trying to see if he could find it. But it's tied up. They got the bomb plant at the very least, so a little bit of a hero AK being picked up on Boomich. Tech nines mostly for the rest. No, just one deagle. That's interesting. Yeah, it's surprising it goes in the hands of Boomich here, but we'll see what he can do with it, Anders. He is the boss, Henry. You gotta he do is. what the boss says. <laughs> He's made an oh. executive decision as Hobbit. He'll manage to find at least one headshot there. That's from the palace position. Brought back though to a four on four quickly by Flames. Nice little boost here. You'll see this a lot throughout the CT Forces campaign. But one player that's electronic might have found his way through towards the murder hole. Zywo is on top of it though. One step ahead of the curve as you might expect. And that'll be the man advantage now for Vitality on this partial buy. So hard to catch Saibu looking the wrong way, no matter where he is. Just always, like you said, seems to be a step ahead. He always knows what's coming next. 50 seconds on the clock now. And the bomb is right there in front. Axile, slow step, he's still... Oh, that's such a weird peak, but it works out. Messi, though, stands strong. He's down to 11 health, but I thought he was going to for sure be traded in that moment. Yeah, that's massive from Messi. He goes down. That's a very complicated round there. Zywu trying to defend B with the AWP. Could have been overwhelmed here. It looks like it should be absolutely fine. Uh, a little bit too close for comfort with a couple of dinks towards the end, but it will be Vitality now taking the lead after a disastrous start here on Mirage. Their opponent's pick. Uh, it's Messi though, recovering things here nicely. Huge. A little double spray down there. It's absolutely everything that he survives and protects the B bomb site. So uh, well done to Messi, the latest addition to Vitality, of course. And here we go, Anders. Our first tactical timeout. A chance to assess what we've seen so far. I don't think anyone predicted a, a 1v5 pistol round to kick things off here in the semi-final, but spectacular, it hasn't, isn't it? hasn't seemed to help them out that much in terms of momentum. Uh, imagine if Vitality picked that pistol up. This could be a very different game right now because they have absolutely walloped them in every yeah. single gun round. Well, that's where I think, it, you know, that's where leadership comes into it, right? And experience. You, 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 you've tried it many times. Maybe not necessarily a one versus five pistol in the semi-final, but you've certainly tried having upset it, <laughs> upsetting rounds. Unfortunately, Trumpet Guy, we left him in France. Um, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get him here. We tried, but um, yeah, I missed that guy. I must say, uh, that's, um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what you would, you would want out of a leader like Apex, is to say, just put it behind us. I know it's, a, it's an upsetting yeah. round, but forget about it. But he's been leading by example, to be honest with you. True. The he's finding and the, the confidence he's showing on the server right now, it's inspiring. Even for a spectators here. Oh, a missed smoke towards middle. That is not ideal at all. Zaiwu will have full vision. Trying to buy himself more time with the incendiary down. And there's a freebie. It's actually Mezzi that picks it up here. Cloud9 are actually lucky they've only lost one player on route. Hobbit making what? up for it here. Beautiful shot with the AK-47. Taking matters into his own hands when he had to there, Anders, and somehow brings it back. That was looking like a horrible setup. But Cloud9 have found a four on four. Imagine the thinking that goes into it. You see the window smoke is missing. You, you hear the AWP. You know it's Cywo holding the window and you're hobbing and you're saying, oh, I will think I'll deal with the, the challenge. I'll swing him anyway and just yeah. to take him down. Back no down. fear at all. That's really sick. Apex to take down Perfecto in the middle. And just like that, a three versus three. I say it, electronic. He gets to live for another second before Sphinx takes him down. The bomb is lost in the middle. So yeah, they have 50 seconds, but they're stretched out. Axile on one side of the map, Hobbit on the other side. They can't even help each other out here. Yeah, but Hobbit's got a very interesting position. He's now initiating the backstabbing towards CT spawn. So after like 10 seconds or so, Flames is going to be aware of that prospect. I'm sure they're checking towards the murder hole right now. But you're right. The bomb is compromised. It's down to Hobbit to see if he can find a few incisions here on the defense. But like we said, Flames more than ready for it. And uh, that's going to leave Axel in pretty much an unwinnable scenario here. 20 seconds remaining and no bomb collected. I'm going to save the AK, walk away with it. Quite a few rounds here, but they're just lacking the bomb plant. It'd be nice for Cloud9 if they could get a little bit of extra cash. The round loss bonus started to pick up a little bit, so that bomb plant really uh, matters. Yeah, it's a maximum now, and so the bomb plant, you're, you're dead on there. Without that, they're only going to get $3,400 per player. You can see that reflected on your screens right now. Axel will get no further money here, so this will be another kind of partial buy sort of territory. 
Uh, it's gone rather flat here since the one versus five around. They almost certainly should have lost, and that goes without saying. Uh, since the gun rounds have began, though, you can see this has been pretty comprehensive for Vitality. They haven't really given too much away. There haven't been too many uncomfortable rounds here. Uh, they won a four versus two en route, of course, but uh, ever since then, it's looked very good for Vitality as they're en route to the grand finals here. Five to three, as we said, should be about a partial buy. Uh, it's actually pretty compelling, to be honest with you. We've got a, a Galil, some Tech Nines, Mac Tens, and uh, a lot of utility. Yeah, this definitely could work. And there's going to be a full B execution here. But look who's arriving, the final boss of Counter-Strike. He's ready and waiting for you as a full commitment comes in. Yeah, certainly is ready. Mezzi seems to be red hot at the moment too. The little burst coming out, the instant headshots. He's going to get another one there and a flick. And it's Mezzi and Saiwu. What a combination. I must say, individually, this sometimes happens in big games even. A team will show up and you can sort of tell it takes them like half a map to really warm up into it, but that's not the case for Vitality. Each individual member has shown up here. They're, they're hitting all the shots. It's ridiculous. And Cloud9 look beyond tilted as well. Like Electronic is uh, absolutely seething. It's not looking good. These executions are flat. They're not getting plants down. Like we said, that's a pretty good buy. Yeah. And no one's even got a shot off. Like, I think they, they flashed themselves. They couldn't break through the initial defense. It was very telegraphed and Vitality just in cruise control right now. Great tenacity bouncing back after a 1v5 disaster in the pistol round. They're now six rounds in a row, 6-3 overall. Yeah, but even if you just take a, take the temperature of the game right now, that one versus five pistol is just, it seems like distant past now. I don't think Vitality even thinking about it anymore. They're like, oh, but it doesn't matter. We're just right back into it. Doubling the scoreline. The 6-3 right now. These are looking really, really good for the Vitality side. And again, we're playing MR12. So, you oh. know, this is going to come to a close much quicker than you'd want. It goes from bad to worse as well, because they, they spent a bit too much money, I suppose, in the previous round, And We've okay. got Mac-10s and Galils once again. They're doing the set pieces out of spawn. This is another execution what? in towards eight. No map control taken, no default run. Just going to try and get that bomb planted. Uh, it can work. If they can just get a bomb down, it can enable the star players. We go, Spinks down in shadow. Good headshot, but um, the Mac-10, the mobility, that's what it's good for. And he runs down Spinks, so good kill for Axile there. Four versus four, Apex, he's thinking about something crazy. He's inside of the smoke, surely he wouldn't. Surely he wouldn't, right down, sprays oh, oh, it's a no! Breaks it and triple, what a round from Apex! That was a thing of beauty, there is one more kill to find, but surely the job is done. Can he close things out? That's one of the best rounds of the tournament so far. So much discipline, perfectly timed, and beautiful execution with the M4A4. A masterclass in Counter-Strike from the in-game leader of Vitality. Holding his breath inside of the smoke, Henry. Look at and him. And he's go. activated. So he made every correct decision there, Andrew. Truly. He, he, sure, he doesn't deny the plan, but the fact he takes down the, any sort of threat that's in front of him. The player planting the bomb can't come off. He can't shoot you back. He takes down the defending player. The planter controls the spray up towards the palace. Apex playing like a king right now. It's going to be an A rush, Anders. They're running out of ideas here. Can they break through the defense? It's flames to go down, but Zaiwu is ready and waiting. And that slows down the entire attack. Nobody wants to be the next guy to face Saibu at the moment. Good smoke. That's actually super significant. Now let's see if they can get a quick bomb plant. If they can control CT spawn, they should be able to. Saibu fishing for a kill there with the HE, but not quite being allowed to. The bomb is getting planted on the other side. Finally a step in the right direction here for Cloud9, although quickly Apex trying to make up for it. He's not going to be able to get that kill, and Messi goes down. This is the first sign of life here for Cloud9 in quite a while. Axel getting the kill onto Sphinx, and it just leaves Saiwu, and he's a little bit too far away. And this is how you want to get rid of him, right? Smoke him off. Make sure he can't find those shots with the AWP, and then take care of the rest. Finally, it's a fourth round for Cloud9 after losing, what, seven in a row? Seven rounds in a row, Anders, you're dead on. And uh, you could see, tactically, they seem like they're out of ideas. It's a straight-up A rush here. They've, they've called out a spawn the last few rounds. And, uh, yeah, this one seemed a bit desperate. But if you can hit your shots, if you can break through the initial trade, it can always work out. It's not sustainable, but we'll take it for now. Boomage will finally break through after seven rounds conceded there. Uh, it's not much cause for celebration. That's their first real gun round since winning the pistol. It was scrappy, but they'll take it all day long. And they lost the first frag as well, so fair play to them. That was a 5-on-4 deficit. They managed to bring it back in their favor. 
there we have it seven to four one more round to be played here it's enough you know the fact is their map pick though in fact they haven't really got cooking whatsoever in terms of the defaults there hasn't been any sort of even close rounds there was a three on three post plan it seems like vitality just dominated them every single step of the way but finally an a rush pays dividends here for cloud nine one more opportunity to post around here on their t side and i would say they need to they're looking rather flat here today yeah and the semi-final when it really counts i think for the mental aspect you're right just make sure you at least get that make sure you at least pick up this last round so that it hasn't just been a, a flood of vitality rounds coming in Get that 7-5 scoreline, which would be pretty reasonable. That's definitely enough to make an interesting second half out of it. Molotov into the window instead of a smoke. Okay. Guess the smokes are a bit of a liability these days. If you trust them too much, they can be yeah. blown open. So Mo Molotov's a little bit of a different tool now. Very mid-centric defense. Seems like Vitality... They're not doing any of the, you know, double push towards A ramp, even pushing into Palace. They're staying far back and just taking the fights. Well, finally, something a bit more traditional here from Cloud9, running the defaults. No set piece out of spawn this time, no rush. Gonna be trying to take some prime real estate if possible. Juggling some utility. You can see Spinks just trying to be a little bit tricky above this smoke right now, seeing if you spot anyone over towards top or middle. I work out for him, you know. They're starting to encroach in that position. 50 seconds remaining. Still with the majority of the utility on the T side here, but this is where Sphinx can strike. So patient, but so is Hobbit on the other side. They're actually trying to box him in. They throw a Molotov at him. Sphinx takes, takes away that. with a headshot. He should never have been allowed to do that. Four versus four now. What a steal that is. 30 seconds left. Flames gets another one, but the trades continue. Looking good for Cloud9. Maybe they can get this bomb planted. There's the headshot. Electronics starting to get activated. That's only his fourth kill. They need him to come alive. Oh. And there's another one taking down Apex. It's just messy left. My, oh my. Just when Cloud9 looked like they were done here in the first half, they find a couple of rounds to close things out. It's a three versus one. Messi, surely nothing can be done here. He is known for his unbelievable clutches. It's in his wheelhouse, but he'd have to play this one perfectly. In position for that first frag, doesn't quite connect. I feel like that was his opportunity. Not gonna happen. And ladies and gentlemen, you have to say, after a bumpy ride there, Cloud9 pulling two rounds towards the end of it is absolutely fine. They're still in this one. The semi-final continues. It's 7-5 in favor of Vitality. All right, gentlemen. We've gathered you here today because you are the best of the best. We've assembled you to play a little bit of laser tag. We know you guys are skilled inside the server, but we need to find out if those skills transfer here to in real life. It's a simple team death match, first to 50 eliminations. Gentlemen, best of luck out there. Locked and loaded. Move, move, move! Oh. 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 Oh, I died. Well, I killed you, Dad! Move back! Good to go. Watch the left flank! Left flank! Move, move! Double kill. Double kill! Go down. Go go. Go. <laughs> go. Move back! <laughs> right side! How do you reload? <laughs> Stop spawn camping! Got what? <laughs> Good guy. Bro, I can't see my coaster. He's a good <laughs> What? Triple kill! I have to tie my shoe! Guys, no way! We're getting pushed! <laughs> Bro, bro, he's... Move up, move up! Nice. Everywhere. Tango down. Ah! Ah! Oh, what the f***, <laughs> <man>, you f***! <laughs> oh. Go on. No! Let's push him, there's two dead! Double kill. Triple kill. What? 
Just, just anchor. Here. One, two. Locked in the. Oh. Oh. Tangled down. Oh. The pressure glass. Pressure glass. Box. I think we suck, guys. Oh, we both died. <laughs> <laughs> Mission complete. We won, what? Yeah! How many kills did we get? I don't know how. I got nine. The nine. Let's go, cheers. Good job, guys. Yes, Thanks for the carry. Woo! All right, gentlemen, so we're wrapped up. I, I take full responsibility for our failures, gentlemen. And thank you, Elgin Gonson, as well, for sponsoring this and making it possible. I hope you guys had fun. It was enjoyable sharing a server with all of you. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the semi-final Cloud9 versus Vitality continues here on Mirage. It's been a bit of a roller coaster so far, Anders. It looks it like has. Vitality are the much better team, but Cloud9 have been plucky, winning some 1v5s and a couple of cheeky rounds towards the end has given them a fighting chance here. Seven to five, it's still wide open, but Vitality, they look like the stronger force. They certainly do right now. But so come on, there we go. They're ready. You can sense it. Vitality with a good lead going into the second hour, but nothing has been decided yet. It is not over. This pistol round could be huge for Cloud9 if they could pick it up. Perfecto's about to be put to the test here, but he's got some insurance. How did he land the headshot? He actually got it. Now it's Hobbit just hiding back here. Axile, crisp and clean, but Hobbit can't fulfill his mission. He's going to be going down, and suddenly it's a three versus three. Oh! Cyro landing a banging headshot to take down Axile. Yeah, but he's low. That grenade could find him. It does. And it denies the plant here. We're back to a two versus two. The wide is wide open here. We'll see Electronic and Boom. It's both retaking from the kitchen position. A lot of firepower coming through. It's Electronic with the jewelies that can't hold on. Vitality bouncing back. They'll take a pistol of their own, Anders. It was scrappy. They didn't even get the bomb planted. It comes down to raw firepower in the end. And a one versus one that could have gone either way. He was so low on health at the end. The duelies could have won out. Look at how they're bumping into each other here. It's so awkward, but Spinks, ice cold. His performance in this tournament has just been legendary up until this point, and he's not letting looking to let go. Yeah, he's been one of the absolute best performers in the tournament, showing phenomenal career peak form. And we'll see now Cloud9 on the full eco, I'm afraid. USP's pretty much across the board. We have a P250 for Electronic, a single flashbang. Nothing too interesting in terms of the setup here. Looks like they'll be swinging in towards middle. We've got a Zeus in the underpass, Andrew. You'll be pleased to hear that. That was good for a bit of comedy. Yeah, but uh, for now, this is going to send in the Scout of Flames of the MAC-10. He'll presumably be checking out every single nook and cranny, making sure that every position is flushed out. He's done a fantastic job. That will do, kid. Three kills in that MAC-10. Farms a load of money there. $1,800 for himself and pretty much secured the round here. I can't imagine a world where Axel is able to find another miracle here. It all starts this interaction. As I will take him down and the Zeus well, might still get some action here. You never know. Yeah, with the right exit, you know. He's patient. You've got to give him credit for that at the very least. But he zoom out even just a little bit here. It's Vitality with a 7-5 lead or an 8-5 lead coming in winning this round i mean they're getting dangerously close that first buy round coming out from cloud nine it, it, it just has to be flawless it has to be rock solid otherwise they're going to be in this really really weird position yeah well they took the full eco right so they'll have enough for the rifles they'll have to sacrifice a few key pieces though we're talking helmets diffuse kits maybe incendiaries okay well that certainly helps things out i'm not gonna lide to you that extra six hundred dollars yeah i enable an awp going forward whether they need it is yet to be seen and there's a whole conversation about Cloud9 and the Sniper Rifle right now. Uh, it changes every single map. And uh, Boomer is technically the, the main AWPer, but uh, anyone seems to pick it up on this squad. As Flames getting it done with the MAC-10 there. Job done. They lost a couple of frags, so it uh, wasn't too bad for Cloud9. And this is where the game really begins here. Boomage does bring out the AWP Anders. In terms of sacrifices, not the most amount of utility. You can see Incendiary's missing here. Perfecto is staying on the MAC-10. 
I didn't think he would do that. That's very rare. Most players will throw that away. Yeah, that's a bit of an interesting it mean, scenario. It means he can drop the, the AWP for Boomic, which has picked up the first kill here. So that's why they've gone for it, and it seems to be working out. And so far, so good. And now they can afford to play slightly more passive and maybe take fewer risks here. Axile is certainly keeping an ear to the middle, but he hasn't really seen or heard anyone yet. And look at how close they're actually getting to this catwalk position. Kind of dangerous with the B bomb site. Smoke is up, but Flames looks like he just wants to walk right through it. Certainly thinking about it. Electronic, he's got the line up and he's got the spray down fine, but somehow Flames gets to live through it on 50 health here. Boomich gonna get flashed out of this position. It's Molotov on the other side who can't even really run to reposition himself. Yeah. Still, they have the man advantage. We've got this backstab being initiated by Mezzi as well here. He's kind of the linchpin of this operation. All of the CT forces are rotated towards the B side of the map. They've realized that's an overcommitment here. Why have they done that? And they're trying to transition. Noticing it's going to be an A play now. This position towards the murder hole becomes very important. I don't think they rotate through it. They've actually opted for CT spawn. They've realized what is up. There's still a good chance here, but the bomb might not be planted. Axel will find one from Connector. What a huge kill for Axile. He did all the damage to Flames as well. Boomich, a little bit more patience, and he has that kill, but he gets found instead. Another problem starting to mount itself here for Vitality is the fact that the clock is running very low now. 15 seconds, the spray couldn't be any better for Hobbit there, and it's just messy. One versus three. Oh, oh, no! oh! It's close! It's so close! Perfecto! Saving them with a the Mac 10 my god, they nearly threw it away. It's about as close as it gets. Uh, Mezzi, one bullet away from glory. The Galil, very powerful in CS2. 35 bullets in reserve. He finds the first two. The final player lines up for him. Just a couple more bullets would have done it. But bear in mind, it all started this opening pick. They took a gamble here on the CD side, keeping the MAC-10 in the hands of Perfecto, opting for a Boomage AWP. And it pays dividends. It they does. They get the opening frag. They pick up the round as well. It's nine to six. Vitality, with no plants, are struggling to buy here in round number 16. It's going to be a B play. Incendiary gets dropped. Zaiwu makes the full commitment. Can they find the opening frag? He's made his way down. That's the first step. That's about half the mission right there. And not finding the entries, though, that they need. Boomich, he's really making this AWB work. What an exciting wrinkle to this match. Mezzi and Apex left, and I don't think they're going to get a bomb pound on this one. Two, third kill for Boomich. He's absolutely stepping it up. They're bringing this game back, Henry. They are not ready to let go of Mirage yet. Boomich, the boss, delivers once more with that AWP. It's been questionable throughout the tournament. When we enter the playoffs, he'd only found 11 kills of it, but he's absolutely dominating right now. Some very impactful frags, denying the plan once again. That was already a compromise by Anders, so you'd assume it has to be the Eco coming up next. They know it as well. Those are the Tech Nines, the Galils, the AKs, the remnants of their cash are now just left with the Glocks. Nine to seven. Cloud Nine. Bringing this one back round by round, brick by brick. You can see Apex knows this, uh, this round is pretty much null and void. Nothing they can do. It's going to be holding back, trying to bait out some utility here, use it as a timeout, catch their breath. Yeah, this why one's not? going to be a, a one round game after this. It's going to come down to the economy so hard for either one of these two teams. There's no question about it, really. A vitality. Probably hoping to dodge the kind of position that Cloud9 were in, where they lost seven in a row, and they got so few bomb plants in that time. Yeah. Any bomb plant that Vitality can get, especially early on in the half year, is going to make a big difference to how much of an economy they're going to have going forward. So let's just see. Run boost. There's no one there on the other side, so not going to get any funny, tricky business happening. Like you said, this round just kind of a, should be a bit of a throwaway. Yeah, an absolute gimme. Just finding a couple of kills here would be relatively successful. They are going to be smoked out. I guess that's the commitment they're looking for. A couple of kills. Not the way they would like to find them, though. Apex takes down Zaiwu in the process. Very clean with Cloud9. Just what the doctor ordered. It's been some disastrous rounds on both sides of the equation here today. But now Cloud9... After losing the pistol in the second half, the first gun round was theirs. They converted against the partial buy and now the full eco as well. So three rounds in a row, nine to eight. And we'll see a buy coming back in favor for Vitality. There's certainly no AWP available for Zai Wu. They will have to make do with the AK-47 and that will be the case across the board for Vitality. And it looks to be some potential aggression here, Anders. 
Yeah, yeah, you can see that again. And he actually pulls it off. Boom it! It's looking impeccable with this AWP right now. Beautiful round. Look at his understanding. He finds Spinks alone, and that's all the information he needs. He runs right up. There could have been someone else there, but he's so sure of what he's running into, what he's reading. The sick play coming out from him. That's got a rattle vitality even just a little bit here. Yeah, and no one's expecting that for the no. AWP, the rushing up like a raging bull in toward that underpass. It's the sort of play that will win you these High intensity rounds, we've got a four versus three here. Apex looking to recover. Boosted up, looking for that connector kill, and he pulls it off as well. There's Hobbit going down, there's still plenty of time to work with here. Smokes down, oh and headshots delivered. Mezzi brings it back to a three versus two. The HP though, tantalizingly low for Cloud9 here. They'll pop the first smoke, no one on the other side, as Apex and Flames will bury themselves in towards the A round. They need to let Mezzi do the heavy lifting here. I think that kill makes all the difference, though. It's, it's a really hard call to go for this 2 on 3 retake. And they might not even realize, maybe they know that one of those two players is low, but I'm not sure if they realize both of them are, so... Yeah, they're gonna walk up. away from it. I, it's hard to blame them for it. Think of how many positions there are on that A bomb site to try and check when you're going for the retake. They did have the smoke and the kit, so that's always an interesting, you know, thing to play around, but... Wow. Well, that's all about Mezzi's. Massive contribution there. That shot towards the jungle area, and it looked like they were down and out in that round. That all started that boomage push towards the underpass. The aggression in towards middle from Electronic. They had themselves a lovely little four on three with damaged players. Apex opened things up, and then this was the shot. They got them back into the round. Absolutely. Stunning from Mezzi. Getting it done here in the semi final. If he doesn't get that shot, they have to go through the nightmare of trying to plant the bomb with two players that are, you know, one bullet away from death. Anything comes through the smoke, you're just going to be gone. Any HEs on top, it's going to be over. Boomich trying to repeat history, running down through the underpass, but he's not going to find anyone this time. They are all on the other side, looking to execute into the bomb side. Yeah, I think this is a pop flash setup, Anders. Three players ready and waiting. Here comes the utility from Apex. He'll smoke in towards Spore by the looks of things. Flash over and full send. No looking back now. They're going for this one. Here's the flash. Yeah, full send is right. They're ready to go. Coming out of the palace more than they were expecting. And Axile goes down. The spray for Hobbit is not enough. You can't stop that many players. Sphinx is going to be able to pick him up. And Electronic, he's got one in return. It's still a doable round here. Right at the edge of the smoke. But they got to take care of the middle. They have to get rid of Mezzi. He's in the back line causing havoc. And Electronic knows it. Good kill to get rid of him. So now the bomb is planted, but Vitality in a very awkward after plant situation here. Oh, the, but that's, they nearly get the boost. That would have been interesting. So he just knows no fear. Up on the box, ready to find anyone that's coming at him, but he can't take care of Electronic. A triple kill for him at the moment, and Apex on his own. The captain of the team is shot in the back by Boomich. And Cloud9 will pick up the round. This is an important one. Yeah, it's a pretty clinical victory as well. Three players surviving. They didn't over-rotate, it didn't commit until everyone was in position to strike at the same time with no smoke to deal with there. They had the man advantage. And that's a change of pace there from Vitality. Apex calling for the pop execution anders from the Palace area. Three players ready and waiting. They actually traded out very effectively to kick things off. But the bomb wasn't planted quickly. Messi wasn't part of the fights. He was struggling to get involved. He was smoked out from the connector. Had to make a lot of noise to try and join up with his teammates there. Was taken down. And that's very nice. Cloud9 needed that. After giving up that previous round, their money would have been in jeopardy. And uh, we're just moments away from this first map being concluded as well. So these rounds carry a lot of weight. It will call for another timeout here on the Vitality side of things. They're second so far. They're still in the lead 10 to 9, but Anders, uh, the money, it's in an interesting spot. We're looking at like $3,000 on average, maybe a bit more. But uh, definitely worth the, the timeout here. They'll have a couple of players relegated down to the Tech Nines or Khalil's. So uh, whether they want to go for another set piece, or go back into those defaults, or maybe even squeeze out an AWP. I think they could just about bring one out uh, if, they, if they really wanted to force that issue. So, Deagle for Mezzi, Flames on the Galil, and AKs otherwise. You can see it's not too bad, uh, certainly lacking some utility as well, but it's uh, a serviceable round, but a very important one. It's allow Cloud9 to tie things up at 10-10. Apex still playing a, an amazing game. He's got 17 and 13. That should make them 
a really powerful team. They have everything they need right now. Sphinx with a good timing here, but Axile is able to win the fight on the other side. I can't believe it. It looked like the timing was going to be with Sphinx every single time there, but four on five to ensue. The bomb dropped quite far back, and it's a really forward defense on the A bomb side. Look at this. Three people in front of the site, really. And that's one of the rifles going down early as well. We've still got Mezzi on the Desert Eagle here. Boomage. He's had full control this CT campaign. He seems to find frags and confidence wherever he sets foot, this time planted in the B apartments here. If he dies to a headshot here, then the B bombs are just wide open. And they have the bomb in the middle. I mean, it could work out. Apex is dreaming of such a scenario. Axile, that's three people spotted. That's so much information. Yeah, so now Boomage has to be on high alert. As you mentioned, he's there alone as well. He's trying to patrol towards Shaw. Buying himself some time, a very nice incendiary. He might find an easy kill on Apex. He's playing this perfectly. Yeah, he really is. Throws in an HG and it actually lands heavily on top of Flames and Messi. We're down to 20 seconds. They might just save this round. I, I, I might have to. Because they don't have a choice. Yeah, Boomich has absolutely owned them there. Like, he's playing B alone. He finds the first kill in towards the apartment. He incendiary to buy himself seven seconds or so to deal with that player. And then they're locked out. They were smoked off. They didn't feel comfortable going for it. And ladies and gentlemen, Cloud9 have done enough here. They're going to tie things up. It's a flawless round as well. 10 to 10. Vitality with no choice but to save the three rifles, two of which are Galil's as well. They didn't really get anything going there. They're the ones starting to be locked out here on Mirage. They all started with this frag. Great job from Axile. And Boomich, you have to say, he's looking to be in fine form here in the semi-finals, Anders. So confident with the AWP, he's barely missed a shot thus far. How's that happening? I mean... With Zywu on the server, he's looking like the best sniper right now. Don't say it, Henry. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. How's it <laughs> happened? Well, right. we'll see. Not now everything we'll... has been said and done in this game, but I, I really can't believe it. I can't believe that Boomich is stepping up to this level. And now, there was a liability in some of the early games. Vitality are in financial hell. They save like two Galils and AKs. It means you have to force by around them. And once again, the Lost Bone is not really established. So it's Desert Eagles Tech Nines fully invested. At the very least, in this A execution, Anders, we need a bomb plan. Needed to sh start showing some signs of life here. Grenades at the ready. One deployed by Electronic. Doesn't quite connect. It'll be hard to take first contact. He's kind of split between the palace and the ramp position. The CTs have three players here, and they found the first kill, no problem. Yeah, Flames, I think, baited in by the sound. Electronic back here. He started to warm up a little bit more, looking for it. And speaking of warm him up, he's burned alive by Apex. That's not what he needed. Three versus three, but again, it's Apex. A little bit low on health, and they have the time. 50 seconds, they're going to decide to go somewhere else and see if they can recover this round. Yeah, they've called for the reset here. They've actually got quite a lot of utility. Smokes, flashes, double Molotovs here, but uh, the final boss, the boss man himself, Boomage. He'll be waiting with the AWP. Like I said, he has barely missed a shot so far. He's in a prime position to shut this round down. Can he do it once again? He will be tested. First player gets by, but he's got the call. He does miss. He will be put under pressure now. The Molotov locks him out. Clever of him to not take the first shot on the guy jumping, but wait for the second. But that second shot, he absolutely needed a hit. And now they're in a really weird position. Three versus three. Bomb planted. Still a smoke left on that T side, just now thrown out. So they're going to get blocked off for a long, long time here towards the catwalk side. Perfecto. Picking up a shot. Remember, Apex is low back here. Set up with a bit of a flash. It's Apex going down. Just Mezzi. One versus two, he's got close a couple of times, but Axel oh. just gonna edge him out instantly. What a great retake coming out. Kai, they're in the lead now, 11 to 10. They're bringing this game back. They really are. It was a three versus three. Vitality were weak and wounded, trying to make their way in towards B. They were given a give, bit of a gift there, Anders. The fact that Boomage doesn't hit the initial shot. They segregate him from the bomb site, but Sphinx knew that retake was coming. He had to act, try and have to try and get some information there, but lost the initial duel and then got traded out kill by kill. Boomich will survive and maintain the AWP as well to get that final frag. They have taken the lead here on Mirage. Their pick here in the Royal Arena. First map of this semi-final, 11 to 10. Money is still battered and bruised here for Vitality. It's a partial by this time. Oh my god. Maximum loss bonus and the smoke is wide open. Axel will capitalize, but Apex, he's not backing down just yet. 
Oh no! Oh. He missed it! Apex spins around and punishes him instantly. A three versus two now. Saibu is still here with the Deagle, the hand cannon, looking for anyone that he can. Apex, he's pulled him out of the fire a number of times. He's up to 20 kills. It's actually unbelievable what he's brought to this game. But he has to do it one more time in this round. Otherwise, it's Cloud9 getting to map point. And they can sense that victory coming. Electronic, he survived the triple HE into the window, just barely. Yeah. He's alive and kicking for now. Nine points of health. You can see the CTs have buried themselves in the A bomb site here, deep in towards CT spawn. Electronic behind that ticket booth as well. So it's Apex given the task of trying to get that bomb planted. They just wanted to go for the straight dry plant. Zywood to defend. Does he check the corner? He absolutely does! What a shot! Can't get the second. Apex thrown into the clutch here. Incendiary to buy him some time. He's got a good position here. I think he's going to oh. try and go round to either Palace or Connector. You'd assume Palace considering the plan, but back okay. he goes to checking the flanks and he'll commit towards this position. They have a smoke on Perfecto, so they can make this really awkward. They can force him out into the fight right away. Smoke the bomb, tap it once. You know he has to peek. He has to do it. And he's moved up in front already. Oh, this is so dangerous for Apex. He might get shot on the side of the head without even a chance. He's moved up, but there we go. Axile, perfect timing, perfect internal clock on him. And it's 12 to 10. What are we witnessing, Henry? It's Cloud9 now with a chance to take the map away from Vitality. Very similar scenes to that first half. It was Vitality winning the pistol this time and looking clean, looking good. But ever since the gun rounds have began, it's been nothing but CT rounds. Apex, two versus one, didn't have the HP and you're dead on with that smoke going down on top of the plant. So much pressure, you have to try and negate it, try and get close, a chance to spray down, but this didn't have the information to work with there. Out of time, out of luck, and maybe out of Mirage, because Cloud9, as you mentioned, on map point right now, 12 to 10, one more will do it. It was a partial buy in the previous Vitality, going for overtime here. Electronic though, playing to win. An aggressive push towards the top of middle, leads into his demise, as Flames will find the opening kill here in round number 23. I can actually make that push make sense in my own head because that's something they haven't really tried. Now, they've been yeah, a little right. bit aggressive in the middle, but they haven't pushed up to top mid. So why not try and do it? Why not try and see Vitality are going to be caught asleep? Sphinx might be put to sleep here. Boomage, he's got the right idea. Scopes up, but misses the chance. And even that is information to work with. Boomage has been alone a lot over there. Oh, he sees him. He sprays him down. It's a free kill on Perfecto. What a disaster for this one. Yeah, just when it looked like Cloud9 were in cruise control. And suddenly a fly in the ointment now. It's Boomage to be tested once again. Starting to drop off and form in this AWP, but there's the first shot. No it way. connects him towards Flames. He's being surrounded right now. No Flames way does he towards the apartments and towards Shaw. He's alone here, looking for the jump. He's on fire as well. The Molotov down and Saiwu. They edge him out. My god. Good patience, you've got to say, but we're at 30 seconds and they bring the bomb back. All right, it's under control. Mezzi has got CT spawn. Just don't don't lose the bomb. That's the only thing that could go wrong right now. And I think they've done plenty enough here. Yeah, it looks like it's absolutely fine. Vitality will live to fight another day or at least another round, as it will be Zywoo connecting the dots with the AWP. Finally gets it out on the T side here and it's Hobbit. 14 points of health, presumably dead now from Zywoo. One round away and tying things up and taking us to overtime. And a lot of those at this tournament so far. There's so much cash they're available on the CT side, you would imagine. After posting four rounds in a row, Anders, none of them have been that competitive. So I'm sure they're absolutely fine in terms of resources, but here's Zywood getting the job done. Boomich, unable to find multiple frags there. They are more than happy to leave him alone on an island with that AWP and see what he can do this time. It does backfire somewhat, and it will be the final timeout used here by Cloud9, their third one. Bear in mind, you get another uh, if we do make it to overtime. Yes. Good restraint shown, I would say, for Vitality to not just, you know, rush down Boomage, because that's how he can get multi-kills. They throw Molotovs at him, they wait him out, they've got Saibu covering the left-hand side of the box, they, they just kind of let him cook in there, uh, and it was too much, so... A little bit of restraint goes a long way. Semi-final deserves overtime, doesn't it? I'd love to see Vitality I think so. call this, this one stage, back. We've come this far now, Anders. Both teams looking impeccable on their CT sides here. Had a huge streak of rounds. We had uh, 
seven in a row from Vitality in their CT campaign. Cloud9 putting up similar numbers here as well. And can they seal the deal in regulation? One more will do it. Full buy. But no boomage AWP. It's rifles across the board here, Anders. An important distinction. He's been doing very well with the sniper, enabling him to play the B bombs at alone at times. He's over towards A for now. So what's the final call here? Holding in towards T spawn. Smoking towards the window room. Deployed by flames here. So you're gonna go for that basic control. Smokes down. Connector needs to be smoked off next. They're flashing towards top of middle. Trying to fend off any CTs on the other side. Messi is so far back in this particular execute. I wonder when he's gonna get activated in that palace. 55 seconds. They could still do pretty much anything. I mean, it's such an open position for Vitality to be in. Probably a lot will come down to what kind of kill of any they can get to enter this round with. 40 seconds. My god. It's going to be a scramble, whatever it is now, Anders. Final smoke down towards window. Ace foot looking likely with Mezzi's position towards the palace. It's Zaiwu now patrolling towards the ticket booth. Trying to cover his teammates, they make their way through connector. Flashbang to be deployed, and here they come. Electronic still. Oh, he's got the Molotov just now put out. Look at how it slows them down. That's in connector. With only 20 seconds left, they have to wait for the flames to disappear. But they will get Electronic. Spinks, there's the big opening wall and kill in the right direction. Boom, it's getting overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. Oh, Kills coming in from Spinks, and we are in overtime. <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way. What a beautiful round of Counter-Strike, orchestrated by Apex Air in the dying moments of regulation. They needed something miraculous. It's fantastic. They felt they were shrinking, and they slow it right down. It's meticulous, it's thought out, and it's Sphinx getting through the window, surprising the jungle player, his teammates providing distraction, and he finds three monumental kills from the window position. That is such a close round, with the Molotov down in connector, time running low. And they're not phased at all, they just keep going. Overtime now, first to 16, and the money has been reset, so we get that Boomich AWP back. And there's one on Sairu. Let's see how this plays out, oh my god. He was jumping away, Axile doing a job to oh! get one, but Hobbit, could he not see over? I don't know. sitting there, I don't believe it. He just offers himself up for absolutely free. That is wild. Zywood couldn't believe his luck. He's like, oh, there's, there's a second player in towards Connector. I guess I'll have to take him down as well. Yeah, just sitting there. Oh, this is not looking good, but Boomich is still alive and well. He has that AWP, as you mentioned. Perfecto will be in towards the B site. And what's the final call here from Vitality? They can still execute. They still have a couple of smokes in the mix, flashes, Molotovs, the four on two advantage, but you don't want to throw it away. You don't want to walk haphazardly in towards a bombsite without some of the risks eradicated here. So in towards the A ramp they go, Mezzi towards the palace as usual. We've got Sphinx patrolling the extremities. But they know it's a wide open A bombsite. Oh, here we go. He wanted it. He wanted to be the hero. Honestly, either way, in a two versus four like that, it was going to come down to some kind of a mad play. Now. Maybe dumping down the on the pass a little bit much, but either way, he'd have to get like a, a series of shots with the AWP, probably a double or a triple kill at least to make it possible. So it was going to be a, a rough round regardless. So into overtime and Vitality picking up the first round. Yeah, pretty comprehensive victory as well, Anders. They, they've looked like the, the better team, and honestly, in that first half, it just felt like they would have run away with a huge scoreline if they didn't suffer that 1v5 in the pistol. Like they're, they're kind of... Yeah. The, the rounds they were actually winning were, were beautiful. To be honest with you, their CT performance was looking very nice, but uh, Cloud9 definitely offering up equal treatment here. But the first gun round of overtime is looking great for Vitality. That's going to be 1 0. And uh, in terms of Perfecto, not pretty really much he can do, but hold on to this M4, but he won't even manage that. Mezzi will take him down as we go 1 0. Vitality, certainly the favorites coming into this series today, but Cloud9 have. Uh, I don't know. I, I've shown us this could be an interesting team in the future now, right? The removal oh, of Shiro, yeah. the addition of Boomich, I think the structure has been in, uh, pronounced. And uh, let's check out the Thank you, baby. 
But the mood is running very high over in the Vitality Camp. That's good. And I expect nothing less. You're winning around with Apex in your ear. You're, you know you're going to hear it. You know it's going to be exciting. Let's see how this plays out. Going into the second round of overtime. And just at least testing the smoke down there. Looked like maybe they wanted to get flashed through it. So it's a popular trick. You flash on over, you run out with the M4 and hope to catch somebody, but they're playing it a little bit more safely. Boomich with another AWP, and that's a risk, Henry. He's down to $100. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a dangerous game to play. You buy AWP after AWP and you're not saving them. You could be left with a pistol for that final round. That's if no one saves, of course. Zaiwu starting to look very dangerous in this semi-final now. Takes that electronic. Will be Axel to respond, but Hobbit, oh my goodness, the double spray down. That should be enough here. Sphinx will offer one back in return, but it's just Mezzi now. I say just with bated breath. He's got time to work with here. Known to enjoy a clutch or two. Makes his way towards Connector here. If he can find Axel, it will really be cooking, but I feel like Boomich is going to find him from the ticket booth. Yeah, I think they know they heard him already. He's locked in right now. Boomich shooting him in the back. Huge round out of Cloud9. They absolutely needed it. They were about to run out of funds on at least a couple of players there. But they get to save some rifles and win the round on top. What a delightful way. Yeah, get the popcorn out because this game is heating up right now. Hobbit, you're right, that spray down, it's perfect. Just what the dogs were ordered there. It's Boomer just close things out. He'll hold on to the AWP, which is important for reasons we stated before. Pretty convincing round there. It was looking quite nice for Vitality dissecting middle. Made their way in towards that connector as I were opening frag, but Hobbit mowing them down with the M4. No plan found here, and we've got a timeout once again as we get ready for the final round here. The first half of overtime on Mirad is the pick of Cloud9 here. Vitality looked so good in the first half, but just couldn't get it together. Quite a flat T-side campaign. It's starting to come to life. Dead even right now, 13-13. And we'll see what Vitality have got up their sleeve. Zaiwu AWP has uh, yielded 20 frags so far, and there's not a bad showing whatsoever. A chance of another there. Two players in towards that window position. He deploys a flash and will give it another go. Ooh. And it's Spinks taking down the Orpa Boomage. That's a massive frag. He even had time to line up that shot. He took an extra half second and still couldn't really hit it. That's unfortunate because now that bomb site's wide open. Good kill coming in. Spinks, he's dinked, but he's not gone yet. Axal will get one. So Molotov almost spilling onto Hobbit in the back. And there's definitely on Axal. He's taking a lot of damage. Forced with the smoke. And Spinks is there to pick him up. Even on 13 health, he's lethal. A triple kill for Spinks in this one. Cyber Big. taking care of Hobbit. And it is all on Perfecto here. They know exactly where he is. I don't think there's any way out of this one. Smoke, sure. You can actually get Spinks with an HE if you just throw it into the right corner. There we go, right through. Does blow him up. It's a bit of a start at least, but there's much more to come. Surely no way for Perfecto here. It's the final round who have to go for it. Two players defined. The first one's no problem. Now up against the Wu. Time is of the essence, so needs to play a perfect round. He'll tap the bomb. It's not the full commitment here. Where is Zaiwu? He's nowhere to be seen. Even if he finds a frag, I don't think there's time to defuse. Zaiwu should be coming out on top here. And indeed, the bomb will explode. A great, great effort there from Perfecto. He does almost everything to win the round, Anders. But Zaiwu comes out on top in the end. It's going to be 2-1 to Vitality. Yeah, that's very impressive. I mean, Perfecto dance about as close as you can get. He needed a tenth of a second more and he would have had it. This is huge impact from Spink to the round where he really did not have that much to work with from the start of it, but he's done it all. Triple getting them with a one round lead going into the second half of overtime. They just need to pick up two more rounds and they're going to be good to go. Yes, indeed, Anders. First of 16 here. Zaiwu and Co. will switch over to the CT side. No real adjustments. Open towards middle for now, and... Well, I'm sure that's exactly what Zaiwu wanted. Close open the smoke towards middle. That's more like it! Collateral kill with the AWP to kick things off. This is for map point as well. And it's already a five on three. Beautiful work there from Zaiwu. I can't believe it! It's a two for one! Spinks getting one and so oh, we can't be stopped! 
24 kills flash into the middle. Does he see it? Perfecto's in there and he's going to get the flick every single time. What a god. Absolutely disgusting from Zaiwu there. The smoke comes down. It blocks his view, but he takes matters into his own hands. Deploying that HE, it gives him a slither of time to find a kill. He takes oh. two of them. Look at the lineup, Hobbit and Boomit. They can't believe their luck. And of course, he goes on the hit every single shot. Well, for all the conversation about the CS2 AWP, Cyber is showing us right now, he has still got it. My God, yeah. what a way to get started. They're a step in the right direction. They just need one more round, Henry. They're almost there. And this is Cloud9's map pick. If they steal it away from them, they are a massive step closer to the grand final. Is he close, guys? I see something close. Want to be one close with you? <laughs> yeah. Nice shot today. It's not that way. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like the mood in the camp is quite high right now, Anders. Easy kills as I woo. It's another day in the office here. One of the absolute greats of the game. We're getting to what could be the final round here, ladies and gentlemen. Vitality needs one more. Did a great showing in overtime, really coming to life. And now Cloud9. The T side was underwhelming, to say the least. And now it has to be spot on. We'll see them coordinating themselves towards the A bomb site. I think another execution here is in order. They do not have the AWP on the T side, relying on five rifles. Flames lying in wait. He will be tested surely. And he have the smokes here. Bear in mind, we've got Zaiwu in towards CT spawn as well. Apex at jungle. Here comes the first play and final commitment. Bombers here, four players ready to make their way in. It's a really good counter Molotov there. The, the smokes are taking away while they're slowed down. Another Molotov to slow them. So those two smokes towards jungle, they're going to be worthless. They disappeared by the time that they actually get here. It's a good defensive work so far on the side of Vitality. As Cloud9 hope to break through, looking for double overtime. Shot at the back of the head. Cyru landing more shots. He has just become the beast that he was always meant to be here. Hobbit gets sprayed down and it's all on Axile. And he's been playing a fantastic map. 24 kills, but this seems like a bridge too far. A one versus three. Saiwu is still alive back there towards CT spawn, and there's only 25 seconds. Vitality, they made their mistake in the pistol round, losing the one versus five. They're not going to do it again here. Flashes up, but they know exactly where he is. It's going to be Vitality with the opening map, taking away Cloud9's map pick in the semi-final. Talk about a way to kick off this Ooh. semi-final, Jacob. Holy hell, the spectacle is back for Counter-Strike. And this went the distance. This got us at the edge of our seat the entire time. Beautiful first map of CS. Yeah, beautiful game of Counter-Strike. It had it all. We had a 1v5 clutch to start everything off with. We had Sai Wu coming alive. We had all these highlights packed in just one single map of Mirage. Fantastic start to this. You talk about it. Let's jump right at the very beginning of this extraordinary map. We're talking about Axile with the best possible way to start his semi-final here in Copenhagen. It's a one versus five. Maybe we can enjoy it. We can watch it together. Because if you are a player, Jacob, and this is how you start, you are blessed. And it's a proper 1v5. He's left by himself with a Glock, standing B-Apps. There should be absolutely no way he's winning this round. He's taking the duels, removing Saibu from the server, have a bit of utility to work with as well. But in reality, of course, you're not winning a 1v5 unless Vitality makes mistakes. Right. But just appreciate it. Appreciate it from Exile, who's been under a lot of critique lately for not performing individually. This one right here, that's I mean, his Glock work is superb, but I have to agree with you. I think Vitality misplayed that mm. massively. And I got real worried. People know out there, my heart going to the Vitality jersey. I thought, holy hell, this is happening. <laughs> this is the worst way you could possibly start your semifinal with a five versus one when you give away all the advantage onto Axile. But this is where Vitality have quality in the roster in order to fight back. We're talking about an incredible retake from Zaiwu. Round six, a two versus four. 
that could honestly have, must have gone. It must have gone towards Cloud9. Yeah, it was a beautiful round. We get to see it right here with Saivu on the AWP. Reach the situation again in a 2v4. You lost control over the B-bomb side. There should be absolutely no way you're winning this oh. one. A bit lucky with that one, and this is just pure filth from Saivu. <laughs> Coming out, hitting two shots through the smokes like that. It's outstandingly well played from Saivu. We spoke about it coming into the tournament. Is he still the best player in the world? I think he is. Oh, that was a great step towards that title. I agree with you. We have to give a couple of praises as well, not only to Zaiwu, but to Apex. Because if you're looking for a captain that actually mm. set the example on that CT side and wasn't afraid to get stuck in, wasn't afraid to fight, Apex and Afraid, these two words aren't working together. We know that's not a problem. He had multiple of very impactful rounds in the streak that Vitality put together. He did, he did. Always up for the fight, always willing to take the duels, always assertive on the server. And it's one of those things you can rattle behind. You get the highlight package from him right here. It's 3-0 for Cloud9. Yes. He finishes off with a nice four kill, defending the A-bomb side, which is a point of contact that Cloud9 wanted to execute on. They wanted to put pressure on towards Apex, but he stood for that pressure. I agree with you. That was a huge word from the captain. This is what you hope to see from your leader. Also a player that isn't really usually in that position. You're never mm -hmm. going to tell me he's a win condition as a rifle. No. So imagine how much it means for the players of Vitality to see their captain having that kind of impact very early on. He was massively responsible for Vitality and that strong CT side where definitely the protocols, the setups, not exactly the best. It was a messy game. But when you have your captain doing this, that's all right. We talk Apex. We have to talk Saiwu. Not only for the good, because yes, a very good start of the sure. CT health and an incredible finish to this map, but he had a moment where he dipped. He had a moment where he disappeared, where he was used like a ham, being thrown into the fire as an entry death. What the hell is going on? Yeah. Did we let this guy play late rounds? You and I were standing here talking about it, right? You were getting quite upset of the fact I that was. he would always go in first. Why don't you sacrifice Flamesy? Why don't you sacrifice Apex for that matter? Sacrifice some of the other players so you allow Saiwu to do what he does best, which is being the best player on the server. His impact with the AWP, you said it pretty well. He had eight, nine rounds where he went missing, where That's he didn't right. do anything right. whatsoever, but then he turned up and he ended up being the most influential player as per usual on the server, shutting down Cloud9 with the AWP. And you talk about AWP, and this was the, the most powerful weapon that Cloud9 had versus Vitality. Yeah. That's, the, that's the crazy part. We talked about Boomich. We said he's going to be no match for Zaiwu. It's going to be too easy. Well, Boomich made life very hard for my team. Let's put it this way, for my boys out there. They were struggling. How do we, how do we go past that's Boomich playing on the B side with the AWP, fighting towards short here on the retake. This was a very good performance from Boomich. Yeah, it was his positioning that did it all right. Not the flashy kills, not the flashy flicks, all that kind of stuff, but the positioning. Aggressive with the AWP, doing it fantastically well in BFs, constantly making sure to stay alive. And he was the reason why Cloud9 got very, very close to winning Mirage. Very close to stealing it away from Vitality. Let's not forget, they were up 12 to 10 at one point. Vitality, they were the ones who had to fight it back. I know, this was a very favorable situation for Cloud9. And I'm sure some regrets are going to be felt in the camp. They had the chance, they had the keys to the castle to put this first map on the board, but Vitality were able to bounce back. And now Nuke is waiting around the corner, a map that has been in the camp of Vitality for quite a while, but not unbeatable. Complexity were able to make them bleed. We're going to touch all of that and bring all of the storylines after a quick break.
Mirage stolen from under the noses of a Cloud9. And now we move on to Vitality's pick in this series. This is going to be coming down to Nuke, which I have a few questions about, gentlemen, because it's been a little bit of a mixed bag for Vitality since moving on to CS2. For Cloud9, there's not much tape out there, though. So why do you think Vitality particularly picked into this ground, Matthew? I mean, obviously, there is a, an element of punish here. You have to realize the core of Cloud9, and we're talking Hobbit and Axile, not necessarily used mm. to Nuke. It used to be a permaban for them, whereas for Vitality, even if there was a misstep against Complexity, if we go back to the CSGO days, Nuke was a go-to for them. They forged a very strong T-side. They're not afraid of that start in the offense. And I hope that the mistakes made against Complexity will help them guide the performance here. Yeah, I agree. I think it's been well established in this tournament so far that when Cloud9 are feeling it, when they're in control of a game, they can play against the best of the best. Once you put them out of their comfort zone, once you put them into a scenario like on Nuke, where it's a little bit iffy, a little bit rocky in terms of rotations on the CT side, how do you approach the game on the T side, it's not easy for a newly assembled roster. So if I'm by telling you right here, I'm coming in and I'm feeling comfortable. That's actually really interesting because James Banks was giving me some information in the green room. He was saying, you know, he caught up with Hobbit about the prospect of going on to Nuke and he was saying, you know, they're going to be trusting in Boomers, but they're not the most comfortable on this map. And that totally makes sense in terms of experience on officials on this round, right? Yes, and it's the question of the defense. How did things get complicated for Vitality on Mirage? Boomich with the AWP. He was very hard to play against. He was very masterful how he played the B side and the short side. I don't think he can have the same performance on Nuke. I think Nuke is a much more complicated map as an opener, knowing where to move, where to be, all of these rotations. Simple, of course, historically, was the AWP that was the hardest to play against. I don't know if Boomich can have the same impact he had on map one. No, I agree with you. I think we're going to see a lot more fire rifling as well on the T side yeah. for Boomich. That's probably the more effective way of doing it. Another player that we didn't see in the first map was Electronic. We praised him to say that he was a candidate for being the MVP of the entire thing so far. Lots of impact in the entry department, lots of impact in the clutches even in this tournament. On Mirage, a relatively open, dual-focused map, nowhere to be found. He needs to step it up here, Nuke. Otherwise, I don't think there's enough quality within Cloud9 right now in order to disturb I want continue talking a little bit about, you know, the absentees, uh, if you will, because obviously on the side of Vitality, what an incredible star for Apex. But I want to throw, you know, my hat into the ring and say, is this what we actually want to see from Vitality? Should they be relying on Apex in those situations? Or you want to see a bit more of the late game Sphinx rather than the early game Sphinx? I mean, these are two different topics, of course. On one hand, Legendary teams have captains who are able to rise up in moments of pressure. Notoriously, Kerrigan having moments where he overperforms on the stage. Apex, a captain that is not afraid to get stuck in and have, have that spirit to make a difference. It's a positive, of course, but you mentioned Spix. Spix was the metaphorical equivalent of not waking up to your alarm and realize having one of these dreams, you're like, oh shit, I gotta go to school. I don't have my clothes on. My car doesn't work out. I don't know where the school is. This was Spinks for the 75, 80% of this map. And then he had a late resurgence with a couple of key moments. I try to be positive for you. I'm, I'm all happy if I'm Vitality. You have Apex playing some good counters, right? You have Sphinx not really showing up, yet you still win the opponent's map pick on Mirage in a semi-final. I'm all good by that. We know Sphinx is going to show up on yeah. you. We know Saibu is going to show up. So if anything, we just seen that Apex is also going to be a defining factor. Now, the one player I want to put into question is Messi. On ramp, we've seen him a couple of times played. Yeah. He's done it a decent job so far, but I think if I'm Cloud9, that's where I want to put pressure. Mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned Messi. Because I don't think he had fails per se. But I think there was a timid first map. Yes. It was timid in the make the choice making rather, One, timid two, in the decisions. Three, he had a couple of moments mm -hmm. where he could have been a little bit more brave and make that difference. And this is exactly where the intangible of being a rookie that's now playing on the very top. There are moments where, hey, whether this is a facey game with your bros or you're here in Royal Arena, if you gotta take your timing, you gotta take your timing. And there was a couple of moments where he hesitated on that first map. Let's hope the jitters are shaken up for you. Let's flip the script a little bit to talk a bit more about Cloud9 because, yeah, not so much tape for them. Obviously, you know, not the most comfortable crowd for some of the players uh, on the side of Cloud9. Who are you expecting to be shining bright? Is it electronic that you're really putting your finger on the pulse of? It, it has to be electronic. I see him as the only opener for Cloud9. Maybe Boomage as well can be a little bit more aggressive. We were looking into some of the stats as well, and, and Boomage haven't been involved in that many opening duels mm. that we kind of expected from him coming into Cloud9. I think right now Boomage is taking a step back, allowing electronic to do what he does best. So if Electronic is not showing up, if he can't be the can opener per se for Cloud9, I see that T-side as being very, very difficult for them. Exile not known to be the guy who's going to open up the round. He can maybe close it, but you need someone to create the space in the first place that's going to be either Electronic or Boomage. And I will put my hat that it's going to be Electronic in this game. Yeah, of course, Electronic is going to be needed. You mentioned Exile. He was one of the great surprises that I had when we saw Cloud9 on Nuke. 
and he was being spearheading these executes on the yeah. A side. But this is very much relative to having financial dominance over your opponent. If you're a Cloud9, if you can put Vitality in a bad situation where the utility runs a little bit dry, then you will see them picking up speed. The problem is going to be if they are faced with a full-fledged stuck utility full CT side, I don't know that they have the playbook. I want a yes or no. Is this over for Cloud9 and Vitality making it to the grand final in two maps? V for victory, baby. 2-0. Two 2-0. Zero. Two zero. Well, I think our analysts have spoken, but it's time to see if they are right. Vitality's pick coming into things. It's time to get into the grounds of Nuke. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The second map is ready to get underway. The semi-final continues here between Vitality and Cloud9. Anders, we've got the best seats in the house for this one. We truly do. I'm so excited. What a blessing. We get overtime on the first map, and now we've got Nuke coming up. It's, it's, it's one of the best maps in the pool, for, for sure. Vitality, they picked it. They look primed and ready. Saiwu started to wake up, and this is going to be one hell of a hard game for Cloud9. There's no question about it. It's going to be a hell of a game, though. It felt like the first map was going to fall flat. Bear in mind, Cloud9, they're a tenacious team as well. They're scrappy, and they've got a new in-game leader in the form of Vumet, who's stepping up and going above and beyond when they need him to, with the AWP, with the unique calls. And uh, we know their tactical depth is not going to be as much as you might expect here with this new lineup, and it's going to be a real tough test here on Nuke. Whether they can do it, Anders, I'm not so sure, but I'm here for it. I want another overtime. I want more spectacular clutches. I want one more, one more five. So, yeah, that's what we want to see here. Those sort of antics in the semi final. It was sick, wasn't it? And you know, we just might get that. We just might get that. You're right, Boomich. He really stepped it up. He performed when he needed to, and they almost got it. They could have won that map. They could have closed the book on Vitality, but instead, they get to face off on Nuke, and we know that Vitality are going to be strong on this map. Saiwu is going to be feeling comfortable, and you know, they talked about it at the desk a little bit with Spink sort of falling off. I'm sure he's going to be ready for the second map. I mean, if they're still winning maps with Sphinx falling off here, like he's already contributed heavily to this tournament. I think he was number one in stats before entering the semifinals today. Uh, so he's already done most of the heavy lifting for them. But yeah, if he starts to come online, and bear in mind, uh, when they played Complexity on this very map, he was the absolute MVP of Nuke. And they went to overtime, but they won 16-13. So this is Sphinx stomping ground. That's where he does some of his best work, along with Zaiwu as well. It's going to be incredibly difficult for Cloud9 to bring this one back take us to a third map, but uh, we'll see what they can make of it. In terms of individual performances, Anders, we did have some wonderful moments from Axel. Uh, bear in mind oh, that yeah, 1v5, sure. sure, but in terms of his just rifle prowess in general, he looks to be revitalized as well. I would say that Electronic, maybe not as much of a showstopper as he has been the rest of this tournament in that opening map, uh, but maybe this can all come together still. It will have to, I suppose, uh, for them to have a chance now going forward and to make it to the grand final. He's been playing well all tournament long. They need him to get back to that level in the second map. There could be no delays here. They need Electronic back at that high level to get some of the entries to really open this up with because they did hit, he did hit a bit, a bit of a slump there and they can't afford it. I agree, Axile, he really was a superstar once again. And that's great. That's a good sign for Cloud9 moving forward. But yeah, Electronic, you see it here. It's not quite enough, the 13 kills on Mirage. Like, it, they no. needed a little bit more. The 23 deaths sticks out like a sore thumb there. The 54 ADR, those are not superstar numbers, especially in the game that went overtime. You didn't get blown out. Uh, your team needed you there to step up, and he couldn't deliver the good set. But uh, we did see some good performances, like from Axel, from Boomich. Hobbit had his moments as well, but the whole team, we have to work in tandem here. The good news is, I don't think anyone really had a a terrible game there in the series. I feel like all 10 players in the server had their moments. I agree. Which bodes very well for the, the quality and spectacular nature of Counter-Strike that will be delivered in this second map here. We're hoping for some more high-octane moments here as we're just getting ready. The players getting set up now for the second map of Nuke. By far, one of my favorite maps. There's I think just... yeah, everyone, they're doing those tier lists recently. Every player, S tier, Nuke. It's great. People are coming around. I, I really, really love that. It's just such a dynamic map. I think tactically the deepest map in the pool, and we're probably going to see a lot of that out there. So um, we'll see if they can keep all the tricks. We should be getting into it, Henry. I think we're about to be ready. Yes, I am ready, Anders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second map. Semi-finals here, live and direct from Copenhagen. These two teams are competing for more than just victory. They're battling to be crowned the kings of Counter-Strike here in the Royal Arena. Make some noise! Here we go, Henry. We're ready. Second map is coming up and starting on the T side, it's Vitality. Cloud9 on the CT side. And already they have sent Saiwu leading the charge with the P250 out in front. 
If you step into his crosshair, you could get deleted from the round instantly, even at range. Smoke is up towards Mini, and they're going to be walking their way past. All right, Boomich getting a little bit of info. That's great because Perfecto, he's calling it out as well, saying they're actually pushing me. They're walking towards CT spawn. This is very aggressive from Vitality, but it's down below when it's Apex to pick up Hobbit to start the second map with. Yeah, and they're making good progress down towards Secret as well. No rotations down towards lower whatsoever from the CT side, but we're peeling off. Actually going back towards main entrance, this could cost them. Electronic will answer back. We've got Perfecto deep, buried in CT spawn here towards that four-gate position. Boom, Mitchell strike back next. And it's looking like Cloud9 once again are recovering. Another pistol that looked desperate. Spinks left in a four versus one. He's been detected towards the heavens. And I think they'll deal with him shortly. Perfecto from CT spawn will find the killing blow. And it's a very convincing pistol from Cloud9. Apex frustrated to that one. It, it's questionable, Anders. They had all that progress down towards lower. You'd think they'd explode towards that bomb site, but they made the decision to come back in towards upper right into the stack of the upper bomb site where they get mowed down by Boomich and Electronic. Yeah, early frustration, which I guess for Apex is not that uncommon. I wouldn't make, you know, don't read too much into it. He's a very emotional player, both when they're losing and they're winning. So I suppose that's just, you know, part of the, part of the game for him, really. But yeah, important, critical, you might say, round victory here for Cloud9 because Again, this is not their map pick. Vitality aren't going to be strong on this map. And Cloud9 in every single round they can get. And especially on the CT side. They've got four MP9, so they feel quite sure about the buy here. Obviously, no bomb plant, so... Yeah, that's a very good point, but it does beg the question, what do we do in the next round, Andy? So this is a yeah. clean sweep like it should be. They get all five kills. They don't suffer any casualties whatsoever. You're up against the AK-47s in the next round. Yeah, you, you know, to play a real tricky game where you're going full send, you're trying to force fight. Yes. Uh, it's a bonus round, well and truly there. So it's interesting. A bomb with these MP9s here, knowing they'd be up against pretty much nothing. Uh, it's going to be Boomage, though, farming some a couple kills, considering he's been orping so much. Uh, that's certainly very welcome as we get himself $1,200. Perfecto seems to have an inkling that Zywu is on the other side of the door as well. As uh, we wait for this one to come to its logical conclusion. Zywu opens the door. He's got the bomb as well, so that will be the round confirmed. It's just as to whether they can get a couple of kills, potentially. I do like the idea, you know, of going aggressive. Like, maybe you crunch the lobby. Maybe you just push with two or three people outside with the MP9s on the CT side. You just try and make it work, because at range against the AKs, even if we have been talking up the MP9 quite a bit... Oh, okay. He's got the knife out, Henry. It's getting a bit personal now, although the burst fire... <laughs> oh, the God. burst fire has not worked for anyone. <laughs> this never has. Sort of uh, we saw it from Carrigan on overpass the other day towards the bank. Didn't work. I like what it's going for. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Uh, the single fire probably would have been absolutely fine there, but uh, it's all fine. Bear in mind, no kills were found, and now this does give us that interesting situation. We're building the snake early. I like it. Keep that energy coming. So we've got the AKs coming up next against these MP9s, Anders, and this is where They've got to do something a little bit bizarre. They've got to go aggressive in towards lobby yes. for some fights. So there it is. So they haven't upgraded anything here. Boomish didn't bring out a sniper. So we are going to see them have a very, very difficult round here. Ooh. I don't know who's going to be finding the kills. Electronics got an M4. And Hobbit, deep in secret. These are the kind of positions you're going to have to play. Yeah, no, he did. Hut, deep in ramp. He did get secret. spotted, so they know that he's down there. It's a good... It's a good thing that he didn't stick around because once they know that he's there, they're obviously going to check it very hard. They don't quite have the Molotovs to maybe get rid of him in that way. Oh, they already threw it. All right, fair enough. Well, that was the last one that they had. Yeah, they're very paranoid about Hobbit down there. Other than that, not making any real progress across the map at the moment, Vitality. Smoke up. Second one to follow. Just like Apex this. doing his, his work. Doing it on the fly. Set up from spawn, so you can see the perfect moment when you see your, your chance. He doesn't have to communicate that to anyone else. He can just probe around the map himself here as the in-game leader. No input lag. Rely on his own information here. Bear in mind the huge advantage in terms of firepower. Apex finding the first. He's down to Axile now, and they just can't fire back. You can see the distinct lack of response there. The MP9s get dropped, three of them, as we hit the 30-second mark. There's Electronic and Perfecto. A slither of hope for them, I suppose, but if you go down towards lower, call the round down. I'd really love to see the first kill from Cyro because they actually threw a flashbang for Boomich to get the, the peak there, and somehow, 
He just didn't flash type wood also. I wonder where he was. Electronic game effect, like you said, they're not even close to this. No reason to have that conversation. M4 definitely going to be brought into the next round. See if Perfecto can upgrade to something more interesting. But yeah, this is, I guess this is the nature of these kind of rounds. And a, a good read from Vitality. They knew that something tricky was coming. So they were quite happy to, you know, sort of wait it out. Waste a little bit of time at the start of the round. Just to make absolutely sure that they were not going to get caught off guard by. Well, excited that kind of trick that was coming there. Two to one. Vitality with the first round on the board. Very nice. Can't really argue with that one too much, and as they barely take any damage on Rue, it was always going to be compromised for Cloud9. They gave it their best shot. A couple of wild swings trying to find those kills at close range capacity, but it's Vitality looking way too sharp, and they will have the clean sweep here. Their first round on the T side, they go two to one. This is where Hobby went down. A beautiful shot there from Apex. Zaiwu on a swivel, getting the double here as well. That's clinical. He had his back turned. That's yeah, why right. he wasn't flashed. Good lord. Yeah, that'll do it. A little bit of a shrug. You could understand why. Not much they could have done in that round. But it's early days. Very See early what Boomich is cooking here. Yeah, well, the good news is the fact they had so much success in those first two rounds. So they have some residual cash because you have the saving an MP9 and a single M4 here. So it's a pretty decent buy, all things considered. We've got the two smoke wall deployed towards outside and Boomich patrolling up here. Speculative spam towards the squeaky door. Nothing connecting thus far. You need to be careful. They make their way out. He is caught with pants down here. It's Perfecto. Isolated on the bomb side. Messi deals with him, no problem. Last line of defense is going to be electronic. There's nothing he can do, Anders. And it's looking likely to be another clean sweep. Axel in the vents on the ladder. That's that shouldn't something. happen. That's not supposed to be part of the script. You're supposed to have no accuracy there. It's a neat little trick, but I don't think it's going to change the round. Flames very low on health. Maybe the HE could have caught him, and maybe then they could have been in a 2 on 3. But now that the bomb is planted, it's about saving once again. A bit of a... a it, it's weird. You win the pistol round, and it still feels a bit flat. Because the first round you really have is, you know, we're up against the rifles. You have right. MP9s, so you just get wiped out. And in this one, it's so decisive. So the momentum very early on is going to be with Vitality. Oh yes, it's looking good. You take this all day long, it's 2-2. Money's starting to be drained here. They only get $1,900 on top of the saved M4 on the mp 9 here, oh, averaging no. around $3,000. And Axel loses the rifle, Anders. Oh, that's not good news at all. Was he just down and lower? He was down below. Thank you, basically next to the bomb at that stage. You gotta go, you gotta go yeah. elsewhere, my friend. Might as well be upstairs at that point. Yeah, he might as well just be parked on top of the bomb. Um, that's unfortunate. He could have got back there towards ramp of a teammate, but that's the only M4. That's actually quite significant. It is. Unfortunately, it is. Um, because they, they could have partially bought into this one around the M4 and had a fighting chance. They can still do that, but it's MP9s and Deagles as we get into oh dear. round five here. Very quick pacing from Sphinx. He's got all the time in the world to get that first player down the vents, but it's actually Hobbit stealing one away. The bomb is upstairs? No way. They locked the bomb in oh, the corner. Oh. oh no! An electronic notice! Yep. That is going to make things very, very complicated now. Zaiwu, hearing a rotation. Nails the first shot. Does he suspect the second? Whether he did or not, it's not going to make a difference. Axel swiftly dispatching of him. Three versus three. The bomb landing on the wrong side of the vent. They wanted to get it down. They would have won the round already if the bomb had been down there. It would have been, you know, planted. There would yeah, have been exactly. that much that could have been happening here for Cloud9. But now instead, they're in this awkward position. If Sphinx had the bomb, he was a player that made it down safely. He just goes to plant lower. It's already over. Yeah. It gets very awkward now. You might even give them an advantage still, but Axel's looking like he is poised for another kill, but unfortunately Apex will sniff him out towards the credit card position. They'll take back the man advantage, Electronic. A high alert tip. needs a double kill to have a chance, doesn't connect. And Hobbit, a very interesting position at the very least here, Anders. You might not check this out. Yeah, it's true. You have the element of surprise. They could also just go down the vent. They this could. is a bit scary. Oh, here we go. The first burst is really good. Shooting in the feet, jumping in. Oh! Low on health. 18 health left. Leaping down from the heavens. The only play that made sense. He was going to get spammed otherwise. Had to take advantage of the agility of the MP9 there. 
spamming the toes, gets the double kill. He said it was a tricky spot, and he delivers on all fronts here. They can't call quick enough as to where he is. Averts the initial bullets, and Spinks can't find him. That is unbelievable. Well done. Hobbit saves the day here. Maintains control of the first half. They go three to two. Money's still great on the vitality side of things, and they'll save an AK-47. Money will still be incredibly tight over there as well. Man, that round really tells you a lot about how much information matters in this game. The fact that he had, he had the worst weapon, he was in one versus two, but the fact that he didn't know exactly where he was just made the whole difference there. Molotov going to be on top of the hot, but Boomich playing at an advantageous position here. Oh, they're blowing over the smoke, but the spray down, it couldn't have been better. Boomich with the double. And a five as well, make that a four versus three now. Bit of a wall bang coming in, and Mezzi is going to be swiftly dealt with. Apex and Saibu here, two versus four. That round okay. from Hobbit could turn into a lot. They could really no, I, spiral them forward. Yeah, it's taking the wind out of their sails, especially with his follow-up as well, being so clean for Cloud9. It's Boomage of a brutal double spray down towards the squeaky door. It's left Vitality in a four-on-two deficit here. Now, Zaiwu, he's towards the garage. Let the bomb down. A massive lead. I don't think they have did too much here, but the spam is coming through. Apex knows. He seems to be causing quite a lot of damage. I don't think the nade kills him, but it certainly makes it close. 13 points of health. They're trying to fend him off. They're trying to protect him. Boomich will save the day. Puts himself in the firing line, Anders, and gets the job done. <laughs> Just jumping for his life in the corner until the captain, the boss, shows up to get rid of Apex on the other side. Yeah. And a save for Saibu. So just 10 seconds remaining. And nothing that can be done. Cloud9 with an astonishing round there. Fending off the upper execution. Vitality are known for it. They've got one of the best set pieces in the game when it comes to nuke. Zaiwu trying to tuck himself in. He could be found out here. They are hunting for him. And it seems to be absolutely fine. Boomage loving it. Another strong round. No stranger to the big stage. Big plays being presented here on Nuke. Like I said, double kill. As they blow open the smoke, he is more than ready for it. Protects Perfecto in the corner as well. The bodyguard, Boomich. <laughs> and he can see he's just having to jump in the corner. Just trying to stay alive here. Beautiful. And there we have it. Timeout used by Vitality here. They can feel this half slipping away. Like, they had so much momentum. They were looking so powerful. And then the Hobbit 2v1 comes in. The sobering moment. Yeah, I really did not think he was going to be able to win that up on the rafters, but it's a really well played round out of him. Also kind of recognizing that if he had stuck there and done what Perfecto just did in the corner, he could have, he could have been jumping there forever, trying to stop himself from dying. But yeah, he went for the fight instead and came out on top. Yeah. A two to four lead. Cloud9 making it interesting so, at the beginning of New Kim. We've seen a lot of ramp rushes this tournament, Anders. Yeah, They've been true. quite successful, to be honest with you, but the incendiary will dissuade Vitality. They were sending heavy numbers toward this side of the map. Flashbang deployed by Axel. Going to be hunting for a bit of information here. Looks for the grenade as well. He's called for backup. Hobbit's got the AWP here. Perfect spot for it. Takes down the first frag in the form of Messi. They don't know Spinks is out. Hobbit might be dead. Oh, he's fallen back. All right. Axel might be dead then. They had no idea that Spinks had walked. They thought that kill from Hobbit was the first player in. Yeah, you're right. That's a great response there from Spinks. Now Hobbit can't patrol outside. He'll have to be responsible for that ramp room, try and control the rotations down towards lower. He's not being super active, though. He just wants to deny access towards hell. Got to go down towards lower Anders. Boomish to defend. He's the only player down there trying to work out the best possible position. He's chosen the silo itself and the bombsite floor. Yeah. I think they know that he's here. I think they've already spotted him. Strong shot from Apex. Back at it again with the AK, and that's going to open things up. Bit of a call to be made here for Cloud9. They're a man down. Electronic is nearby, and he's actually getting shot for the smoke. He's already quite low. Oh, There's three people God. waiting on the other side. And Sai will look like he spun around and slapped him with the AK. Perfecto and Hobbit left, and I, yeah, now, now you've made the call for sure. Well, there we have it. It was all down to Boomage there. Needed multiple frags to make that round possible. He gets on top of the railings behind the silo. Maybe it's a different story. It's a very powerful position up there. But like you said, once he was spotted, no chance for him. Sphinx absolutely eradicated any sort of threat down towards lower. 
It will be Vitality bouncing back, 4-3, but Hobbit's going to say the AWP, and they got the opening kill there. That was technically a 5 versus 4, but as you mentioned, they didn't think the player would sneak through. They didn't think he'd already found his way towards hell. The equalizing frag was found. They take over the lower bomb site, and now Vitality cooking with gas here on the T side of Nuke. This was that opening frag for Vitality. It made all the difference in the world here. All right, it was Saihu up there. Good job. Watching the smoke. They'd already spammed it a bit, but you, you might make a big mistake if you trust those smokes too much, and they were absolutely on point. Well, let's see. Four to three. The lead for Cloud9. Shrinking ever so slightly. We got Famas coming out. We got limited nades, very limited on the CT side. And that new popular smoke being thrown that falls down on the ledge. Yeah, very meta. The standard wall of smokes as well. I say standard, they seem to be the more popular ones now compared to the traditional one. Yeah. Fast pacing down towards Secret here. Apex leading the charge. I have Zywu in tow. Trying to bait out the initial shot. No one there to take first contact here. You can see this is a very compromised round for Cloud9. A couple of Famases. Barely any utility now, Anders. They might lose Electronic. He rises to the occasion. He'll take the first. A decent trade. Minimal damage inflicted towards Zywu. And they're going to reset the round here a bit. One minute remaining. See if they can bait out these CT reactions. Our Famas suggests they're on the back foot. 50 seconds. Cyrus just holding. He's quite sure that someone else is down here. I don't know how he knows. Boomich was jumping for a while, so I don't know if someone would have heard the jumping, and that's how they can figure it out, but we're down under 40 seconds. The bomb making its way towards Squeak, and that's exactly where Hobbit is. Sphinx drops it on the ground. This is a bit awkward now. If Mezzi goes down as well, it's a nightmare. Somebody else has to run out and pick up the bomb here. Hobbit's looking good. Oh! to make sure that they definitely will win this round. 40, 20 seconds now. Mezzi trying to get the job done, but they know where he is, and they're going to overpower him at the end. Axel gets that one. Hobbit with an absolutely stunning round. What can you say about that one? Seems like everyone on Cloud9 is pretty proficient with the AWP. Hobbit looked like he was compromised, to say the very least there, Anders. In the corner, flashed off. Already found his first pick of the round. There's the flashbang. Catches a face full of it, but pins both of them against the back walls here. Collateral kill delivered, and Hobbit, he's having a great showing here on the CD side. That's how wide his screen was. He had no idea he got those kills. <laughs> That's so sick. It's that moment where you ask your teammates in the middle of the game, you're like, did I get him? Uh, what am I doing? Am I dead? Couldn't have been more blind. I'm glad we got to see him from that POV. And now we've got a force fire response. Vitality operating with a couple of pistols here. Tech 9 and Deagle for Mezzi and Apex. Act Amber Flames and Zywu and Sphinx with the rifles. Slowing it right down once again. They've been close to these rounds, but fortunately, Cloud9 continue to post round after round on their map pick. We've got the Hobbit AWP this time towards outside Athens. Yeah, what a, what a surprise. I've got to say, they're playing it really well at the moment. Oh, Hobbit overlooking that fat. Scoped up on the other side. That is a bit of a mistake and probably not one you'd be likely to see for a primary orber, so might have been a little bit of a sign of trouble there. Perfecto's certainly looking for it. They picked up the orb out there in the yard now. There's still 50 seconds left. I like this from Electronic and Boomage. Look at this down below. They're going to come up and try and see if they can crunch it with Perfecto from hell. We'll see if this is going to work out or not. They're going to find an easy enough kill on the first one. Flames, he's not ready for a second. He didn't realize... That's a good recovery. Back into a three-on-three. Three. Oh, it absolutely is. Great call from the CT. He's getting a bit more than they bargained for, though. Zaiwu, stunning shot towards Perfecto. There's an upper bomb site that's wide open here. Boomich, they a little know. bit of panic in the vent here, and that's going to suggest it's wide open. Molotov's down. C4 to be planted here. It's a three versus two. Boomich and Axel on the retake. They have got Kid Sanders, but they might be better off saving the AK-47s, which looks to be the case right now. I think after Boomich gave himself up towards events, that's when it all came crumbling down. Yeah, you definitely get a sense of that on the, on the T side. You kind of feel like, all right, they, they are really desperate to try and do something here. Axile was not in position on the A-bomb side, unfortunately. Hey, this was uh, a difficult round for Vitality. Two pistols here and a Mac 10 Managing to make that Deagle work, as uh, we will see 
The save come through. Will there be a hunt? Looks like there might be. Boomage to defend the first kill. That's going to be Sphinx. Just trying to make the round as extensive as possible. You might as well. Yeah, actually managed... getting messy. Yeah, they actually took down pretty much everyone there. Zywu will survive with the AWP, but everyone else went down. Yeah, you know what? That's not too bad. That's definitely something you can work with. Doing a little bit of damage to that T-Side economy. But yeah, this, this situation here is unfortunate, to say the least. Harvard oh, just not quite ready this time. Zywu certainly was, though, Anders. He's Fan always ready. Fantastic shot. But that AWP really threw a spanner in the works. They have a cloud now, and we go five to four. No one's really had to present too much in terms of the eco. It's been pretty back and forth here. A deep smoke on the CT side of ramp. Oh, oh wow. Good awareness there from Flames. He almost took down that opening pick in the first 10 seconds. Yeah, the whole point of the position there for Boomich is that it's, it's really easily overlooked because it's a bit rare to see it, but he was absolutely on point. Sphinx not getting that opportunity either. Smoking up towards Mini. The spray it should have been good, but somehow Boomich ducking and weaving on the other side and is able to stay alive. Apex, though, he'll pick up one. Not quite sure. Axel maybe could have pushed, pressed yeah, his luck there. Maybe. So. They might have to say it again. They're out of position. Vitality have lost Apex, but Flames is hunting. You can feel the CT is not much pressure. Zaiwu patrolling towards his lobby position. It's smoked towards the trophy. Spots the elbow of one. Takes down the first and starts lining them up. Kill after kill. Zaiwu coming to life here on Nuke. That's his ninth. Electronic and Hobbit, they have to survive this one now. The money is so low. Boss bonus won't really be established here, seeing as it's been so back and forth. Yeah, absolutely no way through on that one. All right, even Electronic getting hunted down. Hobbit is real far away, so he's going to be fine in this one. But again, the conversation ends up around Saiwu and that AWP and just how much of a presence it is on any map that he plays suffocating it must be to be up against just you know knowing that you run into it and you have to pay with a couple of people every single time five five and like we said cloud nine are going to be in a pretty compromised spot now two thousand dollars per player a hobbit ak-47 saved in ct spawn in the previous round not impossible to win these ones don't have a cheeky kid to work with there's a smoke zai woo Helping himself towards ramp potentially. Not much presence there. I think Axile's rotating over. There's a Zeus. It's going to be Boomage waiting in towards the vent. Will allow Hobbit to pass first. So here's Axile. He's got one of the few upgraded pistols. Opted for the 5.7. Bear in mind they have no Kevlar here. Boomage already tagged down to 39. A couple of Zeuses in hand and two players making their way towards that secret position. Bear in mind, we do have an AK-47, so we'll see what they can make of it. I don't think I've ever seen a Zeus actually change the outcome of a round, but um, maybe they just haven't purchased enough in the past. He's thinking about it, perfecto. It's too long range, unfortunately. The electronic getting a good shot. Yeah, still plenty of time. Vitality, they don't have to panic. They can slow this one down. Axile trying to get onto the site in time, but Mezzi is absolutely taking care of this one. And I think Hobbit just needs to save the AK again, even though it's not as Hang exciting on. as you'd want. Okay, there was a moment there. He was considering it, the pounce. But I think you might be right. If they want to have a very strong buy going forward, they have to save this AK. Means they can bring out the AWP, potentially. There we have it. Vitality. Their map pick and is already one under their belt, which is their opponent's pick of Mirage. The fact they've already got six rounds here on the T side. Yeah, campaign, I know. And they lost a pistol, bear in mind as well. So this is uh, not looking great for Cloud9. It's not looking disastrous by any stretch. It's still a wide open game. But uh, Vitality, a team of their capability with this amount of rounds on the T side, is going to be very, very difficult to contain. They will save the AK though. We'll give them that. In terms of big performance so far, it's going to be Zywu, of course, at the top of the scoreboard, nine kills. It was a 7-5 first half in the opening map on Mirage, and that was enough to get it into overtime now. So you, there is a chance, I guess, still for, for Cloud9 to do a little bit better than that. They could tie it up at 6-6 six, six if they can find a way to win this next and upcoming round, but I do kind of agree. It feels like Vitality are just 
They're getting warmed up back into it again. They did get stopped for a minute and it looked like Cloud9 were ready to try and do something. Now they've got the tactical timeout to discuss how to win this last round of the half. Tactical timeout. Chips are down. One of these teams has to make their way towards the grand final right now. Looking very likely to be Vitality. Great showing here on the T side of Nuke. Can they win the half though? Can they bring it in seven to five in their favor? Be somewhat of a death sentence for the side of Cloud9 here. You see Apex, a passionate in-game leader, trying to rally the troops here. Find the killing blow on the final round of this T-side campaign. And what have they got for us? It looks to be fast, Anders, just the way we like it. Yeah, unbelievably quick. But Electronic, he was ready for it. It's Flames to take one perfecto in the back of the bomb site. And he got a good double spray. That's everything you wanted there. Apex on his own to try and bring it back home. It's a one versus four. The first couple of kills are amazing. But up on the high ground, Axile of all people with the AWP, and they are going to be able to get him. Perfecto, strong triple, and they tie up the first half. This is uh, Dad Mazesclair, alias Apex, and game leader for Team Vitality. And today I'm playing uh, Counter Sketch. I'm really bad at drawing, to be honest. Uh, and I'm not an artist at all. I, I swear I'm really, really bad. Huh? When, when you don't know how to draw, you can have like uh, 10 minutes and it wouldn't change a thing, okay? Oh my God. Go into the camera. <laughs> Nuke. I don't know what else I will do. Of course, it's still not beautiful, but uh, let's see, I'm, I'm done. The silo, hut, door, the event, city event, the box. Hopefully he's gonna, Good job. Nice. He's gonna get it. Okay, so. Ah, it's gonna be rough to, to do it again. <laughs> Me against four, picking doors. I said dot four, four times, MVP. Hopefully he's gonna remember. I, at least it's CS related, so yeah, if he has a memory, maybe. Okay. We done? We are done, thank you very Let's much. Let's go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play counter sketch. Counter sketch, yeah. okay. First one. Yep. Like this. It's definitely a gun, that's for sure. I'm guessing it's uh, like an AK or something. It's probably the worst drawing of a gun I think I've ever seen. Okay, this is actually, I think this is a good drawing. I think this, it looks like a nuke, a bomb site, I would say, like in, inside. Got the, the silos here, hut, Tetris, the vents, door. Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty good drawing. <laughs> uh, okay, then this drawing. This is not gonna be three out of three. This is, I don't know a clue what this is. Could be anything. This looks like a orb, maybe? Do they have a timer to draw these? They have 60 seconds. Okay, that's why it's so bad. My first thought would be like a Cold Zero uh, no scope on Mirage, but that's what I first thought, but then I saw this and I didn't have a clue what this meant, so um, it kind of threw me off. Uh, but that's, that's what I'd guess is Cold Zero's like uh, clip on Mirage. I would say Flames. I, I don't think he would necessarily care that he's drawing for me. I think he just thinks I've got to draw and he would draw as fast as he could. The only other guy that's kind of similar to Flames would be Apex. Uh, I was really shit because I don't know how to draw. My, it's not my skills at all and uh, I don't really like that. It just started off bad, brought my expectations way up and then back down again with the third. Yeah, the third one wasn't great, but not too bad. I'll give it five out of ten overall, in the middle of the pack. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the semi-final, and look what we have in the crowd. It's Blame F, and he will actually join the broadcast a little bit later on. I think he's uh, hanging out with Maui, having a bit of a conversation. Yeah, he is a bit of a natural hero, isn't he? Absolutely true. Good to see you, Blame. We're getting ready for the second half here on Nuke. Scoreline currently sits at 6-6. We split it right down the middle here. 
Vitality will switch over to their CT campaign. And smiles all around here. Just brought the kids, it's amazing. Yeah, new generation of Counter-Strike coming in, you know, oh, yeah, it's happening it's all the time. 6-6 six, six down the middle, Perfecto at the end, getting the triple kill. Now, this pistol round is going to be super important for both teams, but obviously there's a lot more weight on Cloud9 as they did lose the opening map that they picked themselves a Mirage. Now on Nuke, they are going to have to get a little bit of revenge. They need to step it up right now. The pistol round goes a really long way, especially because it puts the time where Saibu can pick up the AWP further into the distance, right? If, if it's Vitality winning the pistol round, that AWP comes out a lot quicker for Saibu, and that is usually... The, that's usually bad luck. <laughs> Dance is like you and it. Yeah, after maybe a drink or two, but uh, you're not wrong, Henry. You see me in the club, you know what it's about. Good lord. Well, yeah, we've got a slight team speak issue. We'll be underway momentarily. There's Apex on your screens there. You had a fantastic performance on Mirage. Racked up a boatload of frags. It was instrumental in the victory for Vitality. It was touch and go, the map, though. It felt like at times Cloud9 really were in it, but overtime was pretty decisive. As we get ready, it looks like the players are just getting switched on here, making the final preparations for the second half of the second map here. Bear in mind, Vitality already picking up Mirage, looking to, wait, looking to make their way towards the grand finals here. Yeah, that is what they want. That's exactly what they're looking for. Over on the other side of the bracket, obviously, phase and complexity, which is a, you know, a, a, an interesting wrinkle. I wasn't expecting it, but I must say, I'm really impressed with complexity making it this far. Like, they're going to run into the toughest challenge yet, though, but... Um, so well, yeah, that's, the, that's the, the, the rematch of the grand final over in Sydney, right? So, yeah. uh, a chance for redemption, for complexity, for sure. I went to the third map there, I went to overtime, and that's coming up later today as well. So. Uh, Make sure you stick around because that's going to be insane, especially when Carrigan is in the arena as well. Oh yeah, in front of the home crowd. That's everything you could have won. It's 17 map win streak or 70 match win streak coming out for FaZe. They are they're yeah. looking really, really think, good at the moment. I think HLTV rightly corrected everyone. It was tw it's now 12 land victories. 12 so land victories. So it's 17 okay. victories in series overall. We'll correct it. But 12 on land. So I just want to make sure we give it just a slight asterisk there. I think that's fair. I think that's totally fair. Oh, this, uh, this, this second half pistol, I mean, if you're on the, uh, if you're on the Cloud9 side, how fast do you want to play it? Hey, I've been liking some of their calls. It's been quite scrappy, but it's been very loose. Yeah. And um, they've been happy to make calls out of spawn and uh, throw caution to the wind. So maybe they just go for an insane upper rush here. Maybe they're, they're going to be going for something very quick, very fast paced. That's what I expect. It would make the most sense to me, but uh, anything is available. The ramp's always a viable option on these T-side pistols as well. Try and brute force your way in. Get a fast plan down towards lower. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of approach they bring to the table. Maybe they want to go for some range, get those P250s out towards outside. Plenty of options and time will tell. Some cosplay here as well, Anders. Looks like the boys have made the effort today. Yeah, they really have. Job well done. Oh, got even, it all. Even got all the accessories. Love to see that. It makes the final details, you know, it uh, makes it a bit more believable. Um, yeah, I mean, going yard with P250s in a round like that's coming up here, if you run into the USB range, it could be, the round could be over so quickly. I guess the same is true for a rush if you run into a bit of a stack, so either way, not an easy call to be made here from Cloud9. Yeah, well, shout out to the Royal Arena. These guys have turned up in their thousands today, Anders. Yeah. No, I mean, no Heroic, no Astralis, and still, we have a full arena ready for a semi-final here today, and it's been a banger. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really proud of you guys. I think that's amazing, you know. There was a bit of a worry, you know, Astralis and Heroic both getting knocked out. You never know what's going to happen, but they're here. Denmark, make some noise! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It looks like we're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. The second half of the second map is ready to get started here. Vitality taking on Cloud9. And it will be now the international squad switching over to the favoured CT Forces 6-6. It's a great performance for them so far, but the job is far from done. And it is towards that Ram from Anders. The brute force, as I mentioned, you're going to try and swarm the likes of Mezzi. New to this position, normally plays upper in previous teams, and now taking the responsibility of Magus Gear on Nuke. Hard shoes to fill, it's been talked about a lot. I must say, he's been playing really well, Mezzi, but... 
He's going to give up the position, which is fine. You can do that. You're allowed to do that. See if he can hit the headshot. They're swarming him. They're running him down. It's Axile instead to pick up the opening killer in the second half. And he keeps it going. The reload is in. He wants to fight more. He wants more blood. A triple kill. And that should be enough. Apex on his own. And it is a one versus four. The bomb is planted. It's such a lightning fast bomb plant as well. <laughs> Didn't even notice the bomb no. going down there, Anders. That is wild. Yeah, Apex. I, I don't know what you do with this one. They'll be coming at you from all different angles here, and it's a very nice finish as Cloud9 pick up the pistol once again here. It's just a ramp rush, Anders. As soon as you get the pressure on that player towards the ramp, they're usually by themselves. They have no choice but to go and position themselves as a turret down towards lower. If you swarm, though, they can't get a strong position. They can't get the window room or towards the back silo. So you have to play a heads-up position like Mezzi did there. He gets mowed down as Axel finds two brilliant entries down towards the lower bomb site. And it will be a Cloud9 pistol. Just what they needed to go seven to six here. And you know, in those small hallways down to the people on the side, that Glock suddenly becomes a lot more of a problem for the USP. So Same again. Let's uh, get stuck in. Rinse and repeat. Why not do it? Why not just go for it? There's absolutely nobody downstairs from the CT side. So this is essentially free round. Oh, mind getting a, getting a bit of fortune going their way at the start of this one. They're not really leaving much of chance either. They're still throwing the Molotovs. They're smoking it off. They're making absolutely sure that there's nothing weird happening in this round. Oh, yeah. Round gu guaranteed at this stage. This was the full eco from Cloud9, just to know that. And uh, an absolute gimme. Rushing round once again. It's a call that could be disastrous sometimes. A brave call to make, Anders. Had they stacked ramp and forced boy, you never know if it'll fall apart, but... Boomich with the perfect setup here. Looks like they'll be finding everyone on routes at the same time. CT's just trying to find a few exits if possible. They'll swing out when the C4 explodes, but they will be dealt with in due course. Clean round here from Cloud9. The rifles come out next, so for Vitality. Now, it won't be the strongest setup. They won't have the luxury of the AWP here. It'll have to be M4A1S pretty much across the board here. A lack of helmets. And bear in mind, the, the MAC-10s are out there as well, Anders, so the helmets could be a real issue. You need to decide to have the utility or the protection. We've got some great shirts out there today. They got all, they got all the memes in one T-shirt. That's not <laughs> bad. That's really not bad at all. Um, yeah, you're right. No so AWP. Three MAC-10s. How many helmets do we have? Three. So it's Sphinx and Apex will be very squishy to the SMGs here. Yeah, I'm glad you highlighted it, because that... that it's not always a factor, but, you know, in the right moment, you have a bit of a spray battle against the MAC-10, and suddenly you're just, you're just gone instantly. Nice Molotov into the corner. Flames taking so much damage behind that. He's not loving life. Down to 13 health. Yeah, safe position for Apex to play in here. Even with the lack of helmet. Probably does hurt his head jumping into the yeah. roof there, but... <laughs> doubt if the MAC-10 can get the instant headshot. All right, then. Playing that defensive position. Apex allows one player to cross. That's Boomich. Making noise. A lot of noise. He's going to get hunted down. Shoot up. I don't know why he's running that much. Boomich, he went back that route because he heard the jumping, I'm pretty sure. Four versus five. An Axile, a swift kill, taking down Cyber when the health on Flames and Messi. This round is done. They absolutely can't go for the retake here. They've got to be... Lucky if they can get out with the rifles alive. And that's three in a row, Henry. This is getting real exciting. That's a massive bonus round victory for Cloud9 to pick up there. Three MAC-10s, two AK-47s, and they get that lower control down towards Secret and Boomich with a, a master stroke of Counter-Strike play there, knowing that Apex is on the other side, pounces on him with the MAC-10, opens things up, no chance of the retake there whatsoever, and it's another clean sweep. They've got Sphinx locked in towards spawn. He's trying to play for his life here, but there's nothing he can do, just as he remains now. He's down to 11 points of health, make it zero. Beautiful stuff, Cloud9, down but not out. What a tricky position now. Vitality, they're not far away from getting into a point in time where they have to, you know, think about doing a couple of force-ups or just trying something to make this work because they're knocking at the door of winning this new map here, Cloud9. There's some great synergy there as well for Cloud9, amazing comps. There was an HE thrown down towards Apex just 
as Boomage went with the swing. So yeah. he caught at Apex with his knife out, trying to avoid the grenade. And he's taking damage on Roots as well. That was just a thing of beauty. Great mid-round corner from Cloud9. It's been a loose game. And that's a big grenade. An even better shot, Zaiwu. Looking to find the first round for the CTs here. Doing considerable damage. There's no smokes down. Electronics in the open here, but he's fighting for his life. Pulls a frag back and gets him out of dodge. That was looking very precarious. I absolutely hate everything about that from Cloud9. The fact that they tried to bridge that against the Deagle with no smokes in the yard. Why would he throw the smokes? But that could have cost them a lot. It seems like they recovered it fine. An for attempted now. sneak around onto the T roof and they caught that as well. Yeah, you're right. For now, still two Deagles and a 5 7 left in play. But that should be a wake up call to Cloud9. Sort of a reminder. Just don't take anything for granted here. It's the kind of counter strike they have to play to win today. Loose, unpredictable, but you can still throw in a few safety protocols, like a couple of smokes. Just a little bit, on the you know? cross. Yeah, like you can see they've just called from spawn. It's just take the guns outside, challenge whatever pistols are out there, just take angels. Uh, but when Zywo is hitting some bangers, it gets a little bit uncomfortable there, but ultimately it's a four versus three. They should be absolutely fine. In terms of lower presence, hang on. Apex is down here. If he finds a one tap, maybe they're onto something. He does some damage towards Hobbit, takes him down to 14. They're so low on health, Cloud9. Even if they have the man advantage, three of them are one deagle away from dying. Boomage, though, very powerful position up here and taking care of flames. That that probably is the kill that seals the round in spite yeah. of all the damage here onto the T side. They should be okay. It's another sublime call from Boomage, I have to say. They go down towards lower. They feel the presence of the CTs on the other side. They fly up the vents. Boomage has got full control from the heaven position, as you mentioned. And yeah, it's, it's looking real nice out there. Vitality can't get going on their CT side. Can Mezzi inspire them with a couple of frags? He only is good for one here. Apex will have the Desert Eagle in towards main. Will also suffer a similar fate. Double digits for Cloud9. It's so rare, Henry, that we get a chance to get a real sense of what an in-game leader does. We obviously have a sense of who are the good in-game leaders from talking to the teams and just from the results alone, but this difference here for Cloud9, like, it looks so different. It's amazing. Outside the communication we need to get louder boys. Then it can go vent, it's not enough boys. I didn't hear it properly. Oh that's some confusion in the camp it seems. Yeah. And not the same energy that we were listening into from earlier in Vitality when they were winning winning. It's 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 gone away a little bit. Yeah, well, yet to post uh, anything in this second half so far. Found out with the pistol. And every single round in the follow-up as well, towards ramp. And a bit of activity on that side, but... Dissuaded is Axar. We've got Boomage once again. Alone, Anders. Finding all of this space for Cloud9. Early on into the round as well, he's already got down towards Secret, so... Maybe heading towards that ramp room once again. We're gonna try and split down towards lower. Electronic will go join the troops. I would say that's the likely outcome here. Boomage to clear out the lower perimeters while they plant. They have to get past Mezzi first, as we mentioned. Not known to be a RAM player in general. Replacing Magisk means replacing him in some key positions. Anchor spots, we'll see. If he will be tested once again, we're getting Molotovs towards up up. Boomer's still making progress in that secret area. So towards Squeaky we go. Oh, they're gonna dive down and try and catch him, but Cyrus ready. Oh, he's impaled on the M4 instead. And now it's a four versus five. Axile getting shot for the smoke there. Boomich, it seems like Saiwu knows that someone's down there. He's going to be ready for him. And this round's falling completely apart. Yeah. Well, there we go. Maybe trying to be a little bit too tricky with it, Anders. They managed to get Boomich down there. They went for the lower split, but they tried to enter through the vents with the lurk smoke, and it just didn't work out for them whatsoever. CT's poised and ready as they post their first round. Zywu manages to find both kills down towards that lower bomb site. Controls honestly, it in a very promising manner. Like, honestly, it's kind of a sick play. If if Saiwu isn't holding this position, if he's further back, like where Apex was on the stairs, he's going to hear the vent drop, and then Boomer's just going to peek him from the other side. Like, it could work out the timing, but obviously, the way that he's holding it there, it's just an instant death. There's nothing they could have done yeah, about I, it. I'm just very surprised with that sort of, like, great setup with Boomer down so early. 
the call you made to follow it up is multiple players down the vents with the bomb. It's so high risk. It is risky. Um, with the ramp, at least you have that trade potential. If you run into a stack, at least you'll be able to find kills back to fourth. And maybe you can get down towards lower, but it doesn't work out for them. And it will be the first on the board here for Vitality. Just in the nick of time. This one was starting to spiral after giving up four rounds in a row on their CT side. But the first one keeps a decent amount of players alive and uh, should have some resources going forward now. 10 to 7. As we see, another buy for Cloud9, of course. They've got plenty of money after having such a strong start. Axel with the Krieg. A weapon we all kind of speculated could be quite meta going forward. This tournament, I don't think we've seen a single kill with it. So that's a good point. I never even thought about it. We've seen the all come out. We see the P90, but not the Krieg. What is the M4 for Messi to kick us off with? Takes down Axel. This needs to be a springboard for Vitality. They need to keep winning the rounds. Electronic. He's on 14 kills now. Quietly, he's getting up there. He's having a bit more of an impact on this game than he did on Mirage. Back into a 4 and 4 and 4 we go here, and still plenty of time on the clock to make this one work. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, a 4 and 4 Bit of a nightmare, actually, for Vitality to deal with. I mean, your, your defense is spread very thin. Lost outside presence here. Apex now given the responsibility of ramp after Mezzi. Tried his luck towards outside. He was good for one kill. Did take Electronic down at 76, but couldn't stay alive there. Too chaotic outside. Good smoke down towards Squeaky as we hit the 45 second mark here. CTs with AK 47s ready and waiting. This next fight will be instrumental in the outcome. It's Spinks. Beautiful headshot. Flames giving them the business towards Squeaky Door as well. And it's just Perfecto remaining here. Vitality have guaranteed the round, but can they keep it clean? Yeah, that's a big question. An important one to be answered for Flames. Four rifles alive. They can steal some more AKs if they needed it. They tried to walk through that, that smoke at the squeak door with no flashes, right? They just try to go through and they get absolutely blown up. Oof. Yeah, this is a very nice upper hold here. The crossfire of death. Sphinx and Flames working in tandem there. <laughs> And I believe in you more than in my mother, so let's fucking do it. Did you catch that one? I think that's his mother in the in the crowd, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> so he's ready. I heard something about a mother. I want to be careful with that one. Uh, but we will have Zywo opening frag. my Henry. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting worried, too. <laughs> opening frag has been found. It's a 5 on 4 in favor of Vitality. But Boomage once again making his way down towards Secret. Now, bear in mind, last time they had this sort of control, he was there alone. This time calling for the cavalry to join him down towards Secret. They'll have to get past the Wudo once again. He's already got his first frag of the round. He's chomping at the bit to find a few more as well. He's got a full belt of utility to work with, Anders. You can see jumping up for the initial damage with the Molotov. We'll try and slow them down as much as he possibly can. He's just set up for it. Nice timing on that one. He does spot them out. That's all he really wanted. But they're ready. They made it past the first Molotov, opening the door, just making it real uncomfortable for him down here. And he has to stay cool. He can't really re overreact. Boomich will find him. That's a huge shot on the side room. Oh, Apex no! Gonna get taken down. It's Boomich. A double opening. And there's nobody else anywhere near here. The I entire rest of the CT force is upstairs. Unless they find this player towards the squeaky door. That's Axile. The round should be done. Is anyone going to flank around and check it out? I don't think so. They're going towards the ramp here. Time's of the essence. If they're going for this one, they need to decide right now. It looks like they're going to give it up. And it will be Cloud9. Riding the coattails of Boomage there. It looked like there was no chance. They lose the first frag. Zaiwu plays them with the Molotov, segregates the pack, and then Boomage just opens up Decon. Finds two kills some way, somehow, and the round's over. Medi will survive. He'll take down that ancient kill on towards Axile, but it's too little too late. There will be Cloud9 finding their 11th round here on the T side of Nuke. Three players survived, though, for Vitality. The money's pretty decent. They'll still have plenty of money going forward, and I dare say it's a Zyro all. That's going to be coming out next, Anders. So that's a great round for Cloud9 and Boomich once again with the impact. Yeah, that is their super weapon still on Vitality. You saw on Mirage what a difference it makes when he picks up that AWP. And it might be the same thing here. I'm sure that's what they're banking on. Apex unhappy, frustrated at the situation. Cloud9. A step in the right direction. They're getting close now. Oh, yeah. 11 rounds on their board. That third map of Inferno getting more and more likely here. There's overtime in our first map. 
Well, we used to have a bit of a meme that Inferno was sort of the, the map that was meant to close all good best of threes. True, yeah. I don't know if it's true in CS2, but maybe we will find out. Maybe Cloud9 can get us there. All right, we got some representation here. And Vitality fans have shown up. Well, they had a lot to celebrate on the first map, Henry, but this one is a bit different. Well, the second half has been rough. There's no denying that. Currently 5-2 down in the second. But Anders, they've got that AWP, as I mentioned. A chance to bounce back here. A shot of redemption. Looking to deny map points. Zywu rattles off the first shot, not connecting. The pace behind this one is brutal from Cloud9. They're not messing around whatsoever. Flashing towards the garage, Electronic confidently pushes through it. It leads into his first kill, but Flames will answer back. Yeah, and it's Zywu. They're trying to hunt him down. Good kill on the first one. They're getting close. He picks oh! up Exile. But Boomich, at least he hunted him down. At least he was able to get him. Three versus three now. And Mezzi showing up on the spot with the M4. Boomich is good for another one. I can't believe it. It's a double kill. 15 overall on Boomich. He's tied for top frags with Electronic. What a performance from the boss himself. Flames will take down Perfecto. But the bomb its actually fallen back here. This is very awkward. Boomich has to go around and pick it up and he gets run down. Oh no, Henry, if they had the bomb, they would have planted it already. And yeah, all of the you, pressure would have been on Vitality. You could see there was a weird standstill there. I was trying to work out as to exactly why, but that explains it. Hobbit thrust it into a two versus one. He's already had one of those go in his favor on Nuke. This one is not converted. Tantalizingly close. He lines them up, but he can't knock them down. And it's a bit of a nightmare outcome there as Cloud9 leave the bomb towards Secret. It's discovered by Vitality, and they keep themselves alive for now. Oh, Captain, my Captain, there's Kadian. And Nicholas Bender as well, he's back in the arena. Wow. We had him here last year for the show match. A star-studded Royal Arena here today, then. Yeah. You love to see it, don't you? I was more excited for Kadian, I guess. You should rightly correct me on that one. We are in Denmark. It's all good. <laughs> it's, it's all good. The crowd were as well, to be honest. Hobbit. Trying to make up for the last round there, picking off Apex. It's a start. It's a start if nothing else, but there's another player in the garage. Good return. So, he only gets one bullet off. They still don't know. Mezzi's hanging around out here. Spinks so the smoke gets taken down. And boom, which he's made so much headway. I think Flames is in a lot of trouble in Mini right now. He could get picked off once the smoke clears, but no. What a he's shot. Good for the shot. That's an amazing kill. Taking down Boomich. And a two on three. Plenty of time for the T side. Perfecto's thinking about it. Does get spotted. Flames, quick to react, gets the reload in in time. And he's looking for it. Perfecto made a little bit of noise, jumping away, but he's still there. Yeah, he had the advantage in that fight. He knew it as well. Flames trying to use that smoke, found a tricky position. We've got to reset this three on two, though. 45 seconds here. In terms of utility, one smoke available for Hobbit. Flames knows he has to be active here. He can't just rest in his laurels and let them have full control of the map. Working with Mezzi, he's gone down towards lower, just to note. What's going to be the final call here? We have got the bomb making its way over towards Secret. Perfecto clearing out upper. It's about the individuals for Vitality if they want to win this round. Flames, bit of damage. We're down to 20 seconds. Backup is being called for, and they have a smoke. They can just smoke him out of this one. They're planting the bomb in the backside. And now a lot of trouble coming the way here for Vitality. They've been saving a couple of rounds already. Question is, do you want to go for this one? Do you want to stop the map point here coming in from Cloud9? They're thinking about it. They're moving in. Molotov in the corner. Hobbit. Oh, it doesn't reach. Oh, it doesn't. You're already... Oh, oh yes, it, it does. does. Right at the end, the flames consume him. And now it's a two versus two. They're getting ever so close to Perfecto in a sneaky position. But he's down and out. Electronic with the spray. He's good for the one. No! He's taken. If map point for Cloud9. It comes down to the granular details once again. One bullet in it. But it will be Cloud9 posting map points. Holding their nerve. It could have been anyone's round there. Flames doing absolutely everything he could to carry them through it. But it's a double kill from Electronic. Delivers the goods when they needed them most. And that's going to be now three opportunities to close this one out, Anders. On the T side. And in terms of finances, I don't think they have a whole lot to speak of on the CT side here. We're seeing scouts, MP9s. 
And it has to be nothing but perfect play from here on out. Cloud9 have done enough, but can they close it out? The map pick of Vitality. Cloud9 with a brand new in-game leader. Yeah, and he's playing like an absolute master right now. He truly is. 15 kills. He's a little bit behind Electronic after that last round, but... Boomich has shown up in this semi-final in a way that I did not expect was going to be possible. And look at the call here. Down below, there's nobody here from the CT side. This could be this it. This is horrendous. This could absolutely be it. Oh, they're in a they're in a deep hole right now. Vitality Apex just getting into the corner, but this is surely going to be checked. They're jumping all around. There's the peak coming out. Axel will take care of business. I don't know how you get this retake on. I'm not sure either, Anders. Five versus four. No kids to speak of. The bomb planted. There's no utility. I think we're calling GG at this stage. Kill by kill will come through the Cloud9. There's absolutely zero chance here. You can see the AI's already predicted it. We're living <laughs> in the future right now. 99% sets to one. And I'm not sure there's anything they can do apart from hope for a couple of frags. Yeah, they're going for it, but Boomich and they're trying to clean it up. And Cloud9, they continue. They pick up the second map and we get a third. We get to see Inferno. The semi-final carries on. And once again, the nuke pick for Vitality does not pay off. They get punished. The defense showing weaknesses in moment, and these weaknesses beautifully identified by Cloud9. Strategically speaking, a masterclass from Cloud9 on this ground of news. First and foremost, we gotta give them credit. We gotta give them credit for a splendid T side. The CT side at the beginning of the game wasn't too well structured for Cloud9. They were in some deep, deep troubles, but once they got over to the attacking side, they had Vitality exactly where they wanted them. They were manipulating with the rotations. They were going lower bomb side round after round after round, and it seemed like everything they threw up worked. Had it not been for a couple of clutches coming in for Vitality, we're looking at one of the most clean T sides nuke we've seen all tournament long. Definitely, I agree with you. We're gonna talk about electronics performance for sure, but for now, you're talking about the B-side, and let's dive into two of the most key rounds that happened here, transpired on this map of Nuke. We are talking about a B-side of Vitality that could not hold the heat. Disjointed defense, not a whole lot of trading able. Here we have round 15, that's a very important moment. Mind you, this is the beginning of the CT side for Vitality. And we see Apex oblivious to the cross from Boomich, completely caught off guard. And from this moment, once the death happened, the round is over. The round is over. Nothing Vitality can do at this point. Once you lose control over the lower bomb side, it is incredible tough to fight your way back into it. They have to accept it. Now it happens again, match the exact same scenario. Even though Saivu is getting the first kill, we're looking at a scenario where Cloud9 is walking down secret right here, and this time around, it's Saivu being caught off. And it's Zaiwu making a mistake. Yes. We have to put it out there. Let's put it bluntly. It is a mistake from Zaiwu here. Maybe he thought the door had been closed, or it's just broken at the last second, but he gets caught off guard by Boomich, and then that double kill onto Apex signifies the around immediately. You can again argue that the defense between Apex and Zywoo here mm. is disjointed. There is no possibility for each other to protect themselves and Zywoo falls in a 5v4. These were two key rounds, B side of Vitality, insufficient. Even the very last round in the game as well, down towards the B bomb side. Apex caught off by himself, no backup, no nothing. That's what disappoints me the most about this performance coming out of Vitality. They seem disjointed on the CT side. Not exactly the team we're looking to struggle in that front, but honestly speaking, Cloud9, they made it look easy and that's a credit to Cloud9. And just as much as we would like to put Maisie maybe under the microscope, I think some other players mm. deserve the praise, deserve the spotlight. We're talking about an electronic that was mild on the first map, a mild version of what we like to see. But on this map, holy hell, this is the electronic that goes out there, that fights you on the T side as well, fighting Apex outside, not being scared of all these duels. He, he provided exactly what we had hoped from, from electronic. We saw a couple of moments where he was comfortable flashing himself into warehouse, where he was comfortable going yard, as you can see right now, just taking the fight straight up. He was bullying Apex. He was bullying Messi for that matter as well. Whenever someone tried to go yard and tried to shut down that control, they couldn't, which is why Electronic and why Cloud9 had the free pass going down secret round after round after round. We got everything from Electronic on map two. We didn't get a map one. Yeah, this was a beautiful, stellar performance from Electronic. It is going to be needed on map three, of course. We can talk a little bit about Zaiwu. I wouldn't say he had a bad map. I don't think that word would qualify. Okay. But if you consider the lack of quality of the defense from a tactical perspective, 
he did not provide the multi kills necessary to close rounds. Because we've we've seen the defense has been abused in terms sure. of quality of rotations and some of these positions not enough. So you need an individual to stop the round, to win the round right here, right now with a multi kill. And I'm gonna be real, I, I have not seen enough of it from Zaiwu, unfortunately. No, I, I buy into that argument. My only issue with it is I don't think it should come down to that on the CT side, because I agree with you. Once you lose control on Yacht, once you can control Electronic and the way Cloud9 were taking map control, you need someone to stop that individually speaking. But it should be a team issue from Vitality. It should be the team shutting that down. They didn't have the solutions. I don't know if that's lack of calls coming from Apex, lack of confidence, but you're right. Zaiwu wasn't the solution. Sphinx definitely wasn't the solution. He's been nowhere to be found on this map so far, or map one for that matter. So there's a little bit of a, a scratch going on in the Vitality car right I now. mean, Sphinx is a reason for concern, if you yeah. ask me. I mean, of course, this new roster, it's not that jailed and well-oiled in the way they play Counter-Strike. Sure. We understand that, so we rely on an individual. The player that was tied with Zaiwu at the opening doors of this playoff at 1.38 hmm. has been nowhere to be found. He's had two or three very good rounds on Mirage, disappeared on the second map once again. And we talk about that space being taken outside, it's partly because Sphinx's main presence, yes. the mini presence, if you come from the US, too, just too lackluster, too much weakness, not enough stopping power, not enough uh, putting a wrench in the plans of Cloud9. He took too long to come alive. If you ask me, he never really came alive. Huge problem for Vitality. I mean, if you speak of, of lack of confidence, we often, you know, use that phrase on the desk right here. Look at his demo, look at the way he was moving. He was not taking the fights that you'd like to see a guy like Spinks take. Unfortunately for him and Vitality, it cost him deeply. And now we go to Inferno. If there ever was a map to finish a best of three in the history of Counter-Strike, it wouldn't be any other than Inferno. We're gonna take a quick breather, three minute breaks out there, drink some water, come back and settle ourselves for the final map of the semifinal.
Vitality versus Cloud9. This series currently standing at one map apiece, and I couldn't think of a better way than to be rounding this one out on Inferno. That's because both teams pretty comfortable on this map, but there's a catch when it comes to the Vitality camp, Machu, because obviously Mezzi is now integrating into the squad, and uh, Majisk, he held quite an important position on that CT side, didn't he? Yeah, I agree with you. It's very hard to replace post for post Majisk and the impact he had in that pit position. You could very much argue he was one of the very best in the world, still is, at this position and multi-killing from there. But I have to say, I think the quality of the defense of Vitality coast to coast is going to be much better than you. It was lackluster, there is no other way to put it, and I have way more belief in the entirety of the map and the quality that they have. I'm a little bit worried. We spoke about it up there. Spinks not showing up either map one or map two. He has a vital position on that CT yes. side towards Banana, where he can't hide. He has to go out there, he has to fight, he has to be aggressive. Wherever he is on the maps, you can't hide right now when it comes to Inferno. So it's a worrisome point for me, we've seen Spinks have bad games before and then show up on map 3, so it's not that he can't do it, it's more so that he's needed if they want to beat Cloud9. Yeah, that had me scratching my head just a little bit. You actually pointed it out, Machu. Um, he was tied in terms of his rating to Zaiwu coming into this semi-final, both on 1.38, as was Electronic on the other side of the server. We were demanding Electronic to be stepping up a little bit more on that ground of Nuke, and he certainly delivered, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you make a comparison Electronic to Spinks, it's only it's day and night. One of them came up to play and the other one is still trying to find his keyboard and mouse. I don't think there's any fancy words to cover it. It's been a very complicated series for Spink so far. You could see the jitter mm. already on Mirage. He had a couple of duels where, from a physical standpoint, I could see he was a little bit nervous. On Nuke as well, on many different occasions, he was positioned to have the impact. But you could see he played a little bit timid. He was shy in the approach to it. So now it's it's basically sink or swim. You're going to have to get stuck in. You're going to have to do what Electronic has been doing, which is to not be afraid to put your life on the line and really get with conviction into these duels because he's got the skill. He has the skill. For me, it has been mental so far. This is the shadow of a Sphinx that is needed for Vitality to win. Well, let's hope he finds his keyboard and his uh, his mouse, for that matter, going into to map three. The fact of the matter is now, if you want to keep it comparison wise, Electronic have been playing fantastically well in this tournament a couple of times on Inferno as well. Yes. The T side, you spoke about it. The way they're setting him up to go up towards middle fight, right side middle fight, left side middle, in general take map control, that's something I would like to see Vitality to stop. At least test right. fight in middle, do some double stacks, put down the smoke in the middle of middle and avoid that map control from being lost early on. Otherwise, if Electronic is having that passion of way to go in there and open up the space round after round after round, I could be worrisome for Vitality on behalf of that. And the good side for Vitality, because I agree with you, this is going to be a recurring theme, is that Zywoo's AWP seem on point. Mm. He hasn't missed a whole lot of shots. Yes. Sure, on Nuke, he was once or twice in the position to multi-kill and he got only one and traded, but it's been true. He's found the targets he wanted, and then he is going to be positioned towards that long side, towards that short side. At the beginning of the CS2 scenario, Zywoo missed kills. He got abused towards middle. He got Ferrari peaked by whoever was in front of him. This is a different Zywoo here on the stage. He's very much activated. He needs to put down the electronic when he takes these risks because the fight is going to be how Cloud9 look at this Inferno. So if we do see, you know, Cloud9 starting on the T side of things, obviously that will be determined uh, by the knife round that I believe is going on just as we speak. But if oh. we do see them on that offensive half, um, is it all falling along uh, on electronic shoulders then rather to be getting those openers or is there anybody else in the Cloud9 arsenal that you think is instrumental on this map? I would like to say Exile and his lurking, but we haven't seen that consistent enough in the tournament for me to believe in it. Sure, it can happen occasionally. He's had a couple of good maps at this tournament where he's shown up, but for me to stand here and say he's going to do it on a map three on a stage right now, that's not the Exile we've been seeing as of recent months. So yes, the lurking from Exile could be vital, is especially to cut off the rotation and, and just be annoying for Vitality, but I'm not sure if I trust him right now. I really look towards Electronic mm. without Shiro on the lineup being, that's the one guy. Maybe Boomage with the Mac 10 as well jumping around, but that's about it. You mentioned Boomage. I think if you're a Cloud9, you have to be specifically ready for how oddly Vitality play the banana. Because they don't play it safe. Oh, hell. They don't play it calm. They're not going to wait for you to exec. Flamesy and Apex is basically playing a game of who's going to die first. Yes. If it's Apex flashed in from Flames, mm. if it's Flames flashed in from Apex. The, the, the furthest defensively they're playing is by the swimming pool on B. That's it. That's the furthest defensive you're going to find them. Obviously, I'm memeing. I'm exaggerating. But it is in the DNA of Vitality to fight into banana, to be out there, pop flashes into the broken wall. I think Cloud9 must have that ready as a game plan 
to puncture just one player here and there, yes. and then you force the rotation to moves. I think that's always been what scares me a little bit about Vitality's defense, because only uh, you. if Apex isn't going for it, then it's Flamesy, and more often than not, they're both going together, and it's been kind of, I, I guess, the strength more traditionally on the A side of things. Do you feel like that Cloud9 are going to have to bring the heat to the B side of the I would say so, you know, because the third string we sometimes see is Spinks coming over there to help them in the beginning to be a cover for that aggression. And if Spinks is not having a great game, if he's being left by himself all of a sudden to four guys coming in, it could be troublesome for Vitality. So yeah, there's a couple of, you know, a couple of things where I'm I'm worried on behalf of Vitality, yet I'm still standing with a feeling feeling relatively comfortable they're gonna win this game. Sure, Cloud9 is playing well, they're trending upwards, but Vitality, there's too much quality winning that lineup for them to lose an Inferno. I mean, there should be, you mentioned it. Inferno is the perfect ground because both teams have played this map and I have had success here. So there's sort of no how to follow the build or the blueprint rather to get to victory. Vitality played it twice, that's two W's as well. But if you want to flip the switch, you're talking about Flamesy and Apex, Boomich and Perfecto is dependent on their CT side. Yes. And don't look me in the eye and tell me Boomich is a safeguard, he's got a rifle on the B side. If I'm Apex right now, I'm building this game plan, I'm sending Zaiwu. How many times are we going to see Zaiwu fight into Banana? The Zaiwu Boomich, the asteroid collision that's going to happen, Banana is going to be determinant if they start on the T side. So does this tempt you to be a pick in Vitality then, Jacob? It sounds like you feel like they're the more certain team when coming into it. In reality, we've seen Cloud9 play Inferno against the Dead Heroic lineup as a mixed team right here. And yes, they were dominating in that game, but the quality of opponents now in Vitality is much, much higher. I see Vitality winning this game, and I see them winning it. But I mean, I still side with Vitality. I'm not going to turn my jacket right now. But this is a true test of character. Yes. We know this team isn't ready. We've been talking about this point on and on again. But now it is the test of character. Are you equipped already now to face a third map against people who have nothing to lose? And Cloud9 is going to full send it to them. Well, we are ready to be guessing this show on the road. Our final map of our first semi-final, and it all comes down to Inferno. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the semi-final continues right here, right now. It's a third and deciding map of Inferno. No blowouts here today, Anders. We wouldn't have it any other way. Vitality being pushed to the distance here. They really have. It's surprising, isn't it? But Cloud9 have managed to summon all of their strength, and it got them onto the third map. I'm excited. I'm ready for this. I know you are as well, Henry. What a, what a luxury it is to be in a semi-final. You get a third map. It's everything you could have possibly wanted. Let's hear it one more time. Denmark, make some noise! We'll kick things off. After the ninth round has been concluded, it's Vitality choosing to start on the CT side. And five players are Cloud9. They've kept it loose, they've kept it chaotic throughout this series. And that trend will continue here. Five players rushing up towards Middle Anders and choosing to focus on the arch side. Oh yeah, they're ready to go. They haven't even encountered any resistance yet. They're just running towards the library. Uh, Cyrus called it out, he knows. Someone is back there. Let's see if they can find the early kill. They actually do slow it down. Yeah, they kind of have to now. They were hoping to find some CTs on the other side. Scary position to be in once you're this deep. You feel committed, but now it's slowed down. No CTs are peeking you. They have no utility either. This is five sets of Kevlar and Glocks. Brute force required here. They've got players to deal with towards the apartment and the bomb site. Yes, they do. There's the first headshot. My god, it's flames as well. Oh, he continues. He wants them all. Three headshots, and they've been laid low. It's Boomich in the pit. He can hope for a kill or two here, but he's gonna be found. Oh, the kill, Saiwu. The monster is back. Yeah, that's more like it. He's been having a great series. It's other star members of the cast of Vitality that haven't really shown or put their best foot forward so far. We're looking for Spinks to turn up in this semi-final, but Zywu certainly has surrounded on the bombsite here and still lands every single kill. Headshots across the board there, and there's no plan to speak up. A real Hail Mary of a call from Cloud9 there, Anders. Like yeah. Kevlar across the board and rushing middle. That's, that, that was the strategy. That was, and I'm, I'm sure in their minds they're thinking, we're going to run into at least one person, and that, that will exactly. dictate where we go, right? Right, you continue with the momentum, yeah, you have you... some inertia behind you, but um, yeah, that, that, that's really disappointing. No plan means the full eco on this second round, so you'd imagine not much more than a P250. They've got a flash to work with, and uh, this is surely a guaranteed round. Should be now. Sphinx will find the open. I need to build his confidence up. Had some very quiet performances in the first two maps. Flames to be tested next. So there's considerable damage. Should be able to convert things here. A real pressure being applied. 
Just trying to bait out as much CT utility as possible. If you're a Cloud9 player, it all adds up in the end. Yeah. And actually, you can kind of tell Vitality 2 are trying their best not to really use any of the grenades that they have. I mean, a couple of HEs here and there, but they're holding on to most of it. Doubt there's going to be anything even remotely resembling a bomb in this one. Oh, okay. Apex actually going down. This is a little bit awkward, just a bit. If Flames dies, suddenly it goes from a bit awkward to really awkward. Although the bomb is lost in the middle, so how did that happen? They could have actually had the bomb now. That's a bit disappointing. Well, yeah, it, it was never going to be a great round for them. The plan would have been fantastic. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, one player remaining is going to be perfecto. The bomb is down. Bottom and middle. <laughs> nothing that can be done now. It's a little bit underwhelming in the end. But at least they get one kill. Uh, nothing really invested into the round. There'll be the AKs pretty much across the board here in round number three. This is where Vitality will truly be tested. And we'll see whether... Boomich can come up with another glorious call because it's been the mid-round calls, the decisiveness of them. It's been very impressive, especially on Nuke. Vitality could never really get established in their CT style, getting pulled all around the map. And we'll see whether Cloud9 can answer back here. A couple of Galils in the mix as well, opting for more utilities. That's Electronic and Boomich for less firepower. Zaiwu, aggressive pick towards middle, doesn't connect. Goes down to 50 HP. I mean, for maybe a bunch of other Orpers, you would say it's a bit risky to take that peek, but if it's Cyber, you have to let him do it, right? He's so crisp with the weapon that you would never want to second-guess him for that one. But he did take a little bit of damage for it. Spinks, he's been the topic of conversation on the desk so far. Where is he? Where has he gone? Why is he not playing the semi-final? Hopefully, for Vitality's sake, he's going to show up for the third map. This is a big position. He's got himself tucked in the bedroom. There's a player behind him in the form of Axar. They're actually coming back now. There's a lot of sound cues here. Spinks now going to be locked in. And Axel has got to deal with him. Can't do it. Great trade. Promising position. Completely nullified there. Four and four. Certainly favors the T side. We've got a minute remaining here. It's Cloud9 Humphrey there first. CT still with a couple of smoke sanders. With 50 seconds remaining, this could be an important note. Apex, MP9, Nade, and Flash towards the coffin side. And he'll be joined there by Flames, who deploys the smoke. He's boosted up in CT spawn. It's going to be a B finish here. The Famous and the MP9 to defend. The clock's on their side. Tease will have a very difficult time breaking through and covering every area of the bomb site. Yeah, they will. The smoke towards CT spawn is fine, but the boost obviously is meant to Snake negate it. Apex, he's set up and ready for a deep grenade. Oh! <laughs> it sends Hobbit flying. And Flames peeking in at the same time. They're never getting through this one. Boomich trying to run in there with the bomb is still in his hands. Apex, fantastic defense. The grenade, it couldn't have been better. Yeah, airstrike from the coffin position. He couldn't have timed it any better. You're dead on. As soon as they committed, as soon as the smoke blooms, he waits just a second or two. It lands in the middle of three of them. It all started here with a Sphinx pick. He kind of funneled them in towards his B bomb site, but an absolute touchdown of a grenade. No plan found, and the streak continues this time for Vitality. 3 0 in the third and final map here. A partial buy coming in from Cloud9. We're going to see those Tech 9s, those Mac 10s, and some fast pacing here. A Boomage Special Anders. Let's just go for a rush. Let's just see if we can get that bomb planted. Let's see what happens. And it's oh. working out so far. That's, that's exactly the payoff you want. You take the risk in rushing, and you get that opening kill. Flames just drop very low. And this time, they did remember to bring the bomb, so they're going to plant it right away. Four versus four here in the after plant. Oh, actually, they get delayed. That's a huge delay. Sphinx has shown up. Hobbit trying to do the best that he can, but they're going to both fall to Sphinx at the end. Finally, the bomb got planted, but it was a significant delay, so there's plenty of time for Vitality to do this retake. They have a Molotov for the back here. I think Perfecto's in a lot of trouble. This is the B rush. Got the bomb planted, so a chance to win it, but this Tech 9 has to connect. Not looking too good now. Perfecto got a lot to deal with. Two players are low, though. There's the first taken down. Could get the second, no problem as well. It's Zai Wu. It's three versus one. Not quite converted. Can we find the defuse? It looks like he's got a kip. Should be absolutely fine. It's quite uncomfortably close, but the B rush is shut down by Vitality. That's pretty good, though. You know, you get, you get four kills, you get the bomb plant. Not anything to scoff at there. They had almost nothing to work with here. Spink showing up. This double kill here turns out to be really, really significant. Even kept it going for a while. 
they did have the Molotov for the back of the, of the box there, but they just never threw it. So that was another way, I guess, to get rid of Perfecto, but ultimately they are going to be fine. AKs are coming out, and we've got yeah. Saibu with the AWP once again. Maximum loss bonus, bomb down. And a Zywu AWP. Sphinx not wasting any time to get stuck in here. He's made a lot of noise, though. Electronic's got him for sure. Dead. Yeah, he crossed over. Electronic could already hear that. Burning toes of Sphinx on the other side. Gonna try find a frag in return. Good HE deployment down towards the bottom of Banana. Leaves Boomer wounded. But they'll maintain the advantage here for now. Five on four. One minute 20 on the clock. They're smoked off at the bottom of Banana, but that will quickly dissipate. What's the response now? We're rotating a player in the form of Apex back over towards the A side of the map here. He's got the smoke and flash. He's going to leave flames alone. Also got a smoke. Might have one in reserve as well towards CT Spawn, but they're going to be testing this side of the map. So he needs to block them off. He needs to detect their presence, drop the smoke, reposition and call for backup. Otherwise, if he goes down with nothing, it's round over. What? They're going to be ahead of his smoke as well. They're going to push through this. He can't get the first kill and that's going to be it. There's no way they can win the round now. That's going to be the first for Cloud9, blocked in. You know when you're doing those jiggles with a grenade in hand, it is sort of like a binary outcome, right? Like either you, either you just spot them and you can throw the smoke down, or as you're going back through the wall, they step out and you miss them, and you know that you can see the timing is off after that. Even if he hears them stepping, it's a little bit too late. So good job, Cloud9, they needed this. Now, it would be significantly better if they get rid of some of these rifles. Now, they don't have a lot of money to hunt with either. You know, it's, it's expensive to them if they lose some of these AKs. But Vitality is going to be dangerous in the next round regardless. Yeah, uh, strange move there from Sphinx. I think when the Molotov comes down, Anders, and you run through and take, what, 30 damage on roots, and you make all those sound cues. <laughs> that's your cue to stop. Yeah, I think that's probably the time just to go, you know what, this wasn't the round. This is not where I'm going to have that sort of impact. Like, Electronic heard him coming. Hook, line, and Sinke takes him down. And they had the five on four. It doesn't take a genius to work it out. We just go back and execute on a bomb site. Yeah, they're going to be weaker in general due to the deficit. So there it is. Flames couldn't hold them off. Couldn't hold the, the wolf from the door. We saw the smoke deployed, but unfortunately, no frags to follow things up. And we get into a 4 1 scoreline here. First posted for Cloud9. Majority of their firepower lives to tell the tale as well. We still have that Zywu Orb. They managed to save quite a lot on the CT side, so their resources are absolutely fine. The battle of utility will continue. You see the approach from Vitality here, the deep smoke, the close Molotov. And it's Axar once again trying to breach the apartments here, see if he can deny some CT control and vision. They've had that off for a while, but Cloud9 have kind of managed to dodge it most of the time, so it hasn't had the impact that we were looking for yet. He might be 7-1 and one side with them, which is pretty impressive, but four of those kills were in the pistol round. So since then, not that he's been doing badly, but they just haven't really run into him yet. They might be forced into him now as they are checking out the bomb site once again. It's a good little swing coming out from Flames taking out Hobbit. Yeah, and they're actually vacating the B bomb site entirely. Look at this, what? Anders. Vitality are about to send all five members over towards A. They'd be right in thinking so, because here comes Electronic forcing the issue down towards the arch side. It's Flames with a defensive angle here, and it works out maybe for the double kill. Significant damage as he nails the dink. It will be Sphinx to start mowing them down here. One more player to find, and it's Flames to seal the deal. Solid A hold. No shot did they just get a kill outside of B and rotate the entire force to the A bomb side. That's such an insane read. And what a risk as well. Oh, okay. He's all of you. He's or he's CS at least. <laughs> well, this is the finish. That Sphinx and Flames Wombo combo. Sickening. Really solid arch hold there. Cloud9 not finding any momentum after their first round victory. Did have a very successful one though. So even at five on down, they still have a nice healthy buy here in round seven. Say Vitality have looked stronger on this B side of the map, seem to have control more often than not. Boomich is up against him this time. We'll throw a grenade in response, doesn't connect. Incendiary deployed, and we're running the default now for Cloud9. It's going to be trying to explore their options. CT's ready for another strategic pounce, though. They're going to be flashing over towards the top of the car position, and maybe a swing here from Flames. That's a powerful position here for the CT side, the flashbang. It's good. Saibu might have been slightly flashed himself, but doesn't matter. He takes down Boomich. And now they're going to vacate once again. They're saying that's it. That's all we wanted. Down oh. the pit. That is a cracking shot. Electronic taking down Messi. 
He needs to keep it going. He needs to find another one, but Sphinx is on the side, and he's Chris. He's back. He's warmed up. Ten to three on him. They've been waiting the whole semi-final for Sphinx to do something, anything. And now he's here. Axile will finally bring him down, but he's burning alive, and Cyber will catch him jumping away from the Woo! flames. The man is a god. Three kills once again. Super sick from Sphinx. That's more like it. Crispy headshots in toward that A bombsite. Posting his 10th frag. Zywoo with a clean finish as well. His vitality now starting to run away with his first half. They go 6 to 1. A timeout has been called. Cloud9 backs to the wall. It's been very loose, Anders. They've been calling some of these rushes, these basic mid takes. We haven't seen much in terms of fakes or execution here. And they are slowly but surely running out of time. Vitality have them locked out in every facet of the map right now. I don't know how easy this is to spot if you're on the Cloud9 side of things, but we are seeing really fast rotations from Vitality. Oh. If that's something that Boomich kind of realizes, then maybe that's something he could exploit, right? To say, let's, let's actually try and go for the fake. Because they seem to be rotating out of that B-bomb site very, very fast. Well, they're asserting their dominance there. That was a beautiful setup there. He had the Zywoo on the corner of the B-bomb side itself. Yeah. He had flames ready by the half or the flash over the top. They didn't even need the setup because Zywoo hit the shot. They confirmed Banana was clear. Funnel them in towards A where Sphinx pits on an aim clinic. And now Flames wants another slice of the action here. Takes down Hobbit. A confident swing. Shows you how powerful they're feeling right now. No damage taken in response. Dominated Hobbit. Five on four. And once again, Cloud9 looking at sixes and sevens because what do you do here? It's a weak buy. You've already lost. Hobbit, who's two and seven, you're gonna have to take some banana control here, but you're not sure he's on the other side. You have to expend utility to clear out the car position, clear out those sandbags. And I think just a B finish is coming through. They're just gonna execute in, limping towards the bomb set Anders. They need a bit of a miracle here. Yeah. Smoking towards the coffins is the electronic. I feel I'll smoke like off spawn as well, Molotov in and hope for the best. Like the power of this kind of, uh, of an execute is you just need one entry. Like one good entry, you at least guarantee the bomb plant and then you can sort of take it from there. But if you don't find the entry, it's, it's going to fall flat very, very quickly. Flames setting up some defensive grenades, trying to see if he can hold them back a little bit. Still 40 seconds left, but they are following through. Molotov down. Oh, he's got a grenade in hand, and that's going to get nice. killed every single time. Electronic there to catch him. Four versus four, and the bomb oh, <laughs> right through the smoke. Flames lining up a kill. He's coming online as well. He's 9-2, my god. But the bomb is planted. And there is a Molotov on Axile. Hold on. Oh, is that? Oh, dear. At the T-sided Molly that lands in the face of Perfecto. It could cost him the round. It makes things very uncomfortable. But he is rising to the occasion here. Finds the first headshot. Still the man advantage. Hits with Vitality. But that bomb is ticking at some pace now. It's down the Boomage. Defending from Banana. Axel mowing them down. It looks like it might be enough here for the second round. Zywoo out of position. Had to swing through the smoke. Can't find them. And Axel with the hat trick to close it out. It got tricky. It got complicated. They Molotov themselves, Anders. But they get the round over the line, courtesy of Axile. My god, it's close! It's so close. Cloud9 are hanging on by a thread in this opening half. That round is so important, and it has to be more. And it they all starts there, it. right? That was a 5-4 yes. deficit. You said that they found the cheeky opener. They found a way to breach the bomb site. There was a chance, and Apex just didn't suspect anyone coming through the smoke in that aggressive manner. Cloud9 throw the book at them. And we got ourselves a 6-2 overall scoreline now. A buy available. All way down to the MAC-10. Zywoo's still on that AWP. Their resource is running low, so if Cloud9 can win this round, Anders, they'll break the back of Vitality financially. Got an auto shotgun coming out in the semi-final, Henry. Didn't notice that. It's Mezzi. Bear in mind, once again, he replaces Magis on ramp on Nuke. He replaces the Prince of Pit on Inferno, one of the absolute masters of that position. So that's yes. where Mezzi will be residing, so we'll keep track of that. Hasn't been tested too much thus no. far. It really hasn't. This okay. could be it. Tricky little smoke here, hoping they'll assume it's clear. It's a big call to make, Anders, in the semi-final, a crucial round. Your first tournament for the organization, you brought out an auto shotgun in the apps. Good luck to you, Mezzi. Yeah, that makes me really giddy because... <laughs> 
if it works, it, it's also it's gonna feel bad on the cloud on side. You don't want to be losing to the old shotgun. Nobody wants that. Bit of a peek here for Sphinx. It takes a long time and he's dropped very low. The grenade is to follow. He knows he's dead. Only question is if he can he take someone one. with him. And he does somehow breaks down electronic. I can't believe it. 30 seconds here. Grenade around the corner. Here comes the oh no! It's Axile from the heavens! He yeah. just saved the team. They could have walked in to a slaughter on that shotgun. There was actually a world where Mezzi gets three kills with that particular lineup, yeah. but you're right, Axile saves the day. Death from above as he comes out of the apartments, takes care of two players in total, and it will be Vitality on the save now. And this is an important one to pick up. As we mentioned, the resources won't be there. Vitality don't have the loss bonus established at this stage. So it's going to be six to three. They got to get bare bones in terms of finances going forward, so there's no choice but to save these two M4s. They might have to start praying at this point of your vitality. This could start to derail. Yeah, we're in that territory. Imagine if they can come back here, Cloud9, and have a real half of it. It's definitely not there yet. Three rounds, I don't think it's going to be enough. They need a little bit more, but now... They have the economy on their side. Oh, so much of the game is about this. Look at Axel here. This is sick. I didn't even realize he was coming in from this direction, but that kill right there. They were lining up. They were walking right into it. That's exactly the range you want to use the auto shotgun at. It could have been devastating. They saved them once again. Again, for those of you who might have missed the group stages of everything, I mean, the big question mark, because Electronic was playing lights out. The best yeah. player on the team by a mile. But Axile was gone. He was disappeared. He wasn't doing really anything. Now, I must say, throughout the quarterfinals and semifinals, he stepped it up. He's shown what he's all about. Absolutely true. These last couple of rounds as well, he's been instrumental in their success. That's two in a row. Just when it felt like they were being blown out of the proverbial water, they're starting to find their footing here. Tactical timeout. Bear in mind, Vitality, they saved two rifles here, Anders, but the, the lost bonus we mentioned was nothing. $1,900. They're going to take an eco. That's why they called for a moment of respite. Assess their options here. How do they position the two rifles? The round is still possible. It is. It's not a foregone conclusion. Flames and Apex on these rifles so they can position them correctly. You never know. Apex will take the first attempt here. It's a beautiful one. Tries to get out. Wanted to steal just a solo kill. Unfortunately traded and loses the rifle now. Sphinx takes significant damage. Yeah, that first HE just landed dead on him. With no armor, it's a, it's a different kind of grenade, really. So almost found that opening kill. If he gets away with it, if he survives, it makes things very uncomfortable. Oh, let's check this out. Oh, where's this going? Looks towards Arch, maybe? Yeah, surely must be. Someone's been putting some real time in practicing that one. Oh, wait, it lands with Yeah, I was going to say, it's in, not at all. It's in second, it's in second mid So much right? excitement for nothing at all. <laughs> can we get a replay where that landed? Yeah. <laughs> so you can see on the radar, yeah. it's in my bench. <laughs> bench is smoked, guys. I've smoked bench from Team Sport. Sick. It's covered. Yeah, I'm assuming that's supposed to land in Arch. I think so. Or maybe so. like Moto or something like that. Just suggest you're going in towards A. It's a cool idea. But uh, didn't quite hit the mark. Doesn't matter, they still win the round, of course. And it's up to whether Flames could survive with the M4. They lost Apex, unfortunately, at the top of Banana. Zyro is going to be dropped. Same story for Mezzi as well. Looking to recover whatever they can. Bear in mind, it's Flames. He's in towards second middle. There we have it, Anders. Three in a row. Three in a row. The economy for the Vitality side, even after this round, I mean, they're going to have a little bit of work rate, but they've got to be careful. If they bring it back and tie it up 6-6, six, six, I would say four rounds. Now we're within striking distance. Now they could do something. Even if they lose the last couple of rounds here, the second half, it's not an automatic win for Vitality any longer. No, certainly not. <laughs> there was that tactical smoke delivered Beautiful. deep in T-spawn. I love it. Yeah. That's what CS2 is all about. <laughs> Golf clap and beef for that yeah. one. Yeah. But, Civilized. Uh, here we go, the closing stages of this first half, ladies and gents. Vitality back on their feet from a financial standpoint. Flame saves the M4. M4's across the board, no Zywe AWP available. Boomit starting to crack the case here. Finding that success on the T side. They were 6-1 down, Anders. 
one. And they've pulled it right back. And Frankie have a chance. Economy. Have a chance to split it right down the middle once again. We saw it. On that first map, we'll see if they can do it once again. Smokes down towards the arch side. A minute and ten seconds, or plenty of time here to try and get rid of some of those vitality grenades. That's really what you're looking for when you're playing like this. Boomich is hanging around at top banana. So he's going to be able to get some first-hand experience of what's happening over there, sort of sussing it out. Oh, here we go, Mezzi. You're about to be tested. Can he hold his own in the pit? Hasn't had to deal with too much so far. Here comes a flashbang, looking for the double kill. Oh, he's delivering on all fronts. Hat-trick for Mezzi. 100% British beef delivering in towards those apartments. It's and that should be enough. That should be it. That's what you wanted right in that moment. They didn't flash him quite well enough. Boomic going down, trying to challenge Apex. And they can probably guess where Hobbit is. It's either going to be middle or it's going to be up in the apps here. 20 seconds left. He has money to rebuy, although he could drop a weapon for Boomic, I suppose. So of an open question here about what he wants to try and go for. The 12th round is coming up, so it's going to be the last of the half anyway. Good stuff. Mezzi ready and waiting. The apartments pop. Very popular strategy. Flashbangs over. Basic utility goes down. They've got plenty of money. It doesn't really matter if he goes down after the timer or not. Mezzi, the first test he really had on that CT side toward that pit position. He passes with flying colors. Have a look at that once again. You can see him just avoiding the flashbangs. Yeah. Ready for them to flood out of the bombs. And bear in mind as well, beautiful smoke from his teammates. Absolutely. Just deployed it the moment before they came out. Yeah, the timing really could not have been better. Hard for Cloud9 to call that off once, even if they hear the smoke bouncing. It's like we've re already let go of the flashbangs. We're already in the middle of it. So seven to four. Cloud9 looking for another round if they can. They certainly have the weapons to try and see if they can do a little bit of work here. This is aggressive. Yeah, well, they were silenced in their first attempt of this apartment's push, but we're seeing this set up more often these days. It's a very, very tricky position there at the top of the steps. You have a slight ledge you can stand on. They're watching the boiler as well, and Zaiwu spots a couple of players. High alert right now. They've given up mid-control, and Sphinx given the responsibility to try and deal with the first kill. Nails the first and not the second. He knew what he had to do, but just couldn't quite connect that second shot on it. Not for lack of trying, he looked no, really it looked crisp. great. Looked like he was on point for it. Well, Mezzi is going to come sneak into the middle, trying to see if he can discover anything. Getting some good info. Just, you know, noticing no one's walked past yet. He's going to go check this. Oh, all the way deep down. He's seen them, but he's been seen by Electronic as well. Four versus three now. It's going to say just getting the info that they had fallen all the way back down to middle. If he could have got away even with no kills, but just seeing that. That gives away a lot of the game for Cloud9, but now it's up in the air again. They might go and test Flames one more time. He's got one flashbang at the moment to try and hold on with. That's really not that much. Oh no, Henry. This isn't looking good. Boomich. I don't know why he's shooting for the smoke. That seems to be a bit of a giveaway. 20 seconds. Flames is still falling back now. Quite far away from the action. They don't have a smoke. Well, they had a smoke to cross. They just haven't thrown it yet. A lot of questions in this one. Oh my god, Flames you're right. Ding, ding. And there comes the smoke late. The bomb is planted. This is very, very likely going to be a Cloud9 round. Yeah, they don't play by the book, but they get the job done. Yes. You know what I mean? Boomage. That's true. The Boomage way. <laughs> the Boomage way. Well, we're not going to question the boss here. He's certainly earned some respect on the big stage here tonight. 12th round, no chance that they're not going to go for it. Grenades in the back line, a wide swing as Axel and Boomich come in with a couple of good shots. It's just Saiwu left to try and clutch this one. And he's got his back turned. He's lucky to still be alive. Grenade out on the one side, and Perfecto to close it out. A 7-5. to five. Cloud9, they keep the dream alive. They're not done yet. in there you could go anywhere you can split both sides but Ooh. hold on the fans have voted and this next round will have limited gravity but i believe they're still deadly accurate in the air so jumping is <laughs> you're gonna so. have a laser sight up there you can jump and look at this oh no he's so quick in there trying to look over the map oh look at it they're all airborne but they should be able to shoot there we go to free 
He doesn't even know he's getting shot for us at all. He can get dropped. He thinks he's safe down there, but he's airborne above him. Jupri here to shut it down. It's so close. He missed a couple of shots, and now it's just S Tag left. He's coming in with a ridiculous flank. Is he really going to try and throw? This flashbang is going to go to the moon. That's not even. A it's too much. He's at the obelisk, getting one wall. That's trying to knife him. It's just so good. And there's the stab. The best. The best time to do it. All right, this, this one needs no explanation. <laughs> Amazing. Right in his ear. Uh, he's got no more voice. I, I don't know why he wants to take away hearing as well. He's inspired by it. It's great tasting. <laughs> Why can't we have this every match? Smoothie and simple. We should send him up to our little booth next, Chase. And get him yeah, get him up here in the casting booth. Or you have him just blast that the entire time behind the other team. That could definitely put to Kenny getting a kill. Final round of the first half in its Zoomer Madness. This one should benefit the Dream Team with all the snipers they've got down the list. We Gotta give you a shot here. No scope headshot through a smoke. That's and how it's done. Okay, they're all leaning back as well. Oh, they're having a great time. <laughs> Lounging on the stage, no bunch stress of, at all. Bunch of JDMs in here. That's exactly right. Oh, another hunting for him. Rez put under pressure, it's another no-scope. <laughs> oh, in God's name. Symbol's trying to no-scope a little bit of his own. Getting hunted down by Sokka. Oh, it's Kirby instead <laughs> getting the kill. So another round at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the four finals continue. The third and final map of Inferno. We have one half remaining here. It's as close as you like, seven to five. Cloud9 looked like they were down. They looked like they had nothing left, Anders, but towards the end, a resurgence comes through and Boomich pieces it together and they've got enough to work with now. I don't know how Boomich does it. They really were down and out. They were getting beat up in that first half. It looked like they were about to lose the semi-final right then and there. But they clawed their way back, and here we go. Second half is coming up. It's Vitality and Cloud9. A winner goes to the grand final here at the Royal Arena. Yeah, it's all on the line, off. and oh, burning alive. A lot of damage on the side. <laughs> He's very low. I can't believe it. This is aggressive. Cloud9, they're hunting them. I've never seen a T-side molly in that position before. This is a very strange round, and it's Boomich that's trying first here. Electronic with the double kill. They can't even get out of T-spawn right now. They're being shut down left, right, and center. Zywu can do nothing. Brutal aggression from Cloud9 leads them to a pistol victory. Oh, that's how you do it, isn't it? A suffocating round. Yeah, you could see the frustration on their faces. They are not happy with what just went on. They wanted, they had a plan, they bought grenades, they were ready to do something in this round, but it gets taken away by Boomich. Yeah, Boomich throws a spanner in the works there. It's an old <laughs> classic, aggressive in the pistol, and it just goes to show how un uncomfortable they were. They had the Molotov T-steps themselves just to push Cloud9 back. Oh my days, Vitality. They did not want to go down like that. Didn't even get any bullets off, they were absolutely swarmed. Sets the tone for the second half, and maybe Cloud9 can still do something with this one. Could they be the ones making it to the grand final? Time will tell. It's a great start. Looking to tie things up here, and it's the full eco from Vitality. Should have no problem mowing them down. Boomich in his signature position with his weapon of choice. Only good for one. Perfecto surely does a bit better. Good smoke, solid kill. And he fends them off for now. Should be absolutely fine at this stage. Yeah, just play it safe, right? Don't swing for the multi-kills. What Perfecto is doing is exactly right. Throw down the smoke. The only way that round could have gone wrong, really, is I think if, if Perfecto goes for a multi and he, and he just gets swiped. That's a, that's a bomb plan, and that's a potential three-on-three three after that. But they should be 
Locked in for this one. That'll tie up the game and make it 7-7. Seven to seven. I, If I'm Vitality, maybe I'm not in full-on panic mode yet, but I'm starting to get a bit nervous behind this one. Oh, absolutely. Like the fashion and that pistol went down. Yeah. They didn't even get a look in at it. They didn't even fire a shot. They were molotoving themselves at T-steps. Like, <laughs> they, were, they were made to look foolish there. Yeah, not an easy thing to do. So, anything left to be said, time will tell. Should be a pretty clean finish here to the round, and indeed it is. Only one player goes down in the form of Boomage. Cloud9 will tie things up. Seven to seven. Money is okay for Vitality. They took the Eco to bring out the AKs now as they limp into the following round. AKs, Kevlar, a smoke and a flash. It's about all you get with this sort of buy. That's Cloud9. Send a message of intent. Boomage will be pushed in that banana position a lot, Anders. He's known for it. Yeah. Will it pay off? Time will tell. I'm not a huge fan, but it seems to work. It's one of those things that makes you really nervous because it seems so obvious that it's going to happen. And it, it works sometimes, but man, he gets shut down a lot of times too. Yeah, it's been his play for years now. Back in the Na'Vi days, I, you just knew Boomer should be at the top with the MP9 leaping around to mixed results. Most of the time, it felt like he died. Detected early though, he'll be forced back towards the bomb site. Vitality trying to find their first hit in the second half if possible. They'll send four players in towards Banana. To be fair, him dying at top banana when you still had electronic bit and simple alive in the server seemed like a bit of a, well, yeah, probably right. be okay anyway, you know? <laughs> it's a good point. Um, I'm not sure if that same thing holds sure any longer. You've got to be a bit more careful, surely. The game is tied. Some action pouring in the middle. Oh, it's flames to try and break his way through. But he gets taken down. Boomage with the smoke, able to find it. He's hearing the burn on the other side. He knows that someone's there. Axel can't quite find the kill, but they're very low on that Vitality side. They're getting absolutely chewed apart. The sewing machine that is the MP9 just breaking down Vitality in this one. It's Apex left alone with absolutely no chance here. One versus three, 35 seconds. He might get the first headshot. That's a really nice shot. But not bad. All the battles still ahead of him here. Gets touched a little bit, down to 15 health, and they're coming for him. The Molotov is really good! Oh, but he can't find the kill on Perfecto, and that's the end of the round. They're at a lead, Henry. They're taking a step in the right direction. Eight to seven for Cloud9. Oh, Apex kicking himself. He knows he had a chance to win that one. If he gets a clean kill after Molotoving the player out of Emo, you never know, maybe he has the presence of mind to find that third kill in towards CT spawn, but what a blockade! That is set up here by Cloud9. It's the MP9s working in tandem, Anders. Great utility deployment there. Ready with the smoke, the Molotovs, the grenades. So much damage before they could even breach the choke point. And then they get mowed down. They don't get the bomb planted. Apex, sure, he gets a couple of frags in the end, but essentially now it's Cloud9 in the lead against an Eco. There's so much of the damage in that round is happening to Vitality to players that are inside of a smoke. They don't even know what's happening. They're just getting shut down. Boomage. There he comes. He's back. Just as we prophesized. Boomer to the MP9. Large and in charge at the top of Banana. Finds the opening frag. And we will have a 5 and 4 scenario. Bear in mind, not much behind this. A couple of sets of Kevlar, one of which has been removed. That's Sphinx taken out of the equation. Cloud9 looking to extend their lead. 9 to 7 here. Freebie for Electronic. Converted to the double. Beautiful. Triple spray down. Oh my god. They're actually doing it. The Victronic getting that warmed up. Yeah, it was against pistols. Yeah, it maybe wasn't the most important round, but just seeing the spray here and getting a sense for the mechanics. Nine to seven. No. Timeout's been called. No one has any doubt about why that is. Vitality are losing their grip on this match. It is slipping out of their hands. And bear in mind the first event without Magisk. Mezzi yeah. brought into the squad. Certainly one of the favorites for the tournament against Cloud9. You'd think they're absolute favorites. Definitely, right? Right. Damn, we've got some representation. Yeah, they've come far. But uh, losing in this sort of fashion as well, they're not posting a single T round. Similar scenes on Nuke as well. Just felt a bit flat from them. Didn't have their star players turn up. This time, Sphinx is delivering Anders. 
You can't say that's been an issue on Inferno. He's found 14 kills. And once again, it's depressed. Aggression that's deployed, not depression, that wouldn't work. Well, not yet for Vitality, <laughs> they might deploy that real soon. Wormwich back at it again, we said it, he does it so much. Axile gets a bullet to the face by Flames. This is a much better start to the round. Yeah. And Fecto playing a game. He's pushing in front of that smoke, he wants somebody to come peek him. You have to take a risk here, you're down. Three to five. Sphinx surely gonna get this one. Electronic looking deep into the apartments there and he gets taken down, so this yeah. one seems to be locked in. I like the audacity there from Cloud9. Like they want to bring the game to Vitality, make sure they're not comfortable at any point in the default there. We saw it on Mirage as well, uh, but unfortunately, not really working out this time as uh, Vitality hit their shots cleanly. Figuring out what Boomich is doing on Inferno is like a, the most simplified flowchart of all time. Like, are we on Inferno? Yes. <laughs> he's he's going to be at Banana with, a, with an MP9. That's yeah. it. Like, there's no other paths. It's just pretty straightforward. Yeah. Doesn't work out this time, and just waiting for this one to close up. But Anders, okay, there is a chance they lose it. No. A slight chance. They've got Stop. both players on the CT side here. Don't tease me like that, Henry. There should be no chance. There should be, but honestly, they They're could do it. it. Oh, don't do it! Yeah, now they're running back. They have time. They can make it back. <laughs> that was really dangerous. Yeah, I'm glad they fell back. Well spotted. Because had they continued that push, they lose the round. So... That's right. averted. That could have been them losing the semi-final. If they kept pushing and lose that round, I think... Oh, yeah. Just the, the mental collapse after that is too much. So good job. Whoever pulled the, the rip cord on that one, just get him out. <laughs> oh, that would have been so... That would have been depressing. Yeah, depression would have been deployed right then and there. <laughs> Instantly. Good Lord. But uh, it will be vitality. Finding a remedy to the problem. They ran into the saving CTs there in the B bomb site. They get a couple of kills, and that's enough of that. Back they go, planning in towards A. Job done. Two players do survive, though, Anders. They've got AK-47s on the CT side. A ton of cash going forward as well. Now, does Boomich want to bring out the AWP? That's the question. The first chance to do so. Speaking of which, it's the first round for Vitality. Yeah. Here on their T side. Third and final map here. Grand finals on the line. I mean... The kind of opening that he was doing, if you rewind time a little bit back on Mirage, was pretty sick. And I guess it's a similar kind of opening that he'd be doing on this particular map. But a lot of players don't like opening on Inferno. It takes us a particular kind of character to do it. You have to take some risks. You have to get a bit closer than maybe you'd want. Well, that's what Cloud9 and Kings are taking risks here. They're not yeah. playing meta CS at all, Anders. It's, it's loosey-goosey. It's aggressive. They're just playing off the mid-round tin. It's what you expect from a new roster with Boomich at the helm as well. That's his play style, and it's worked out very well. This is uh, one of the deepest runs they've had in recent memory. New roster, San Shiro, and uh, here they are in the semi-finals on the cusp of making it all the way. They're really getting there, aren't they? I can't believe what I'm seeing. But nothing is done yet. I have to remember, even if it's been a minute here, you know, Sphinx was playing well, like you said. They still have Saibu in that server, and he is a yeah. game changer. Well, we had some great rounds. Sphinx and Flames have been working in tandem, as you might expect. They've looked fantastic together on that CT side, but Ooh. it's been rough here in the second after losing the pistol. It's four rounds in a row. They've now posted their first. Need to find some momentum here. A streak is required from Vitality. Otherwise, I'm not sure they've got it in them. We get back in towards this B-bomb side. This time, Boomish with the rifle. Aggressive, of course, though. Wants to get stuck in here. Happy to take these fights. Surrounded by flames, and that's not going to dissuade him, man, as he know he goes towards those sandbags each and every time. Yeah, they really wanted the Molotov not quite deep enough there, but it does oh. touch Cyber, and somehow Boomich able to come out on top. And even more importantly, he escaped. <laughs> he takes down Zaiwu en route as well. Just when you think he's done, they know exactly where he is. They're aware of his tendencies. But Boomish always comes out on top. I'm Five pretty, versus four. I'm pretty sure that was a failed Molotov as well from the CT side. I think it was meant to bounce way deeper towards the car, but it never did. Axel, line found a target there. He's back for more. This is a dangerous fight. But there's nobody there to catch him. Oh, they're being funneled. They're pushed towards yeah, the true. Three people in the B bomb side, Henry. This could be a nightmare for Vitality. They've got the utility, the smokes for the coffin, CT spawn. There's a boosted player there. 
Molotovs available for new boxes. Deployed right there as well. Can they hold them off? It's a great setup for Cloud9. Five on four advantage for them. Oh, what a great, smoke! Yeah, great it smoke. lands for the push. That's magnificent. Well, they take down Boomich. Perfecto's there on the other side. They don't know about Hobbit. They have no idea. He's in the oh! back. Oh! He's the leader. Spinks. He hardly turned the corner, Henry. That is a masterclass in the B defense there from Cloud9. He's throwing the bullets around the corner. That's how he got him. Yeah, really, I want to see that. Really great round. Hobbit, solid defense. Pulls the trigger on the first, swings on the second, dead before he even sees him. And it all started here. The boss man taking control of Banana, as you might expect. Gets a clean kill, falls back. Hobbit in position and gets a stunning shot there on Sphinx to close things out. Running out of time, running out of space. The coach can feel it. It's Vitality down 10 to 8 here. Just a couple of rounds away from series points. Cloud9 of everything in their favor in terms of resources. No bomb planted once again there, Anders. So they don't find the streak, they don't get the plant. Money's okay. They're averaging around $4,000 per player. A little bit more in some cases, so there is a possibility of the AWP. Whether they go for it is uh, yet to be seen. We'll get into this next round here. Get into the very closing stages of this semi-final. Bear in mind, the action doesn't end here. We have got phase complexity coming up oh, right after this one. It's going to be so explosive, but I can't believe we've been gifted this game. I would have been happy if Cloud9 had just, you know, shown up and did Hell pretty yeah. good, like showing us like a new roster. It's looking exciting, but they're fighting right now. Oh, he's going to get taken down at range, trying to get the job done. Electronic, if he has no man, he's still here fighting. A double spins around, but finally Sphinx will get rid of him. Three versus three. And the game is still on. See what I mean when I say they're not really playing meta CS? It's just pure yeah, chaos. You have a point, Henry. I'm not going to lie. Every single second. Look at Axile. Sphinx is going to call an interest team. He's going to say, I'm on the A bomb site. Rotate over. But they don't know about Axile. Oh, Sphinx. He's in, the, he's in this underpass. You'd expect him to hit that shot. It's a difficult one, but he's a world class player. Axile. Same story, to be honest with you. AK 47 strikes from the underpass. And now it's Vitality, who fended off the initial aggression there on the back foot. One minute remaining, Omezi scrambles towards the side itself. Sphinx has called it clear. They're rotating through its boomage towards the library. And we joined by Perfecto as well. There's some space here to try and get a frag. Oh my goodness, beautiful from Mezzi. Looking for the double through the smoke as well. He hits every single shot. Back to the two versus one, Axel. He's in towards that library. Vitality back on their feet here, bomb planted. Great character shown from Mezzi here. The burst, the taps away to bring them back in the round. That could change absolutely everything. It's Axile looking for the headshot, looking for any kind of an opening. He hasn't really seen anything yet. Grenade not going to do much. <laughs> oh my god! Sphinx to find him. But it's Messi that brings them back. The newcomer to the team. He absolutely saved their bacon on that one. Yeah. He digs deeper than ever. It didn't look good at all. That CT stuns at the start of the round. Discombobulated them once again. A three versus two to try and break their way through. And it's Mezzi delivering the goods once again. Hasn't had the highest amount of frags, but only has had a chance to show his, his potential, Anders. He's delivering every single time. He's a three-man spray down towards the apps. Great double kill there to save the day. Go 10 to nine. And you can hear Boomich is coming for you on the other side of that smoke. The bullets piercing through, but uh, no real damage inflicted just yet. This one's to suggest he's there at the top. Put the fear of God inside them. We still haven't seen the Boomich special, which is the half wall jumping MP9. Yeah, that's, sure. That's still to come. Maybe we'll, we'll get a shot at it later on. But they are slowly walking up Banana at the moment. Critical infrastructure on the map, obviously. Oh, nice grenade. Flames can drop a little bit, especially when you've got M4s and MP9s. You, you want to do any nade damage really you can. A minute on the clock, and it looks like Vitality have already made up their minds here. AX, uh, sorry, B execution, and you're right. Smokes to go down, Molotov's in. They have actually only got two players on the CT side, but one of which is this man in your screen right here. Loves a close range encounter. Drops the incendiary offensively as well. Trying to make things uncomfortable, do as much damage as he possibly can. They're chipping away at them. How's he done it? That's actually terrifying. 
Perfecto still back here. Can he line up a kill? There we go. Straight hair shot to bring down Messi. 30 seconds on the clock here, and they're getting peppered to kind of get into the bomb site. They're all dropping so low on health here. Flames practically dead already. Finally, the bomb being attempted. And Cloud9 getting close. All shots through. It's Boomich going down though. And a little bit of a return. Cyber on his own. In a one versus two. He's got no health at all. Anything touches him, and he's going to be gone from this one. But his team needs him. They need him to win this clutch so badly. And he's listening in. You can see he just wants to find out where they are. They actually have no idea. They should be looking for him. There's the first one. Now it's a one versus one. Axel on the other no. side. He strangles it. Gets the shot. And he's straight on that defuse. That's Cloud9 on 11 rounds. What a masterclass in the B bomb side once again from Cloud9. It's the MP9s, the utility that they hold on to until the real closing sectors of that round. Just absolutely bombarding them with bullets, HEs, incendiaries, flashes, blowing those smokes open. And so much damage was done, they just about get the bomb planted. Two versus one for Zaiwu, and he's only got 26 points of health. As soon as they find him, he's got no chance. You could actually see that Boomich thought about throwing down the Molotov in front of the smoke, and he decided to not do it, went forward, threw it down on the T side of the smoke, and it slowed him down. It did so much damage. That's such a hard thing to do. It's so hard to hold onto those grenades when you know they're going to be coming through. All right. 11 to 9. Well, at least the bomb was planted, Anders. It gives them a buy. You can see resources are incredibly limited. They'll try and take some mid control here. Picking at the pace somewhat. This isn't your traditional default. They're going to try and get some fast mid control. Taking some severe damage on Rube. Messi's down to 45. The mid is theirs. Decent incendiary. Forces out of smoke from flames. Oh, another MP9 in the mix here. Actually a really good round for Hobbit to walk into this corner because they can guess at the economy and if they don't have any Molotovs to get rid of that corner, not a bad position to be in with the MP9. And for once, Boomich is playing a little bit more conservatively. He's not actually challenging the half wall. What are they going to do? They're waiting for any sign of life here for Cloud9, but they're frozen on that CT side. They're not going anywhere. So towards B we go. Presumably, Mezzi does like to lurk on this side of the map while his teammates will deal with A. They baited it out of smoke, there's 35 seconds remaining. It's a very passive setup, as you mentioned. Cloud9 are tucked deep away in the A bomb site. Crossfires enabled, 25 seconds remaining. Can Vitality break through? Right, it's now or never, 20 seconds left. They're gonna go for it. Axel with a good shot, they're lining up. It's a double, but Hobbit, he gets out at the end and the bomb will go down. Two on two here at the afterplant. An interesting Molotov on Perfecto. It's not going to be the most immediate tool that they're going to be needing here, but in the right corner, you never know. No kit either on anyone currently. It might be one on the ground somewhere, but time is of the essence here. Yeah, we've got a player in towards the graveyard. That's going to be Apex. Time, you're right. It's ticking against them. Both CTs coming in towards Shaw. Apex has got a prime position to deal with both of them, especially against MP9. First kill is his, no problem. Perfecto can't close things out. It's Vitality recovering yet another round there. It looked like they were done. The crossfire would look too good on the A bomb side, but they managed to trade out, break through, bring it into that two versus two, and the MP9 wasn't enough on that retake, but boy, was it ever close. Look at speaks in this one. What a sick round from him. Gets the kill right down below, opens up the bomb site, finishes the round as well for good measure. Wow, they keep it alive. Vitality almost looking to be pushed out of the semi final by a really strong Cloud9, much stronger than we were expecting. So, just to get back into the money, Anders, I know it's not the most exciting thing to talk about. But with Cloud9 giving that one up, a streak of rounds they already found. They're going to be going into the next round with two and a half thousand dollars per play. Oh no. And it's currently 11 to 10. I think they have to take the eco here. Allow Vitality to tie things up and we're going the distance, baby. I think this game deserves it. Oh, it We've come this far. It's delivered on all fronts, hasn't it? It's so, been a real delight. Expecting nothing more than these USPs. I'd be very surprised if they've invested in anything else. Let's have a look. Yeah, so there it is. Just the smoke. D4 pistols, we're going 11-11. Yeah, I think it does deserve a clap. 
Absolutely. Great performance from both teams here today. Hell of a show. And Cloud9, I think they might even get a kill here. Flames is in trouble. Yeah, he goes down. Okay. Pick up that Mac 10, see if you can keep it going. But if they can make some money with it, it actually would make a, a, a pretty big difference to them. Any kind of cash they can pull together here. But losing one player with their Mac 10, don't think Vitality are worried about the rounders yet. A roll of the dice, Henry, as they stack the A bomb site with four players. Okay. Cloud nine, they think maybe right. this is going to be it. Well, if Cloud Nine win this round, it'll be a historic victory. And Vitality will be kicking themselves. This is how they give up yeah. series points. I don't think it will happen. I doubt it but as you, well. But you'd never know, honestly. Honestly, I think they might go spawn. They might, but if they wrap around this way, they're actually going to be so deep in by the time they get encountered right. that they can't, they can't pull back. This is really tricky. Yeah, they're checking everything. Look at how open they are. Once they find someone, they're going to get shot at from all sides. Good shot from Saibu. That's important. 28 seconds left, and the USPs not having a stopping power there. All right, they walk into the cave, but they came out on top. That's, that's kind of scary. That's... A really wild moment there. There was a chance that collapses a USP stack on the A bomb site. They walk right into yeah, it. Because if Saiwu dies on the box, he gives yeah. over the AK, and you never know what can happen. Well, job well done, Vitality. They live through it, and it's all tied up 11 11. They did get one kill with the MAC 10. So again, they need all the money they can get on that CT side. Yeah, that certainly helps things out. Like Boomich, he hasn't had the AWP at all. He's been using MP9 pretty much every single round here. Yeah. But working out know. who will be getting series point first. This round will decide it. It's a weak Cloud9. They've got no utility on the CT side, Anders. No kids. Maybe that's why they're being a bit aggressive uh, in I the think, apartments. They've been very aggressive this CT campaign. But yes, I think more so than ever, they know they need an opening advantage. Electronic feeling the pressure. Might just fall away. off this one now. Yeah, you kind of tip your hand when... I mean, yeah. <laughs> not, not that anyone could blame him, but he just couldn't see a thing. They left Boomich here with a smoke, a Molotov, and an HE to try and fend for himself. Scary. Oh, he moves forward and he's dead. The boost up Apex. He saw it coming. That's huge. That might be the round. There's if only... They go for it. Yeah, that's the only player at the B-bomb side. They're waiting for the reactions here. CTs, if they're not going for this, need to save absolutely everything. That changes the round, though. Now, they'll reconsider. The bomb's not planted yet. Perfecto feels like he might be able to do something here. They can boost behind this smoke, Anders. And that's exactly what they're going to do. If they can deny the plan, it's back on. They go. Oh, he, he had the right idea. Cyber is going to go back and check him. Clean headshot. Takes down Hobbit. No problems. Nice pick up there on Axile in transition through the smoke. They get Perfecto. And that leaves Electronic. 20 seconds. If there was less time, this would be a little bit more interesting, but there's absolutely no way he could get through here. Cyrus ready to receive and Vitality. They claw their way back in the game. They're one round away from the grand final. What a round to win as well. It was Boomich. Found out at the B bomb site. He goes down with nothing. The five on four felt like the round was already over. Like I said, they probably should have saved that one, Anders. And unfortunately, that, that kill they get towards middle, it kind of invites them to go for it. And unfortunately, that's their unraveling. Yeah. They're going to be absolutely broken going forward here. It's grand final point for Vitality. What a series it's been. There can't be much to work with here on the CT side. Not a single rifle, Anders. Oh. MP9s, CZs, 5.7s, Deagles, an eclectic spread of weaponry to try and save the day here. They have to win this round. It's come all the way down to round number 24, but Vitality have got some open runway here to close things out and take themselves towards that grand final. Going to recover some flashbangs and spawn. Apex wants to make sure he's got absolutely everything working in his favor. But they're really locked in right now, Vitality. They're playing it so carefully. They've had to face, like you said, a lot of aggression from that Cloud9 CT side. And they're sick of it. They want to be done with this one. Spinks missing the whole semi-final. Showing up for the third map, Henry, and dropping 23 kills. Averaging a kill per round at this point in time. And Saiwu not that far behind him either. 
Impressive individual performance from Spinks. Not easy to recover a bad semi-final in a third map, but he's done it. And the question is, what could Hobbit do at this corner? He's got a 5-7. He's hearing them jumping through. Flash is good. Oh, the swing is amazing. He actually gets the kill on Apex and falls back in. 25 seconds here. Axile at a distance with an MP9, the burst. Hard to stop that many players. Electronic gets one. They might have done it. They might have found a way, Henry. This might be it. Oh, oh the kill. Yes, he comes back in. And now the bomb is going to be planted. Cloud9, they were close, but they're not quite there yet. So far to go as well, Anders. They're now locked out. That was the best chance they were ever, ever going to get. Two opening frags. The MP9s kept it scrappy on the A-bomb type, and now it comes down to this moment. Three versus two. Boomich has a right for There's a Desert Eagle in play. No utility, no kits. Surely, Vitality close it out right now. They are poised. They are already there. The headshot. Messi picks it up, and now it's Perfecto on his own with a deagle and absolutely he knows. no chance. Yeah, he knows. This is done with. The bomb ticking in the background. It's <laughs> right. In front of the Royal Arena crowd as they are on their feet. A great performance. A great series, Anders. Both teams push to their very limits. It comes right down to round number 24. Financially broken, Cloud9 had nothing left to say. But you have to say the fact they turned up to this tournament with a new in-game leader. Question marks around their lineup. They managed to get all the way to the semi-final and they have one of the world's best teams on the ropes there. One round away from doing it. It's a commendable performance and they can leave the arena with their heads held high. Yeah, no question about that. A completely reformed team. This is what this project was always meant to look like. And now finally, we do get a really a bright light here for Cloud9, no question about it. I'm glad to see Sphinx as well coming back into it. Obviously, the first two maps, not that exciting. The third one, my God, that's what he's all about. Absolutely. They really turned up in buckets and spades there. It was a chaotic game to say the very least. Yeah. And it was like, Boomich, he knew how to win these sort of rounds. Like, he had to be unpredictable. He had to be chaotic. Yes. He displayed really impressive aggression, to be honest with you. Calculated aggression that was working more often than not, causing absolute chaos on the vitality side. We saw how frustrated they were at times. He was under their skin. So it's a great sign of things to come for Boomich and co. But for now, we have James Banks down with our winners on the show floor. Vitality booked their spot to the grand final and Zywoo, this certainly wasn't easy. We just look at how Mirage started. You lose a 1v5 pistol, but you still manage to come back and win that map. Did that feel like a bit of a miracle to fight back in such a weird game? Actually, after this 1v5, we just took it like funny because we are smiling after the first one. We just like just reset and we're gonna we're gonna do our best for after that but i think it was a tough game to play against them they played really good it was tough to find like any gap any yeah. anything on the map so it was a really tough match today they certainly made you fight for it and i've got to touch on this nuke it's a map that the core of this roster may have played in the old times but hobbit and axile it wasn't a cloud nine map and they were getting away with going outside going down secret they were coming to you a lot did you feel like they were almost one step ahead many times on their t side yeah, they, they were one step ahead uh, on the T side. We didn't manage to find like any first kill. They, they went a lot of secrets. They, they, actually, they fucked us uh, down. So that's why we we fucking lost this game. I mean, no nuke. You didn't lose the game though, but it could have happened on Inferno. It was getting a string of CT rounds, but you guys need to change something up. At what point did you realize, okay, what we're doing is not working in order to fight back? We just trying to find like new thing to do and. Uh, after like 11, 10 or something like this, our coach uh, do not give up to find our gap, to find our thing to win the game. And that's why we didn't give up. And we have a good mood of our inside of the game. So that's why we, we managed to win this game. You did manage to win that way. And you've got yourself into the grand final. I want to touch on you personally, though. Are you starting to feel it a little bit more? I was seeing movements. I was seeing individual plays from you, which I'm thinking, OK, so I was back for CS2. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, actually, I really enjoyed this game. Most likely the op, even. It's not the same on CSGO, but we need to find new mechanic to, with this weapon. But I think whenever you find new thing with OP, it's so funny to play with it. So I, I love CS2, I, I love this game. Yeah. I love it. Royal Arena, give it up for Zai Wu and Team Vitality, your first team for the Grand Final.
for victory and vitality through to the coveted grand final tomorrow. But man, talk about an absolute war of attrition. We're talking about vitality starting 6-1 up on this very map. Cloud9 said, hell no, we're not giving you up that easy. They answered back themselves. Vitality had to fight for every single inch of that final map, Matthew. It took me many, many rounds to allow myself to believe in the possibility of vitality actually closing this map. It really looked like Cloud9 had done enough to break them. I direct your attention towards the second half and the sea of CT rounds with Cloud9 being impossible to play. Boomich made the great information playing on Banana. Electronic being very aggressive in the apps with the rifle, always good for multi-kills. Vitality looking flustered, not knowing how to handle the aggro. I thought this is it, Cloud9 have actually broke them. And when we talked about a test of character, that test has been passed. It wasn't pretty but they do the job, they survive the semi-final. To me, that's what makes it so impressive from Vitality, that they could win six of the remaining eight rounds in this game in order to close it out 13 to 11, because I agree with you. It felt like Cloud9 were in, in control of the game. They were being aggressive towards Banana, they were being aggressive towards Apps as well. We saw Electronic and Exile constantly move in that area and deny map control, deny spins of anything. There was even a round where they were in T-spawn within 20 seconds of the round. I know. They dominated the map, and all of a sudden, Apex and Vitality comes out with a solution round after round after round and if there's one thing i may uh, you know direct your attention towards sphinx not showing up on map one not showing up on map two by far the most impactful player with his lurk here on map number three that was a great redemption for sphinx and it's exactly what vitality needed right because he is the man that we're hoping to be you know bolstering the firepower of vitality and he had done so up until the first two maps of this series right we were talking about him being one of the highest rated players for the side of vitality and now he gets to go in this grand final and counter-strike is a very mental game. I think I'm not creating anything right here. You see some of the multi-kills he got early in this map. I think that just flicked the switch. Yes. This is where Sphinx actually got activated, got the confidence that he needed. I'm sure he was full of doubt, maybe frustration after map one and map two, being a shadow of himself, but very early on on this map, he came alive. And he had these moments, these determining moments on the CT side that put Vitality on track. And on the T side, I agree with you, it's a game of patience. He had to wait in the apps, knowing when to strike, when to call for the rotation. He had to face Electronic a couple of times, and this was a brilliant map three, and he redeemed himself for what was so far a pool showing. I would order that. Yeah, we've also got to give Zyro some props in this series sure. as well for his entire showing all the way through. And for him, you know, probably a bit extra sweet because we're talking about a trio that forbid him from lifting the trophy back in 2021. Now he gets to take them down and he's got another shot at that trophy tomorrow, Jake. Yeah, there's a bit of a grudge match going on between Vitality and, and what used to be Navi, of course, the core of Cloud9 now. Zyro, he didn't have the most impactful game. You know, he had a good show, and I'll say it over three maps, but it wasn't like he was controlling the game from start to finish. He had the moments especially the pistol round right here, of course. Don't take anything away from him. But it was the same on Mirage. A couple of rounds where he found a lot of impact. Then he goes missing for three, four, five, six rounds, and then he turns up once more. So we still haven't seen the best of Sairu, and yet I would say he's playing at 70, 80%, <laughs> and that's still enough to be world class. Yeah. Uh, this is the beauty of considering Sairu, right? He tops the chart massively for his team. We're talking about above 1.3 rating entire series, and we're left thinking, hmm, there's more. maybe there's a little bit more of this guy over there. Like Maybe he could have done a little bit more. And I, I agree with you. When we consider the talent of the man, there is maybe another gear, another speed he could have activated. I still think sometimes, and specifically on the T side, he's too selfless. I hate to see him going in first and giving his life to a wild boomage flying around with the MAC-10. But that, that's just how he is. He is very much selfless. And it sometimes to a fault, but he came alive at the very end as well. He ends up with 20 plus kill as well on Inferno. This is a strong series from Zyro. And also a very exciting prospect for Mezzi, the British beast that's now gracing the side of Vitality because he gets to go to his first top tier grand final. Of course, it took him a little while to warm it up into this one, but I'm hoping he's ready to bring that fire tomorrow. I'm just glad he found impact in the later stages of the game because map one, he wasn't there. Map two, he wasn't there. On map three, he came alive in the second half. Yeah, it was great for Messi to find impact. Super, super important for him as well, but it's a bit bittersweet for him to feel that you're not really contributing and going into the final. That's something he needs to work on. That's something they need to address heading into the final. But of course, when 
winning when you're not playing well, that must be nice. Yes, we run round number 19 because they're busy. You get a crucial yeah. double in this round that I think I kind of shifts up the momentum uh, a little bit for the side of Vitality. And yeah, Cloud9 kind of left stopped on this one match. And we talked about aggression. We talked about Cloud9 being ready to be in Vitality space. It's Electronic here being so hard to play against. Finding that multi-kill, four versus three, good trade from Sphinx as well. And here it gets very complicated. There was a whole lot of mind game going on. And these two taps are worth a spot in the grand final. I am not mincing my words. If Messi doesn't find the double headshot here, we are looking at Cloud9 closing the round, closing the match on Vitality. Yep. And there is beauty to it because the CT side was weak. Hmm. The absence of Magisk was felt. There's no other way to look at it. Yes. And if you're Messi and you're having such a hard game and you give me these two taps, I'm out there. I'll be shaking your hand, but by your pint, if I have to, because you earned it. Can we have a little English breakfast as well on the side of that? Maybe you a could. sausage roll God or two? No, Maybe God that's no. how no, Messi's going to be celebrating. I don't know. Um, but we do have to give our flowers to Cloud9 as well. I think yeah. Henry rounded it off kind of perfectly. They're coming in with such a change in terms of that leadership role as well. And they really stood up. Not enough to make it to the grand final, but a great showing nonetheless. One round away. As Matt just said, without Messi right here, they would have won that game. It would have been an instant eco. I think it's a project that is trending up. What's I said it a couple of times. If Cloud9 can continue this trajectory, it's a team we have to watch out for at the Cope Make Major in a couple of months. Well, Vitality net themselves a spot in that coveted Grand Final, but plenty more Counter-Strike on the cards. We go to a quick break, then we come back with our second semi-final. Hi guys, this is Twist from FaZe Clan, and I'm playing Counter-Sketch. I never draw anything. So yeah, probably no one knows how this is going to look like. I need to expand the knife. That's terrible. I just made it too too thick. T-knife is skinny as like. This is not good. People don't even know what the T-knife like looks like anymore. Because people have so, like everyone in person has knife, so. Yeah, I'm done. I actually think he'll say uh, Ninja Diffuse. <laughs> okay, okay. That's all I'm doing. If he has CS on his mind when doing the interview, then, then yeah, I would say he's gonna guess that. I feel like I got the ones that were difficult, and I got the easy one. Well, in here, we're going to do it a bit exciting, I think. OK. This is from Counter-Strike? This is from Counter-Strike, yes. I have no idea what this is. Um, a knife? A knife out of coming out of the pocket. It looks like a default knife. It's just like, but I know this guy is, has no imagination to drew this. You get it back? I think around the players, the boom blast. Either planning the bomb or just diffusing the bomb. The timer went out and the bomb exploded. Um, Unfortunately, it's a, not, it's a ninja diffuse. But the problem for me, if this is a ninja diffuse. Why is it made like a bomb radius and a rip? Okay, yeah, okay, I see, I see now. Okay, there's apparently a smoke up there. <laughs> this makes sense somehow that is a uh, like eco round. Uh, take nine by, and you're like maybe a reset round or eco round. And um, the arrows, I don't know, it's like 360 no scope. I don't know. Or <laughs> you are switching sides. My guess is that it's uh, second pistol round of the game. Uh, spin part. Okay, of course, of course. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like a cheater, that's my problem. I think this doesn't reflect our communication in phase. I hope not, because I don't know how we won tournaments then. For sure not Brokey, for sure not Rain. So there's two options, either Trist or Robin. I would go with Trist. Now that's impressive. I know which teammate could uh, actually do this. This means I know the persons in my team, so maybe the communication is good. We are here in the hotel with two very special guests. We've got Blame F and Castle, both from Astralis. 
And we just finished watching an incredibly close game between Vitality and Cloud9. I know you were in the arena briefly for some of that gameplay, Muff. How was, how was the energy? I think it was pretty okay. I think it could have been a little bit better, but uh, I think uh, the crowd cheered up a lot uh, when uh, there were some good individual plays as well. And uh, yeah, so it was fine. I think there was also was some... Uh, I haven't watched like the entire series like, you know, directly, but I did watch uh, some of it and I definitely saw some individuals making some good stuff like Exiles Ace and I think also Saibu's uh, pistol round on uh, Inferno CT was insane. Like sitting backside and getting four people from there is just like something only Saibu can do, I think. So, yeah. At the end of the match, James Banks actually asked Zaiwu, you know, you had a little bit of a cold start in CS2. Do you think do you think Zaiwu's back? For me, I, I think the way Zaiwu plays is like he could play in a more egoistic, you know, way. Like if he wanted to look better, he could look better. I just don't think he has. Like I see him so often just sit and just chill, you know, and just let his teammate do the job when they, when they're playing well. And and you know, I don't see him like going out and trying to like end the, end the match ever. I don't think he really strives for that, at least from seen from the outside. So I don't think he's, I don't think he was ever bad at CS2, maybe just had like one bad tournament or the team had a bad tournament and that makes him look worse, you know? Um, so I, I think he's definitely still one of the best players in the world, if not the best in the world. Okay, okay. Well, we brought you guys here for some pressing news. You guys have announced the fact that you have brought on Stown and Yabby onto the roster in the place of Borup and Buzz. And I think the everybody's incredibly excited because this is putting so much firepower and Danish firepower all onto one roster. And the one question though, that I think many people have is that there's, there's role overlap now. There were positions that you played, Stair played, Yabby played, Stown played, and there's going to be some mixing and matching. So who's going to give stuff up? Uh, I think uh, Stair is probably the one who's going to give up most. I think Stown's going to play a lot of the same roles as in Heroic. Blame F will keep all his positions, I think, almost. Maybe except one, I think. I like that. Something like that. Uh, so I think it's Stair who's uh, going to get a new role. Okay, okay, cool. Do you think, um, so I feel like that would probably push Stare into some anchor positions then has, and with Stare and kind of what we've seen from him so far, I uh, feel like we're not seeing, we haven't seen him on too many anchor spots, but like, do you, how, how confident are you guys that he's going to be able to adapt to these new positions? I think it's it's going to be good. He's a very smart player, actually. He think, thinks a lot about uh, his positions and is a pretty uh, good aggressive rival, I would say. So in the G side, we're going to use him uh, a lot for that. And on the CG side, he, he will get some new anchor positions. At, and that's going to be new for him, but I think he's up for the task. Okay, so we just saw another team, I would say, in Cloud9 that kind of had a little bit of a slow start <coughs> where they brought in people from Na'Vi. There was no language issue, obviously, but the way that the two teams played was different enough that when they first came together, it, there were clearly some growing pains. And given that Stown and Yabby were on a heroic team that was very active and Kadian called a different style than you call Blame, do you think that there's going to be any hiccups in terms of meshing the styles and making sure everybody's on the same page? I think... Of course there will be because with two different teams or like we were two different teams and a lot of different players who haven't played together in a long time but i think of course what we're striving for is to make that gap as small as possible as fast as possible we want to find a style that suits like we want to like kind of get the best of both worlds um so we want to try to get of course everything that they feel feel like worked really well in heroic we want to like bring that in but of course we also have some things in astralis that we think uh, worked pretty well for us um so i think it's more about finding like some like middle ground where everyone is happy and everyone can see themselves playing and and I also think that you say that they played very aggressive and, and that kind of, I think they also did but I think most pro teams have probably looked at heroic and kind of like understood their play style and like took some things from them and tried to play like them in some sort of way which is also why like some of the matches that we played against them you know when we played them in Cologne that's also one of the things that why it was I think sometimes easier to play them in the end for us because they beat us so many times playing this specific brain of Counter-Strike. So in the end, you kind of like understood it a little bit more, I think. So I assume you've already played a little bit with them. 
is, or is that not the case? That's not the case at all. I okay. haven't. You mean like practice with them or anything? Yeah. No, I haven't have uh, played with them at all. Okay. 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 Never mind then. Um, well, from from I guess the conversations you've had, does it feel like Stown and Yabby are going to be I guess like contributing voices in the server too, or are you going to just primarily command the whole thing? I think the way I like to call is that I like to give a lot of like. Um, freedom and responsibility to people. So I definitely see them coming in and having like very big voices. I always think that the best way to make a team function is if everyone thinks and feels like they can like make a call and like call around and all that stuff. And we also talk a lot about in practice about what kind of things we expect from people in their positions, what information they have to give, what kind of situation they have to take initiative in and all that. Um, so I definitely see them being able to come in and show like how they did in Heroic as well, especially Stown was calling a lot in Heroic, I think. So he can definitely come in and be like, you know, you call a secondary caller, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, he's going to be coming in and having a lot of freedom to make those same calls and have that same freedom. So that's definitely something we're going to like strive for in the beginning. How about Stair's vocal contributions? Because he's probably the least experienced of, of the bunch. How, how has he been contributing like in a mid-round? I'm, I'm guessing you mean in the last team. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, I think he's uh, definitely like uh, talking, like he's uh, talking a lot, but he also had a lot of positions where you have to talk because he was playing all map control T side and was playing all rotation CT side. So <coughs> if you're not talking, then uh, it's very bad, you know? So mm. he's definitely talking and uh, I think he's fine, uh, fine with it. Okay. So given how exciting this whole pro project is and where many would want Astralis to be headed, is there any reason to think anything but championships after, say, give it three months or so? Is that what you guys should be gunning for? I think maybe three months is going to be too early. I think uh, a lot of other teams like Vitality and uh, the new Cloud9 team and stuff like that, you can see that uh, just because you have good players, it's not uh, uh, the same as you will win the next tournament or you will be the some of the best in three months. I think we we will need to to take some time, maybe six months or something like that. And, and then we will see there's a lot of good teams. So just because you have five good players is not that you're going to win anything. Hmm. Okay. So for a lot of people also, when the conversations came up about Astralis and the roster before, uh, we were looking at who would complement the proposed new four people the best, or I guess Device, BlameF, Yabby, Stown, and you guys obviously went with Stare. So what kind of characteristics in Stare's play style or who he is are complimented, complimented you guys best and why you went with him? I think I think all the players we had had some good, uh, like some things that they were really strong at, but I think one of uh, Stair's one is that he has like a lot of potential. I think he's very young and he's shown like a lot of like firepower as well. And I do think, think like the meta right now is also like aggressive rifling, uh, you know, firepower. People can win rounds on their own. Um, and then even though we probably had to change some positions, then I, th I still think he had some of those in Sprout as well. He had played anger on some maps in Sprout. So it's not like it's totally new for him. Um, and yeah, I think just, you know, like seeing like the potential, like we also got him in the team a couple of months ago because he was the biggest prospect in Denmark at that point, I think. So I think it just made sense to go with him. I'm just curious, I guess, like, uh, it, what what good things do you have to say about, about Buzz? He was something that I think a lot of people were really interested in his play as well. For me, I think Buzz developed a lot. I think when we got him in, he was definitely like a rookie, I would say. Like, uh, you could tell that he wasn't performing as well on LAN and he, like the big events, maybe he got a little bit nervous and that kind of stuff. But I think, honestly, in the end, he, I think he showed himself as a tier one player. I do think he can play tier one for sure. Um, he had like a lot of confidence. He got really good at like anti strategy and putting his like perspective on how he will counter people on his side of the map. And he was like putting in a lot of like the important lurk positions on T side. And I think he was really good at doing them, like calling, saying like we could do stuff and all that. And he also in the end was very good at just making plays by himself, like going in and trying to end the round by himself if he saw the opportunity. So for me, he's a pretty complete player. Maybe he doesn't have like the highest peak. He's not like I will 30 bomb all the time, but I think he's like a very complete stable player. And I think that's very important in some, in some rosters. Uh, I guess this wouldn't be complete without talking about Borup a little bit too. So what are some of the positive characteristics of Borup? For me, I think, of course, you have to 
do take the one where like he's very like selfless. I think it's called like that. You know, like he mm. he never asks for anything. He's very like he just wants the team to succeed. He will do anything for his teammate. He will buy all the nades. He will swing for them all the time. And he's actually very good at talking and very good at like calling around himself, um, like giving info about his bomb site and all that stuff. I think he's very underrated in that uh, aspect. And then I also think he has a very good, like he. I think he has more like a higher peak because he's going for those like a little bit more flashy headshots sometimes. So I do think sometimes he just wins you round rounds where it's like maybe he wasn't supposed to do that. Sometimes he has like maybe a P250 with no armor and a pistol round, and then he will just one shot three people. And I think that's something that's very important to have in a support player that they can sometimes just pop off and win rounds because you're not really looking for them to get 20 kills in a map. But if they can sometimes win you rounds randomly, I think that's very important because. You have other players that are supposed to do that, but all of a sudden he will do it and then it will give you a lot. And then I just have to say as well that he's probably one of the best people you can have like in, you know, outside of server. Like he will bring so much good energy and joy to the team. And every time there's like maybe a problem in the team, he'll, you know, like laugh it away and, and that kind of stuff. And he'll just make the team atmosphere better. And for me, I can speak personally. I think every time a team has a good atmosphere, it just makes the whole team better, you know? So I think he brings a lot in that aspect. Okay. Okay. So we device device a while ago, maybe I want to say maybe in an interview seven months ago or so, he said that he thought he was in the best individual form maybe he's ever been in his career. And obviously you're the one that sees this more than every anybody, both of you. And so would you would you think that's the case? Do you think device right now is this is world class best he's ever played for him? Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit funny actually when I talked to him. I was just joining the team uh, and he told the same uh, to me and I was like, mm, okay, then you're going to be <laughs> very good. But uh, I, I think, yeah, individually, yeah, he's very, very good. Uh, of course, it's a new new game now, so he has to learn anything or, or all the things about the new game, but I think he's, he's there right now, actually. Mm. Um, okay, looking forward at, at your two next teammates, or two new teammates with Sound and Yabby then. Uh, what do you think you're going to get out of someone like Yabby in terms of, I know you haven't played with him actually, but in terms of what you've seen him accomplish on Heroic, how do you think that is going to add win conditions to your team? I think it's just, uh, like on, especially on T-Size, I think it's just a very good lurker position. Like, he can play those like outside positions and I think he definitely the guy who can like win rounds for you just randomly and he's also really good at talking and giving like um, key information to me as a caller to you know call around him and all that kind of stuff so I think just like having a really strong out of position player not really like you know he's like a lurking but I don't think he's like a support lurker he's more like a lurker that takes space if I had to describe him uh, and I think that's maybe something that we haven't had in Astralis. Okay cool. I think that's going to round this one up. So thank you guys so much yep. for taking the time to yep. answer all these questions. Really appreciate it. And we're going to be heading this back to the desk. I have actually dedicated uh, around 5,000 hours in Counter-Strike. Well, whenever you are ready, we can go competitive. Let's go, let's go. I'm actually really good. I have reached uh, DMG as a as a rank in in the competitive uh, Counter Strike. But also, I uh, work in uh, Mask as a conversion rate optimization manager. My name is Nizi Hoza Nice. 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 Oh. Guys, go together. Go together now. Reading the game is very similar to what we do at at work. So you need to read your opponents and your team performance, and then find the synergies to actually bypass all the obstacles. My passion for gaming is uh, very high. It's not only about fun and having nice time, but also strengthen the relationship with your friends. I think it started around 2013 or 2014, when uh, one of us actually opened his own uh, gaming net cafe uh, in Jordan. I'm actually from Syria, but I have never been to Syria. Uh, I was born in Iraq and I was only three years old when we moved uh, to Jordan and I spent most of my life in Jordan. I moved to Copenhagen in uh, September 2022, so uh, uh, being fast in terms of decision making is crucial in both gaming and work. Leads and registrations and how can we reach to the best uh, performing uh, experiment. 
the faster you are taking decisions in the right direction the more value you can gain so for example this game aims when someone wins 13 rounds and then if you're losing five rounds and taking decision to change or flip the coin it's better than doing that decision when you have lost 10 rounds i played a lot with my wife and to be honest she's better than me in counter strike <laughs> we have two kids i really love spending time with them sometimes i do gaming with my son my daughter is not that much interested in gaming but we do actually we do some other activities It's all the good things that connects you to gaming is the things that drives you back to it. So for me, having a good relationship with friends and uh, in my case, they are in totally different countries. So we are utilizing gaming as one of the way, uh, ways to connect. It's something I want to keep doing. Elise, you've made it to another semi-final and we've seen great progression and a great comeback yesterday from you guys as well. But when we're looking at the game against Na'Vi, how did you view it and review it? Should it have been able to get that close? Because there was many chances where they could have been able to take that from you. Yeah, I mean, obviously they had uh, way worse clutches that they lost, but I would say the same thing for us, that we lost a lot of rounds that we shouldn't just from like really small things like going wrong consecutively. Um, so that's why there definitely was a lot of emotions and I'd say that it was probably one of the craziest games of my career for sure. That that was actually insane. But the crowd um, were probably not going to be the fan favorites either, which is awesome that we're used to with Sydney. So it's just knowing that we've already dealt with this before and keeping up the same comms to the level that we know it should be at. Now another day in the office you've already mentioned that like the fact that the crowd might not be on your side you're also going up against the phase that is looking unstoppable right now but you have been able to at least fight and test them how much do you feel like you've got to read on them and how much do you feel like you can know how they're going to play the game and what it's going to come down to i mean we definitely know a lot about them i mean that's how it usually always is whenever like teams are having like an era where everyone's watching their games everyone has watched all of their spots so we we know everything pretty much that they can do and will do but it's not that simple either because when you're playing at like the level that FaZe is at and you're playing like that well, you're, they're obviously going to have a lot of different styles, a lot of different games that they can be showing. So it's really just going to be up to us to uh, you know, see how they're going to start off the game. Do they want to start like with this strategy, this style, kind of condition us this way? And then like when are they going to transition? So we, we're going to have to just be a little bit like more on uh, just one step ahead of them the entire time and kind of just kind of have to get lucky in the first couple like rounds like where we just hit the right spot the rotations are right and it's always going to be a little bit of a guess it's always an educated guess with this type of stuff because like i said they're a really good team you can't just watch like one or two demos and be like oh they always do this they always do that it's it's not that easy and if it was that easy they wouldn't be the best team right now i like that right so there is some mind games that come to it but it's a lot of playing on the fly what have you told the guys going into this game though what's been the, the vocal way of saying okay guys we've got this game plan but if something does go down we've got these protocols in place because you guys have all mentioned to me about some of the little mistakes that have been happening yeah i mean i've always just been trying to figure out what's the main cause like what's the root issue of like why are we making the small mistakes and that's what i've been trying to address as we've been going through like this tournament is like what is like the underlying issue of like why we aren't on the same page why are we not making the right like micro decision do we not understand the round so we're coming up with just more keywords like as much as possible and um even for like our first map anubis it's it's more about like the game plan of how we want to play and how we want to get active and how we want to show that because you know sometimes we're even getting in our own head of like we normally do this so we're going to just like show this other game but it's not really a game that we're completely comfortable with so it's about finding the balance right now and for us i think that we have a really good clutch potential i actually think that we're kind of similar to phase in that way where they also lose like kind of crazy rounds that they probably shouldn't and then they just pull something just out of nowhere which is how we've been getting away with a lot of rounds too so it's about keeping our composure as much as possible even though you know it is always hard but you know even, even if things do get tough it's just about bouncing back right after because you know if you if you get upset about something and you can just bounce right back into it and you're reading the game really well then at the end of the day that's what matters most
I'm going to have a quick touch on that because there was a moment we saw from you where you hit the death slam, you were like four and something, but then you went on a monstrous tear on Nuke. Is that what you're resetting yourself mentally? Is this something you want everyone to be able to do? Yeah, I mean, I definitely shouldn't have gotten that annoyed. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely my bad. <laughs> I told the guy sorry about that one. So that was my bad for sure. Um, but for me on complexity, I've just been trying to get my grievances out like early. Just if I'm like upset about something, I'm just saying it instantly, like in the moment. If I'm mad, just get right to it. And the guys have been really like okay with that and that's really nice for me because I'm like doing something that's getting me more like mentally like in the zone where I can just move on from mistakes easier and the whole team is like fine with that like everyone is just like right to the next round and it's not really affecting them so overall I think we have like a pretty good thing going on. Carrigan another shot here at the Royal Arena second place last year and I want to see how important would it be for you to win here how important is this crowd this event? I mean obviously it means a lot to win here uh, but I've learned during my career Whatever happens, happens. You know, I can't figure out this is a really important tournament for me. Um, but obviously, you have pressure on us winning a lot of tournaments lately. Um, but there's a good chance we can uh, do it again or make it to the final, right? But uh, first of all, we're in semi final. So one day and one map and one game at a time. Good mentality. I like that as always. Now, Floppy said to me in an interview that uh, he's been watching and studying you guys. How much do you feel prepared for them? How much do you kind of have a good read on their style and what they have to offer? I mean, I think Complex is one of those teams that's been the best since these two came out as well, right? So obviously it's a, it's a good matchup. It was a good game in Sydney, so I'm looking forward to probably see what uh, we're doing here, uh, throwing at each other in this game. But we haven't had much time to practice, right? Uh, but uh, I made sure that we had some new stuff come into the game. Uh, we need to be on top of our game all the time. Um, so that's just part of us uh, going deep uh, in many tournaments. But I think we are well prepared. Uh, we have some good maps in front of us, so I'm just looking forward to, to get on the server now. Now you picked Nuke versus them last time around and obviously they've had a quite a few reps this tournament with it. Is this something where you still feel like you can have it or do you have enough of the veto now where you can play around and surprise them? I mean, I think Nuke has been a really good map for us uh, since this too. Uh, at this point, we have been picking it often, right? Uh, we are playing a seven map pool. Uh, again, it comes into a really good consideration to, to this game, for example. So um, I expect uh, the maps to go to go a good way. But that's just only that part of the game, right? The game has to be played on the server. We have to be on point. Uh, we have some good win rates on different maps. Um, but the mentality and the game has to be on point from, from first round. Uh, they have played with a lot of momentum. They did a great comeback. So we need to be really aware of that and obviously they're gonna tell themselves they have no pressure but in the end everybody has pressure we are back in the heart of the royal arena and ready to find an opponent for vitality in tomorrow's grand final and gentlemen i just want to do a quick check copenhagen are we ready for another semi-final yeah! hell yeah we are and hell this yeah. one is an absolute banger because we're talking about a rematch of the IEM Sydney Grand Final. We're talking about FaZe going up once again against Complexity. And I don't know about you, Matthew, but the current reigning monarchs, I would say, of CS2, uh, that's FaZe without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, listen, you cannot really argue against it. FaZe have dominated Counter-Strike 2 ever since the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're talking about winning every single event you attend. Two events online, one event online, 17 best of three, 17 series, rather, back to back to back. Do you think they fall short today? Uh, most likely not, you know, and there's the fashion they're winning in as well. It's close games, it's tennis games, it's overtimes, it's when they're backs against the wall, they're down 12 to 9, they always find a way back. It's in the DNA of face clan. Whenever they're under pressure, they rise to the occasion, and as Rain said, this is the face show, this is the face era one more time. You know who's somebody that's got a hell of a lot of pressure on his shoulders, especially walking into this arena? It's got to be Carrigan. He has mm. never lifted a trophy here, and now the sole Danish representative coming out on this big stage, Jacob. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. There's no doubt about it. You can hear the crowd reaction as soon as we show a picture of him. Now, there's one big problem with Kerrigan inside this arena. He's always been able to captivate the crowd, but he's never been able to lift the trophy in front of any of you guys. And I think there's a good chance of FaZe Clan doing that. Of course, they have to win this semifinal, but Kerrigan is in prime position to make that happen. Uh, they have all it takes. They have all it takes to win here in Copenhagen. They're almost destined to lift it here. And if you think about Kerrigan, what he's accomplished in his whole career, and then the last two years, it's finally the major. It's finally the back-to-back -back Katowice Cologne. 
It's finally Copenhagen, baby. It's coming home. And he's got so many pieces around him, right? We're talking about a Rops in basically peak performance form. We're talking about Twist as well, firing on all cylinders, Jacob. Yeah, there's so many great individuals to pick from. You say Rops, I say Twist. You could say Rain as well. Every single player. We forget about Boki all of a sudden. The all player of FaZe Clan. Pick a player, choose a player. They can all be MVP material at every single tournament they attend. That's the strength of FaZe. There's no weak link one in that lineup. And listen, we know. We hear the rumors out there. We know it might happen something for FaZe after this. Twist might be on his way out. I say that protects them from the pressure. If they were to actually stick together next okay. time, you'd, you could be mm. getting your own head. 17 series in a row. We Come on, we have to win. It feels like they just get the best out of both worlds. Let's have a good send-off together. Let's play some good Counter-Strike together. Who cares what happens? We're the best right now, and that's the state they're in. And I would double down on that assumption because look at Twist's numbers right now, mm. Jacob. Yeah, we know coming. How does CSGO? He said it himself. He was struggling with motivation. Absolutely no question coming into CS2 that Twist is fired up. Listen, I think Match is right on the money right here when saying that pressure has been elevated from Twist. There's no pressure on him right now. He's just making the most out of his time within FaZe Clan. We don't know whether or not this could be the last time we ever see FaZe, you know, putting Twist on the server. Maybe that's the case. Maybe you're gonna cry about it. Fact of the Maybe. matter is, right now, he's enjoying himself to the fullest, and so is FaZe Clan. As you said, 17 wins in a row, have been dominating CS2. What a way to go out. And Twist is pure impact. Pure impact. You can look at the numbers, and sometimes they speak the truth, but look at when he gets his kills. Talk about the crazy comebacks they've had here in Copenhagen, the game versus Cloud9, up until the end of the night, and it's Twist who's grabbing them back from it, multi-kills after multi-kills. And this man is pure impact. I absolutely love to watch him play Counter-Strike. And you know what? This makes it so much extra exciting when we're coming into this rematch. We're talking about one of the best grand finals we've seen in all of CS2 so far. Mm -hmm. I know it's a small sample size, but it was such a banger. Like, complexity weren't letting phase just walk all over them, right? So I'm interested to see how the veto is going to be going down in this one. Because last time it was Overpass, it was Nuke, it was Ancient. Do you anticipate it being any different this time around, Jacob? I think it's going to be similar to some degree. I don't think the teams have changed their map pool ever since they played that final. So something similar. Oh. And we have it going on behind us right now. Man. So we may as well walk you through it. Mirage is gone from complexity now. Will it be Anubis or will it be Overpass that's going to be removed here? There you have it. That's phase. That's the seven map pool coming out. Overpass being removed which means Complexity have Anubis yes. right for the taking, and, and they go it. for it. That's Anubis picked right there for FaZe. Nuke has been a go-to time and time again, and they stick to it. Nuke reigns through for FaZe Clan. Just have last map to find out. Oh my lord, I'm so excited to see what Complexity are going to bring on Anubis, Ancient again. because uh, that was what FaZe banned out last time around. Surely we've got Ancient. Like, come on, Ancient we all again. saw that final map. The overtimes in that one, it was crazy. Give it, it was to Ancient. Us. There we go. Woo! Hell yeah. I love yes. to see that. Absolutely love that. Because that was um, the map the to end all maps. Like, I, I thought FaZe were a certainty to be getting that one. Then Complexity came back fighting. Not quite enough. But that was an absolute banger of a map. And honestly, you could argue in the quality of the Counter-Strike, Complexity have all they need to handle FaZe Clan. They have such great protocols. Mm -hmm. The impact of Elysia ever since it joined to help them play better CS, a better philosophy, a better communication, they've had it. But the part of a, a semi-final or a playoff game like that plays also in the heart. And the question is, do they have it to finally get the W over FaZe Clan? Because in the game plan, I think they're right here. Complexity are nothing to be shy about. They never look better. They've never looked better than they do right now. One thing is Elish coming into it, but he's also elevated the teammates around him. Take Floppy as an example. We knew he was a great player, but how clutch he's been in this tournament, how well he was playing in Sydney, he's going to be needed as well. It can't be just the Elish show. We know he's great, but he can't carry that ship all by himself. And that's the thing we saw about Floppy, right? In the final game that qualified them to this very arena, um, he was all but absent in you know the first couple of moments of that series, but the fact that he got that fire under his feet. We've got to give it to him. We need to see that consistent floppy right, Matthew. Otherwise, yes. complexity are going to be dead in the water. And you could almost make a comparison with Twist to the same extent. We're talking about deep round clutch players who will turn situation on their head. Even when complexity are looking bad, if it's floppy left in a 1v3, I'm ready to give him a chance. I'll give him a fighting chance because he's been winning them time and time again. And it cannot be just a leash. You're right. It's got to be also floppy. It's got to be Halsuk as well, the sure, ADP here, sure. the Norwegian on Copenhagen Soul. Maybe there's some Scandinavian magic can be invoked <laughs> over here. Someone's got to help Elish. Even, even though he's been playing beautifully, one is not enough. Isn't it crazy just the effects that man has had upon mm. this team? Because I just want to throw it back to a few months ago. Complexity could barely bolster any results together. The fact that they're making it through to playoffs consistently in CS2, that is beautiful to see from them. Such a ballsy move from Elish as well. He could have gone anywhere 
there pretty much. You could have gone to Europe if you wanted to. A lot of the NA players wanted to leave NA, right, and go somewhere else. But Elise has done it. He stayed within NA, and he's done it tremendously well for this complexity lineup. They're looking like the best version they've ever seen. He's been a mentor both in and outside the server. A leadership pure example from Elise. Jacob, of course, we've got the Soldane up here and Carrigan on the server. How do you feel about being the Soldane on the stage right now? Well, I may be the Soldane on the stage, but I'm surrounded by a lot of Danish people who are hopefully ready to give it up for Kerrigan. Royal Arena, are you glad to get much gas for Kerrigan? I think they're ready. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I think we need to get this show on the road. Another semi-final and a rematch of IEM Sydney. We're talking phase versus complexity going down. So it's time to welcome the teams into the arena. Phase on top of the world when it comes to CS2, it is not really debatable. We definitely want to win a Blast Trophy at this point. We know that every team is watching us. And I think that's our main motivation here. The reality might just be that Phase are in a different galaxy right now. Complexity well and truly back and a chance to put that star on their jersey. Really excited to be at the four finals. Honestly, I think we have a really good chance. Teach me. But I do think that we can we can win an all for you, pal, best. The North Americans continuing with form in CS2. The glorious Counter-Strike that we love and live for. Oh, the duel is doing the work, though. Twists with a double. Spins around, heads to head, draw that style as well. What a game. Faze truly are immortal. And Holzer looks to bring it back here and now. Alexi's caught, a nade, a peek, oh! watch, and complexity in the Royal Arena with a chance at revenge against Faze. Everything to change, everything to fall into place for the North American side. They fly their flag proudly and have proven to the world that they are here to compete with the best, no longer looked as just an upset team. At first, it felt like a Cinderella story, but now, once again, they stand here in an arena full of Counter-Strike fans with a chance to make another grand final. Their confidence and belief has never been so high, but now they must fight the final boss. Floppy! When he gets going, you really can't stop the flop. Elise! One of North America's finest and the final piece of Complexity's puzzle for success. JT, the fragging IGL who isn't scared to throw down. Hulzerk, the mullet man, a Norwegian who's adopted the American way. Grim, this ordinary man has shown us that he can become extraordinary. In this game, it's a must. Strike 2, a return to form, reach 
rejuvenated in the new game and motivated more than ever. They can be down, but they are never out. And with a 17-match win streak, they are flying high while looking to add another one in front of the Royal Arena crowd. Gold is the only thing that matters here in Copenhagen. Brokey, the clutcher, don't ever count him out. Rain, the architect, and the only one that they can rely on over and over again. Carrigan, the mastermind. Wherever he leads, they will follow. Twists, the driving force, motivating and motivated. Rops, the brain of the game. He knows it all. than revenge and that is exactly what complexity have a shot at today but oh boy it is going to be a hard fought battle indeed we're talking about the current kings of cs2 machu and a team that have already tamed complexity once back in a grand final on the other side of the world yes. is there potential for complexity to flip the script today i mean listen you got to realize how good of an opportunity this is for mm. complexity we always talk about pressure when we talk about high level counter strike events we talk about expectations when you face face clan right now you basically have nothing to lose you're either just a team in the long list of teams that have lost or you suddenly you're the talk of the evening you're the absolute headlines you're the ones that taken face down it's a beautiful moment to attack and for all the sharks in the water they must be looking at face thinking man they can bleed they can bleed, and they showed that in that grand final. It was very, very close. Now, one thing I do want to address is that I think Face Clan, as of right now, have installed a fear in their opponents. We saw it with Supnix back in the day, the clutch minister, as they call them. Whenever someone would go up in a 1v1 against Supnix, they would play significantly worse because they always feared him before the game and the round even begun. The same with Face right here. You may have them down 11 to 8, you know they're going to fight their way back. You may have them down on the second map, you know they're going to force it into overtime. That's the DNA of Face right now. They have installed this fear in their opponents, and that's something Complexity will have to ignore if they want to stay in a chance. But strangely enough, Complexity try to take on that trait of their own because basically throughout the entire duration of the group stage, um, you could never count them out. I'm glad that we're not going out to the arena right now because I'm going to remind you of that Astralis game. Uh, yeah. Astralis should have closed out Overpass. They didn't. Obviously, we don't see that map coming into the pool, but Complexity, they're not afraid to be playing from behind. No, they show the backbone. They, they show some mental resilience that maybe we hadn't really suspected from them, but they've also shown to us that they can have moments where they kind of float into the game and they're not really playing to the full extent. This is not going to fly here. You play against Space Clan in an arena in Copenhagen right now, you let them get away with the scoreline, you're never coming back. You're not catching that train again. So for complexity, I really hope that this served as a lesson for them, a warning without consequence that, hey guys, let's remember, we might have improved and that they have, no one is going to debate it, but if you don't play to the 100%, people will punish you. Especially face. That's the thing, right? The competition they're up against, it's the best team in the world. It would have been another case if they were facing a Cloud9 or Vitality who's still not there yet, not firing on all cylinders. There's less room for mistakes whenever you're going up against face clean we highlighted coming into this one as well you can pick any player from face and you can say he can be the difference maker he's going to be the mvp of this game he's going to be the mvp of this map it's not quite the same case for complexity elise is the star player within that lineup floppy have shown you know clutch elements etc etc holstrick has had a bit of a shaky tournament come alive in a certain amount of clutches but apart from that been shaky we need to see all five players fired up if they want to stand a chance of beating face just think about this for elise for a moment this time last year he was wearing the liquid jersey and this is as far as he made it through to the semi-finals. You put it perfectly, Matthew. What a risk he took to be staying in North America on the side of complexity. And it's been paying off so far. But is it going to pay off as we move into this first round of Anubis? Obviously, complexity's pick. I mean, listen, they have improved, as I said. It's quite clear from the moment that he's joined to now, it's night and day. In terms of the quality of the protocols, the way they approach certain of these situations, he talked about improving the communications. And that's why, if you ask me going. in theory, uh, I'm almost ready to give complexity the edge in terms of perfection of the counter strike that's been played. Okay. But the catch is, when you play an event like this, in a match like this on stage, 
you can forget about the plan A. The plan A is not always going sure. to go down. Yes. There are going to be weird ass situations that you really haven't planned for, that you really shouldn't be losing. And when it's chaos out there, FaZe are much better equipped to deal with it. They have players ready to shine in moments where nothing makes sense. I don't know that complexity can handle it. Quick words, Jacob, complexity or FaZe, who is taking this one? Uh, it would be foolish of me to not say FaZe winning this one, but I think we're having a competitive game on our hands. I think complexity have shown enough to be great. It's 18 for FaZe, it's 18. We're going for there. You feel the magic? You're feeling going, it in this I'm arena? I think it would be amazing for Carrigan to be able to do it on home soil, right? Because we're talking about, what is it, one out of 13 potential Danes? He's the only one still standing, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, no more Astralis, no more Heroic, not even close to making it to the stage, to be completely honest. Carrigan, though, he's never won here, and that's the one thing, right? He's won in Katowice, he's won Cologne, he's won some majors, blah, 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 blah. He's never won this one, so that's one that he wants to take home. <laughs> it's uh, not just what, 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 a major? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let that one sit because we have a game on our hands. Our second semi-final phase taken on complexity. Let's get this one started. Royal Arena. Counter-Strike fans around the world. It's time for us to see who else is going to be going to that grand final. But first of all, let me check the room. Have we got some complexity fans in here? The boos were expected, but they should earn your respect. This team has fought hard to be in this position. But what about FaZe Clan? Yeah! Are you ready for the game? Yeah! Royal Arena, Counter-Strike fans around the world, it's time to bring the oh! Who's up for round four? FaZe and Complexity in a rematch following Sydney. Hotly contested, highly anticipated. And now we get to watch it go down here in the semis, just in time for the stage. And as Complexity said, they're predictable now. We've watched everything we can. We know where they play, we know what they do. But cold starts cannot be afforded by Cole, not this time. Not now, not with a chance at this revenge. Kerrigan, he's gonna get first blood, but it's a quick chase from JT and Elyse, twice from Elyse with those dual Berettas. That is a pinch outside of the B site that stops FaZe in their tracks. Bomb down, and what's left of them, well, they've gotta come reclaim this. And Complexity have swarmed deep into the T-spawn, holding on long, all is good here for Cole, assuming they don't give away free kills, but Rops will get back a leash. Little to lose here. And Brokey looking for next. Catches one beneath, held on the pillar. CT's a little scared, but Floppy's gonna catch a frag. All on Rops, not enough. Ooh. Complexity take round one. That's a sight for sore eyes. We had Complexity lose five pistols the other day. So to start off, especially on Anubis, where they've just been getting nothing but blown out. Now, even in their last map, they did a lot better, but they still lost. It was an improvement, but they had the fear factor coming out of Sydney. They won four out of five games on the map. Their opponents never got past 10 rounds, and they should have known that this was going to come. Now, they don't get the chance to play overpass like they did in the last veto. So they're really relying on an Anubis here, and they know they have the playbook and the tools. They just need the form on the day. A lot of it comes down to the JT, Grim, floppy anchors both sides of the map on CT side pop in a little push towards jail Grim's gonna hold for one but there is a response now empty weapon means there's a resurgence from phase just like that strength in numbers they get themselves into the site with a bomb plant and weapons to be grabbed we talked about lack of pistols. We talked about these cold starts. That's been the bane of complexity so far here in Copenhagen. To get by with still two alive now would be all right. You can re-get some money in the next round. Brokey, it's on him to try to finish off this force by win. And a little separation between complexity means he gets a raw fight. A push out through the smoke, Brokey to the tech nine. A trap oh! for the as he lasers down two. Oh, why is it always hot action for Brokey? God damn, right after a pistol round one for complexity, it's stolen back. It felt a little timid right there in the 2v1. Could Halzerk not have jumped on the fact that he started shooting? Brokey was spotted from the side as well. 
they gave him a little space, and then they got slapped. That's an early warning. You cannot afford to lose rounds like that to phase complexity right back to the drawing board. But they're used to having pistols in their hands, so that's one upside. And one of the teams genuinely, you know, jokes aside, one of the teams this week who has been being able to pull off rounds like this. You know, you'd rather avoid them if you could, but seeing as they find themselves in this position often, yeah, either avoid them or just get better at them. <laughs> yeah, just, just get better in general. <laughs> Oh, we got a chant for Grimm this early. Molly to Floppy's feet and falls back. A big question mark around the failures of complexity on Anubis in the last few days. Their, bat, their last three matches, these beatings they've been having. It's been this question about Floppy over towards A. Dying empty-handed. Grimm, same deal towards B. We need marked improvement from Cole if they're going to keep back face. Kerrigan twists. That's the opening, and this round doesn't look like it's going to go anything close to Complexity's way. Grim is the only one to post a single frag, and he reaches for the MAC-10. A bunch of damage, actually. Things get a little hectic. We're yeah. getting a little crazy. We're taking the gloves off early. And I want to draw some comparisons already to what we're going to see in the second half, because when Complexity lost to Vitality on this map when it was close, it came down to their scheduled executes on the B side, how they split. And this one is on time, and this one is cohesive. Even if they lost the player when they were swinging right there, they had two more to trade. We need that same energy for complexity in the second half, but for FaZe, they're gonna easily get this T half started with rounds like this. It's already looking very good. Well, he said it in his pre-match interview that we just have to read them early. We can't let them adapt faster than us. Will we yeah. pull the right card to counter out of the gate? You know, that really confirmed my suspicions that when I think about complexity and their place in the scene right now, whether it's CS2 or the end of CSGO, it, it was so much anti-strat that got them their big wins. Why they could lose to middle-of-the-pack teams or play close to worse Tier 2 teams, but still play competitive against teams like Na'Vi and FaZe in those big qualification matches, great anti-strat. And I gotta, say, I gotta say that has to do more with the team around complexity, coach, analyst, um, on top of JT, I think, as a great IGL for the team. Uh, but that's what's netted complexity odds against teams like FaZe in big matches. Yeah, North America, a habit of uh, importing talent. And now nearly five or six years at this point, we've had this you know, two-headed dragon that is JT and Coach TC. For the longest time, it was only the two of them coming up with game plans and no player that could even really be a secondary caller. But nowadays, you've got James IRL contributing in the background and also Elise in the server. Yeah. And JT and TC specifically, they've given the props to those additions. It's what's allowed them to take their original system and elevate it as complexity have improved. And why FaZe are the fire to the ice of complexity is because the way the, way, the reason that we call FaZe Land Clan is because when they get up on stage, and Elise talks about how it is hard to predict them and figure out what they're going to do this time in this situation is because they have a five-headed Hydra. Kerrigan is thorough but not strict. He gives his teammates the ability to have agency and make decisions when they want to. And of course that's going to be hard to predict. If you've got one guy microwing all your other four players, then yeah, maybe you can predict them more. But FaZe have five talented, yeah. experienced players that can all do whatever they want but they still know what Kerrigan wants. Right now, it's a little mid-control by the looks of it. Now, Rops is over on A early on. Nobody there. Good flash out of JT. Twist, oh. double headshot. If, if Twist's bringing something to the table, you know it's ripping heads off shoulders. Oh. Rops will do the same damn thing on his own. Just that engagement solo towards the opposite side of the site. Oh, 4v2 for FaZe, looking comfortable. Just changes the course of the round completely. Just that silent assassination as he snuck in to the A site. And I think getting into that position early, it's what allows him to respond to what was a 5v4 to Complexity's favor. You know a what? little bridge push, instantly countered. We're reading names here, okay? That's Rob sliding in. Why? Because one of the two people on the mid push was floppy. That's one of the anchors that's going to be taking duels or stopping Rob's or multiply, multiplying his presence over on that side of the map. And if he's not there and he's dead, well, they know something's wrong. Rob's took that as an opportunity. And that's another situation where... You, he doesn't call up to the big boss and say, Kerrigan, can I push this? He knows right away. I can take this risk right here. Instantly 4v2. He's making moves on the stock floor. Waits for no yeah. one. Started in the mail room. Yes, sir. <laughs> the FTL mail room. Yeah, started in the offices. Yeah. 
proving he's legit. And years later, here he is at the top of his game. Playing some sick Counter-Strike twists. Clean double headshot. No trade frag out of Floppy. Yeah. Floppy's inability to trade kills on long A was an issue in their Anubis game last time. Big problem. Big problem. And that's a new angle, new situation, but still the same necessary action. Couldn't do it. And when you have a big commitment like that, you don't have six, seven players on the map. There is a huge weakness. So they needed the trades there to slow phase down. They couldn't get it. And the half quickly gets away from them as complexity stuck onto one. Interesting, though. We got a Mag-7 in the mix. Okay. Okay. CS2 shotguns, huh? Now, the way that complexity brought back some dignity was in the second half, when they got to play against Vitality. But that doesn't deny the fact that they got so beaten so badly in the first half that they didn't have enough time to recover. It was just too many rounds to bring back. So they need to try to put up something decent. And that might mean winning an eco. But for now, it's only a dink. Yeah, the site just gets pieced up. A couple peaks, both punished. P2K for Halzerk. Bare bones situation and no hesitation out of phase. You think Rain feels bad when he kills Halzerk? No. no. You know, that's one of the storylines we actually don't talk about too much, right? <laughs> I just like, realized Yeah, it. how often have we had a, two Norwegians fighting one another on opposite sides of a server? Two Norwegian offers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> the two best Norwegian offers. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. The two best Norwegian <laughs> offers. Halzerk and Rain. Halzerk, though, struggling at the start of this match. Zero kills. Also had a very rough series. Yesterday, in order to qualify to this semifinals, he had a 0 0.4, uh, sorry, 45 ADR yeah. going into the third map. And then he just gets bullied, battered, uh, just honestly irrelevant, essentially, to so many rounds until those back-to-back -back clutches yeah. in the last two oh. rounds. I mean, he literally finished his match yesterday and just thanked the CS gods <laughs> yeah, instantly. Well, what was uh, Pimp's line? He had five bad halves. Yep. But the clutches right at the end. And that close was really all he contributed. So I'm really hoping for his sake that he gets an uptick in performance here tonight. There is something so impressive about that because there are players that if they tell you themselves, like, oh, if I have a bad start, I can't get back into it. But, well, he had five or he had three bad starts. And then in the final half, he did. That's really all complexity needed. But we're looking at a pistol round here for complexity. So, you know, Alicia apologized about getting tilted the other day. Yeah. That was actually one situation where I totally stood with him. Sure. I was like, yeah. They really needed that round. Mm -hmm. And I can understand the pressure he felt. I like Elysia's mentality, though, where he says, like, I'm just getting it off my chest instantly. Yeah. I'm not bottling it up. It I'm does just seem gonna healthy. Say it, and we'll deal with it. But I'm going to say it first. And if that's what he needs to kind of shake off the frustration and get back onto his game, yeah. look what he did in that new game yesterday. Yeah. I mean, Elysia is the third highest rated player at the event right now. Yeah. No, imagine if Larry David bottled up the pettiness for nine seasons. He'd explode. He'd explode. And we don't need a liege exploding anytime soon. No. But here we go. Guns back up for Cole. No opening death for either side. It's a tantalizing peak here for Halzerk, but those rifles, they hit hard. And he also feels the threat of a long B play. It's him and Grim sitting back and Floppy now just dismantling what was that forward setup. Two Molotovs each side just has FaZe waiting outside of the bomb site. But a little pressure on the opposite side and we get JT rotating. Oh, but as JT leaves, Floppy goes forward, confirming that still at least half of the pack is on this side this of the map. A, this works as a fake though they saw the bomb, right? But it gets out and rain gets in. Beautiful. Phase leaving so many options open that that bomb just ends up committing here where Halzer, well, a missed shot certainly won't bode well. Gets oh. caught by the jail player. JT's getting frags elsewhere, but a beautiful tether back and forth with Phase. That right there is complexity dancing with the devil oh. and Phase come out on top. They had a cafeteria of options right there and they picked the right one on the money. Like that's, that's the, the crazy part is you look at a round like that, you know it's so well called because the default works to the point that they really can go to either side and win. Even if the rotations came in there for complexity, Rain was one step ahead. He even got his kill. So that was, that was more than bad for, for complexity. And at least they saved the two guns that they have right now and probably won't get hunted down. But we're starting to sort of 
lose the ability to see the keys to victory at this point in the half. Yeah, I mean, what we're getting... I like the, I like the opening floppy swing, right? Yes. I mean, if you die going passive, at least going one for one being aggressive feels like you did something, you know, but... What we're getting right now, seven rounds in, is the framework of all those previous three blowouts on Anubis for complexity. Every mm -hmm. time they just get smashed, these are the starts they get. It, this is actually even worse because they did win pistol. They did win pistol, you know, yeah. They thought for a second they had a hand on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they did, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I know better than that. <laughs> I know better than that. All right, TC in the mix. Got some words for the team. And this still is totally about game planning. You gotta have more confidence when it's a team you know like FaZe, right? It would be worse versus a team you have no idea yep. about because then your preparation only goes so deep. Here you know what potentially is the next option, what Kerrigan might be thinking on top of what you've seen in demos. You have the real game experience. So there should be no reason to be at a shortage of ideas even if it's looking bad right now. Not that I have any, but... TC will. TC will. That's Got his job. It. Yeah. Yeah. Him and James, no doubt, burning the midnight oil yesterday to try and prep for this one just to make sure that they do have all these reads. And multiple players from Complexity said, we at least know what they do. There are certain CT options that have been shut down and stopped in CS2 completely. Like in CSGO, we saw Vitality pushing B, double pushing B on the outside of it. Complexity don't want to try to do that. The pushing the pushing on the A side of the map. Oh no, Grim gets shut down here. And he does do that sometimes. Yeah. But this is why they stopped, because it's sort of easy to counter. A lot of T-sided angles. Oh, Kerrigan clean with it. He's right up there in the kill department alongside his teammates, and I don't want to be floppy. This man's about to get split on his own. Posts up at least the first, but uh -huh. there's so many players right there to trade as FaZe are already on fire that this is just more pain for complexity. And still not a single beat of sweat for FaZe. They have absolutely perfect spacing all the time. I mean, they're so good. There's no, there's no good angle for Floppy to sit in there when he's getting split like that. He's supposed to die. Getting two kills would have been a miracle, and it still wouldn't have been the round. So, yeah. yeah the, the, it's, it's a catch-22 type of situation for teams right now on CT sides where they feel like if we do push, we need to push. But if we do push, we get shut down. The defaults are too easy. When people play back on T-sides and wait for the pushes, they always get the kill. So what do you do? Oh, nobody's missing. Yeah. Kerrigan, super quick entry. Props, two bullet burst. Oh. Halzer, zero and seven. Zero and seven. They just need to get to the sixth half. But that has really, oddly enough, been the nature of Complexity's wins, right? These blowouts here and there. Yeah. Which is why, again, as NA, we're just going to be led on to believe that the second half will make everything better. Uh, I think there is some value in trying to catch the kills inside a bridge um, okay. in the mid-round instead of the extremities where they feel uncomfortable where it's not working. Because, like, every time Grim swung on the A side versus Vitality, he got blown away. He got melted down. Important round after important round, so... There was FaZe as a great Anubis team as well, using mid very, very often. Of course, they need to not die in sights first, but they can manage that. Um. Pistols in dark will have a chance at rain. That's something to work with. Immediate answer, bomb plant towards A site. Not going to be able to stop FaZe seemingly. And Rob's looking to feast a little, but now a couple guns to be saved. We'll be trying to find silver linings for complexity. Can't help but feel like they just want revenge from Sydney. Brokey gonna make sure nothing else falls the way of the oh. CT. You know, of all the offers. <laughs> Actually, screw the offers. Kerrigan looking even better with that AK. Blasts a double away. Yeah, he wants a Royal Arena victory. So close already. I wonder if you would have been happier to see Cloud9 or Vitality get into the finals because it's a, so impressive how good Cloud9 got. Equally as impressive how comfortable Vitality look all of a sudden. Well, Cloud9 certainly pushed FaZe the limit earlier this week. Yeah. But this playoff bracket, about as good as you could get. Not going to be easy for either team who wins today.
the moment. You've got all five cylinders of phase firing off. You've got every single player up in the kills. Complexity seemingly just can't buy a round win since that pistol. Oh, oh man, nice. they're going to blow that smoke open. A JT was crouched yep. off the staircase. And I was going to say, Rain has been doing that since day one of Anubis, and he is still one of the oh. best at it. Look at that peak. That was for y'all. Oh. He did that for y'all. And that just pushes Halzer down deeper into the depths of depression. Zero and nine. Oh, oh. because Kerrigan's wide swinging mid window phase are up nine one. Five players alive. Yo, when does North America show up? Yeah, when do we play? I did tell them to uh, hang out at mid for a frag. Mm. It's just Kerrigan coming. It's just Kerrigan <laughs> No problem. We, we get that kill 5v4, no. But um, this is a, a failure on all fronts, right? The, the transmission's dropped. They need an oil change, new tires, everything. Their side anchor's going down. They can't hold mid in the default. When you can't put it down to one thing, you can't even say they got lucky, what do you say? No, you can't find a single portion of the map that's getting abused. You can't find one player who's just dropping the ball that much more than the others. Uh, Elise did a tierless video and put Anubis as the only map in S tier right now. Well, how do you go from loving a map to hating it in one, one tournament? Yeah. Something is not clicking right now for complexity on Anubis. I know Phaser doing all the clicking. Yeah. Kerrigan, one bullet to the head of Halzerk. It's oh, gonna be a nasty replay. Crazy, because you see the zoning, right? The wow. molly, the molly for the fallback, plus the nade shows you. You can't even stand in front of the smoke. JT's thinking, I've got to try to hold on to something. And then they lose in dark, they lose in mid. Floppy gets split on again over on the A site. Oof. Oh, Sit wow. down. And that's just more of the same of what was failing in their previous matches. Yeah. Go Elise trying to go for bridge sometimes, dying with nothing. This case, again, A site, but I suppose he's just trying to puff his chest a little so that FaZe maybe wouldn't run into sight, seeing as he was the only player there. Everybody else stacking on the other side of the map, and they're now going to find it completely empty. This is FaZe with a near flawless half. It's this could have been a 13 0. It is flawless. They lost a pistol round, they didn't even lose a single rifle round this half. I mean, isn't that worse than just losing 13-0? It is. Getting pistol and then not a single round after? It is. For the people that were here, it is. Yeah. You know, when we zoom out, it won't count as the 13-0, but if you were, if you were, where were you when, when this happened, when the 13-1 happened? You know, complexity kind of getting a taste of uh, their own medicine, right? Yeah, and it's Buckley's. Mm. 13 rounds in a row, we call that the Astralis. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're in the top right corner. You know where to find us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halls are going to try to hold on to the big green. There's his first three kills of the map. And they net them nothing. Welcome to the board. Get this man a damn keystone. Without overpass. It's more of a play-by-play -play game. Yeah. Yeah. This murder is easy to describe. Non-stop wins mm. since round two. Mm -mm -mm. Love me a little face clan. Kerrigan, why would he slow down? He's unstoppable. <laughs> um, finally. He just needed your blessing, Connor. Right? How long <laughs> since a 5v4 to the favor of complexity? And even last time that they did get the 5v4 yeah. on bridge. But he, he bought, he purchased the chance to try that peak again, yeah. right? You don't, you don't do that round four, but... He earned it. Yeah, he earned it. 10-1 lead. Go swinging, brother. Okay. Wow. Triple glizzy. So, they haven't made a decision yet. And this is what looks like a good setup now. I mean, it's 5v4, plus they've got some more map control, but... Yeah, but... Oh, the flash through. Foppy handles it, no problem. Flash is a weird bounce, doesn't go that deep. And now Shirley. Rifle round victory for complexity. You say that. Not if Rain has anything to say about it. Grim JT to the right. Ooh, Elige down after the one, but the back plat player will catch him off guard. 
and it's gonna have to be twists to 1v3 versus his own. Finds the bat plaque contact, but it's the deagle up close. So one round to start the half, one round to close it, but this one comes up all phase. Hey, I'm Kerrigan, and welcome to Kerrigan's tier list. So we are doing a tier list about maps. Damn, Nuke, Air's Tire. Yeah, I like it. I think it's uh, up and down sounds. A lot about communication and, and rotation. So I think it's very challenging on both sides. Vertigo, I still think it's like a C tire map. Pretty fun to play on CT side. Short rotations, you always stand time. Um, but on T side, I feel like I can't do so many cool things. Uh, a lot of spray through smokes. That's great. Then uh, we have Anubis A time map. This is the first map where Valve really hit the nail um, in the beginning. You haven't seen big updates. Inferno has always been an S time map for me, but with the new update in CS2, I still need to have the feeling of the map. It's still um, very strange and it's gonna be bumped up to ST if the small updates uh, are coming. I think Mirage B tire. I'll put it as an S tire. I love the map as a player, but um, as a caller and a leader, I think it's a harder map to play. Then Ancient. For me, that's an A time map as well. For it to be S tire, I think they should remove those shadows on A. I think it destroys a lot of tactics. Overpass, I'll put that on a B. It's very hard on T side and Overpass, so yeah. For sure, Counter Strike 1.6, S tire, banging game, the game I grew up with. Source, that's a D tire. Trying to make the game better. Her complex source, no chance. Condition zero. You know, I'll bomb a C tire just because it's better than Source. Everything else is better than Source. We have a Counter Strike 2. I'll put that on a B tire. And then I'll put CSGO on an A tire. CSGO was a D tire when it started out. It got really good with updates, uh, went to an A tire. And I know CS2 is gonna be an a, a tire at some point. If we're gonna touch Counter Strike, no chance. This is the tire maker for the team C at Blast. Face Clan, S tire, 15 win streak. I think for sure we are making a statement the last few tournaments. Oh, this is hard. A lot of new teams here. I think complexity deserves an A tire for the result in Sydney. They haven't been good online, but the team that surprised me a, a lot uh, in uh, one of the online tournaments was Cloud9. So I'll put them on a B tire. Then we have Vitality, they have a new player, but I still think they have so much quality in the lineup. Let's put them on an A tire together with uh, complexity. Then we have um, a lot of question marks. I uh, think I'll put uh, Navi on a B tire together with Cloud9. They can fight each other. Whoever wins uh, that game will stay B and the rest of uh, the guy losing going to C. Astralis, uh, I'll put them on a C tire. I think they will come back at some point. Uh, Heroic here with a stand in as well. And then NIP with a new IGL. I will put them on a C tire as well. So we have this um, Face Clan. Let's keep that. Remember that we have to step up here. Complexity, Vitality A tire, Cloud9 Navi B tire, and uh, the rest of the guys at the C tire. Hope you enjoyed this because I did. First round is to be on guard. Back in action with Phase versus Complexity Map 1, but that half a little flat if you're complexity. Two rounds. We said they needed to win a pistol. We said yeah, they had to I, improve in pistols. Well, I, I saw a stat that was like, that. you win you both pistols, you got a 77% chance of winning the map, so. Well, this might be an anomaly. Okay. Yeah, well, we've seen a complexity come back. We've seen enough phase victories, okay? But one thing we're all cheering for is a day of good CS2. Isn't that right, everybody? So let's hope for a good match. Complexity, they beat their demons, they got a pistol. But after that, only a single other round. Now over to T-side, and we know that they could fry on T-side, but now they need the pistol to even get a chance to show us. Yeah. <laughs> CT-side on overpass, excellent. T-side on Anubis, excellent. But talk about giving yourselves the most difficult road to victory. Over and over and over, these CT sides are struggling. The stack. Yeah, it's a stellar defense in position, and this could just be the mow down of complexity. We get two kills back from Cole. Peek off long as well to flush one off, and Kerrigan, well... Ooh, looking ooh. for the headshot that he just can't find. So ooh. suddenly, we got two up for Cole. We got a bomb plant, and we've got Brokey trying to clutch with only four HP. Yeah, good luck with that. But two guns. Two guns, at least one for each. That's what I'm saying. And Grim has only got one head. 
Walk up to this. John Wick, that bad boy. Boom. Left, right. Can he flick them both? The fact that Elise no. is low. Oh! You bet your ass he can! 4 HP, 3 on the round, and complexity left in shambles. It's uncanny with Brokey. Every time you expect it, you get a little more. And the way he just slithered back towards Cave, waiting, playing it at his pace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kerrigan loves his teammates. Yeah, and there's always been that mutual respect and adoration between him and his teammates. You know, twist on Twitter publicly after matches, bad tournaments in the past. They believe in him. Oh, you know Kerrigan's somebody who puts a lot of blame on himself, right? FaZe's failures feel like his to him. Oh, twists! Not like this. Auto shot into the forehead. Hulzerk's gonna bring it back with a double. Oh. And Grim will catch an entry on the A site carrying bomb that's just gonna guarantee a plant. My god. FaZe. Complexity just one pistol and nothing after that. JT will find the mid push, so it looks like the four spies in round two of the T side work out for both teams. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about a taste of the old medicine, you know. So now the spoon is in the other mouth. Mm. Rain walks away with the M4, so interesting turn of events. Complexity playing is in the hardest mode possible. Lose second pistol, win the force. That's a free M4 for JT and for Grim. I always call this the uh, RTSR setup. Okay, RTSR. From, yeah, from Dark Souls for speed runs, okay? You get, you get down to low HP. You looked at me like I'm a nerd. You literally named your fantasy series after Lord of the Rings here, okay? You get down to low HP and that gives you a buff. Okay. Okay. And the complexity love the RTSR setup, okay? It's always risky. Mm. But when it pays off, people talk about you. Yeah, I love standing on death's doorstep. Yeah. So does JT. There's a psycho in there. Whoop. Never feel alive until you're losing 3 to 11. <laughs> Can't believe it was by choice. Was that shotgun solo setup last round, right? And off of Twist's first kill, he's thinking, I could take a peek. The fact that the boost was behind the one peek. And we get that flash flood of complexity down through middle. phase. they lose that round before they even really realize. Complexity just pouncing on the moment. Right now, JT's been given a lot of real estate towards long. A little jump peek out of Twist to confirm some presence. Rops his deagle a little off the mark. And Floppy's here. Also to aid with getting that bomb into the A site. Hey, so there's a clean and correct timing right there. Nice and easy for complexity. Yeah, for and it's once. the same formula to mirror phase here with the default that's slow until a point. They get enough contact for the CTs. If you are out of CT options on a map, like if that's the meta, it's always going to benefit you to wait a little bit on T side. Uh, because once the nades are gone, there's no smoke for aggressive oh. control. Oh, okay. There's no smokes for aggressive control, like... There's no way around that. No matter what kind of how good you are as a team, your cover is disappearing. So you're going to fall back. You're going to try to rotate. You're going to look for something else. And it's in complexity's best interest, I think, to try that because the way FaZe did it looked pretty uncounterable. Would love to know if actually FaZe have some CT aggressive maneuvers that they can pull out to shock us right now. But don't be surprised if this game gets close. Quickest tech pause of the century. Shout out to Blast Production admins. Well done. You know, I'm still left here scratching my head sometimes when I see JT hit the level that he has as of late. Yeah, I think the heads, their heads got bigger on JT's monitor mm. in CS2. It's the Elyse effect. The pressure to perform because you have a player like Elyse now. 
Pistols behind the window smoke. Speaking of a liege, good for a mow down. Him and Grim gonna combine for the bridge control. All is good as complexity yeah. take a fifth. This one, nothing really to talk about. No, except them not dying. So, again, in terms of figuring out all the elements required to perform a comeback, losing one player on a round like this is a very good sign. They can even sustain into a 12th round. It's not gonna be two rounds in a row now for FaZe already. JT with the big bank account. Ops in play here from both sides. And another cameo from Twist, who actually was a fantastic opera on yep. Anubis. It's always a treat when Twist pulls out the big green. Hall Circle misses chance to Man. win the off. That was a big chance because that flash was bunk and Twist trusted it. At least confirms the op presence towards middle. Oh, oh, JT. A stroke of Lady Luck. That and it was zoning. I mean, that's what Rain was doing to him. Mm -hmm. Behind that smoke inside of Dark. And that's a tough guy to play against. Just doing everything here on his own as well, right? Still a couple players towards bridge, but JT was just sat there doing his own thing. Okay, now remember Floppy? Now we got Rops. We just saw the JT Rain duel inside of Dark. We see maybe now it's going to be Rops. And the flop. They know he's there. He's tagged. Oh, oh. oh. FaZe trying to hold on to long A, and instead Halser can floppy with a kill apiece, tear through. It's that RTSR, baby. Round by round. Their demonic presence grows. See the confidence in their swings, their aim? Gets a level up. And yeah, where's that confidence coming from? Because you just got bullied in the first half. It's just knowing that the fights are in your favor on the map right now. That's, that's essentially it. Now, Props is not going to spend a whole half uh, dying on CT anchoring. But that is still a very good attack at this point in the game. Another round where they keep four alive. And they're getting to the point where they, they wish they was a 5-10 score line just because of the amount of money they had. They could sure. sustain to two rounds, three rounds now. So the money is sort of a non-factor at this point, right? FaZe have enough rounds. That really has they been just, the story of complexity all week. They just, just need that magic. You know what they need? They need a gimmick. They don't even need mm. a super sustainable default on CT side. What they need is two gimmicks. And you know with Kerrigan's calling and with the talent across the phase yeah. roster, those gimmicks will start coming. Yes. If they feel the pressure is inbound, remember, we're talking about the Clutch Kings. G gimmick has a negative connotation, but in, in CS, at this level especially, gimmicks are just as important as being good at a default. If you want to stand out versus a team that's almost as good as you, yep. If a 5v4 gets you the round 80% of the time, and one gimmick gets you one kill, one gimmick maybe gets you one round. Phase are two rounds away from winning this whole game. So Complexity still have to stay sharp. And we'll see what kittens, what is in Kerrigan's bag of tricks. There's no doubt in my mind that thus far FaZe have felt free range, no pressure. But as that score continues to get racked up to the favor of complexity, you put them against the ropes and FaZe are going to pull off something crazy. And the beauty of MR12 is you never know when it's coming. Yeah. You can't have a single lapse in focus if you are complexity and you truly believe you have a chance at this comeback again. But Ooh. a smoke towards long makes it awkward for the opera. The riflers still penetrate through. And then another CT smoke, but There's, the T's have been pretty quiet about this. This might be hard to read. They're seeing expensive utility coming down. Can they read into the economy? JT seems like he's got the right idea. He's got the better gun. Ooh, and he gets there with the second as well, so the A site crumbles. I think that was all JT's confidence. I think they would have canceled running through that smoke if he didn't co continue through. Like he was the did. second guy in. Yes, sure. exactly. But if JT goes in, they will follow. Yeah, lead by example. And, and uh, yeah, and the, another point of praise for Complexity recently has been the fact that, like, in the games where they're on death's doorstep, where they're one or two rounds away from losing, they still take the same risks. They don't play as if that score exists at the top of the screen. I'll be damned. Suddenly this game is within four rounds of being tied up, just shy of that coveted 12th. And Complexity have been doing a good job of clearing out these weapons as well, forcing the economy of FaZe really into the dumps, and yet again they'll do that. Mm -hmm. Four up for Cole, nothing survives for FaZe, but we've got guns inbound, and this is maybe where that risk of a gimmick... And Elish wears his emotions on his sleeve, and whenever I look at the cams, 
in rounds like after a round like this, you can see when he starts to get more locked in. Mm -hmm. Like on a comeback, whatever it is. Your shoulders drop a little bit after the first half when it's not looking too good. You can see when he's already thinking about what to do next. JT cracks his smile. It's little details like that one that make the difference. We saw uh, Boomich actually made the difference for Cloud9 in a lot of rounds. Being yes, the IGL that was willing to be a little risky. Double up this time. Oh! Bad time switch no, and that's no a... quick scope plus instant B hit. Oh. Three kills for complexity. Oh. Make it a fourth. But look at the health. Look how close FaZe just were to shutting down that push. No. Ooh, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, seriously, the, the tempo, where did that come from? It's been 40 seconds of chilling before attacking anything. JT's playing cerebral. That's a, that's a gear switch. Yeah, that's a gear switch at the right time, and Brokey got caught off guard. Now, when Brokey changes, it could be because he hears something bounce, right? It could be because a flash goes over top of him. He doesn't know there's somebody right around the corner that he could have held on to for an extra second. That can be a matter of timing. can also be because they just put pressure on Dark. Brokey's out in the open. He has to now worry about it. He's not ready for a split that fast, and we haven't seen that yet for complexity. Twist looking to hang on to the big green. For once, they're able to move a weapon into the next one. And we've been waiting kind of for the, you know, the phase change of pace. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's complexity that actually get ahead of it. And this is, again, to go back to that pre-match interview. Elite said, we've just got to be steps ahead of FaZe. We know what they do. We know where they'll be. We just need to stay ahead of no, them. He's, he was wrong. He said they had to get lucky in the beginning. Oh, well. They got extremely unlucky, and they're still going to win. Oh, okay. <laughs> just unluck, huh? Well, there's a half buy around this AWP. Let's see if Twists can be the difference maker. The best equipped player in round 20 for FaZe. In a game that felt like this was dead in the water. Keep your eyes peeled, though. This is a round where Twist still has that op. Mm -hmm. And again, he got multi-kills in games with that op. Now, he's not Anubis. where all of complexity are. They're about to run back the same split. It's majority phase, but it's the lesser weapons. Kerrigan's pistol finds the one. The dark player is inside of the smoke, but JT's not letting his guard down. He's not going to let Rain get away with this one. Yeah. He's on high alert. Elise tries to bait Rain's reaction. There you are, but still, <laughs> Rain catches the headshot. Uh. Second nade will finish off the job. And we've got still two players surviving, but with the weapons that they came into the round with, you know this is still valuable. If this one goes down for free, you justify the retake attempt. But with no kit, and of course complexity, just don't give away a kill. This yeah. is, you win if you just turn off your monitor and do not touch your keyboard. Yeah, and that, that op as well is incentive not only you know, to think about trying it, but also to save, right? Here, FaZe can take this into the next one. Yeah, it gets a little closer. But they weren't anticipating winning this round in the first place, and that is two kills. You, you said it. They could have taken their hands off the keyboard. Right, Grim will now walk away from this. Two up for FaZe. Money doesn't matter, though, for complexity. That's the least of their problems. It's now FaZe, who are close to the stove. So we had a, some great rounds, good anti-ecos, and a little bit of luck sprinkled in. You can't chalk it up to luck, though. When we see FaZe win their games, there was so much X-Factor. Yes. When I rewatched all of the Sydney demos to see what happened in that match, if I chalked it up to one thing, it was X-Factor for FaZe. The craziest rounds are the rounds they win. The reason why Counter-Strike's better when FaZe is good is because of the X-Factor. They had so much, and that's the one area in which Complexity couldn't keep up, right? They don't have the same level of individuals. They have the team, they have the entity strat, they've got a liege to help out with individual level, but they can't match up one for one. No, it, you know, when that X Factor is spread across all five members of FaZe, it's almost like Complexity have jammed it all into a liege and hope that's enough. He's that, leaps and bounds above the rest of his teammates here yeah. in Copenhagen. That on top of the fact that they have the world's best IGL right now, the fact that they have so much experience together. They are now within touching distance of FaZe and their 11 rounds. Guns back up for the defense. That win versus Astralis. That comeback. Yep. Sorry to bring it up, guys, but that is what you need to get the confidence to pick up games like this, what they didn't have at Sydney. 
A recent reminder that you can make these magical moments happen. JT, wow, dangerous decision. Whoa. Goes just pile driving through that B site. Yeah, he does see three, however, and now the split comes in. It's only heaven for the defense, but Brokey holds it perfectly. Rops' AK is going to find his. It's a 2v5 response between Halzerk and Floppy, but they pulled off one of the most miraculous TV 2v5s just yesterday. Halzerk will put up the double. Floppy is Complexity's clutcher. And he will prioritize plant, but the pressure is very quickly right up above him. And no! oh, he turns it up. He peaks long oh. and he's not going to get that second. Woo! It's taken a while, but FaZe will break through this cold comeback. Don't give Floppy a chance like that ever again. But now they get it. Map point, finally. And I'm not sure what possessed JT to try to pull off a play like this. Maybe there was a flash coming to the back of site. Normally on their entries on this side of the map, it's Grim who swings out left first and will try to kill the guy who's on the back of default. But this time it's JT on the fake running through, hoping maybe to go one for one, get traded and get info. Sure. Here he gets the info at the very least, and it's three, but you have a good enough hold from the players on the A side. That's yeah. what's really relevant. In hindsight, one kill from JT. We see how close that could have made it for Floppy. Yeah, that's true. It seems insane, but... But still, that's uh, a good pickup from FaZe. And uh, as mentioned, you know, we're not going to have Rops failing over and over again on the A side. He right. hasn't had... These last three games for Floppy have been really rough when it comes to anchoring on, on, on Anubis. Rops doesn't have that track record right now. We praise for complexity despite being down in so many maps to not playing like the losers. But with that 12th one on the board, suddenly the back of your mind. It's a hell of a burden to make these comebacks so frequently. And especially versus FaZe, who just never seem to lose. 17 match wins in a row at the moment. Oh, that's... But he doesn't shoot. Yeah, and he, and he doesn't die either. And again, Elise has been given a lot of space towards middle. He wins the Ooh. duel. That's going to be pressure on the bomb site. We've got Brokey's position revealed and ready for the camera peek. They don't know about the next one. And so Rops will catch him off guard. And he still has great cover. But Elise doesn't want to come around that He's corner. Locked off. Very fast flank coming through. How do they breach this? Kerrigan, if he bests Grim, that could have been massive. 30 seconds and the site player's fallen. Brokey's still yet to get a chance at a second. And he's just waiting. He knows eventually that bomb's gonna come out. Elise has been waiting Ooh. towards middle, controls the spray, and then Brokey jumps down. He's in the sight! No! And he hits the quick scope up close! No second chance! And so complexity with another one move ever closer to OT. Oh, another insane moment, and it goes down on the A site, but again, floppy T side. Rops comes up with one. And actually, the thing about the setup right now that looks so good from face is the op is always there ready to support Rops when the split comes in. There's a lock off. When we saw complexity CT side, it was floppy alone most of the time when it came down to these moments. Now, it's also because they got killed before the attack came on, but it's just as impressive that complexity take this round as it is that they have the op behind the anchor player in the A site ready to defend. So there's still work to do here for complexity. One round to close this out for FaZe and a timeout to give themselves some better odds. That was a great round from Elise. The sprays that he put down right there. I can't believe how long he waited in camera. Yeah. Brokey was staring and waiting and waiting and never did Elise Never take gave that it fight. to him. And then even when Elise does get peeked from Temple, he's not no longer sitting in camera, but further back by Bridge. Elise just a thorn in the side of FaZe. And not getting antsy, not overextending it. That, that's a testament to the experience, 100%. And again, with the pressure mounting in this semifinals, with the comeback well and truly underway, we get clashes from Long, and Grimm's going to pick up the opening. Now, he is pinned into the right side, and we get the response. FaZe aren't going to play passive. No, sir! That a site setup gets aggressive. And oh, no, Rops is about to find Bomb. He wastes no time. 
And this deep position, oh man, this could catch them off. But Lee's not ready. Rops has decided enough is enough. And suddenly, complexity surrounded. There it is, the quick reaction on the other side of the map. It looks like it's one play versus one play. A push over towards the B site, a find for complexity, but instantly, FaZe call out the weak side. Oh, twists. Taken down to 33 health, but just staying alive is gonna keep this pressure on complexity. They feel like caged animals. And they're being left some room to roam. But they're now running out of time. It's actually in the CT interest to peel slowly backwards. Oh. They can even set up a flank if they'd like to. The T's have to move forward knowing they're being followed. They're so aware of every single move Complexity think they can make. Grim will try to respond, but that's it! No comeback! No map one for Complexity! It's phased to push it over the line. We knew that T side had legs. We knew Complexity could take it a little closer. But the struggles in the first half come back to haunt the North Americans again. And with Nuke waiting in the wings, FaZe will gun for Grand Finals. FaZe had to get creative and think outside the box to put an end to what was an incredible comeback from Complexity. Such quality in the calling from JT, but we gotta pull it back to the first half and we gotta see the seed of regret for a slow start in Complexity. Yeah, that was a fantastic start coming out of FaZe Clan. Obviously losing the pistol round, that's one thing, but when you instantly answer back in round number two, winning that force by, you're gonna do yourself a favor. You see the round distribution right here. FaZe went on to dominate that first half all over the place. It all started from round two, where they were able to win this force by situation. Without that one, that first half could have been different, but oh my, did FaZe play well. And once again, it's Brokey with not being afraid of looking for kills. We're looking back again at this force by from FaZe. It starts off well. Grim finds the kill. The trades are going their way. Still a 4v3, but then that 2v2 it twos, and then Brokey in the 1v2, Jacob. He does what Brokey does. He does what Brokey does. Always finding the right moment to strike. Well done by Brokey. Isaac the duel one by one by one, pulling out the tech nine, and of course, Brokey is gonna win in a situation like this. Whenever he's in a close combat situation, he exceals. That's when he thrives the most. And Matthew, he did it again. From one pistol clutch to another. This time, actually, it's round 13, of course. And Brokey once again is gonna put an end to what was an admirable fight from complexity as well. You see the trades. Carrigan is in a not comfortable position, and with exactly four HP, the movements from Brokey make a difference with the dual elite. And this is something that you have to respect when it comes to Brokey and clutching. He's not afraid to move. He moves more and faster than most players out there. He's not afraid of noise. He's not afraid of you knowing where he is. He is going to run at you. He's a close combat player. We say it time and time again when we describe his AWP abilities. Not necessarily the guy with the best moves, not necessarily the guy who's the most clean, but he's always in these close combat situations and he's always doing it so, so well. Now, Jacob, I'm gonna ask you, out of all the flavors you could have in the ice creams, where do we look at for this first half? Do we start maybe with a little bit of twist? Yeah, we can go a, a bit of twist, you know. Hearts on, you know, killing it in the first half right here. Again, assertive with the rifle. We spoke about twist coming into the game saying this could be the last time we ever see him in a face jersey. Well, face is doing everything he can to make sure that we get to see him one more time tomorrow at the very least. Again, his abilities with the rifle, his ability to find impact, his ability to win duels. He's not necessarily, not necessarily supposed to win, sorry. He can do that over and over again. And he did it in this game. And we're going to give some praises to Kerrigan as well hmm. in terms of momentum. He's a player who's whenever FaZe have the wind in their sails, he's not going to stop. He's not afraid to get in there. We'll see most of these situations. That's a great example right there. Round three, he's up there with the MAC-10. He crossed the smoke. This is the most Kerrigan-esque already moments that I could possibly find out. When you see the way Kerrigan is playing in some of these highlights, you know that your opponent is in for a tough time. Normally, he would be shut down, but when he's destroying Holzerg like that, you're in for a tough one. Kerrigan had a great first half, but he did slow down. Now, let's take a minute to appreciate the comeback that Complex yes. put together. And once more, JT coming up with not only great calling, because I I want the message to be put out there. The decisions that Complexity made strategically were spot on, but also in terms of fragging. JT is somewhat possessed when it comes to this T-side. You look at his stats from CT to T-side, it's night and day. 
But on the T side, JT, he puts on the work. He's doing fantastically well. As an individual, he's not normally known to put up a lot of numbers on the server, but he's done that so far, not only this tournament, but also in Sydney. JT seems like he's coming in with a new energy. And as you said, the T side, he's calling for complexity. The pacing, the ability to go in fast, the ability to drag out the game, the ability to make your opponents feel uncomfortable. He did that to the best team in the world right now in face that really had to fight to get this victory. I agree with you. Scrawny and others had a phrase that I found to be so true about JT is that, that no matter the scoreline, he's going to call as if he was winning. Yes. And that is a gold mine of an idea as an IGL because you cannot let the situation get to you. You have to still go to whatever should be the strategic answer. And he did that. And that's why FaZe actually had to sweat to close this game. They really had to sweat. It got close. It got very, very close. But let's be honest, it's still a FaZe victory. They still walk away being up 1-0 in this series. And it's going to require even more tenacity for complexity to fight their way back into this. We set the conditions quite clearly, Jacob. We said a slow start for complexity is not going to cut it. You cannot allow FaZe to go away and run away with the scoreline because they will close it and that's what happened in map one. We take a quick break and when we come back, we dive into map two because this semi-final is not over. Well, that cold start for Complexity truly cost them, and now the mountain only gets harder to summit as Nuke lays in wait. And I'm going to throw out some numbers to you, gentlemen, because uh, we see FaZe playing this map 13 times on CS2. 11 times they have won it. What makes FaZe such a dangerous team on this particular ground? Uh, I, I will choose my word very carefully, but I do believe they have the most complete 
T side that we currently have in the entire game of Counter Strike okay. on the offense. I think if you are a captain who's preparing against FaZe, the anti strategy is probably like a book of 300 pages of what could be coming your way. Because FaZe, I think, are very hard to read. I don't think they have that many tell. And I think the rhythm that they can play with and the decisions they make makes it very hard to know, to be a step ahead the way Elise said in an interview they wanted to be. I'll take your T-side and I'll race it with a CT side in world class as well. You're looking at every single position and it makes sense. Rob's arguably the best to play the ramp position. He likes to be aggressive, he likes to take away space. People fear going ramp when you're playing against face clan. Rain outside on Yard, we know him to be one of the best players out there for many, many years. Broke flying around all over the map as he always does. And if you supposedly weak link is twist inside, then you're pretty well off on a CT side. So as we spoke about, a well-rounded team. You talk about Rob's and the freedom and the liberties he took on ramp. You have to call the bluff if you're a complexity. You absolutely have to call the bluff. Because you're absolutely right. People are afraid of Rob's. He's a very scary prospect to go up against. And he knows it. If he stops you one round or two, the next round he's just gonna smoke it and get the head out of here. He's gonna play under heaven. He's gonna play above heaven. He's gonna play lower secret because he knows ain't no way in hell nobody is coming ramp anymore. And you have to call that bluff. Let's start off by dissecting, you know, Complexity C2 side, because that's where they're going to be starting on, and so they're going to have to deal with the Phase 2 side from the word go, Jacob. And uh, I'm a little bit scared for them because Machu aptly put it. Um, Phase and Carrigan, for that matter, aren't scared to call a fast pace change, aren't scared to, you know, be trying to catch you off guard in terms of your CT set. No, that's the thing. I think the playbook of Phase Clan is very deep. They can go a lot of different routes, do a lot of different pacing as well on that T side. Something complexity would need to stop it is obviously being able to stop the fast pace. That's step number one. I think that's going to be thrown out from Kerrigan quite early in the game. Second one is going to be the yard control. If Face Clan is allowed to walk down secret round after round after round without complexity fighting for it or stopping it, then that's going to be an issue. However, we have seen complexity play a bit of nuke so far, and mm -hmm. JT likes to be in that secret position. So if you're watching out for this game in particular, watch out for JT. He loves to lurk around the secret position. He likes to work it. And if he can put a stop to Face Clan, then that's a step in the right direction. I like that you mentioned JT and I like that you mentioned Secret because if I'm in charge of Complexity, which definitely I'm not, but it's <laughs> played that game for half a second, I wish for them to take the fight before FaZe make it into Secret. Mm. Before FaZe get into that position where you start to have to play the mind games. How many players have gone down? Is it one? Is it three? When do I have to use my util? Hell no, you have skilled players. Fight them. Try to get them on silo when they're fighting you. Try to get them on the cross towards red box. If you allow them to take that map control, the way they will play with you is going to make you lose your mind and this is where they have to survive. I'm going to be captain obvious here but Complexity obviously can't have a sleepy start as they did on Anubis so what are you going to be looking for in particular Jacob to make sure that Complexity is starting off hot any players that you think hey they need to be starting the momentum from the beginning. Uh, I hate you said it for right because I have to put him on the loop. Halsirk has not had a great playoff here in yeah. Copenhagen I know. so far. He was struggling massively in the quarterfinal apart from a couple of clutches where he found impact. He was struggling massively in the beginning out of Anubis as well. Even though he started to shine a little bit, he found some kills, he was involved in zero opening duels as the AWP for complexity. Not good enough. He needs to have a presence on Nuke if they want to stand a chance of winning. I'm sorry to do it to you, Holtzrick, but you got to step up. Yeah, listen, I, I was going to try and save him, but actually, no, screw that. You're yeah. right. I don't. It's really hard to save him. I do know financially this was a hard CT side to go through, and of course that means less AWP sure. should put in your hand, but the matter of the fact is, even when he had it, the impact really wasn't felt. So there's not much I can give you in terms of, hey, he should play better. Yeah, thank you very much. I guess everybody can agree on that. And it sounds like on the flip side, FaZe have quite a lot of win conditions that you can be picking from, Machu. So if anything's kind of standing out to you, maybe from, you know, the last time, it obviously faced complexity back at IM Sydney in that grand final. It, it wasn't, you know, the easiest affair. No. It did end 13 to 10, but was there anything that, you know, you think is going to be instrumental today for FaZe to be taking this into and making it to yet another grand final? Well, you know what? As much as I appreciate watching, watching him play Counter-Strike, because I think it's a thing of beauty, I still think Rain takes too much liberty. And okay. I think sometimes the duels okay. that Rain take and the space that he takes <laughs> outside, specifically on the CT side, like kids, if you're watching Counter-Strike, like, this is not what you're supposed to do. There are, uh, there are rules that are supposed to be applied on when you fight, when you play safe. Rain does not care about it. Like Rain is going to swing in a 5v4, swing in a 4v3. If he thinks he's got the upper hand on you, you're down. So if you're a complexity, you have to have your crosshair ready outside yard because Rain is about to fight you even in moments 
when he's not supposed to. Rain will fight you, but there'll be an answer on the side of complexity, and that's gonna be Elise. He's the same dude doing the Gotta exact be. same thing on the T side for complexity. We saw that in the quarterfinal as well. Elise loves to go top silo. He loves to go yard. He loves to fight. So if he can win that duel against Rain, that's gonna be a lot of space opening up for complexity, and that could cause trouble for face. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Uh, once again, just like on Anubis, as far as I'm concerned, okay. it's going to be a question of the defense of complexity. Yes. And this is where the entire fate of this semi-final is going to land. Because on the T side, they have proven to us on so many different occasions, many different maps, that there is here a real profound quality of play. 100%. Even here on Anubis, that's a great comeback they put through. But you got to give yourself enough to breathe. You got to have that margin. And this is where sometimes they struggle because of individuals, because of Halsek maybe missing out a little bit. Maybe they get a little bit sleepy, not proactive enough. Where is that spirit that they put forth on the T side where you see them being outside, proactive in the game? Maybe have a little bit of that on your CT Yeah, side. imagine that they were able to put, you know, maybe one or two more CT rounds together yeah. on the back of Anubis. We would be in a completely different game right now. And I, I do want to put Floppy under the microscope. Because sure. he was a person that, you know, we were standing right on the tip of that stage and saying, hey, it's all well and good if you have a liege popping off. We need Floppy to be there consistently. So typically when we're looking at Nuke, where would you expect his impact to be? Well, late in the round, first and foremost, Floppy is not the most aggressive player on the server. He likes to clutch it out in a 3v3 or even in a 1v3, which he's done a couple of times in this tournament. He's a player that requires his teammates to put him into a situation where he can make the difference. If everyone around Floppy is falling too early in the round, there's only so much he can do. He's not necessarily the player going in and taking charts and dictating the round from the beginning, so the impact will come later stages, right? He's good inside on the CT side. I've seen that happening before. He likes to push hard, take away space, but he's always in the second wave, never as the first guy. And I think I think this is probably why, or it is one of the reasons why we haven't really spoken Floppy's name too, too much. Think about the quality of clutch that's coming out of phase. If Floppy is a man that's supposed to stand out in 1v2s and 1v3s and is giving us highlights in situations that he's turning around, FaZe is not exactly the client that you're going to do it up against. They know how to handle these situations. Very rarely do they completely throw away 3v1s or 2v1s or even 4v2s. So I think for Floppy, he's got his work cut out for him. It's a, it's a harder opponent to style in that department. I want to round out this conversation by, you know, talking a little bit about Twist, because obviously, you know, outside of the server, there's a poetic reason why we may be seeing him as his last tournament in the FaZe jersey. And uh, he's been delivering the motivation, obviously, second to none. What is he going to be delivering on this second map? I mean, we've seen twist highlights on Nuke throughout his entire phase career. We all remember what happened in Cologne when he was flying down Silo oh, and, and you know, doing that, the gate drop. There's so many memories attached to twist when it comes to Nuke. He's a player that can explode. One of the ways we've been describing him so far in this tournament is that he's sometimes going a bit quiet and all of a sudden he pops up with this multi-kill or the couple of rounds where he's going to make the difference. I expect the same here from twist. He's not a guy that's going to dominate from start to finish, but we will see him find him. Listen, this was a beautiful stint he had in phase and we wish him not all over the yet. very not best over wherever yet. this goes, wherever this goes that's okay. what i'm saying okay, okay just for the dramaty for the, for the romance i would like to see him go in absolute flames Let's go <laughs> out there have your best series have your best events get out there honestly you deserve it you've sold me much you know i love drama you know i love a bit of romance and you know i love a bit of nuke potentially the chance for phase to be taking it to the grand final in just two maps so let's get the second map underway ladies gentlemen Copenhageners, CS2 enjoyers, I hope you're ready for map two of our second semi-final of the night. Yeah, that's right. Complexity, I mean, we said they need pistols. We said complexity need clutch. Complexity need this, they need that. What they need now is the second map because what they need is a taste of revenge versus phase. That IEM Sydney Grand Finals was too much. Three years in a row, I've had the pleasure of being here on a Friday night. Royal Arena, let's get it on! Many a great series and on Nuke. It's been a solid map to watch in CS2. Fantastic alone in the fall final for Complexity and FaZe. There will be lots of mind games today. And you better believe some clutches oh. too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. More of that. Alish, two headshots like it's nothing. And we saw how pissed off he got yesterday when they tried to take Outer from him. Well, he posts up. A hell of a start. Pistols have been the bane of complex complexity's existence. Mm. And it doesn't look like this one's going to be a problem. Now, just don't get Anubis. Don't <laughs> lose the force buy in the follow-up, because this is a series where complexity at least are splitting pistol round wins. Yeah, yeah, that, that's looking really solid for Elise, of course. P2K Enjoyer, it's the... 
It's definitely the starting pistol of choice right now. Lee showing us why. That's an excellent hold outside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. buddy. That's like saying America's better than Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get it together? What? The... JT's auto shot. He makes an appearance real quick. Force works behind the smokes. Silently, they'll creep over, but... Um, we have two players in top 20. That's true. Right? There's that extra smoke. Mm. A little bit of damage. It elicits the vent drop to try to join up with a leash. Kerrigan, he gets that instant tech dine headshot. And look at this reward. An M4 and a bunch of space outer. Floppy toying with the thought of coming back. Kerrigan's really deep. Did his barrel get spotted? There's a chance Floppy saw his gun because he... it's an A1S. Ooh. And he seems super focused on that one. Still grim, two kills, twists, tech nine through main. They're serving up a problem. Oh. They're serving up a problem one indeed. On one. A liege and a ROPS. Complexity winning pistols, but seemingly can't convert. And a liege known to be the closer had a crazy start, but here comes the duel to decide. Oh. Phase, give it to them again! Oh, they gave him a handicap, only the Tech 9, because he loves the clutch so much and he hits that shot. Man, your pistol wins mean Jack. In the face of Phase, on the force, and it's Kerrigan who kicks it off. And, and Twist comes into Mini as well with the two kills on the Tech 9. Looking like a Canada call. This is. Oh, JT deleted. This is getting Anubis. Did have to bring it up. Tragically, history repeats. But while we were off broadcast, you did say to me, man, nuke is going to be good. Yeah, yeah. I, I b believe in, in uh, Complexity's nuke after that Vitality game. I think they showed a lot of strength, and uh, they made plenty of good adjustments. Even when they beat Na'Vi, they had to change their game up after getting countered. There was good anti-strat from Na'Vi, and they still developed and JT's calls were good. They were dynamic, and they weren't so rigid that they were just thinking about what worked in the past. That's what I thought was going to happen, thought they were going to get caught, and then they, they didn't. They stayed malleable on the fly, under pressure. I think that's what's, again, just speaking volumes about JT uh, as a caller at the moment. So, but, like, you got to sustain through rounds like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's just adding pressure to him. It's like, how many times are you going to give yourself the most difficult job possible? Cool, you make comebacks look hat possible. Yeah. How about just win rounds? Kerrigan, he's going to fall. This force spike does that back, could back be with one. three. Oh, they're doing it to phase as well. Man, if we get a fireworks show back and forth to kick off map two. Rops, that's two positions confirmed. Oh. Mag seven best twists. And now it's all Rops. He at least knows where they are, but he doesn't have the bomb and doesn't really have the time to just wait them out. Unfortunately, his hand is forced in complexity. They're not going to go down without a fight of their own as their own force busts through. Hey, they made some pretty good rotations there. They once did this, overcommitted lower, and then got avoided. That was, uh, that was, uh, who was it that took top side versus them? I think that was in the Navi game. But here, the full-on rotation works out well. You have been compromised. Phase have every right. They've got decon and control side. Yeah, why don't they hit lower? And yet, Complexity still stopped it. That's really impressive. Had him running through smokes like they were on the back foot. Uh, so Complexity steal one back. That's already a new situation for them. The great Force Wars of the Royal Arena. Tech Nines, Deagles. Bays aren't going to want this momentum to shift away, but... What a perfect opportunity for Complexity to get back what they had lost in round two. Now they got to be careful to give up Secret already. And now, oh, oh no, that's oh, Secret oh, oh. and that's Ramp. <laughs> Bro, sit that's down. That's Secret and that's Ramp at the same time. They can let Kerrigan work. They don't know if anybody's dropped fence at the moment. They've got to put the pieces together. But this is so scary. Holzerk heard him grab that gun, so just an extra tool for the job down towards B. Ooh, oh. the Liege can't handle it. The Tech 9 drives by, oh. and Rain gets another! Kerrigan no. to Adam! 
extra kill, and just like that, anything you can do, FaZe can, can do, do better. better. That's incredible. Three force by round wins back to back I, to back. I don't even remember seeing that many Tech Nine headshots at the fall final, like even recently. Like, oh. I knew Tech Nines were good, but like. That is. Uh, they didn't need that. They didn't need to deal with that. But that already got scary, man. Like, looking at them taking secret control on those regular cross smokes that I said people weren't even using anymore, that wasn't even, that wasn't even countered. They didn't blow those open. They're not worried about a full buy on the other side, on T side, taking outside. They just let Kerrigan run into secret, and then they had a single person inside of ramp. They know the pressure is more likely to go to ramp than almost any other part of the map after secret is taken. Is and yet, Floppy didn't have support again. Yeah. Is that them thinking vent control's enough? And for us, it looks like, oh, well, Floppy failed. But he did. But they had no failsafe. Right. And they had no secret. Why are you forfeiting so much map control to a team that doesn't even have utility? Also. And he's playing he's playing a rotator spot right here. Just in time to throw that Molly in. With no one else down low, you know. There needs to be more to help him there. Yeah, it's an undermined ramp hold. They should be doubled up in that situation ramp. Because let's say it was a full cross outside. Then they could have more people rotate down the ramp safely. What if someone came late through ramp as a lurker? They weren't ready for that option either. So when Alicia says keep the comms up, these are the situations. Hey guys, yeah. it's hard, okay? It's He's got it. I ain't laughing at anyone in CS2 trying to make this jump. Whew, we've all been there. You know, he's getting older, his knees are going. You'll understand one day. I relate more to him every day. Floppy looking for the secret peek. Ooh, nice trade. Rocky. Dude, I'm telling you, the Galil in CS2 is something nasty. Did he just read a double push out of secret? Just blast him with a nice clean burst, but the main peak and the deep one from Elyse is an answer. It's Wait. Even doubt. Is anyone going to win two rounds in a row? Okay. Yeah, Rops is looking to take it back, but Elyse won't go down without a fight. Halzerk again. Oh. There was barely any utility here for complexity, but at least enough money to come through with guns, and those guns have worked out wonderfully. But we've got Brokey in a clutch. And if I know Brokey, I know he can clutch. Yeah. So he puts down Bomb and look at all the space he has. They're going to show up, find a closed door, and be left wondering where the hell's he got off to. And what if he hits this shot? What if he blasts that head open? Oh, a oh. missed jump. Oh, a missed jump. And that costs him because the headshots look good. Mouse Will Gang. In shambles. In shambles once again. The question is... He actually set that up really well, too. Mm, yeah. Should you jump with spacebar only? Surely <laughs> that's the not, solution. This is not the time to bring that up. Okay. okay. Come for us when we're at our lowest. Maybe bind it on control. Mouse four. Look at that. Oh, he just... Oh, no, don't look at it, actually. Oh, what you doing? He meant to do it. I mean, jumping and shooting these days is normal. What could have been? And so, back and forth we go. No consecutive round wins yet out of either of these two teams. We're five rounds deep. And at the very least, both economies have kind of stabilized in this situation. Buys look decent. It's a wacky world where we end up even. Elyse, whoa, caught by Rain. He's not going to let you get up in his face. And Elyse's stats yesterday outside were horrifying for his opponents. Rain's found a second as Kerrigan squeezes out through main, and then the MP9 of Grim answers, but he's just kind of stuck out in the floor. This is not a comfortable spot for him. Oh, they're letting him go. Kerrigan gets a bit more damage, but then the support comes up. Wait, but yeah, it looks like Rain has to reload, and they're still working on the split, but it's growing more and more convoluted by the second, but in favor of the T's is still a four on two right now. Can the CTs get off this floor? I mean, yeah, now they're prisoners of their own home. It's Grim to get a push off of, oh, and Hoppy to get a kill, excuse me. Okay. That's a headshot and a half, but... Uh, Wait, so they're trading back again. Mm -hmm. Six rounds in a row, none consecutive. None consecutive. What does that and, mean? And how does that still work out for FaZe, right? They're the ones on T's side. They're happy to do this. It's because they're FaZe. The minute they win... It's because you can't kill them. No one has loss bonus. The minute they win, they're going to win two in a row. Complexity absolutely must win the counter force. 17 match wins in a row, Mohan.
If they win this one tonight versus Complexity, not only do they deny revenge versus Cole and make them look like chumps, but they are then the owners of the third longest win streak in CSGO slash CS2 history. Yeah, for series. You today could be witnessing history. And you've already seen so much mm. in the Royal Arena. Just one more record to be broken. <laughs> that leaves them. Oh, that's good. That's good. Cooper would agree. If Elise wins this match, going to start growing back. I promise. This, this, this counter force is actually key because yep. no loss bonus has been built up. Uh, you can't win one go. for one. You got to hope you end up pulling it back again if you're complexity. Yeah. And then finally win two in a row because if FaZe just keep dripping these round wins onto the scoreboard, yeah. you're not making your second half any easier for yourself. No, you can't be at 50% right now. They have to be locked in. And uh, yeah, JT's only got a 5-7, but they've got to figure out a way to do something interesting here. FaZe know the opportunity that's at hand. If they win this, they're flying in this half. Just the scout for Halzerk, not ideal. Doesn't like all that smoke, so he pulls real far back. We've got three good guns here for Complexity to work with, but still not better than a pretty fully kitted phase. We now have pretty significant control outside as well. Kerrigan gets deep. Rops has been just sat on this angle, hoping maybe somebody comes and peeks. Ooh, Ooh excuse me. That's from just heaven. from heaven? Pulser, he gave a glance. Now, Rain will know that he's got one locked in, and if you can keep a liege out of the equation, then maybe a site crumbles pretty free. Oh, Grim with one. Grim with two. Just playing off that backside. Oh. Grim with three. On his own, again, seven rounds straight, and it looks like nothing consecutive. How the hell does Grim rip three heads off? And they killed Floppy in the middle of all that. So maybe Floppy serves up a distraction and Grim just capitalizes. And we're talking about a Grim who, before Elise showed up, was being set up to be Complexity Star, right? Who, at the start of 2023, back at IM Katowice, there was genuinely a conversation starting to grow about who was in better form, him versus Elise. But then Elise shows up, Floppy gets better. He's his right-hand man, quite literally on the setup as well. And Grim's just kind of been operating in the shadows. Yeah. Well, now... Now could be his time. Yeah, we've been trying we, at that moment trying to point to a hero in complexity. What is what is happening? Why are they so successful? I think so much of it had to do with the team as a system and uh, how JT has brought a lot of good out of them. But somebody had to be getting the kills, and yeah, for a while there it was grim. Nice reposition. God, Look at that damn. elevation change you from gotta, rafters, top hut, and floor. Yeah, three different places within seconds. Mess with Grimm and get the scythe. And they actually do it off of that. That 3K could have a measurable impact. This entire series so far is basically the same formula that Navi had. Complexity falling victim to the same things between Anubis and Nuke. And once again, it's 5v4 to phase. 5v4 to phase. Props is on the same angle. And already oh, out we got noise being made. Oh my god, but whoa! Nice Rops split. reads it incorrectly, thinks he's back sight. Grim was looking towards Squeaky. There's no one there because that would normally be Rops anyway. It's a certain stringiness to phase at the moment. We've got a little outer play, a little ramp peak, some hut fights. It's, it's not quite collected as of yet. Yeah, that's another moment where you see Rops is autonomous. He thinks he... He has a clue. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he follow it? And he wasn't wrong. I mean, he caught Grim looking the wrong way, but it's a nice snapshot from Grim that shuts him down. Yeah, well, he thought he was still back sight. Uh, will they read this? Big pressure. Kerrigan makes a bunch of noise, just feeds the Desert Eagle in, hopes to get traded. Floppy trying to dodge it, but twists. Will put us back even 3v3. 30 Ooh. seconds and options open, but they know what sight they want. Elijah will they clock. expect it? He's got support now coming. Oh, Rain, what is that headshot? Time's up. Instant. But again, it's bomb plant needed and help for Grim demanded. Doors closed. He loses vision of the site. He loses control of this and he spams through door for one. But his bomb's planted on site. He knows Brokey's back towards ramp somewhere. Shrouded in the smoke though. Molotov won't do much. Oh, he maybe he was hoping that he got to Tetris back site. 
The odds of this retake are near non-existent. And with windows not broken, he has to announce his approach. In fact, door is still closed. Can't even cheat a timing here, walk out or anything. Nose twist, his backside still, but doesn't find a way that he can get into this battle. And we'll concede Grim, who got two kills in this round. All for naught. He's been playing for it really hard in these last couple, but they give that one back. It's actually really important that Grim saves this gun for complexity's sake. It gives them a chance to recover their economy, but they're just still mm. teetering right now constantly mm. as FaZe apply the pressure. Have we still not got nope. any sequential rounds? Eight rounds. Eight rounds. Back and forth. I mean, I'm starting to wonder what this happened even in CSGO. Rain confused, but I think Elyse is the one that's got head trauma. That headshot, bottom ramp out of Rain. Yeah, man. That's, and that's the spot that's the hardest spot to get to on the B site that gives you the most value. That piece of cover you have back silo is excellent. You can fight on headshot angles versus right and left side ramp. You can defend against control side. You can, can defend against control window. So you're expecting to get two kills or more in that spot. You've got to jump up literally to get there. And it was just one piercing shot out of rain to just basically win the round off that kill. It's not as if Alish took the fight badly or anything like that. It was just an incredible kill. And uh, you got to take that on the chin because there's a bunch of spots that he could have been. Those are the rain entries that make phase. I feel like with all these force buys back and forth, this is a huge gap though. Full utility, all of phase. One grenade coming out of spawn for complexity. Surely this is the one that's too much. And if it happens nine rounds deep, that complexity have to go back to just vanilla pistols, this could be the, this could be the end of the CT half. Absolutely. Big moment. They seem wary of it, but Rain was waiting. Rain looks super cautious. Alish still alive. 40 health and dueling. Rain will take the headshot. And the ramp peak comes through oh. to the success of JT. The best team in NA. And floppy trades. No you way. You are kidding me. No way. Nine of these rounds back and forth. Okay, minute 10. Two T's up, got the guns they want. Some space as CT's peel back, but now they join forces. Main peak's big. Yeah, oh, this is in the one. open. Oh, Perfect but the angle. Train's back. One but it's an easy frag because Rain only had 24 health left. So now we go back to the clutch. And Maniac had an excellent point back at the pregame segment. If Floppy's supposed to be the guy who brings your clutch, but FaZe are the ones that are always winning these rounds. Oh. How can he truly stand up to this test? This is looking like a big play out of twist right now. He calls out a rotation. He stays in a position. Floppy is trying to go for the read. This is 50-50. This is psychology. Where do you think your opponent is going to go? You can try to play in between. You could stay up in your same position. Not necessarily a bad play to make but it looks like Twist has won the game of rock, paper, scissors. He doesn't draw vents. He doesn't go lower. And does Floppy have the time? Man, he's on full display, and the choice is where does Twist put that crosshair? Hut, main. It's going to come down to it, and it's going to come down to the crispness of the headshots. Floppy on the approach. Oh, Close oh. And it will indeed be Complexity back with another. And Nine rounds back and forth in a damn row. Yeah, and that's uh, Floppy taking a risk of going down heaven, walking all the way around a hut. That's why Twist was most of the time watching outside of Mini, thinking that Twist was, or sorry, thinking that Floppy was probably going to come in Mini late, if not heaven. Twist did put himself in a spot that he had to take a hard fight to get out of. If, unless it was up top in heaven. And Floppy's risk pays off. And you see the joy on the coach cam from TC. And, uh, yep. Round 10. No one's won two in a row. I can't believe my eyes. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I have never, I don't know if I've ever cast that. I don't know if we've ever seen it. And I don't know when it's going to end because I thought it was going to end every single round so far. The money is absolutely oh. abysmal for both these teams, and now we start out with a 5v4 for complexity. There we go. Enough of this. Enough of this force by back and forth. Grim decides. Lobby's mine. But... This has to be it, right? Backs to no! He brings it back with the deagle, but it's the fact that he...
already has no teammates. This would need to be the ace. If he gets that in the 4v4, then we're still talking. Oh. But finally, they put an end to this streak. It is nine in a row before finally Complexity can win two rounds two. consecutive. Two rounds in a row. Holy They've done hell. it. Come on, give it up for that, folks. Two rounds in a row. I actually don't know if I've ever seen this many rounds go back and forth. <laughs> and we're almost done the half now. And now that Complexity have finally done this, what does FaZe's money look like? Can they actually reap some benefits out of getting consecutive rounds? It looks like yes. The economic game of chicken has concluded, and it's FaZe with absolutely nothing. This entire half on a knife's edge. Jason Lake at home, pulling his hair out <laughs> every step of the way. Like, could Complexity play closer matches? How about you just win one for once? Yeah. But we are talking about a bomb that's managed to get down secret, and the CT rotations aren't really there yet. Floppy's the closest towards ramp. Ulzerk makes sure it's man advantage no matter what. Man, what's happening? They gave up the entire thing once again. Wait, this is versus nothing. The bomb's getting planted. The rotations are coming in now. Excuse me? But surely these guns are enough. Surely Grim and Floppy's kills here. I mean, unless Kerrigan's gonna pull off a miracle in front of the Royal Arena, Ooh. no, not gonna happen. Halzerk makes it fair, pulls out his own sidearm, and pops Kerrigan on the approach. So Reigns P250. It's Grim defusing for 10 seconds. There's a chance for another kill, but that was always gonna be it. The fact FaZe get a plant is crazy. That's yeah, that is crazy. Last round of the half and with a full-fledged buy. And I'd like to see, you know, this half play out more because that's been a problem. Like you can't they can't be giving up secret ramp, having one person at ramp when your other team has no utility to pressure you. That means you're losing to nothing. Giving up free map control, that's not a great sign, but for Complexity, they win the round, they won the economic game of ticket. This actually just stabilizes their CT side, and they can go and look at the demo later. All they can at least focus on now is the fact that they have a good lead, they got through the CT side, and while it was fun to watch, I'm sure it wasn't fun to play. No, I'm sure it wasn't. So, yeah. All right, last round of this first half. Three state straight for Complexity. And FaZe will have a full strength buy to conclude. Finally, two full strength buys in this game. Halzerk feeling frisky. Posted up on a very crucial angle. Ooh! That Ooh. hit broke yeah, in the back. Both. And JT makes sure to finish it off. So a couple rounds here of lobby aggression coming through from Complexity. It's a good look for them. It's only two members left. Falls on rain, and his shadow spotted. Elise will put him down, and Complexity will not make this one easy for FaZe. Four rounds on the T side. Is it enough? What's going on CS Money fans? We're about to have some fun with the Ecos play. And it's here at the Blast Premier Full Finals where I'm expecting these guys to make themselves a cosplay of a CS skin. Amongst all this stuff on the table, whoever goes first gets the most picks of stuff. Whoever goes last, unlucky you're left over with the scraps. Good luck, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first up is you, Maui. What are we going for? So I'm gonna be the em Empress AK. Yes? Okay. Uh, we've got a crown already here. This is a perfect red for it. What are we going for here, We're going for the monkey business. Love bananas. Always last. Pimp, what do you see on this table of where you think, I want to make this skin? We are time restricted right now, James. No, I don't believe that. Take well, your time. I am time restricted. Why? I don't want to be here anymore. So oh, what wow. I'm going to do is I'm going to speed run this. Okay, we're going to put that on. Because it's just like the butt of the gun or the hilt of the gun. I don't know. I'd like to get you involved with this, James. I'd like you to blow up this banana whilst I do some artwork. We're going to put this on. This is the crown. <laughs> I can't do this. Like, pinch it. I think a lot of people will resonate with what I'm doing. I, I think it's diamonds, technically, that are on the Empress. We're working with what we've got. I'm going to stick these onto the shoulders. I'm going to put on this shirt. Oh, oh. Cool. maybe one of these. I'll try to put paint. Why is the brown coming on? Oh, the end part. Mm, I haven't said what I'm doing yet, right? No, I don't know what this is. This is a beautiful it's skin. Well. I think I'm going to use all that paint. Um, there is a little circle at the bottom of the handle which mm -hmm. says five seven on it. I'm going to tape this to myself. I think we only have glue. Pretty sure that everyone out there has opened quite a few of these. Where are you going to put the banana? I'm going to tape it on. <laughs> 
I'm terrified this is gonna get on my sweater. Pose, yep. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Um I'm done. That is it. That is all your effort you're putting into this. A sand view. A cheap sand view. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have our three designs for the skins here. Creativity, looks, and effort put into it. Effort and creativity, zero for you, Pimp. But looks, because you look so good where you're wearing your shirt, we'll give you an eight for that. Failure is your middle name, so... Move on. Move on. Freya. Creativity. I'll give you a seven. What? Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Effort, you're only getting a three. The look is very creative, so I'll give you seven on that. 17, I'll take it. Yeah. You, the crown just fits you so well, so... As it does. We'll say a seven for that. For the look and the feel, I think you deserve an eight. Effort that you put into it. All right, I'll give you five more on top then. Okay. He did bribe me a little bit. Thank you so much. Maui's the winner overall here. These guys did their best. They put some effort in for sure. But you guys at home, I know you can do better. Use the hashtag eCosplay and show me if you can make a sick skin and maybe make yourself into better than any of these three bugs. You can win yourself a very expensive skin. Go check it out. Good luck. Show me what you got. Composure, the name of the game there for complexity because they faced economic resets on the CT side of Nuke, not once, twice, three times, four, five. <laughs> that entire damn half is complexity's economy on the line. Yeah. And it seemed like FaZe just couldn't break through, but they still finished the half with enough rounds to make this one doable. If their defense locks out complexity, then you're looking at the second grand finalist of the fall finals. Yes, but pistol for phase in the second half could spell doom for complexity. They know they want this and they've struggled on pistols here at the fall final. T side, one more try. And where they're walking, I'm not seeing much resistance. It's a marked improvement Whoa. from Halzerk since yesterday. Floppy right up there. Drops his key. And he'll anchor into the back site. Headshots? Maybe. Two players jump by and he's missed everything thus far. The doubles player. Wait, what? what? No. Brokey just flicked that kill on sight. That's nasty. And it takes it to the 2v2. What a sick reaction. Twists has a couple Berettas of his own. And a liege. This could be a massive clutch. If Complexity want for once in their damn lives an easy map win, then this plant could be key. Twist comes barreling at him and a liege will happily take the fight. That leaves Rain to try and close oh! it! Twice in this pistol! <laughs> These lizard flicks are sick! <laughs> <laughs> he trusted himself. And there have been some great clutches this game. Dude. Brokey twist, floppy, a liege now. And insane shots are one thing. Look at this! You know. Look at this second kill! Man, people Boom. are getting back banned for flicking that fast right now. I thought the cheaters were in Premier Launders, <laughs> but it turns out they're on stage right now. <laughs> What is wow. that? That was some good stuff, but for complexity, I mean, Alij can't even get excited. He just knows they need this. The fashion in which the style that was brought to it, it's something, but it's a nine rounds. Now they have to win the anti-eco, and they start out losing one. Alij brings it back with a single kill. JT's got the sight, but no teammates. Surely he can't do this. 1v2, he knows where they both are. Galil's picked up, nade damage big, and FaZe responds. Instantly. The only times complexity win a pistol, they lose the eco. Not one pistol round in this series. All four have been forced by wins right back. All four. And it's Kerrigan inside of Hunt with a 5-7, a 3K on the round. You better believe you always want to be the one to win the force by. The pistol is nothing in comparison. You better believe Kerrigan's going to take this opportunity by the horns. Four round game. Complexity failed to get to 10 on their easiest attempt with the upper bust. I would have taken the edge off. You don't even sweat that much. Come through with a fast, easy play to upstairs, then get going on the hard rounds. Now they're in the mud. They're in the peat bog with their thoughts, ruminating. One AK on a liege. And they're looking for something dry here. Something very simple. When Elyse first joined this team, every once in a while we get a buy exactly like this, where he just takes the AK and proves why he's worth. He had to clutch out in pistol round, a one versus two that gave them momentum. 
A tall order here in the 15th. But he's got teammates around him. Pistols to set up the whole entire push. And as JT serves up a distraction, there's pressure coming here for Rops. He's gonna die with nothing. Brokey falls right after. And all of a sudden, Ramp Room looks prime for the taking. Oh my god. Kerrigan would love to chase them, but he has to deal with that outer player, which means there's only two members of FaZe that can actually go downstairs. Kerrigan will win his fight. That helps. But on double doors, a leash comes out with the AK. Bomb plant and an evacuation towards Dark. Now they know Grimm's pinned in. Nothing he can do. He tries to flash himself out. He is desperate. <gasps> so desperate that he gives up the kill. He takes the duel. Smoke is huge. Blocks off vision. And so Elise tries to get into it. Halzer's on the doors, and it's Kerrigan on the bomb. Down to a second, he comes off. And Elise may try to press. CT's back turns, oh. and complexity bounce back. Oh, with teamwork, and there's Elise in a moment where he could run out and die. He actually doesn't know that Halzer needs him to come out now, and he does it. He's been so good on those trades, putting himself at risk, not playing selfishly. And it's so easy to look at that moment like, oh, of course he should have run out. There are ch times where you'll see top teams and top players not take this chance and run out, and he does. And Halzerk luckily picks up the other kill at the same time. And this is a round actually to counter for us. I thought we switched over halves and all that nonsense was behind us. No, it's still going. Except this time, it's going to be in favor of complexity as the T-sided team. And they were the ones to reach escape velocity in the first half and get out of orbit. Nine out of the 15 rounds we've played have been won by the team with the lesser weapons. <laughs> Nonsense. That's a stat. But this buy just seems so little for FaZe. This buy could be the nail in the coffin of Nuke. Could be. Because seemingly not. Rops has been able to just crawl around box. Ooh. Almost puts their heads in that crosshair. But ramp room falls. Wow, this is massive. Those are two good attacks on the ramp. And I hate to use this as an opportunity to sort of criticize what we saw from Complexity, but, you know, on their ramp attack in the last round, Rops and Brokey once again were working together for the hold. They just both got killed, right? Yep. We didn't have that same level of support for Floppy. But regardless, in terms of entry, entries as a pack, they've been so good at both killing Rops when he's alone or Rops when he has a little bit of support, even if they both don't have great guns. We know no one's safe so far in this game. What's Kerrigan going to get up uh, to? Is there something weird that could happen? Surely not. There he is. <laughs> Spotted out by Floppy and dealt with too many players to drop as far as FaZe are concerned. And with that force buy, now the fact that they don't win one, right? Nine of them in the map so far. Oh, yeah. This 10th one goes the way it's supposed to. And we're talking no money left for FaZe. Oh, man. I can't make sense of this second map, no. but it's Complexity making their own destiny to try and extend this series. This is not the map you learn from. It's the one you just sit back and enjoy because so they you have never to know. Buying. Yeah, what's going to happen next? So the full investment here for FaZe to get defend against map points. This one has completely gotten away from them. And I want to say it was harder for Complexity on that CT side to win that two in a row to escape. It's always easier for the T side. So they had their work cut out for them and they survived the challenge. And now they switch over, nearly go through the same thing again. And it looks like they may have survived again. If you look at the scoreline, you think, well, this doesn't look like they traded nine rounds back and forth. It makes no sense. No. So this is some grit from complexity. This is resolve. And performance from the players you need it from. No longer a liege left on his own, but he's got Floppy, Halzer, Grim, everybody contributing to this one. Doing it with lesser weapons. But FaZe stay five up here in the 17th. JT back turn. He's going to get caught. Ooh, that's not a hint, however, because JT was walking towards Mini. Now, Ramp gets attacked, but it looks like they're continuing forward with their original plan. All heard, though. They're going to try to deal with Rain from Outer. They will bring that back, so a weapon taken out of the hands of the remaining CTs. Oh, that's an interesting protocol, right? They, like, they actually wrapped to hell and then fought outside from the back. Confident that there's nobody hell, nobody heaven, and sure enough, they're right. Pistols and said push forward on the A site. Kerrigan's hoping to get some kind okay. of a goal. But this is complexity with a beautiful routing from the ramp room that was free yeah. to the outer for the trade, so and then straight into an A site that just didn't stand a chance. This is them securing 12. 
This is Cole with seven map points. And playing to win. Yeah, right there, you see from JT's posturing coming into mini, well, it looks like they're going to go for the upper wrap, but then they could have easily transitioned it downstairs, but who knows who, what's down there. So they adjusted the game plan accordingly, fought a little bit more outside than I think they'd like to to look for rain, then went right back to it, knowing they have better guns, stuck together, traded out. And they are rewarded with a 12. That's something I didn't think I was going to see here on Nuke. No. Oh, and it's fast. Oh, okay. I mean, the CTs, this reeks of desperation. And, and this, this is such an, I mean, such a bizarre reality that we're in right now. The complexity have just essentially been gifted a T side. The last three rounds versus just half buys. After what we saw on Anubis, it's like clockwork with complexity. Get blown out on Anubis, come back and smash. And then lose map three. <laughs> Let's change history today, though. Let's write a little bit there. Almost got the script perfect. So close. Surely all they can be thinking about, right? And I mean, what a treat, right? Some of the best maps that FaZe have put forth in 2023 have been on Ancient. Yeah. We are in for a treat. Seven map pool, and it's not a meme. Not a meme this time. Just got to close. Rops, Brokey, Rain. But unfortunately, again, it is ramped fully open. Faze are trying to eat soup with chopsticks right now. God, they just don't have the tools for the job. It's literally that. They just don't have enough to hold them back. Complexity aren't leaps and bounds better, but a weird economy back and forth has just paved the road for Complexity to push this series into the third map. A gold brick road. And an unbelievable tale for Cole to try and push this. To genuinely try for revenge against FaZe. And had this map been close, then maybe that's one thing. But what reality are we living in where complexity, where North America are pushing FaZe the distance? Ancient to decide our last grand finalist. Ahead of this second map, I said complexity are not equipped to deal with the chaos. And damn did I eat my own words. This was complexity surviving in what is supposed to be the playground of FaZe Clan. Back and forth, harsh rounds, crazy rounds. How the hell did complexity pull through? Well, that's a good question, right? You think to yourself, with such a messy start as you can see in your screen right here, eight rounds in a row, back and forth, back and forth, four spies, masters, some may even call it, right? None of the two teams were able to establish any sort of dominance on the server, and we got an entire highlight package to show exactly that right here. A lot of Deagle kills, a lot of Tech 9 kills, and you think to yourself, as you said, that is a favor for FaZe Clan. They like to thrive in the chaos, they like yes. to create the chaos, and then at some point, they're gonna break loose, and they're gonna take control over the game, but it was the exact opposite happening. As soon as Complexity were able to win two rounds in a row, they ran away with it. Miles ahead of FaZe Clan, playing much better Counter-Strike, and I didn't think that would be possible on a map like Nuke. Same, unimaginable. The fact that Complexity would be the one actually closing and having this streak of rounds towards the very end, because I think people have to realize how strenuous it is, how mentally exhausting it is to trade blow back and forth and back and forth. You never really catch your breath, mm. just like myself right now. And in that sequence, it's supposed to be face clan pull ahead, but it is not. And if we talk about Madness Jacob, second pistol round of this game, once again, complexity running back. Yeah, atypical from Rups right here, not getting more out of that situation. He got a lot of players baiting for him. Look at that from Boki though, turning around, getting a kill, Elise answering back in a 1v2. You think to yourself, there's no way, John. There's no way no you're way. gonna win this one. But look at the Vista from Elise. Quickly up there, planning the bomb. And look how clinical he is with the clock. Instant headshot, turning around. Uh, he should die in roughly three, two, one, but nope, oh. he's turning around, removing rain from the server and Ooh. taking that pistol around. Then face answered back, then complexity answered back, and they continued down the path of winning four spies, and here we are, complexity ended up winning the game. You mentioned Robs, and weirdly enough, I would argue he was a weakness on the CD side. He's sure. supposed to be an impenetrable force, or an impenetrable wall, and here, once again, 
It's Ramp, where Elige, armed with the AK, find that opening kill. 9 to 5 scoreline. This is the moment where FaZe is supposed to come back into the game to catch a little bit of money, to catch a little bit of breath, and this Ramp play works once again. Complex is that enough is enough. We've had enough of this back and forth, back and forth. We're gonna win this round, we're gonna turn around the game, and we're gonna close it out. And so they did. One thing is beating FaZe Clan on Nuke. I think Freya said that they won 13 out of 15 games or something like that in CS2. Another one is dominating FaZe the way they were right here. Complexity by far looked like the better team. We can't even argue that they shouldn't win this game. It wasn't even close. I agree, I agree with you. It wasn't even close. 13 to 5 tells the, uh, the entire story, rather. And now if we're looking for Star, if we're looking for an upset to happen, you need an ordinary man to do the extraordinary. And that's where Grim put together here as well. 20 kills. He is not the nickname you're going for when nope. you talk about this new complexity lineup. I would say he's been selfless and he took a step back to allow the space for Elise to shine. And out of nowhere, he pulls this performance. You know what, Matthew? I think we covered two or three complexity games together already oh, at this tournament. And we haven't mentioned his name one single time for a great performance. What a time to come alive if you're Grim. Because you're right, he was taking a step back. We saw him back at the group stage being one of the star players from complexity, highlighting him as a difference maker on the server. Now with Elise playing well, Flubby playing well, he's taking a step back. But if he can show up in a semi-final when it matters the most, then that is a great thing, of course. One more name I want to put into it, right? Holzerk. We have been after him throughout the entire right. tournament. Finally, he shows up. Found a lot of impact right here on this map. Good with the AWP, good in the clutches. Holzerk has entered the stage, and this makes me very, very excited for the next map. This is now a complexity that coast to coast has the depth to fight against the likes of FaZe. Mm. Because Elige is delivering what Elige has been doing this entire stint in the complexity jersey. Then on top of that, you had Floppy's moment. You had Grim with 20 kills right here, and Holzerk hopefully coming back alive in the third map, and I just feel like the narrative might be shifting for this map number three. None of us were ready to give them a chance on map oh. two. Did we sell them short? I think we did, a little bit. And once again, they proved us wrong. Complexity have established themselves as one of the best teams in the world as of right now. Obviously not up there where we consider them the best, but if they can take down FaZe Clan and move into the final, then maybe we have to reconsider. Well, FaZe were destined for a streak 18 here in Copenhagen, but Complexity had other plans. A masterful reaction on Nuke 13 to 5 scoreline. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we dive into Ancient, who once again is promised to deliver greatness.
Well, complexity have certainly shaken off that rust and we have certainly got a semi-final on our hands. Now, I don't know about you gentlemen, I am so happy that we get to see Ancient decide a map in this series because there's a little tradition, isn't there, when we look on the side of FaZe Clan? Ancient deciders and jaw-dropping games. Not least when they faced complexity last time around in Sydney because that was absolutely spectacular. You're right, they've already had a pretty storied relationship to Ancient as a map and to bangers of game, let's be real. And you're talking about Sydney. This was an overtime to close the third map of the grand final. A huge comeback from complexity as well, mind you. Three rounds only that they posted in the first half. We thought FaZe had him covered, but then Complexity fought back into this. And now we are, we are forced to respect the chances of Complexity. We were ready to sell them after the second map. We were sending FaZe home with 2-0, and Complexity said, hell no. Hell no. It's gonna be tough though, I'm not gonna lie. You said it fair. FaZe Clan have a habit of winning Ancient a lot as well. They won eight in a row, to be completely honest. Yes. So that's in itself a very impressive streak of wins coming into this one. One thing though is that you said it, the overtime game in Sydney. We, you and I, we saw a game in uh, CSC as well that ended up in seven overtimes against NIP. That's correct. On Ancient. So it's one of those maps that FaZe Clan are playing a lot. They're winning a lot, but pretty much every single time they play it, it is incredible close against pretty much all opponents. And you mentioned the comeback that was required from Complexity just to push it to overtime. Obviously, they couldn't manage to close that map out, but it was uncharacteristic. And actually, they managed to bolster that on the CT side of things, which is where we've seen Complexity, you know, not having the strongest of sides. We don't know where they're going to be starting off on. Obviously, the knife is going to decide mm. that. But if you're Complexity, if you want a strong start, what's going to be key? I, honestly, I think that second map is giving you all the confidence and trust you could ever need. Sure. For multiple reasons. First of all, this was the first time that the core of Complexity beat FaZe on Nuke. We were talking about a 2-0 record straight from FaZe Clan. Then what did we say? We said in the chaos, Complexity is never going to make it work. They're always going to fold. FaZe have much more quality, coast to coast in the roster to handle that. Hell, we were wrong once again. It's complexity pulling ahead. So the story is kind of changing. All of the parameters that we thought were true at the beginning of this series has been thrown out the window. And a streak has to come to an end. I mean, it's, well, it's statistics, okay. right? It's probability. <laughs> if it's red all the time, it has to be black at some point. I mean, you say it has to, but let's go back to the first half of that nuke. We said they have to win a round back to back, surely. And it took nine rounds for that to happen. So if you're looking at complexity coming into this one, changing the tides, changing the fate and the traditions of what they've typically bolstered against phase, who's going to be key to coming out hot? for that star side. Oh, I, th I think I think coast to coast, as you're saying, right, the entire team has to come out. That's the way they won Nuke. Everyone chiming in, everyone having a good showing. I, I don't believe complexity is good enough from an individual standpoint for just Elise to play well no. and still win. There's another thing I want to throw into the mix as well. We spoke a lot about Holzerg in this game. He came alive on Nuke. That needs to continue coming into this map. We saw the difference. As soon as Holzerg is showing up with the AWP, he has a presence on the map. It's a complete different outlook coming out of complexity. And a little nugget for you right here. The only map in the map pool right now Brokey is the highest rated player for FaZe Clan is Ancient. So usually go. Brokey is showing up on that map. So if you're Holzerk, you got to cut out for you. And you mentioned Holzerk. If we go back to that Sydney Grand Final, yes. it's a 33 kills dropped from Holzerk Insanity. on Ancient. He really did put his best foot forward. Now, if we're looking for weaknesses, and if you're a Complexity fan and you're trying to hope for a miracle to happen, I have to say, Rain hasn't exactly delivered the incisive Counter-Strike nope. that we touted him for. Mm. We talk about someone that's relentlessly aggressive, that's always in your face, not scared of taking any duels. And I'm not gonna say he plays differently. He just doesn't have the same kind of success. He's been out there, he's been putting his life on the line, but I've seen him being a little bit off the mark in terms of aim right now. He's not necessarily dominating, and we know how much he likes to fight in cave. Could that be a solution for complexity? That could be a solution, especially because he's also surrounded by Kerrigan. And I hate to do it to my Danish buddy, but he is the weak link on that CT side. His average rating on Ancient is 0 0.85. He's having a tough time to get it done by himself. He's relying a lot on Broki coming in as the third guy on that side yes. to help him with the AWP. So if Wayne is struggling a little bit in Sunroom, Kerrigan not necessarily being able to get the multi-kills, then again, we rely on Broki. So there is a bit of a weakness going on in that part of the map, and that's something I want complexity to test. And you know who is going to challenge Kerrigan, and once again, we circle back to a name we've mentioned, Floppy on that B ramp. Yes. So many times in this game, the viewers at home can be advised. You're going to see Floppy scanning and looking for kills. And the entire battle for FaZe is going to be to set up Kerrigan to not have an aim fight. Give him a flash, give him the number, yes. give him someone to cover him. You Group mentioned up. Brokey. If it's a 1v1 aim duel, 
Floppy is gonna do Kerrigan dirty. That's gonna happen. So FaZe have to set up Kerrigan to shut off that threat. Okay, so we talked about the potential weaknesses that Complexity might be able to exploit from FaZe, but uh, where are they gonna be struggling to really, you know, tame Kerrigan's men on this particular ground of Ancient? Is it just Brokey that's kind of standing tall or is anybody else uh, alongside him on this? I think Rups' lurks oh, yeah, are incredible Ooh. on a side, right? He's probably the best in the world at doing so. So if you're that A player for Complexity, you're gonna be in deep, deep trouble. It's something they constantly have to be aware of because Rups has this ability to always smell whenever there's space to be taken. He even does it on the CT side. He's a B player, or sorry, an A player that likes to push inside that area and take away space at all times, give information so they can group up around Kerrigan and sort of mitigate for that. So yes, if I'm Complexity right now, I want to be scared of Rups because we haven't seen the best of Rups in this final so far, but Ancient, it is his map. Yeah, I agree with you. The timings that he can find, the only thing is on Nuke that was supposed to happen, but Complexity did such a good job at never allowing FaZe to be financially comfortable that you have to ima sure. imagine. Rob's was not playing in the conditions that he likes. Rob's likes oh, full gun round. Rob's like long round that's thrown out into the last 30 seconds where he can decide when he's gonna pounce for a duel. It's the same on Ancient. If you're the A player receiving Rob's, you're basically paranoid. You have to be on meds to be able to handle that game because you never know when you can leave your position. You know you're gonna do one second like this, <laughs> Rob's gonna come immediately. I'm not joking with you, it's hard as hell What's to play against Rob's and he's gonna lurk again in this. So I I'm reading the prescription you're giving me, Matthew. You're saying that Complexity have to do one better than on Nuke and they have to do 10 rounds where nobody's winning around back to back. Is that gonna be tilting phase off the face of the earth and Rob's in that manner? I'm almost willing to bet my left kidney when I'm gonna see the same scenario play out once more. That's don't do just that. not gonna happen. And if it is, then I think FaZe will be able to take control again. I have been impressed with Complexity, I'm not gonna lie. I think fact of the matter is that they're standing in a semi-final right now on a third deciding map against the best team in the world, but I do think it stops right here. I think there's a limit to the madness. What Complexity are doing right now is fantastic, but there should be a ceiling to the skill that they can possess on the server. I think FaZe have enough tools to work with, and therefore I'm also gonna say FaZe are gonna put a spot in the final. I, and I, I'm not going to challenge you oh, best on, of luck. on what this roster is made of and what FaZe is made of, but I still, I'm still with the feeling that the way this second map transpired, I don't know how FaZe is going to deal with it. I don't know how they will. It was such a back and forth game, mentally super draining. And then you're on the losing end of that, you're FaZe and you lose a force battle. I don't know how they're going to deal with this. It's a special position. I'm going to play devil's advocate here and go, do you not know FaZe love playing on the back foot? Like, Maui coined them the procrastination kings mm. for good reason. They love to string us along. No, they lost. Now they lost the map. Yeah? You think, they lost the second you think map. That's it? You think they've submitted the paper, they've got the D minus, and now they're just quitting Listen, the course. The way, the way Nuke played out is not going to happen twice. Lightning doesn't strike <laughs> twice at the same place. I simply don't believe it. FaZe are too good of a team to let that happen once more. In terms of who we're looking at from the complexity side then, um, you gave your flowers to Grim, obviously, and I think that's an apt reason uh, for doing so. Where is he going to be having this impact coming into Ancient? Because I think he's somebody that, you know, we have to be looking at going forward. Yeah, again, Grim is not the most aggressive player coming out of complexity. So we're looking at later stages of the round once more. We're looking at the 2v2s, the 3v3s, he's part of the pack. I would love to see Grim go back to the old school Grim. We saw the group stage in the spring season where he was the best player, the best performer out of complexity. But we spoke about it up there, Matthew. He's taking a step back. He's not necessarily he finding to. the same impact. He's not necessarily given the same space. We're still looking towards Elish. We're still looking towards Holzerk and JT, for that matter, creating space. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's going to be required to take a couple of duels which aren't that comfortable. Sure. And it is a little bit ingrained as a role, right? Grim isn't set up anymore. Yeah. I don't think setups are made in order for him to shine. No. He's sometimes the first one that's Gonna be swinging. I guarantee you, in these mid skirmishes that will happen, Grim will be out there with Elish. And if someone has to swing first, if someone has to allow Elish for the multi kill, it is going to be Grim. So it's a tough role he is playing. He's taking a step back because the structure demands it. But when he shines like he did on Nuke, like who are you to complain about it? Well, I cannot wait to be diving into this third and final decider. But we're gonna keep you on tender hooks for just a little moment, as we are unfortunately experiencing a little PC issue on the stage. But don't worry, we got the best in the business on the case. We're gonna head to a quick break, and when we're back. Third map decider. It's going down on Ancient to see who's going to that grand final. If I don't say my girlfriend, she'll be mad. Something about them creeps me out. You should try it when you come to Holland. So one thing people don't know about me, it's uh, no, I was semi-professional in handball. I have to choose CSGO or handball. And at this time I was better in CSGO, so I chose the CSGO. I did professional Taekwondo until 14 years old and I was a Ukrainian champion. One thing about myself that people wouldn't know, maybe I love joint juice. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't like any kind of dressing, only ketchup. But any other than that, I would never take uh, on my sandwich or anything like that. Every time when we go to places and stuff like that, my teammates are all, also after me. And how come and stuff like that? I am uh, deathly afraid of like bugs and spiders and all that. Something about them creeps me out. Every time I come home from an event, I eat a frikandel special because I love it so much. It's like a sausage with. Uh, with mayonnaise, some curry and some onions on it, but it's uh, so delicious. You should try it when you come to Holland. Maybe that I'm pretty good at uh, pool. <laughs> That's maybe the only thing. I think I've challenged a couple of good players that I know at least that they're good and I've beaten them. So yeah, I think I'm definitely up there. <laughs> I'm a lot taller than I look, and also my voice is a bit deeper than people perceive as well. I think I have a baby face and people don't really expect my voice as well. Six foot tall, 183 centimeters. <laughs> I can solve a Rubik's Cube in less than a minute. I have a bunny at home. His name is Mochi. He's just chewing my cables all the time. I have to replace everything. <laughs> Three things I cannot live without is uh, water, food, and internet. Pick my phone first. I mean, my bed, I love sleeping in bed, but I mean, I can sleep anywhere usually, but a bed and clothes. <laughs> so I'm gonna say my girlfriend, a pet, and uh, the last thing is gonna be a bubble tea. Mango bubble tea. <laughs> my friends, my family, and the last one would be, I don't know, McDonald's. Food money in my family. You kind of need some of those things to live, you know, to make sure you keep on going. Three things I can't live without. If I don't say my girlfriend, she will be mad. Food, water, and workout. <laughs> my favorite thing to do other than playing Counter-Strike is being a dog dad. My dog is a boxer and he is full of energy and he's a handful. Playing chess. I play a lot of chess in my free time. My peak uh, rating in chess is 1500 ELO. Working out uh, in the gym. So it definitely helps me outside of the game. I just feel like refreshed once I finish the workout. It just makes me feel uh, much better about myself. And my favorite thing to do is eat some good food and uh, relax. I like burgers. Maybe play some other game. I love PUBG. And also I love Dota. I used to uh, play a lot of World of Warcraft and uh, League of Legends when I was younger. But uh, World of Warcraft takes too much time, so I don't do that anymore. I'm hanging out with friends and going to football. I follow the Graafschap, it's a second league club in uh, the Netherlands. Other than playing Counter-Strike, my favorite thing would be to uh, spend time with my girlfriend. One of points for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I had any uh, idols, but I had a lot of things that I wanted to be uh, as a kid. I wanted to be a uh, baker, like pastries, also an actor because I was really good at acting as a, as a kid. I knew how to cry on command. Like, uh, I used that a lot. When I was studying, I maybe wanted to be an astronomer one day. I really love space and that stuff, so. No, I didn't have any ideas at all. Like, my friends were like, oh, I want to be a like, firework girl or something like that. So a policeman, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was watching a lot of uh, tennis, and my idol was Novak Djokovic, but now I'm an even bigger fan what he's achieving so far, and uh, I think not just inspiring me, but I think everyone around the world who is competing in something. When I was in kindergarten, I wanted to be a basketball player. And I played basketball for like eight months, and then I gave up. When I was a kid, uh, what I wanted to be kind of when I grew up, I always loved working with, uh, with animals. I always wanted to look into maybe becoming like a veterinarian or something like that, but that's a lot of work. You know, I gotta go to university and put a lot of time into that. I've shifted, now I'm playing video games. <laughs> My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch differs a lot, honestly. But uh, if I had to pick one, I would pick Sai Wu at the moment. He's so capable of doing everything. Pistol, AK, M4. He's like an all-round really strong player and also a clutch shot. Back in the days, uh, yeah, I was, I was looking for device because he was close to my play style. Div, actually, it's pretty biased. He can not touch the game for three weeks and still be good. I'd have to say, like, someone like Robs. We have the same initials, we look similar, and we have the same roles, and we play the same res. It's someone definitely I look up to as Robs. My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch would be Flusher. He's always extremely annoying. I don't really know like who is my favorite Counter-Strike player to watch right now, but like before it was Fallen. 
when I started becoming an auber. He was like the auber to look at. He's like had longevity in his career. He's been doing a lot for Brazil, and I just think he is a really good role model. My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch, especially when I was growing up, uh, I originally was playing Counter-Strike Source. Shox was a player that his play style really inspired me, uh, and I really wanted to be that player that could play everything, every role. He's always been having like a mixed play style. He could always uh, play with the AWP and the rifle. I would answer simple because he's like an uh, unexpected guy. You like cannot predict him. It's like you never lose hope in him in like a 1v3, 1v4 situation. You're like, oh, he can win this. My biggest match that I played, like the most important one, it would for sure be the final in Royal Arena against FaZe. Being so close to lifting the trophy, like those last rounds of the game was was a unique feeling, that's, that's hard, hard to describe. The greatest match that I ever watched was uh, definitely the FaZe versus Cloud9 at the Boston Major. When they were in the finals and they finally won and uh, lifted that trophy, there was a flood of emotions for me. I have two teammates who uh, played that match. They don't like looking back uh, at that match because they were in it and they lost it. My greatest game that I played was my second major. It was semi-final against Heroic. It was 15-14 for us when he fell on the second map. It was 2v5 situation, and we won it. We all pumped up. It was like unbelievable. And then we won the third map as well. The culmination of the Blast Premier Circuit and the final Tier 1 event of the year. We are live from Abu Dhabi for the Blast Premier World Final. <laughs> It's the Blast World Finals Show Match, Dream Team and Team Mina. Ooh, smoky in here. We love this one. We know what it is. We've seen it before. Kenny looks like he... Oh. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, you the nades are the ball. The are... Kenny's hiding under the, the ground. Ball. He's, He's in the ground. the floor. It's never been done like this before. Kenny, yes. Let's do this, Abu Dhabi. Last Grand Finals of the year. And here comes Nico's rifle. It's headshots galore. All three dead. Believe your eyes. Abu Dhabi with the newest champions. G2 do the unthinkable. The last champions of 2022 is G2. This message is brought to you by Blast. London, the jewel of England. At Blast, we're bringing a distinctly London feel to Counter-Strike. The sights, the sounds. And bingo, bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. And the pageantry. Nah. And so, believe it or not, we have managed to find ourselves on map three of this Complexity versus FaZe Clan rematch. Uh, many times so far this year, FaZe have found themselves on Ancient, and they have played overtime after overtime. And when we go back to the most recent Complexity FaZe match, it was map three. Double OT. Back and forth every single time. Which means maybe tonight FaZe do have their hands full. We've said goodbye to Astralis, we've said goodbye to Heroic, but we can't say goodbye to Kerrigan, can we? Royal Arena, one more time! 
It could be Kerrigan having his run ended tonight. Maybe it's map three once again. FaZe looking to break a record, have the third longest streak in CS. But Complexity are low-key good at Ancient. In CS2, they've won most of their games. Mm. They played close to FaZe. They had a winning record at Sydney. They were a threat. Right now inside B-Site, there's no threat. Floppy just forfeits control of it. Froki goes pressing out, and it's his Glock to pick up a double. We go back to Sydney, it was a big performance from Halzerk and Elyge. That was the key pieces of complexity to even get that one close. Elyge starts to flank sight, and this retake suddenly looks far less likely. Grim, with the only extra kill, has at least whittled it down to the 1v2, but the T's have him so incredibly split. I mean, Bomb no is planted kit. on one side. He doesn't have the kit, but the smoke could make things weird. A 10-second defuse, no chance. Mm. It is Rain, a king of ancient, may I add. Don't get excited, guys. Pistols don't mean anything in this series if you've been watching. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go nine rounds back and forth again. <laughs> we have to, I mean, even when we don't, it still gets traded. On the other map, it wasn't just Nuke. We actually, based on historical proof, we have to wait for round two, okay? In map three here to find out because I'm sure the first thing that came out of Complexity's mouth were, it's a curse to win the pistol. Something along those lines. But there isn't a real force here. There is a Mac 10 It's playing Hungry Hungry Hippo right now, ready to gobble up some pistoling players. And <laughs> they're just gone. <laughs> they show a little skin and just sprint. They're playing monkey ball. It's been a long day for you guys, huh? Six maps of Counter-Strike in a Royal Arena. Hmm. You got what it takes or what? We are getting late, Low. Thank you, Connor. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> I think I can handle it. Every map has been so good. USP kill. Look at him running for that gun like you thought you were going to take it away. No chance. Rops not going to let you get your paws on much. Dude, you know Rops is cheap by the way he spends ammo. Okay? Frugal. Frugal. Or prudent. And Rops was somebody that was brought in the question on the desk. Where is Rops at? He hasn't had his mark. Best CS2 player in the world hasn't had his mark on the series just yet. Hasn't been an ultra standout player in a lot of maps so far at the fall final. They haven't needed him yet. Uh, but Ancient is a great map for him, a real big reason why FaZe are so good at the map. And uh, it's time to play. It is time to play, because this is bottom of the night. Semi-finals, Rob's in a comfort zone, and just because FaZe have, yeah, FaZe have never lost a series of CS2, just because that's true doesn't mean that that'll go on forever. Everyone's streak ends eventually. And the amount of times we get to see aggressive complexity lane setups, like they will come hit you. Elyse and JT combined here. It's a good flash over, but it's three frags out of complexity, a fourth towards middle. Literally mopped. It's when complexity can't get out onto lane. It's when they can't climb up this boost that I think their CT side starts to crumble. Yeah. But this first gun round coming out of their defense, and oh. damn, it's clean. You brought the lead. Yeah, it's uh, right now in CS2 outer B control for the CT side, it's like mandatory. In CSGO, people were doing it a lot. Um, but the interesting new dynamic is the smokes that can get blown open and elbow. Those used to have to be respected more. But actually, ironically, you could use them to boost over the smokes more. Like in CSGO, you knew that nothing could blow that smoke open, so you could boost up an elbow, try to fight mid in like tricky ways. But now, either you, the T's, or the CT's can blow it open meaning that you can't safely do that. Ooh, uh oh, the force buys are back. The tech nine just shreds JT. Luckily, Elise just comes clambering up over Vox, yeah. right through smoke. You know, Elise knows when to fight. He loves a bloodbath. And so he does instantly dismantle what could have been suddenly a cave and ramp split that could have had Floppy's hands full. But he reacts fast enough, gets ahead of the problem. And a deagle kill out of Twist is a parting gift, but it's an instant tied 2-2. The best comparison I can make is like banana control on Inferno. To have B control 
means you have utility to use it and you can get the elbow smoke, the mollies, that sort of carpet molly all the way down the ramp. From that perspective, that's where the round begins on CT side, a lot like it does on Inferno. And that's something that Complexity are going to use a lot. And Alicia, somebody on T side, he'll be fighting Elbow as a mid defaulter. On CT side, he'll be running down to push anybody who's trying to fight, and he'll be using Grim alongside him to help as a donut player. And the T's have to figure out a way to not respect that because you can't just give away time in a round for free. And here already, we've got Rain poking out outside. But this push on Banana as well on the outer ramp is very CT favored at the moment. But this is control established, at least for the T side. And it's the most vanilla default. It's not even chocolate dip here, okay? Sprinkles, nothing? No sprinkles. Oh my god. Yeah. Waffle But cone? it is soft serve. I mean, it's delicious. Okay. It's a good default. No caramel drizzle, I mean. What's the They're waiting. They're waiting, essentially. I'm very curious to see if we get some rain versus a liege fights towards cave as the game goes on. So see, the round is based around this exact prospect. Wow. A leash puts down some good damage on the cross, but mid gets taken over. Outer B is taken over. The CT is now left guessing. We'll go for a push. The spade. Flash does find rain, but the trade's in the background. Rain's going to come out with oh. the double kill. I mean, he dominates cave. But with grenade in hand, it's an easy clear for a leash. Still a good amount of damage off of the utility, and the rest of the terrorists haven't had a chance to push out just yet. Support arrives. Grim's in. But a delayed approach at only 20 seconds. Eventually, these smokes fade, and if there's not bodies on the bomb site soon, then Complexity could have flexed that chance. Now, you know one's at least pinned in on the plant position. I don't think... I don't know. I mean, at least they have kits. We're just no utility, no HP for a liege. Uh, and if they want to save, they better do it properly, because if they get caught crossing out, that could be disastrous. But they'll attempt it. Oh, just and they'll pay down. the iron price. Phase up to three rounds. And that was what looks like a very simple idea executed perfectly. The fundamental concept right now on CT side is get that deep control. Phase waited it out. The smokes that the CTs have to use to get control of this expire eventually. Yes. So they try one of the early rounds in the half, just wait it out, see if they leave. Then there is a reaction. The CTs try to push down Banana. That's correct from Complexity. They tried to get something back, but the, the Ts had gotten way far out. They had taken over mid completely. There was three outside of cave. They didn't expect that many people to be assembled that fast. Ooh, that's a nice early nade to deal with somebody who is generally a problem for the T side. Again, Alish yeah. loves that lane fight, loves to get it quick, has JT to help towards Cave, but Rain gets ahead of it with a nice that's, deep nade. That's a very good call out to say, listen, you're going to sleep and do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. You will pay. I mean, we saw Alexi. Look, look at the complexion him. of the round right now for face. Identical to the last. Oh, but while blind, Alish, oh, no way. Oh, Kerrigan needed that one. It's actually JT who comes out with the Desert Eagle to help. And just like that, they're gone. Man, if we see that from Kerrigan's perspective, it may have been messy because Elyse was full blind just running along the boardwalk. Yeah, this is saving grace here for Complexity. They've got five up still. Only these two guns, they couldn't go back and they couldn't go get the ones that they've dropped out of FaZe's hands. Now JC. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Peak. Rain looking the wrong way. That angle is actually way more powerful now because of the shadow. Thank you. Free rifle. Oh. JT, man, he's not stopping. Timing to a T. Piecing him up. Suddenly, Rock's left to clutch. Attack from the flank, and then Grim finishes him. So a little SMG money made, and we're all tied up early. Those are great swings. That was uh, an excellently played round. Uh, and, and you know what? The idea from FaZe was actually cool. It was, a, it was using what's new in CS2. Was that elbow smoke? They didn't wait for it to come up. Instead, they naded it while they did the regular mid flashes, and then they peeked into it. The only thing is they didn't get the frags. The coverage was great. JT's got your back, so... Alish can thank him for that. But there was a missed spray in there. There was a missed opportunity for FaZe. Doesn't mean they aren't on to the right idea. And we come now into round seven. They got two guns, an AK and a Galil. But a force on everybody. Ooh, but ahead of it. Alish, ooh, caught with a nade. Throwing smoke, rain jumps on him. And pressure towards middle draws Halzerk back to the action. Oh, they run up so fast. 
Donut could be compromised, which means pressure on Grim. Now, he could have hidden on A, but instead, he moves this forward. Complexity, they're going to charge through that smoke. Grim gets his from Donut, but then Rain has found a second in the round, and Grim is already now wounded. The smoke's too big. Dude, floppy, that's weird, but he at least falls back. They want a total to forfeiture of the other side of the map, though. They wanted to commit with this, but they're down to three. Deep push from Twist, but only working with the pistol. Floppy could get blindsided soon. Twist has a long line of vision, but he doesn't have the gun to take the shot. The mid players start to get cleared. Robs is in the corner, but JT is slowly being hunted from behind. He hears the run, he turns, oh. and Twist is gonna end it. FaZe, with lesser weapons, have done it again. Damn, they were betting against the house on that round. This Twist was slowly creeping in on the flank. They kept wanting to gamble into fighting versus middle control that was taken over after this first duel on a leash. A liege will be tilted out of his mind. Everybody's been in this moment where someone runs through your smoke, you know that the fight's coming and you can't win the duel. He can't, he basically can't believe they tried that again. It ends up working. It's a new timing. This time they don't even give him any telegraph. There's no flash, no nade at all, and it works. Mid flashes for Kerrigan. Man, that's a land call. That's a Kerrigan land clan call right there. Oh, the 5-7 chase. He gets oh. away with it, but a very silent twist. <gasps> the help from a liege just set up Grim perfectly. The bomb is in their control. Oh my god, and a peek from JT. Oh, oh. He is everywhere. There is no solidified position from Complexity's players at the moment. They are fluid. That was the biggest compliment from a liege to face. Very hard to read their positions, knowing what they're going to do, because they're never doing the same thing twice. Rain now, deep. run 1v2 with lots of time, okay? Oh! oh, it's a third kill. No, he notices the fourth. It's a fight that he can win. It's a clutch that FaZe could need. Rain, the stone cold giant. The omnipresent, the eternal member of FaZe to keep this organization's win streak alive, to put them into third in the history books, and a early 1v4, 75% of the way done. He throws Whoa. the fake smoke to A, that gets Floppy to go the other direction, oh and God. Rain has options, he chooses red. And he goes through mid. It's an enormous bait to get a reaction. And even if he doesn't know where Floppy goes, yep. he knows that he's going to try to commit to something. Floppy's in the wrong place. The smoke has worked out brilliantly. Rain can go in, plant this bomb, and Floppy's got miles across the map to run. Massive one versus four. Yo, Copenhagen, let's make this one epic. Chant it with me. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Clutch, 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 come on. Clutch, 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 clutch. Clutch, 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 go! Rain able to walk back around the side. Oh, Floppy's tap doesn't oh, get blocked. Oh, with the time! Oh, man! That's what it comes down to. Oh, that's... It's the smoke. Yep. Yep, that's the lamest 1v1 in history. He doesn't even peek. No, that was, that was so well played, man. That smoke completely changed the course of Floppy's play. He, he could have stayed there on the A site. Rain could have walked right into him. If he walked through middle to try to fight him, Floppy could have been standing there holding his flank. Wow, just the knowledge of that smoke in his back pocket mm -hmm. won him that round. And we know how hard it is to win a clutch against Floppy. That beautiful smoke over top. Just that, that small seed of uncertainty. And then they got a stew in it. Dude, wait, that's like, just thinking about what happened in that round, it felt like an hour ago. Man, where the oh, first yeah. four kills went down, yep. JT's double inside of Donut, and then they lose to that play by Rain. And Grim dropping bomb inside of Main felt like that was it. Felt like that had solidified it all. But of course, rain unfazed. The rain man. He knows. Busted he by coming out of complexity. Will they try the lane pressure again? Man, 
Nice T side already off of that. That would have been 4 4. Now we got the value village buy from, Co from Complexity. Farmer's best weapon. Unless you rate this noob tube that's sitting here. Oh. Good angle for it. Let's see if they can make it ring off. No, no. two clotheslines. Rain wins cave. JT was ready, committed, and looking to swing, but that's a zero and six Halzerk off the auto shoddy. JT trying to throw himself all around the map. Fains are going to let complexity stew in this one. Dude, I mean, that was almost call for attack, you know, just to mm -hmm. unwind, to stop thinking about what just happened because this is a critical juncture for FaZe. We've seen so many ecos between these two teams in the series, and Complexity actually need one right now more than ever. Yeah, they needed it before too. That actually got them out of nuke. But now they're trying to retake it and be low numbers, bad utility, no guns. And can they just give phase six? Are you gonna allow them to mosey into the site and plant the bomb? Do you have a choice is the question because phase did that so cohesively. They've got this down now, very low chance they lose any players. There's huge opportunity for phase to literally destroy complexity in this one half already, right now. Completely comfort in the mid round. They knew exactly what they wanted. Two smokes up, I mean. Masters of Ancient. Complexity don't have enough to make things awkward. Yeah, the last time they played on Ancient, it was FaZe and Complexity to go into overtime. It ended up being 19 rounds for FaZe. So it's not unfamiliar. It's the only team to beat them. It was the only team to beat them on the map. It was FaZe at Sydney. That Molly just deep enough to force the hand of JT. You remember watching that, right? The yeah. amount of times that complexity could have won oh, the match. I mean, countless. It was there, but that's that's the beauty of this phase streak that we go back to Sydney. That's those maps included. They yeah. just do not die. They cannot be put down. <laughs> yeah, they just do not die. <laughs> die, <laughs> please. Right? Like you just just once, just to see mortal. <laughs> but it's CS2. This roster. Do it for NA. <laughs> it's just untouchable. JT ahead of it with the Deagle. It's again desperate pistols, so you okay. think it's too much. JT loves to get a little nasty with that okay. Deagle. A double here for hey, him. You once said best Deagle in NA. He I'm might be from you. South Africa, but we claim him. <laughs> oh my Came God. to America and made that gun his own. Yeah. And it's a taste of nuke. It's a taste of what the one thing complexity can be proud of is I swear they're winning more force buys than any other team. Grim said, I'm the best eagle in NA. He said, you're not even the best eagle on this team, son. He's whipped them with three to get 15 and eight. Roki going to try to piece something together now. Let's Surely pretend this round's already over. Let's pretend. You want to pretend, but <laughs> are you sure this isn't the second one versus four so far? Whenever we're casting, Broki does something. Mm. Yeah, so, and, you know, there's a spot named after him right over there. There's an open plant location. He has a molly to fend off one choke point. Now, normally not easy to plant on the A site, but look how far his opponents are. This is actually going to be him getting this. They Come. can't rush him down just yet, Halzerk. They send in on a mission. No take, way! Whoa, one or two out, maybe 17 out. Brokey. I mean, eventually he's going to have to plant, but if he wants to chase the temple kill, he, he could still sprint this over to B. He gets the peak! He has time! No way! There is no way that he watched Rain and said that, that's me. He wants a piece of complexity. He wants to crack Cole's spine. And that nade gets ahead of it. Elise, oh! drop down. This is nearly even now. And Brokey playing for the win, going to do a little bit extra. Not in the regular spot. Elise doesn't have a kit. We get that first smoke to come out. Brokey's gonna get ever closer. Elysia not sure exactly where he is. There's a slight gap to work with. And we are only 10 rounds into this third map when Complexity finally make it seem like it's doable. Brokey, stoic, inside smoke, has no. sat and waited half the time, pushes, and he still wins his clutch. Oh, he knows. No kick, no chance. Phase invincible. Bow to Brokey. As if rain wasn't enough. Two 1v4s in this one half. 
Surely you can survive this. On the same this. blessed rounds that JT got mm. his Deagle clips, mm. his M4 clips, and his opening kills. Rain and Brokey put up <laughs> two once-in-a-lifetime clutches in the same half. What a masterful play. Complexity and, trying but, to survive after that. But I gotta say, man. <clears throat> oh, uh, I think Rain will happily take a trade like that. A little bit of info, and you can see the speed that's taking place right now for Facebook. Dude, they gave him so much space. They gave him so much space. That's the only thing I want to take with us moving forward into round 11. Complexity cannot treat them with that much respect. No. It's a team that's got to play to win. Grim. Holds on smoke. My god, this entire site on fire. Roki finds the plant and commits to it this time. Retakes on. In the dying moments of this first half, Complexity grasping for straws, and Elise will find something, a saving grace in what feels like a necessary retake. Phase lean back, Cole push out. And these CTs work with no utility. Kit this time on a leash could end up making a difference. Rox gives the cover. There comes the swing. Brokey gets another to his name. Grim, not sure, but now knows. Kerrigan's deep. Can he clutch on home soil? It's a quick tap to the bomb with a five second stick and Grim just can't hit him. Kerrigan in front of his Danes. The greatest Dane clutches up. <laughs> That's the big dog. With another clutch for FaZe, man. FaZe really came into this game and said, do you want to play a game? This has just been torture. Over and over again, finding new ways to beat them down. Letting them get close, taking the hope away. And when you have two rounds that are 4v1, you talk about two rifle rounds and a half where you absolutely should have won. That could have resulted in Ecos for the other team. That was still true for that moment. But they're unfocused now. They're and, off kilter. And FaZe, I mean, they wouldn't care if they were down 10 rounds. No. They've come back so many times in the last few months. Yeah, I mean, that's not even a problem. Now they have a lead. They're going to take that, too. That's the aura that they've built for themselves. They've earned it. It ain't easy being this damn good. <laughs> too much pressure, they said. Oh. I, I don't, I'm not seeing it at all. The burden of success. They just stepping up to the challenge, getting better and better by the game, by the series, by the tournament. And this will potentially be Kerrigan's last chance with this lineup to get his Royal Arena victory. Yeah, denied in the Grand Finals last year by his fellow countrymen. Grim just deleted by twists. No donut control. This was a 5v4 to the favor of Complexity, and now instead... No. Shh, 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 shh. No. Kerrigan takes the time, lines up two, and just like that, 4v5 phase right back at it. This T side, well, Complexity simply can't stop it. Boom! Oh. Just like that! An ending to the half with Kerrigan's name stamped on it. No. All right. Look at the blind fire battle that's coming up. That means monitors are no more. Excuse me? You can't see what you're shooting at. Now, I'm but not going to lie. What do you do? Maniac, for some of these players, that might not make a big difference, but... Is it just about intuition? It's just about intuition. Other I senses? Scrawny might be better with no monitor. This there, might be where There's a case to be made. playing at home. We're leveling the playing field. Out of memory, you can kind of say, okay, I need to go to my right-hand side, then I can get to middle. Let's see, Jason is trying... I think Jason is trying a strategy. What is Jason doing? What is Moses doing? He's trying to play with another monitor. Is he just trying to relocate him? Oh my God, he's cracked the code. The man is a genius. Jason has just... Well, you're looking at yourself, buddy, now. I don't think that's going to help you. Maybe genius was too swift. All right. Oh my God, he's done it. He's moving in the I right I think he's right cracked thing. the code. 
Now, it seems to be lagging a little bit. I'm guessing the wireless connection is just, you know, you can see it's slipping in and out, but it doesn't matter. He's got the vision. If you're playing He's got all the, the answers. Oh, my How is he God. down 50 HP? If he loses while cheating, what's Wait, what happened? is he doing now? What is he doing? Is that WWE? Why is he moved away? He's got the ball back. Oh, my God, no. James is trying to stop him. The other coach is in. No, he's trying to play the ball. We got all that. Oh, my God, is the ball. Each other both in and out of the server. Has what found happened? The way. He's, he's, he's right made there. it. He's planted it. Yes, they can't ever find it. He's looking for it. Come they on, Jason. Oh, is this what American exceptionalism has become? <laughs> Jason has found a way to play around the system. Wait. And it's, it's working for him. He's got a right bullet? Now. No, he's got three more bullets. Yeah, but that bomb is going to do everything to try to find it. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them are around like headless chickens, but... Lothar's just been on B this whole time! How can he be so bad when he's the only one with a monitor? There we go. <laughs> Second kill. And the oh, bomb is going to go up and consume probably the, half the team at this point. <laughs> uh, you got to give it up. <sighs> That's what they mean when they say, I don't guarantee. work harder, work smarter. The tale of complexity is one of losing pistols and close rounds and what could have been. And when they finally had a taste of revenge, when that nuke game felt so easy, suddenly reality comes crashing back down around them. Phase's 17 match streak cannot be stopped, it seems. Two one versus fours in that first half, and a quality of counter strike that complexity just can't compete with. We are only four rounds away from getting phase back to the grand finals. Halzerk is zero and nine coming into this half. God. They're trying to tie up. Looking like a meat grinder inside of Cave. Brokey oh. and Rain, the two culprits of the clutch coming together oh. with Garrigan. The final stamp on the end and a 10th round and the cleanest pistol yet. The simple nod of approval. As Kerrigan knows that he's got this lead in a death grip. And even if Complexity had won that pistol, I don't think he would have been worried. Complexity, on the other hand, have to be experiencing the highest level of dread. Their only chance to get to the World Final is by winning this entire event. And they might be getting stopped by FaZe in the semis. Oh, getting stuffed at the moment. You know, we saw the sad reality of having to force buy every round from FaZe back on Nuke. Complexity find themselves in the exact same shoes here on Ancient. If you don't miraculously bust through with this Galil right now, with this 4v3, then FaZe have got you by the neck. Drops in Donut will at least stop one. Now that A site looks primed for the taking, but Elyse puts a smoke down towards mid, so Kerrigan's gonna disrespect this, and Elyse hears it the entire way. The second oh, no. he comes through, at the very least, Kerrigan picks up the frag. Elyse dives back towards middle. Bomb inside the A site on the hmm. precipice. How? Halzerk Miss waits, shot. misses a shot. He's yet to get his first kill and he won't do it now. Another clutch queued up for Kerrigan, protector of the bomb. Elise had to reload and relocate. And now it's Kerrigan's round to lose. Third highest rated player of the event in Elise. The time falls through the funnel as he reroutes. Best American player of all time versus one of Denmark's greatest minds. Not known for the aim, but three oh. kills deep on this one. And oh. no fourth, no sir, Elise. They will manage to get through, and that was with those Galils. That was with the lesser weapons, time and time again. Complexity, fight on. Yeah, wow, he played it off the box. Tried to use an off angle, get a little bit closer. That got scary. That's... 
That's a buoy here for Halzer. A chance to get something. Because whether he gets a kill or not, of course, this is a failure. But at least if you get the kill, half the people won't say something about it. But I, I honestly, he's maybe going to think about that later. This is four rounds for complexity. The way in which they lost. And Twist going to see a couple of heads, but it's actually in favor of J2, who continues to have output. No. Whoa. Oh. What goes around comes around. Paul Zerk's got the chance to recover. 2v2, but Elise gets tagged down. Oh my god. Don't play scared. Don't Kerrigan please. on the hunt. Oh, it's a headshot. Now, Halzer, he had 100 health. Kerrigan just rocks him with the pistol. And it is a liege to clutch again, this time with so little HP, but at least a tool to keep Kerrigan back. Kerrigan serves up the distraction. No a liege takes more damage. He's got so much time. And he's got the CT sectioned off. They give him a chance here. He'll grab this bomb. He can go anywhere. He has middle. But they were split on both sides of him. As much of a mind game and gamble for him as it is for his opponents. But he only has 10 health. This will take genius and luck for a liege to be able to figure this out. Stray bullet from Reigns Galil. This one's done. That's pretty much the perfect spot, right? How is this going to come and get cleared? Close enough as the well time. for Kerrigan. He could just chase him, right? If he commits to the yeah. plant with not enough time left, Kerrigan could get up in his face real quick. And he sees his leg. He shoots oh. him down and closes. And he knows he's low. Yeah. May have lost the 1v1, but picks up the next round and regardless. It, and it was Kerrigan's elbow flank. That greased the wheels for FaZe. This shot, one raindrop and drops from up top and there's just no chance. No chance to plant, perfectly positioned from Kerrigan. That's what you wanted to see in the 4v1 situations in the first half. Somebody playing in a spot like that, not just respecting the fear aura of the one guy left over and then playing so far away that nobody can put pressure on him at all and then one dying after the other. Living every day by fear. The scoreline is accurate because Complexity got four rounds where they played well, but they threw away so many good rounds. They played scared in the rounds they should have won and phased it none of that. I mean. We talk about having such little margin of error nowadays in Counter-Strike 2 with MR12. Two one versus fours yeah. in the same half, yeah. plus losing pistols. How much can one team take? Grim and Floppy equipped with the Kalashnikovs. They're looking at that ramp like it's prime for the taking, but Kerrigan's at the top of it, and it's a missed spray. But it's also teammates tethered not far off. And right now, Bombs cut off. Rain is in the middle of it all. He's not going to give them any room to wiggle. He keeps this pressure high. He's got teammates coming from his own spawn. He's also got one behind him to keep eyes on that smoke. But Floppy, with the element of surprise, draws it back by one. Oh, the re-smoke. And they know that Rain was down oh. here. Clean haircut out of Floppy. But he just missed timing. Looking for a second. He missed it. He thinks maybe somebody's still back towards lane. Robs has all the information. Complexity have all the time. Rops and Floppy creeping round, oh and Rops will make the difference. But does that activate Cole? Yes, right into the waiting hands of Twists. JT's Deagle, they say. He's a been... thing of legend. And with one coming closer, he sees nothing just yet. Doesn't leave, decides to commit. He expects some kind of a swing, and he gets what he expects. But FaZe get what they want. One round closer. One round away from locking up this semifinal. And JT and Elysia are the only two players worth discussing right now in complexity. I feel terribly for JT, who has put his best foot forward. Opening kills, eco frags, Digo kills, Maltese on rifles.
and it should have amounted to so much more. Now they'll have to defend it. their tournament nah. with this spy. Elise goes down instantly. Insta-kill, insta-desperation. Again, they're gonna try to crunch, but you can't move, FaZe. You can't get them off this streak. Floppy will try his damnedest, and an empty gun for Rain won't help. A no-scope, that is the point of the series that we are at, that no-scopes are all that keep Cole in this. A 2v4 brought down to the even, but it's the same two players that just closed the round prior. And it doesn't matter about Twist's future. All that matters now is this phase cannot be beat. And this phase is staring at Vitality. One more chance for Kerrigan. Holzerk, well, he oh. nails it. That chance for Kerrigan must wait. Okay. Halzerk in the final moments, in the last breath for Complexity, put something together. There's echo of that from Nuke, of course, but that was when the game was closer to its completion. In this game, it still feels completely hopeless. This 3K from Halzerk, I mean, I'd written him off. We're talking about a player who is 0-9 at one point in this match. Yeah. Well, at least they have the chance to go out with some dignity. Complexity, long road ahead, but okay. Listen, I watched all the same comebacks as you did. This obviously is a different setting. If they do this here, they all deserve statues, okay? And if they do this versus FaZe, they're demon. The reason that they powered up versus Astralis. Then those statues should be made of gold. But what's most likely to happen in this game is that it ends in tragedy with FaZe as the victors, and they have to stand up mentally against all of that. And the only lining for them right now is the USPs on the other side of the map as Complexity quietly cross into the bomb site with the bomb late again. Okay, and they'll do it in a 5v4. Mm, yeah. yeah. Floppy bringing two down makes this seem nigh impossible. Rops can hold the AK if he wants to, but the moment they heard that utility popping inside of the B site, they decide this is their commitment to the flank. But we're also talking about a phase with literally nothing to lose here. But also phase with no kits. Yeah, no kits. I mean, it almost felt like they tried just for fun at this point, but no, they'll take the two AKs. That's a pretty big prize, some good damage dealt to Complexity, who um, narrowly survived versus USB and no armors. Complexity, continue on. There's been a few games uh, uh, in this winter season where people have told me they like stopped watching because they thought it was over and then some mm. crazy comeback has happened. Um, there might be a, people, a couple of people who have gotten up. But since so many have happened, maybe they'll stick around for a couple extra rounds should all know better. I think we heard Kerrigan say once it was, yeah, it's only six rounds. Then six rounds later, welcome to phase, motherfuckers. <laughs> Brokey, though, is gonna kick this one off. It is guns back up for phase, and those guns are drawing them down one by one. We've had so many close moments, so many kills back and forth. That it just feels like an inevitability at least for now, but we were in that same place back on Anubis to start this series. You may not cheer for complexity, but if there's one thing they've done at this event, it is claw back matches. And get bet 13-2. Yeah, no, that, that, that happens. That happens too. This one, an attempt. Paul Zerk traded, and Rain's not gonna get greedy. Doesn't need to stick around, at least. Do you really walk through that? Oh. Robs is just gonna kill him on the smoke. Oh, just, of course, so responsible, watching his own smoke. But the timing. Waiting there, fifth, under 50 seconds left over, floppy in the 1v2. Yeah, he thinks he's got a timing, but Rain's already here. Oh, we talk about the floppy clutch. Full kit of utility versus Rops. How many clutches will FaZe win? Well, Rops comes through and floppy sits him down. Okay. Yeah. And it's all calm.
Complexity makes sure that they won't go down without a fight. And that's one step closer. They come into the, the winner's interview after this and say, yeah, we always believe in the comeback. I'm, I'm muting. I'm not believing that. No shot, okay? They would have to go through hell and back to make this happen. I stand by that, but now we are within five rounds. There's no team more inspirational than FaZe when it comes to comeback, so Complexity, just look across that server. Embody those two versus fours. Trophy lift ripped from the fingertips of Complexity back at Sydney. But JT's not able to capitalize oh, on his man. opening kill. Kerrigan's MP9 shreds him. But it's that MP9 that's really all they have to work with. 5-7 CZ, but they're in the right spot. They're playing in the pocket! No! Yes! Twists on top of Bomb! Floppy swings! Oh! And Brody slams! And a leash! Well, now he's desperate. Kerrigan attacks him from the top of mid, whittles him down to 60. And as he pushes into Donut, he can see the end again. They line up and they end it! It is fade to the Grand Finals! Oh, they do it, and they do it with the minimal amount of weaponry. The pistols alone. The SMGs. And FaZe showing their strength, showing their range, stopping teams coming back and winning with anything. What can't this team do? 18 matches in a row, third longest win streak in Counter-Strike history, and a potential third land trophy to lift in a row. This is a group of players who have sat down, hyper fixated on CS2, and seized the opportunity to become the best faster than anybody else. A team that struggled towards the tail end of CSGO, who could have given up but stuck together, and now they reap the rewards. Complexity try for a second time, but not tonight. NA, go home. Carrigan, you forced them into Anubis, and it looks so good for you guys. Did you see the weakness in their play when it comes to this map? Did you? Is that why you took Overpass away from them? Yeah, I mean, we play seven map pool and obviously like to listen to interviews. And Floppy said we're easy to read and we don't have so many new stuff. So I think there's all new stuff coming and Anubis against them. That certainly did work out. But then this nuke, this battle of the force, when you got broken, was this also feeling like defeat coming out? Or, or what was it mentally for you guys? Because that was such a crazy back and forth. I mean, they do love you. Um, I mean, I think this is uh, one of the most insane new matches I played. Uh, both both teams were so strong mentally and throwing in curveballs in, in the rounds, right? So uh, I feel like we lost a battle in the end, I think yeah. 10 rounds in, right? So that happens, but uh, I'm proud of we stayed strong and came back on ancient really, really Really good clutches there in the middle of the game. You came back with absolute fire when you come into Ancient. I want to talk about that conversation between the maps. We talk about you guys never giving up and always ready to fight. But that must have been a tough conversation between the maps. I think not really. I think we, we kind of thought that Nuke was very strange to play. And we and I told the guys that uh, let's just go in. And if we lose our win streak here today, at least we should not lose to ourselves. So I just tried to remind ourselves that we play the best we're under pressure. This is the most pressure match in a while, and uh, competition is playing great, so we had to come up with some uh, good clutches to, to kind of make it to the Grand Finals. And it's absolutely incredible what you're pulling off, and now you find yourselves in the Grand Final once again for the full Finals. How much do you want this? I mean, uh, it was a very close game last year uh, here in the arena, so um, we're going to try to go for four tournaments in a row. Um, it's going to be very hard, but Tennis is playing great. We don't have so much information, so... We just need to be on point and uh, hopefully we can make it, but uh, big respect to how Vitality played so far. I love it. Thank you very much, Carrigan. Royal Arena, give it up for Carrigan and FaZe Clan!
to back, four finals, grand finals for FaZe, and now a chance for Carrigan to carve his name into that very trophy on home soil. No, yes, Machu, the streak ain't dead yet for FaZe, and now a chance for them to add yet another CS2 trophy to their cabinet. I'm so excited to see what they can deliver tomorrow. Same here, Freya, and what a FaZe-esque matter to win this third map. We're talking about the disappointment of Nuke, how this was a mental battle that Complexity got the best of, and then FaZe do exactly what they're the best at on this map of Ancient, which is to well, steal away yeah, situations, steal away rounds, literally, that Complexity should have never lost. And you can have whatever level it is in Counter-Strike, you, you can have the protocols, you can have the plans, all of the contingencies. If you drop 1v4s back to back in a semi-final, you are losing the map. We may as well dive into it. Round 8 match, you're calling it out right here. We said it coming into the game as well. You can pick any player from face and they can have the MVP potential. We haven't spoken about Rain throughout this series, but he comes alive in Round 8. A 1v4, a clean 1v4. Surely Complexity making a couple of mistakes right here. That smoke right there cutting off the pathway is also great. And Rain is just tearing it up. It's a well-played 1v4, but Complexity fumbling the back just a little bit right I mean, just a little bit. I think you're being very lenient, Jacob. Trying. I would say Complexity massively misplayed this 1v4. Yeah. They even came to Rain. They offered him all of these 1v1s up until the point where, of course, once you're floppy and you're getting into that 1v1, you've obviously already on the losing side. Rain has the advantage of the time. He's got the advantage of the position. But you can blame your teammate. It's Halzerg being completely out of the open mm. in a no man's land. Impossible for him to retreat. Then it's JT swinging when nobody else is ready to, to help him. What is this? I mean, the scoreline is four to three. At the time, it doesn't seem like such a big deal, but it actually truly is just for the finances of the game as well. Yeah, and you mentioned Hauzek's name. Obviously, he had a tough time getting activated on this third and final map. But uh, you speak about the individuals of FaZe Clan. You said you can pull out any name to have an MVP performance. You could pull out any name to basically have a clutch in this game because you move into round number 10 and Brokey manages to pull off one himself, Shaker. Fool me once. Fumi tries to Brokey doing the exact same thing, a 1v4 right here. I'm not quite sure what Complexity are doing in this one either. Again, Brokey playing it well, forcing out the issues, but again, the trade is not really in there. Now, Brokey, you know him, he's forcing the issue. I don't know, again, why Floppy is so eager to fight right here. Again, disjointed, Elise left in a very tough position with no kid as well, Matthew. What on mm. earth is he supposed to do? I mean, Floppy, were, he was in a prime position to trade. I think there's probably a little bit of misfiring happening. And then he gets stressed out by the timer, he peeks onto Brokey, and he gives him that kill, and at the end, it's the time. Time, of course, Elish didn't have a kit, a smoke from Brookie, who also, in terms of movement, plays the clutch quite well. That is, I would say this one is slightly less dramatic okay. how it is played out yeah. than the first one. But it's still, it's a little bit deflating because I think these two teams were so set on a course to have a massive third map, back and forth. And these two rounds kind of kill the hype. They, they, they kill any backbone yes. that this game could have because you are not beating FaZe if you give away these situations. And you know Complexity, you know, they're going to falter in terms of that momentum being cut short by FaZe. And it, it, it was kind of the beginning of the end, right? I think uh, to steal your term, Jacob, a cosmetic comeback from them in the end. And this one obviously going to FaZe and we see them going through to that grand final. Yeah, it, it was a game, as you said, Matthew. It had potential to be much closer, but without those clutches, it, it could have been as well. But over. at the end of the day, yeah, it, it was over. A cosmetic comeback. I, again, I gotta give it to Complexity, though. I feel like that's been a trend of theirs. They never give up. They always try to fight back yeah. and we can call it a cosmetic comeback. But fact of the matter is that they were in the semifinal and they applied an awful lot of pressure to the best team in the world, who's won 18 games in a row. Had you told me that three months ago, that complexity would be in this position right <laughs> yes. here, right now, I would have told you that you're a lunatic. So credit where credit is due. They're not ready to win a tournament. I'll say it out loud right here, but they're getting closer and closer. I'll spare a thought for Halzerk, uh, who's going to have yeah. a really bad night of sleep tonight. Let's yeah. be real. Uh, it's a miss. It's a swing and a miss when it comes to this series. Mm. He never really came alive. And that's unfortunate because we know how competitive complexity can be with him at the helm. That was the case in Sydney. We prefaced this third map as being one of the guys we had to keep an eye on. And he was a ghost this entire series. We never really got to see him play. And I don't know if it's the context, the pressure, the arena, the stage, but he got into his own head and you could really see he he basically missed the plot of the game and he was a few seconds behind on the duels he was taking. He was missed positions most of the time. And this is a, a real poor performance for someone that is supposed to be instrumental. And I mean, just to put it into context, right? This is only the second ever big stage that Halzak has been on. The first, which was back in Sydney just literally a month ago. So obviously yeah. he's gonna be getting used to that, right? But I wanna end on a positive. I wanna talk about FaZe mm -hmm. because obviously they're a team that now, you know, going up against Vitality, 
Vitality never lifting a trophy here in Royal Arena. FaZe did back in 2019, but it was a quite the different roster. I'm thinking obviously Rain and Brokey were there, but we have Olaf, we have Cold Zero, and we have Nico alongside them. So uh, Carrigan, I'm sure he's going to be determined not to do what he did last year, not to let Heroic lift the trophy, and uh, yeah, do it on home soil. Yeah, that's the key storyline for me, that Carrigan gets another chance. Two finals in a row, for the matter, right? That's that's kind of impressive from Kerrigan. Face claim for that matter as well. I, I look very much forward to tomorrow. There's a lot of storylines to pig into. Kerrigan being one of them. I think it could be Twist last game ever in the face clan journey as well. There's a lot of stuff that suggests that. So, you know, let's wait with the bullet point for tomorrow, but let's be excited that we have a bang of a match coming up. Vitality face clan, you know, coming into the tournament, I think that's exactly what we want. Yeah, of course, phase progressing on forward, but unfortunately, complexity, this does mark the end of the line here in the semifinals. So let's get a few exit thoughts, courtesy of Grim. Complexity's road does end here for the full finals, but they fought so hard once again. And Grim, I want to touch on something that's probably not easy for you to answer, but they still overpass away from you. They've got the seven map map pool. Your Anubis here, when it comes to full finals, has not looked good. So why did we still pick into it? Was there still this belief, this confidence? Explain it to me. Yeah, so obviously we thought we were the best team in the world on Anubis coming into this tournament. But uh, obviously, as uh, you can see, we had some struggles on the CT side. Our T yep. side is still looking really good, like we were playing in Sydney, but our CT side, uh, we picked it because we talked about it and thought we came up with some fixes. But okay. I think that phase honestly like had our number and they prepped really well. And it was really tough to execute those fixes because we were always down, like couldn't string any rounds together. And then the money is just kind of bad the whole half. So you can't really get anything going because you, know, you need nades and ops and stuff like that. So honestly, yeah, we just got off to a bad uh, foot, but we were so confident on the pick. And it was still one of those games where the numbers don't quite tell the full picture. It was closer than what the scoreline looks. But Nuke, oh my God, this battle of the four spies, mate. I, I, I don't know what I was witnessing at one point. Whose call was it to keep forcing and forcing again? Um, it was Johnny's, and then we called a timeout <laughs> once, and Tion's like, I wish it forced again. But um, we, those games, I've never had a game like that where it's just no, back to back, force by force by force by. Yeah. Uh, we were just like, well, eventually, guys, we're going to string these together. You know, we can't keep losing them forever. Like, one of us is going to convert it, and eventually we ended up doing it. I had a pretty nice upper hold once. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad we were able to convert that because I think it was 4 4 at one point, and we yeah. went 13 to 5. So I'd say we closed it out pretty well that map. Closed it up pretty well as an understatement. You, you, it seemed like you actually rocked the boat of FaZe who are normally so confident, always can fight in it. And then I'm, I'm gonna ask you that when you go into Nuke, um, you sit there, you do a crazy play like this, and then we sit on Ancient. Between the maps, did you feel like, okay, it's different now, we've got this? Yeah, I'd say that we were really confident because uh, we knew in Sydney, we were down 9-3 actually, uh, just how we were again, but on yeah. a different side. Um, we knew that our Ancient is really good. We actually consider it one of our best maps. And um, yeah, honestly, we were doing pretty well. JT had some sick rounds at B. And then honestly, I think something that screwed us up was losing the two 1v4s back to back. I mean, yeah. losing one's already like enough and then you lose two in a row and it's like, all right, well, <laughs> it's just like, you just gotta try your best to have your chin up after that and do your best. But uh, after that, I think they got a lot of momentum and confidence and they were making really good plays around the map and we weren't able to catch up. So good at them and they played really good in the clutch. Now, it is one of these things, right, where you are going up against FaZe, who look ridiculously good when it comes to CS2. But how do you view your whole event here at full finals and the fact that complexity not once, but now twice on LAN has had back-to-back -back playoff performances, which we're not used to seeing from you guys? Explain it to me. Yeah, I'd say obviously we had a crushing defeat, uh, losing the two 1v4s on Ancient. But I'd say overall, I'd uh, be proud of our pr uh, progress still coming into this event because obviously making the playoffs is still a good achievement. And... FaZe is like the best team in the world right now by far. I mean, they won the last two, three events. So uh, we're glad that we were able to show that we were competitive. And honestly, another day we might not have been able to take it, but we're really glad from our progress and we're going to keep building from here. And one day I'm sure we're going to lift the trophy. Honestly, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> And respect to Grim for putting that so damn eloquently, obviously after such a heartbreaking loss, a, a defeat against FaZe once again. And I think he's totally right. They should be so damn proud going forward because talk about turning over a new leaf coming from CSGO into CS2. Oh, definitely. The improvement is undeniable. The trajectory that complexity is on, the fact that we are now seeing him as strong, reliable candidates for playoffs. Once again, that was the case in Sydney. It's the case in full final here. And he's dead on the money. Any team would have suffered from these clutches. It's not because complexity is a weak team. Anybody would have suffered from these 1v4 back-to-back. -back. 
Unfortunately, against FaZe, there is no margin for error for that. Yeah, unfortunately, the underline here for complexity. But, gentlemen, you know what that means. We've got our grand final cement. Ooh. And holy hell, do we have one for the ages. We're talking about FaZe, who came second place last year, and Vitality, who came second place the year before. One of these two teams will be lifting the trophy tomorrow, Jake. And I'm so excited to see who's going to edge each other out because uh, it's two teams, you know, we're talking about FaZe, the current kings of CS2. Vitality slowly powering up into it. I don't even know who to pick. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be great, man. The kings of CSGO at the end Vitality against the kings of CS2. It, it should be a great game, though. Let's uh, dive into our CS money plays of the day. There's a lot of good we plays. we have had so many plays. I'm really excited what to we see have? what we've got. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I was going to ask you that question. I'm, I'm planning blindly. What's our first option? I am planning blindly. My GPS is off, and we're going to start with Axel's 1v5. This was the first round we witnessed here in Royal Arena. A misplay from Vitality. I'll just put it out there. But pristine Glock work from Axel here. This is what started the series, put Cal9 on track. A man said that this guy wasn't a top 10 player in the world as of right now coming into the tournament. I say, damn you, this play right here with the AWP is beautiful. Woo! The little Nate play right here into a double kill and then he's just going for it, not giving any space whatsoever to Cloud9. In overtime, 14 to 13, the impact of this clip right here is magnificent from Zygo. Absolutely beautiful. You could show me that in repeat. And finally, we have Brokey from FaZe and he had a couple of choices, couple of possibilities. We'll see where we're going with this one. That's the 1v4 where he decomposed poses to your plans here. Brookie, I think, misses the mark a little bit on the trade. Plays with the time from Brookie quite well. 13 seconds as he gets the third kill. A nade onto Elise that does about 50 damage, by the way. And then here it's the time who's Brokey's best friend. He forces Elise off the defuse. And that is just like that, the second incredible clutch from Oh, Fizz. so many good plays to be choosing from. I don't envy you guys at home that will have to be making that decision over on the Blast Premier Instagram. But uh, James, what's the true on that one? What's going on with our Mask MVP at the moment? Well, you guys have got some great plays to look at. I've got some great players to look at for our Mask MVP. Things are moving on forward. And Spinks, he slowed down just a little bit today, which meant Zaiwu now has gone slightly down in the rating, but overall sits in number one far above the rest. And that is the man we're going to focus on right now because he enters the grand final in great form. And they keep talking about it. They say, oh, what's Zaiwu doing when it comes to CS2? Can he bring his A game? Well, right now he seems to be hitting it. This shot through the smoke, that moment we saw, this guy was back on it. That collateral with the nade into the smoke. This was monstrous. Zaiwu is loving life right now. He said to me himself when it came to the interview that he was starting to feel it. He was starting to get used to it. Obviously, there's things you have to develop with and get used to in this game. But if you can have that performance enough tomorrow, will it be there enough to stop phase? We'll have to wait and see. But it could be another MVP performance for the chosen one. Not one, not two, but three Vitality players in contention Ooh. of taking home that Mask MVP. And it only is looking brighter for Vitality. Of course, they've made it to the grand final, baby. No bias intended. I am so excited to see exactly what is going to be going down tomorrow. Of course, it's going to be preceded by our show match team Denmark versus the Dream Team. That's going to be very exciting. Of course, you guys can have your say in terms of who's going to be taking place on that Dream Team. You've already had to say in terms of the maps as well. But FaZe taking on Vitality oh. at 5 p.m. I That's am... Beautiful. So excited to see that clash in CS2, man. That's going to be so It's good. a great matchup and it's a great timing for Vitality to play against FaZe. We've got mm. nothing to lose right here. We see the players who matters are actually shaping up. Spinks was a little bit slow, but Zaiwu picked up the slack on that semi-final. Jacob, are you going to play on Team Denmark? Uh, we'll see about that tomorrow, Matthew. We'll see about that. Matthew, did you know he once played on Team Liquid? Did he now? Did he actually? Did you play on Team Liquid? Somebody told me that. Oh, I don't know who. But uh, maybe we should say goodnight. We bid you adieu, farewell, and we will see you at 5 p.m. tomorrow. A little bit early if you want to join us for the pre-show. We'll be live from 4 p.m. to bring you all the action here at the final day and the grand final of the Blast Premier Four Finals. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.